Right, everybody. Good morning. I'm not quite central. I'm not quite central. Hang on. Hang on. How is everybody? Let me just get this camera nice and central. It's going to be moved around today. So this way. There we go. That's cool. All right. How is everybody doing this morning? Everybody doing all okay? Can you hear me? That's the most important. Well, no, it's not actually. <laughs> It's not the most important. The most important thing. You are thing, the most important. The most important thing is Louise. Can you all hear Louise? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear us all? Just let us know. In I'm, I'm not going to shout. I'm going to keep it keep down. It, yeah, just. I was you deafened people yesterday <laughs> with your excited, overexcited <laughs> shouting. Well, I was a bit, I was a bit excited yesterday, and I must have someone said, "Andrew, you're peaking." I thought, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm peaking a bit. <laughs> All right, how's everybody this morning? Mm. I'm going to promise I'm going to keep it quiet, keep it low, and I'm not going to get too excited. Just don't get overexcited. Everybody's doing well this morning, I hope. Thank you, everybody. It's 221 people who are at the moment. Um, saw her today too. Just checking out through some of the comments that are coming through. There are lots of people on. Hello from Manchester. Hello from, hello sunny Scotland. Hello Manchester. Hello from up the road, says a lady, Mrs. Rosser, Miss Rosser. Um, yeah, it is, this is really exciting. Um, and hello to everybody who have not gone to bed. We have saw in the chat that there was somebody who actually has not gone to bed. And it's 1 a.m. Can you remember where it was? Um, I think it was... The, I think it was... It was... Hello, Latvia. Hello, Barcelona. Hello, Australia. Hello, North, North Lincolnshire. Um, morning from Maidenhead. Morning, morning, morning. Uh, the Mumbles. Nice, hey. nice sort of... West Wales to us, Dublin, Somerset, West Somerton, Wiltshire, Australia. It's amazing how far these streams do reach and we are really, really excited. Pierre, Cornwall, hello Taiwan, London, Japan, Cyprus. Oh my gosh, it'd be interesting to see actually how far. 1am in California now, thank you so much for staying up. Or perhaps you've gone to bed and you've just woken up for this and thank you very much. Athens, Greece, Belgium. We should be making notes of all this, Louise, because this is amazing, isn't mm -hmm. it? Absolutely amazing. So <clears throat> so before we go, really, are, you, are you okay there? You look a bit, no, you're okay. It's just the light's right by the side of you, so we so you get a bit of a... It's okay, it's like bit, an automatic filter. Bit, bit, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> 4 a.m. in Canada. Canada. Can... Kanda, Kanda, is that 4 a.m. in Canada? Yeah, I think it's just a typo. Like. Just a typo, sorry, I just thought that was someone I actually hadn't heard of. <laughs> trying to pronounce it. <laughs> no. They haven't invented a new country, uh, it's okay. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Kandada. Bristol, oh, you, Israel, Sweden, Henley. Grew up at 2.30, 3 o'clock now. Billy, you are a credit. Oklahoma, oh my gosh, Arizona, Bristol, living in Bristol. Uh, oops. <laughs> Alberta, we'll Baldwin. Let you off, Sandra. Right, all right. So I'm going to start recording this now because I've waffled mm. on enough. All right, so we're going to start recording. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the second 12 hour live stream marathon session. Um, the first one that we did back in, I think it was May, I'm shouting again. The first one we did back in. <laughs> I can't lose, I just can't help but get excited about yes. this. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> <coughs> oh dear me. Excuse me. So. <gasps> is that coffee? No, it's my. Oh. my uh, okay. How's your work? The coffee machine is just outside. If you want to go and help yourself and make one. <laughs> if you do make one, make one for me too. All right. Everybody, thank you so much for coming on today. <clears throat> I'll take it nice, nice and easy. This is our second 12 hour. And first of all, I just want to say that thank you to everybody who's coming on today. Really, really do appreciate it. The one main thing that I want to stress today is that we, Louise and myself, are doing this um, to raise money for a charity. Uh, this time we're looking at Cancer Research UK. Now, Cancer Research UK, even though it is UK, um, they do fund 39 countries, obviously around the world, to help beat in cancer. Um, so that is what our chosen charity is this time. 
down below the chat on this side, just down by here, there's a little dollar sign. If you could see your way to donating whatever, ever you want, it could be 50 pence, 50 cents, it could be whatever. We're not, ask, we're not asking you to donate, but if you feel that you wish to donate, we would absolutely love it. All the money will go to cancer research. The little dollar sign, you can click on that, you can then choose an amount to donate. It'll come up then upon the chat. And if you choose an emoji, you'll have the pleasure of seeing me act out that emoji. There's one or two that involves me lying down, I've had to lie down on the bench, that sort of thing. It was, it was a, a hoot last time. But I won't be lying down on the bench on every single one, so don't choose all of them. Perhaps I'll do that at the end. There we go, see? So, so this is the idea. So I've got to do, 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 do. So, so the idea is I act them out, okay? So that's 25 runs. Thank, thank you so much. Really there was another do appreciate one. It. There was another one going back, 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 back. Oh my goodness me, so much, oh. so much chat. We missed it, have we? But thank oh, you. Can I click on the chat revenue? Thank you, everybody who is in advance, and also, also thank you personally as the morning goes on. The first hour, we are just simply going to have a chat about what's going on, some rules, regulations, some general housekeeping, and so forth. So yeah, I will, ooh, I will act out all the emojis. If you want to donate, please do. Put a little comment. I'm sure they can put a little comment down, can't they, Louise, on that? There's a little comment box. They can put down something, can they? Or just click an emoji. I think you just, well, you go to the, the, the dollar sign and... There we go. Yvette. I'm not quite sure. Oh, I'm what's this one? I haven't got a hat. <gasps> I haven't got a hat. This one goes... Uh. You have to do it with your Optivisor. Oh, Optivisor. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he, he goes to the side. Uh, just like that. <laughs> goes. <laughs> With that big chi <laughs> With that, hang on, let's just turn it Do you get it then, Louise? Come no, on. No, I didn't. Hang on a minute. <laughs> oh. Hang on, try again. Oh, Wait. Louise. Oh, my gosh. Come here. Okay. Okay, and a few more. <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is the whole idea. Um, what's this one? Hey. See, the whole idea is that, oh, hang on, I've knocked off my light, hang on, I've knocked off my light. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, the idea is then we act out all these, all these emojis, hey you, or whatever they are. So the idea is you, I act out, I make myself look <gasps> a right... Passing a cup of coffee? Uh, uh, I'll have it later, I'll have it later, uh, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the idea is we act out, and the idea is we want to raise money, and all the money that is coming in is going to be going for charity. So thank you, uh, Tanya Nina. Thank you so much. Do you want to scroll back up so I can say thank you to some of the others, Louise, for me, who have come in. Thank you very much. Thank you to, I did Andrea, yep. Uh, Yvette, thank you very much. Janet, thank you. Jane, sorry, Jane, thank you very much. I'll pass Louise a cup of coffee a little bit later on. Mm. Uh, Natalie, thank you. Annie, thank you very much. Keep it, I like this one, keep it up. <laughs> yeah, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. So this is the idea. What's that one? Oh, pick, what's he picking up? Picking up something and dropping it? I don't know why you're dropping Microphone. it. Microphone, is it? Oh, like that and go. Now okay, here. Oh, I dropped the mic. All right, so this is the idea. You may think I look a bit buff today as well, look a bit hunky today, but it's because I got about four layers on and all that will become apparent now in a second. Teresa, thank you very much indeed. It's going to be, uh, can you deadlift your anvil? Um, I don't have an anvil. All I've got at the moment is a little bench block. You can just see that manage So I can, I can do that. I can, <laughs> I, I, I can do that. But I can go. <laughs> Thank you, Jade, for your donation. Oh, hang on. That's, that's my deadlift my block. Um, you've got to do a shy face. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this should be, what's the other one too bad? Whoa! <laughs> I'm not going to have the 12 hours doing this, but if yes, <laughs> can you imagine? The 12 hours there's going to be no jewellery, <laughs> nothing at all. Andrew's not going to make anything. He's just going to be going out yeah, doing this. Yeah. Perhaps we should have times where you're going to do the. I think so, yeah. The acting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I, amazing. I think what we'll do, I will, I will act them out perhaps after we've done the demonstration. But yeah, I certainly will. And thank you all very much. Sandra, Susie, thank you all very much. Really, really do appreciate it. So as you said, all the money is going to be going to cancer research. Uh, we were inspired to do that this time because you know, it affects so many people. And someone close to our, our, sort of, um, our trade 
um, has been diagnosed with cancer, really, really sad, um, but we want to, we messaged him in the week and said, this is what we're doing um, for Mark. So this is what we're doing for him, um, and just to raise money for cancer research um, and everybody who has been affected. Um, so yeah, so thank you all very much. Good luck. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you very much. Irene, thank you very much. It's that coffee zist. I'm not going to slop it because it's going to stick in my bench up. Uh, <laughs> mm. So all, oh, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Amazing. Um, so what do I want to say first of all, please? Anything else should we, um, should we, we say? We have a competition first of all? to draw from yesterday, don't we? The pre, the pre competition, competition, the competition, mm. pre competition. The, yeah, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the test competition. The test competition, because yesterday we had a few technical problems. We came on live in the afternoon, had a few technical problems. It was my fault, because I was saying to Louise, Louise, press that button, press that button. No, Louise, press that button, that button. And to be honest, it was the wrong button. So that's the reason why we could not get the slides up when I rewanted them. But now I told Louise to press the other button and it worked. So it was totally, totally my fault. All right. Uh, yesterday we had, it came on live, I just said, and we did a bit of a pre-competition. <clears throat> Romy, thank you very much indeed. Really do appreciate it. Uh, Paxi, another one of those. I don't have a cape, but I do. I could turn my, right. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, and I'm a May. <sighs> All these there. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's it. Thank you. 120, 130 pounds raised already. Brilliant. Thank you all. You guys are truly amazing. So, Louise is going to talk us through what happened yesterday, aren't you, Louise? Com well, competition. Oh, the competition, yeah. We've done a little <laughs> bit of competition. I just explained it was my fault because I was telling you to press the wrong button. Oh. Pressing it. What did you say? It was my, it was my fault. Totally my fault. I have to agree. It was That's my, in my book. <laughs> <laughs> it's down on air. It's been recorded. <laughs> Everyone knows it was totally my fault. Okay, so yeah, we did a little pre-competition just so that you guys could um, get a bit familiar if you didn't tune in last year to the whole competition process. So there was a form, a link to a form which we published yesterday, which you, you click on it, it takes you away to a form, fill it in, it's just literally your name, your email address and a little bit of GDPR compliance and then you send it off and then you come back to the stream and that's how it works. So we're going to draw that now. Draw that now, yes. <clears throat> So that's the idea. So, that's the idea. So, so the idea is is throughout the day, we will be posting up links in the chat. These links will be self-explanatory. We'll tell you what we're going to be doing. They are going to be links to things like the competitions we're running throughout the day. We're going to have going to be links to the discount codes that are going to be available for today and for the next following week. And a few are going to be going on for the, until the end of the year. All this will be explained as we go along. The, uh, the major prizes that we're going to be offering today are going to be available throughout all of today and until nine o'clock tomorrow. Should we do it now? And we're going to do the one that we did yesterday, which is simply a test. And I think we had about 120, 130, 140 people just enter that quickly. Thank you very much for entering. And you can win a three months membership to At The Bench. We will be setting this up then next week on the Monday. We don't plan on doing much tomorrow. Can the winners from overseas win? Yes. The, the prizes will be shipped wherever you are in the whole wide world. Some of the discount codes are going to be available online from the local suppliers and from suppliers in the US. We tried to get some people from Germany, some suppliers from Germany. They never came back to us. We tried to get some suppliers from Asia, but we, they didn't come back to us. So perhaps we'll try again next year when we do our next 12 hour. But I haven't told Louise that yet. We're doing another one. Amanda, Mike, Michelle, um, Anna, thank you all very, 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 very much for all the emojis coming in. Really, really do appreciate all the money that's coming in. All the money's going to be going to cancer research. Right, so Louise is just quickly now going through her little spreadsheet. We have a random generator. There's an option in all the competitions that you can either sign up for the comp the company for the newsletters that at the bench sends out and also the manufacturers send out you don't have to accept that you can say no i don't want to be contacted unless i win the competition obviously and that is completely we don't sell any email addresses they are going to be put to one side we will email you various intervals the same as the suppliers if you choose to whoa in that focus then that's better 
Um, so we will not spam you. And it, it makes no difference to your entry to the competition should you wish to accept the newsletters or you do not wish to accept the newsletters. It has no bearing upon your entry at all. The one thing that we must suggest, suggest must um, tell you is that we will not be accepting multiple entries. Now, I know that you occasionally will forget, well, did I enter that competition? I'm not sure, and you enter it again. And perhaps two, three entries in the same competition will allow, but we will filter out, so only one will be counted. So even though you may accidentally enter twice or three times, only one entry will count. So that will be completely um, void, but only the one entry will count. Multiple entries, you will be banned. So if we see things like six times, eight times, 10 times, bam, 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 bam. Even if you use a very similar email address and so forth, that we can filter that out and you will be banned from any of the competitions. You will not win anything. It's just a little bit of housekeeping, just to make it fair for everybody who's coming on and fair to Louise as well, who's going through all the, all the, the competition entries sort of every couple of hours. How's that? Is that all right? I think that's fair, yeah. I think that's fair. Mm. All right. Yeah. Okay, so do we have um, a winner? We do. May you announce it? May I have a drum roll? The winner is Michael Arvins. So, Michael Arvins, you are the winner for our three month membership to At the Bench. Well done. We will contact you via email. <laughs> We will, we will contact you <laughs> via email and set you all up. It will be on Monday morning when we do that. Jill, thank you very much. And all the emojis coming, we'll quickly go back over that. So Lara congratulations. Now I can both my husband and I enter? Are if you, you will both you use both, the prize. You are both jewelers? Yeah. <laughs> mm. We pretend we didn't see that. <laughs> um, so congratulations to Michael. Absolutely, thank you very much indeed. Um, okay, so we're going to start off. That's the, that's the first competition over and done with. That was done yesterday. So if you happen to see the stream, make sure that you're not, we're not accepting responses on that form as well. It's done. It's drawn, so it doesn't matter. But Fine, I suppose, not yeah, going back to that. It's, yeah, we won't publish that one again. No. Oh, so, right. yeah. Super, super, super. All right. Um, what's next? Oh, yes. Right. Competitions running throughout the whole day up until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So 24 hours you've got to enter several competitions. The most important competitions, the most important competition is an at the bench t-shirt. No, I'm joking. Oh, is what? What, Louise? What's this? I'm just waiting to press the button. Oh, sorry. I thought, I thought, 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 thought you were waving to me. Then. No, what, like this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> um, so we have several competitions. I'll just quickly tell you what they are first of all. You're going to be able to win one of two Durston Agile C130 Ronin Mills. They're worth £1,050, okay, each Ronin Mill. Thank you all very much for all these emojis. Where was my knee? Um, all these emojis coming in. So you go, this competition is going to be running for 24 hours. No, it's not. Sorry. No. Hang on. Rewind. Rawr. Rewind. The Durston Ronin Mills will be drawn at around about half past eight tonight. So in... 11 hours time, we will be drawing the Durston Rolling Mill competition. So I apologize for any misunderstanding. 11 hours time, we're drawing the Durston Rolling Mills competition. What you'll find is that Louise will post up in the chat a link. That will take you to a form. You put in your first name, you put in your email address, whether you wanna accept um, uh, newsletters from myself, or from Matthew, you don't have to tick yes, you could tick no, it makes no difference to the entry. And then you press reply or send or whatever it is, and then you'll be entered into the draw. It is as simple as that. We try to make it as simple as that for us to understand, and that's about as simple as we can get it. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. So now Louise is gonna press, can you ready for that trigger finger? I'm so excited. <laughs> so this is the first, I guess fingers crossed this is gonna work, because this didn't work yesterday either. So Louise, press the Durston Rolling Mill competition button. And hopefully it will come up. Yes. Hey. Win a Durston Agile C130 roller mill. Go, 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 go. So that is the form. Click on it. It takes you, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, takes you to a form. Right. <laughs> <laughs> takes you to a form. You'll know what competition you're entering because upon the top of the form, it'll have a picture of the competition. It's as simple as that. 
This is the elusive whiteboard behind me. It looks better than the set. No, 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 it's not. Oh, no, oh, no, no. no, no. Yeah. That Sorry. was the first elusive whiteboard, actually. <laughs> yeah, this is so the first. Applies, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the first elusive whiteboard that we were sort of working on back in May, June time. But no, the other whiteboard that I'm expecting, they did collect the sack truck, thank goodness, but they did not deliver my other whiteboard for the gym that is to come. <laughs> 99 responses already? Super. So yeah. that is the idea. So throughout the day, Louise will be pushing that button. If you've entered it once, please don't enter it again. If you accidentally forget that well, if I entered it, I'm not quite sure, and you do it again, that's fine. But we will be filtering out all the duplicate entries. Simple as it's that. It's nice to see people going off and doing it and coming back so quickly as well. Yes, yeah. it shows mm -hmm. that it's simple as it. Yeah, Name, good. address, mm, tick yes, tick no, enter. It's as simple as that. And that's all you need to do. Um, that's about it for excellent. that. That is the, made, the two major competitions that we're going to be drawing at the end of the night. No, it's not beginning of the well, mid, well, yeah, 11 hours from now. Yeah. Mid, 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 uh, yeah. Okay. Should stage. we do another one? Should we do some merch? What? Right. Okay. So. I'm getting we'll, excited. Okay, I'm so, shouting. So, sorry. <laughs> so, so you're getting excited. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to be giving away, we're going to be giving away loads of stuff, and I'm not going to bombard you. Uh, but I need to get the, I need to get some of these clothes off because I am getting a little. Da, 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 <laughs> da, da, da. I'm just getting a little bit on the hot side. So again, running throughout the whole day, you can win some at the bench merch. So we got t-shirts like this. This was really successful last year because we had, um, I think we gave away loads and loads of t-shirts and aprons as well. So you'll have a chance of winning one of these chocolate brown um, t-shirts, either with a white logo, available in small, medium, large, extra large, extra, extra large, or extra, extra, extra large. So we have one of, no, we have five of those to give away. <sighs> We've also got, hang on, hang on, I gotta sort out all my layers, hang on. Then we've got one of them. Oh, we've also got, oh, what are these to give away? No, five of these to give away. And this is an at the bench in the same chocolate brown, but with a slightly different uh, logo. So you can win one of these, five of these. Yes, Jane, they are for sale. You can if buy them on the At The Bench website. Nope, andrewberry.co.uk. Sorry, andrewberry.co.uk, <laughs> yeah. Oh. And what else can you win? You can win one of these. Ah, oh. <laughs> well, the neck's a bit tight on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and also you can win one of these. Or oh, one of five of these At The Bench um, aprons. Always wear an apron when you're working. So the competition, Louise is gonna put up onto the screen now. It takes you to a same type of form, but it's a different form, because on top of the form, it shows you what you're entering. It's as simple as that. At the bench merch, t-shirts, what can we see? T-shirts um, and aprons. All right, so you can win at the bench merchandise as well. And I know, I think we must have given out about 20 t-shirts last year, didn't we? Yeah. But we reduced it because it was just so much work for us. The, 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 our lounge was absolutely inundated with, with bags and t-shirts and all sorts of things. Sally, thank you very much indeed. Appreciate everything that's coming in. Thank you for all the money that's coming in. Really do appreciate it. So the link to win at the bench merch is up. So again, throughout the whole day, Louise will be clicking on these and we will be getting um, all the links coming up and you can enter the chat. Um, what else do we need to say, Louise? Uh, what else have we got for, to, this, these will be mm. um, shared all day long. We also have the Kerner Craft. We have, yes, so we have Kerno Craft vouchers. Kerno Craft, um, UK company based down in Cornwall, and they are giving away 11 20 pound vouchers, was it, I do believe? Yeah. Thank you very much. Keep it up, keep it up. <laughs> thank, thank, you. thank you, Eddie, thank you for that, appreciate that. Um, we're going to be giving away, Kerno Craft are going to be um, giving away 11 20 pound vouchers to use at their online store, kernocraft.com. And also there is a 100 pound Kerno Craft voucher also to be given away at the end of this 12 hour broadcast. The link is going to come up any moment I now, I did Louise? post, I think I was a bit eager with the oh, link. Oh, you did, yes. I'm not Sorry. sure I gave people a chance to come back from the merch okay, form, so... so I'm going to post it again. So is that just the one hundred pound voucher? Was there? Uh, they're all on the one form. So the top prize is a hundred pound um, voucher, and then right. it will be, I think, eleven 
prizes of £20 vouchers. Super. So that's just the one form to win the Kunocraft voucher. One person tonight. One form for, yeah, for all, all 12 prizes. Okay, so mm -hmm. one person will win a £100 voucher tonight, but you can still enter until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning and you can win one of 11 £20 vouchers. And this code's going to be shared, this, this, um, this, Link is going to be shared all day. Yes. yes. So, so all, we'll keep so, reminding yeah, you. Yeah. Exactly. So all the links to all the daily, the whole day um, competitions will be put up onto the chat all day. So we'll come on because not everyone's going to be watching all day. There's going to be people coming on and going, well, you know what I mean, basically so forth. So that's those few. We've also got, I'll say it all now because we've got a little bit of time before we actually start because there's lots and lots of things to tell you. We have got also... Um, H.S. Walsh, H.S. Walsh, of, of kind of, kind of, kind of, very kindly given me uh, four £50 vouchers, okay? So this is a voucher, and you can win, this is, this is just a copy of the one they sent through. So yeah, H.S. Walsh, you can win one of four £50 vouchers to be uh, won upon their website. I keep going in and out of focus on this camera, don't I? Um, so thank you very much to HS Walsh for that. Kuno Craft done, your star, what a night, Irene. Um, uh, got it, do you want us to keep checking the box that we want to receive the emails or can we skip yes. it after? We, you have um, to do it on every single competition, yeah, please. Yeah, because they'll be slightly different depending on who has kindly um, provided the prize. Yes, yeah. so mm -hmm. yes, you do have, I think the box is a requirement. You have to tick yes or no. Um, so please, if you do wish to have, an, have um, emails from myself um, or from the company, from the competition person that you're entering, tick yes or please tick no. But you must do it every single time just so we know. But simple little click the yeah, somebody has said, sorry, I interrupted no, you. No, somebody that's fine, said go thank on. you to the suppliers. And yeah, we are so, so grateful to all of our suppliers, to yes. um, Durston, Kernocraft, Walsh um, at the bench. And of course. Um, Otto Fry, uh, GRS, uh, Guest Wine, and I've forgotten somebody. New Concepts. New Concepts, yeah. And Steve Satter. And Steve, yeah, Steve. Who oh. We've had a couple of extra items which aren't on the schedule of giveaways because the um the okay. new concepts so it was Ooh. finalized yesterday it was finalized yesterday yeah so we need to work out when we're gonna well i'll be using the, the saw throughout the day so at the time we can be people yeah just that. let me yeah. know and and yeah and stephen sat out who a lot of um you in the chat will, will know um has donated a handmade ergonomic saw cool excellent yeah. so, so we we'll should be raffling be... that as well in addition to the um schedule of giveaways that we've already got mm -hmm. so absolutely brilliant i uh, this was this one on his back going Ha, 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 ha. Are you laughing? He's laughing. Oh, he's laughing. He's laughing. <laughs> what is that? That's that one. Then I'm not quite sure what this one is. It's a fox. It's a cat. It's a, oh, it's a fox. It's a cat, okay. it's a cat or a fox doing something laughing. <laughs> So yeah, all the yeah we we approached all these suppliers um, and this is what they have very kindly done, um, given us. I think we worked it out over five thousand pounds worth of equipment we shall be giving away. So thank you to all our suppliers for that. Really do appreciate it. What else have we got to go in today? I got um, it's just so much. Oh, we just got we just got so so much to talk about. Mm. And we're trying to just get it all over and done with to now in the first hour so then we can concentrate then on what we're going to be doing um, throughout the day. We're going to be doing lots of things and giveaways as the day progresses and also the discount vouchers. So again, we've got lots of discount vouchers. Yeah. Is everybody happy with the, the process for um, entering the competitions? Has anybody got any questions or anything they're not clear about? Um, I've already forgotten which ones I entered and which I didn't. Caroline, it doesn't matter. If you make a mistake, it doesn't matter because we'll simply... If you enter simply, twice, yeah, yeah, If you accidentally not, enter, we'll just yeah, filter it's them It's if you... People have entered, like last year people entered. I think there was one lady who entered 30, 40 times and that's a kind of obvious attempt at cheating. So, yeah, unfortunately, I think so. she got disqualified. Because <laughs> it's not fair on other people, is it? It's and, not. And above all, we have to be fair. No, mm. you can't do that. You can't do that. Um, I mentioned about the HS Walsh vouchers. Ladies just asked, some just asked, have you put the link up to the HS Walsh, oh, Walsh vouchers? Um, I don't do know, that. I didn't see it. It's it, quite easy to do entry, I may have done it. Yeah, it is easy and I, and I forget myself, 100% forget which ones yeah. I entered as well. But you know what, once or twice, yeah, but if 
consistent mm. all the consistent time consistent naughtiness is obvious isn't it yeah mm. and, and they yeah will, they deliberate will be and consistent is, is obvious they'll be taken down yeah Yes, mm. exactly. Make a list of what you've entered. Even, yeah, that's uh, a there good go, idea. See. Yeah, just a little Fair. pen and paper. And I suggest you do get a pen and paper, actually, because... All right, it... sir. <laughs> <laughs> and I do suggest you get your pen and paper. <laughs> Normal wide margins. Uh, uh, yeah. A lined notebook. <laughs> because we're going to be mentioning things and we're going to be throwing discount codes at you as well. They'll be in the chat, but also it'd be good to write down and perhaps I'll put them down on this oh, side of the board yeah. as we go. That's all four done. Cool, cool, cool. I have my notebook at the ready. See, Romy, see, well, well see, done. there are some organized. organized people. There we go. Antonia, pen and paper for all the tips. Yes, there's going to be lots and lots. I am sure as the day goes on, I think my foot keeps slipping off my chair, I will be making mistakes. And I'm, and I, yes, this, this is going to be live. It's not edited. What you see is what you get. If I'm making a mistake or if I slip, I can't take it out and these things sort of happen. So expect the errors in things that happen. And, and I'm sure there's gonna be another one, keep it up, thank you Mary, keep it up, keep it up, uh, thank you. And there's gonna be lots of people saying, but Andrew, you don't have to do it that way, or I don't do it that way. So what I'm gonna be showing you throughout the whole day is not necessarily the only way of doing things, it's just my take on things. Um, it may not be the way that you do it, or so-and-so -so does it, or so-and-so -so does it a better way. That's fine, there is no right or wrong way of doing what we're doing. It's just basically what you feel is right for you. If you see a way that I'm showing you that you haven't done or you haven't seen before, but you do it another way, try the way I do it. It may work out easier for you, it may not. So I am not gonna be saying this is the only way to do it and you must do it my way, because at the end of the day, if you do it and you do it right and you get the results, that's fine. But if we can help you in some way to streamline what you're gonna be doing, to streamline the process and everything, make things faster, quicker, more accurate, more professional results, but then that's exactly the whole idea of what we're doing. And do you know what? It's, it's exactly, Paul. Our, uh, uh, one of our skills is learning how to repair a mistake. And exactly. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, they're not necessarily mistakes. They are simple learning opportunities as well. We're going to be doing some flush setting. Um, if you happen to slip over a nice bit of metal, it's, it's, it's not a mistake. It's, it's something that you can then work out how did that happen? How can I correct it? What can I do to stop that happening again? And can I put it right with what I've done? And that's the whole idea. Jacqueline, thank you very much indeed. With the big thumbs. So again, we're raising money for Cancer Research UK. In the chat, chat box we are simply just asking for people for donations really do appreciate it every single penny that comes in on the chat box and everywhere else for, to do with this live stream is going to be going towards cancer research thank you all very much um hi there is a dollar sign in the bottom of the corner exactly just down below down here in the chat box dollar sign click on it select an emoji select an amount you want to pl not pledge but donate to the cancer research and that would be absolutely brilliant. And I'll act out the little emojis that come up on the screen. How are we doing, Louise? We're doing okay. We've got about a half an hour. Um, oh, somebody wants the link to the rolling wheel. Yeah, I'm going to pop these links on again. Bear in mind, um, some of the links Some of the links will be repeated throughout the day. Yeah. So just try and keep an eye on what you've already entered. Just um, make a note. Yeah, make a note would be really handy. Um, so yes, that's fine. So we're going to be doing um, a flush setting masterclass yep. in um, just under half an hour's time uh, for two hours. And we're going to be finishing that with a flush setting Q&A, aren't we? We are. Yeah. Um, and during that time, we're going to be giving you uh, the opportunity of winning um, a Bursch Burr setting kit. Uh, with £55 and also a Velorb beading tool set as well for th worth £15. These have been very kindly donated by Otto Fry. When we start the, um, the masterclass or the, the techniques or the projects, you're going to get a whole load of links because then you've got time then to click on those links to go through to perhaps enter the competition or whatever you want to do. All right, so good job, good job. Thank you very much. And what was the other one? But the other one was Yippee, wasn't it? Yippee! I mean, the other one was Yippee, thank you very much. Um, so that's the idea. So is everybody okay with these competitions? I'd like yeah. to know. Everybody okay with this? 
Super, super, super. Shall we, we've got another one for, did we do Kerner Craft? Is that one out there? Good luck for today. Thank That's... you, Mari. Thank you so much indeed. Do appreciate it. So all the links are going to be coming out. If at any time, <laughs> <What's that? laughs> what was that? We'll go back. Oh, that was quite a funny one. <laughs> What's that? You are amazing. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. What was that? A big thumbs up. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Larry. Do appreciate it. And then... Oh, that's a cutie one. Thank oh, you, Monarchy. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah, so thank you everybody who's here. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank that's you, Mary. Yeah. Did you get an email to confirm any competition? <clears throat> I think last year some people did, some people didn't. I think we turned off the emails because you had to have a Google account, was it? That reason why we took it off? I'm not I quite sure. I think if you're signed into Google, you do. If you're signed into, if you're not signed into Google, you don't. Might. I think that might be the case. But as long as you get um, a confirmation page um, when you submit the, the form, as long as you get a confirmation page, it should come up to say your response has been recorded, then you're good. Cool, excellent. Uh, a few more things coming up in the chat there. Um, how do you donate? Pretty Wild Jewelry, down below, down there, in the, just below the chat box, there's a little dollar sign. Click on that, donate an amount. Put down an emoji if you want to, and um, I can act that out for you. Click on the dollar sign below where you type exactly. Mark, you will be so overwhelmed. You guys are great. Thank you very much. Do appreciate it. Thank you, Lillian. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, there was something else a bit further back up there, but now we've gone past it. There's been so many of you coming. I can't remember what it was now. Uh, coffee, check. Notebook, check. Well done, Dana. Thank you so much indeed. I haven't got my coffee yet. I'm on. It's a bit of like an not an energy drink, but like a, a bit of a healthy drink. Um, Can I just give you guys some reassurance? Amco, you said you didn't get an email. So I've just done a little test and I've, I've run a search and you are on, you are on the, the competition database. So if you're not getting the email, you're definitely still going into the, cool. the draw. Excellent. So there's Thank no you. worries there at all. all right. But I knew that was, but yeah, just to put, put all your minds at ease. Super, super. Um, someone asked about lockdown. We have virtually come out of, uh, we have, <laughs> <laughs> we have virtually come out of um, fire break, they called it, haven't they? We've been, yeah. um, uh, we've had to close the shop for two weeks. Um, all the shops, non-essential shops have been shut for two weeks. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Deb, for all of these donations coming in. Really, really do appreciate it. I think we've raised £476 already. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous amount of money coming in. Um, lots of coffee. I'm going to get her coffee in a minute, I hope. Well, shall um, I, shall I, shall in a bit, shall in a bit I later. coffee? Anyway, I, I may need you, Louise. I may need you a minute. I may need you. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we just came out of lockdown. Uh, uh, on Monday and our shop then will be opening back up but I know because we're in Wales we're in that little part of the of, of the United Kingdom that's just to the side we're in Wales that's us but the rest of the country um, uh, England uh, are going to be uh, in fact they're on national lockdown already aren't they they were, Thursday they went into mm, national yes, lockdown yes. so all non-essential shops um, have had to shut in England uh, which means they are shut now until the 2nd of December, I do believe. Um, here in Wales, we're going to be coming out of our little bit of fire break on Monday. So we're reopening the shop. Thank you, Pretty Wild Jewelry. And thank you, Emily. Thank you. I, we recognise all these, all these names. Thank you so much, Claire. Thank you for the money. Over £511 now. And we've only been going 40 minutes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. All the money is going to Cancer Research. Louise and I are doing this because we're mad. We're not having anything out of this. You're amazing. Thank you, Trevor. I do appreciate it. What is that? What? What's this? What's this one with the maracas? I haven't seen that one before. That's a that's a new one. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> and Trevor, thank you. What's this? You are amazing. It's good. I've got my running daps on today, haven't I? Uh, <laughs> in Ireland, you're in full lockdown for six weeks. Oh my gosh. I've really enjoyed my two weeks lockdown. It's flown by. Alison, thank you very much. What's this one? This one is, is a Go, go. You get the general just the idea. This is how today is going to be going on. Oh, that's a nice little one. What's that one? Like a, what's that? Holding, holding a cup. Cute, cute. 
And coffee, yeah, we're gonna get a coffee any moment in the next 20 minutes, we're gonna be getting a coffee. Thank you everybody, Martin, thank you so much. Sandra, your star, thank you very much for the coffee. I will have a coffee in a minute. Okay, Scotland right. as well. Yes, Louise, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, we've, we've just done a test on people who are signed in, people who are not signed in to Google, and both, both scenarios are working fine. So yeah, I won't check any more okay. because I can't check everybody's, but yeah, they are definitely working. As long as you're hitting submit, it's going into the database, so it's all good. Cool, okay. excellent, super, super, super. Fabulous. Sound absolutely gorgeous. Um, so we've got another 20 minutes before we start our first little bit of a masterclass. That's starting at 10 a.m. Do you know what we, we haven't done yet? So have to in. No, go on. We haven't released any discount codes. Right. We've oh, done the oh. competitions. That we've, the ones that are going to run all day are out there, which yep. I'll keep putting the links up to. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got our big discounts. Cool. Lee, thank you very much for that. Mark, oh my gosh, £25. Thank you, Mark. Really do appreciate it. Um, I'm a monster. I'm a monster. I like that one, sister. Like that one. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> that's, that's a cool one. I like that. Um, <laughs> um, uh, if you give away two C130s, have to apply twice. No, yeah. because we're going to select from the one entry form. So, yeah. So out of that one entry form, you will have a chance of winning. So we'll pull two from the one form. Yeah, we yeah. will. Yeah, exactly. We we will pull two and. Competition winners from that one form. Don't have to enter twice. Thank you, Fran, number one fan. Oh, thank you. No, it wasn't Fran, it was Catherine. Thank you, Catherine, number one fan. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's gonna be a long day. Um, may have a decaf coffee. I don't have any decaf coffee, actually. You don't really no. know what it is, do you? It's no, you, you, you've, got, you've got to have, you've got to have caffeine. <laughs> okay, the rest um, of today, we're also going to be mentioning some discount codes. Um, there's lots of you out there who have been after a discount codes, um, and we've got them. We've got discount codes for uh, Guess Wine that will be available until the end of the year. We've got discount codes. Ah. Not oh, yet. Oh, Guess, oh, yeah, of course, Guess, yeah, 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 end of the year, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And you have all the information in front of you as well. I do, yeah. <laughs> We're going to be having discount codes, guess wine, until the end of the year. Otto Fry, until the end of the year. Uh, you won't necessarily have a discount code off Walsh, but that'll be 10%, but I'll talk you through that later on. Elizabeth, £10, thank you very much indeed, do appreciate it. Um, we'll be having a discount code from uh, Pickup Media, who do the gem light box that we're going to be demonstrating um, a lot later on this evening, around about eight o'clock, I do believe, is it? Let me look at my list down gem there. Gem light box uh, is six thirty this afternoon, this evening. Yeah. There's going to be a discount code for gem light box, and I must say, the main discount code that we have got um, that is going to be available from today until the fourteenth of November is Durstam. Can I just add? I will post all of these links, uh, all of these discount codes, sorry, on the At The Bench Facebook page tomorrow. So don't feel like you have to, yeah. to rush. And, yeah. Yeah. and we've also got slides that we're going to be bringing onto the screen as well, as in when we mention it, and it tells you what code you've got to put in to get the discount. And those are going to be coming up on the screen as well. Valentina, 999, thank you very much. I do, I have missed my weights this morning. I haven't done my weights this morning. So thank you, Trish, for that. Uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, Kitty, thank you very much indeed. I don't get any work done, am I? Should we, should we send out some discount codes? Sorry, Louise, I'm, I'm getting carried away. No, no. <laughs> I'm getting told off. Okay, um, we have got yes, a discount Julian, code. Julian, thank you, Matthew Durst, Matthew Durst done. Yeah, so, so yeah. So, very, so, very generous. So we, we've teamed up with Matthew. Um, we, we do support Matthew. Uh, can you also post the codes to Instagram or on the website for those of us not on Facebook? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, you will have to bear with us with some of this now because um, a caffeine Colombian preferred uh, copy Luac avoided. Mm, good job, good job. Well, I, I get, I get. So, so Louise is there. Do you have what sort? You have there, Louise. I have a, a discount code for Durstan. Do you? Mm. <laughs> You've also got a slide as well to go on the screen as well. You're on the slide, Jim. As, as well as. So we are going to be putting onto the screen a discount code slide um, that tells you how much discount and what the code is. The important thing is the code. And Louise is going to drag that across. In any moment now, I'm going to disappear and a code is going to come up on the screen. Oh, oh you've done it already. Okay. <laughs> is that not supposed to? Yeah, yeah. So basically, 
Discount codes, that is the sort of screen that's gonna come up. Durstam, 25% off everything at Durstam. You have to put in the code AUTUMN25. Make sure they've got the spelling right, A-U-T-U-M-N-25. There is the link to the website. Put that code in, in the um, checkout and your basket will be discounted by 25%. It will be sent out to anywhere in the whole wide world. Obviously you've got to pay for shipping, um, but yeah, 25% off Durston products for the next week. Fab. Am I going to come back on screen now? Uh, oh yeah, all right. <laughs> Better hard than we. <laughs> Oh, well, what's that? No, right. There you yeah, are. I'm back. You're back. <laughs> so that is the general gist of the idea. Does that make sense? Can yeah. I say? Yes. We have another discount. Huh? Sorry. We, we have another disc. We have another disc. Well, did you, you, you did you did you tell them about them all? I said who was Jen? Who was Jen donating? Who was who was doing discount codes? Shall I put the other discount codes out? Okay, so yeah, we're going to put some more discount codes up now. We're just going to put them on the screen one after the other. They will be repeated. They'll be in the um, chat box as well. And I know we've got just under 15 minutes left before we start, but we'll get all these out of the way. Um, so you've got them there and then. Lots of discount codes. Discount codes from us at the bench. You can win oh, yeah. 50. Oh, I forgot about that one. 50%, about 50, <laughs> thanks, 50 <laughs> off at the bench membership. We've got discount code Guess Wine, discount code Otto Fry, um, discount code from Durston, which you just saw. So, Louise, just press those buttons, get the slides on the screen, and as you do that, press your links as well, and we will see what the codes are. So, 5% off everything at Otto Fry. Use ATB5. That is going to be um, on the screen coming up now. It is for your Durston bundles are already discounted. Uh, so, discount codes does not apply to these deals as it should be. We do not want to paste it. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Just remembered I won your £20 Kuno Craft and forgot to use it, lol. Will it be too late to use now? Um, I don't know. Oh, I think you'd have to approach them and... Yeah, contact Kuno Craft themselves, um, email them and just make sure that you still can use that discount code because £20 is, is a nice amount of money. So 25% off oh, Durston. there's no code, is there, for Walsh? Okay, so okay, so there is no code for Walsh. Sorry, I've just, I've just, um, yeah, sorry, yeah, that was my error. There is no, yeah. So with Walsh, Walsh um, are doing something slightly different. What you have to do with Walsh is sign up for Walsh's newsletter on their website. You then will get a newsletter with a code, a ten percent code that is good throughout the month of November. So that is how they are doing this. Slightly different, and I do apologize for that. But HS Walsh, go on to hswalsh.com, sign up for their newsletter. You then will get a 10% code. Why we couldn't have that code? I don't know. But there we go. They want you to sign up for their newsletter. You can always remove yourself from their newsletter once you've received it. But that's the way that Walsh are doing it. So I hope that makes sense. So we've got 5% off Otto Fry, 5% off Guess Wine. 50% uh, off at the bench memberships, 10% off Walsh, and also you have the main discount code for today, which is 25% off um, Matthew Durston, Durston Tools, 25% off anything on their site. It doesn't apply to bundles on the site that are already been discounted. How does that sound? Fabulous. Is that about it, Louise? If I'm a member, can I win a year membership, Charles? Yes, you can. Yep. Um, yes, you can. Basically, we would just add a year onto your existing membership free of charge, so yes. you'd skip paying for a year. Um, if if you're a member, if you're a current member paying yearly, you get your renewals at half price anyway. Yes. So you you can't take advantage of the half, half price, price offer. That's for new members only because you get half price regardless. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. If you're a yearly paying um, member. Yes. Will Kerner Craft and JS Walsh deliver to the US? I just Walsh. Yes, they will. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Just bought a tube cutter from Durston, 25 cent. Absolutely fabulous. See, 25% is, is, is a heck of a discount. 
Um, and I think nobody else is, is able to offer you 25% off everything on the Walsh, or Walsh, <laughs> on the Durston <laughs> website. Can I just yes. um, interject as well? 11.30, yeah. we're going to be unveiling a new product. Yes, we are. As well, which, from Durston, which um, we have a discount code for 40% off. off. So you don't want to miss 11.30 when we release that code. Should I actually show? Because I don't want people to go and buy it at oh. 25%. Yeah. yeah, perhaps you better spoil the surprise. That's yeah. Okay, that's I'm, go point. I'm going to show you it. Don't show them, just tell them. But then they'll go and look no. for it. So. Right. so what I'm going to be doing, um, let me show you something. i got to find it. It's in that box down there. Do you want me there. to get it for you? No, 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 no. It's okay, because the boxes are balanced very precariously. So we have got... This particular, if I show you, don't buy this tool just yet. Okay, don't buy this tool. It's as, oh gosh, it's as simple as that. Don't buy this tool. Let me bring the other close up camera. If I show you this tool, don't go onto the Durston website and buy it because you will get a 40% discount code on this. If I show you this, ready? This is what we've been showing you on social. Okay, so I'm gonna, quickly gonna show you. You ready for this? Yes, the super magic. Yeah, the super magic automatic jewelry maker, John. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> it is. It's amazing. It's that. Okay. Do you want a drum roll? I've just done it. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I can't see it. It's on the script there. Oh, you, you just. Oh, okay. All right. So you've seen it. Don't go and buy it. Wait. Wait. We have a special discount code for you to buy this at 40% off. All right, I'm going to put this back in my box so I know what's what. Yeah, nuts and bolts. Don't buy the nuts and bolts just yet. Alex is asking what's the difference between subscribing and being a member of At The Bench. Subscribing is... Is being a member, yeah. Yeah. So subscribing Half is being a member. Kate. Kate's just... Okay, oh, do you, oh, want, do you want to talk yes. about Kate? Okay, yeah. I'll pass it over to, uh, to you. Uh, yeah, you can. You, yeah, no, can. no I, I don't know much about it you, because you've been dealing with it with Kate. I Thank you, just Kate. need to remind myself. Um, Kate is doing a um, charity make a thon. Um, I'm so sorry, I wasn't expecting sorry, you to. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can just. Uh, I, let me okay, guess, let, okay. let me write, let All me right, get let the information have, in front have of me. Have a drink, mate. So, Kate. And then I can. Um, Kate's a fantastic supporter of, of At The Bench, a member of At The Bench as well. Um, right, I've got it, sorry. Right. Ah, okay. Right. Yeah, Kate is um, um, a fantastic supporter, a lovely lady, um, calls herself a student, but she's actually very talented. And next Saturday, um, Friday the third. Friday the 13th, sorry, next, this Friday. This Friday, Where are we We've been in lockdown for two weeks, I have no idea mm. what the... Um, Yes, so, so this Friday coming, Kate is doing a, um, a charity make-a-thon. So she's going to be making... Um, um, Kate, help me out, what are you making? <laughs> <laughs> um, making... Yeah, what are you making, Kate? <laughs> From start to finish. And anyway, it would be fantastic if um, we could show her some support and all join in. Yes, um, yeah. we also need to have something like a link or something on the screen from Kate as well. Yeah, or Kate, can... or Kate, if you can, if you can message message Louise uh, with some information regarding the link that, that people can go and, and and view and support the charity as well that you you're doing with that, that'd be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's an instructional sort of tutoring um, event. It's more anybody can watch, anybody can just anybody who's interested in any sort of creative or design process would find it interesting. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, and she's raising money for so Kate uh, for Mind, which for mind. is a, um, a massively important charity as well. Mm. Brilliant, and also um, Prosecco and Rubies. Yeah, so Prosecco and Rubies on Facebook. So perhaps yeah, put a you... post to that. Perhaps you can just grab that, and we'll just put that into the chat. Yeah. And then, actually, if Uta, I... Thank you very much. You're amazing. You're amazing. Kate, can you send me a link to the... to yep. the, um, the event? Yes, please. And if you can do handy. that first, that'd and be fantastic. That would fantastic. be great. And then, but there's Kate's page. Anyway, it's Prosecco and Rubies, and she's doing the make on on Friday the 13th. Super. So yeah. We're actually going to be watching that as well, aren't we? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. No, yeah. no pressure, mm -hmm. Kate. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. We're watching that. We'll watch that. Super. All right. So we've got five minutes to go. 
Is it pink gin? No, it isn't. I it's a bit early, wouldn't it? Oh, a bit too early. Louise, thank you, Louise, for 50. What's this? A magic carpet? I've never seen the magic carpet one. I like that one. That's way, way, way. And the whoosh, whoosh, magic carpet one. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you very much. There is no GRS discount code. What we are giving away is um, a Benchmate. QC Encore. I have to look check my list, but that's going to be later on in the in the afternoon. That's scheduled. Two thirty. Two o'clock. For two o'clock, yeah, we're going to be starting the raffle for the GRS Benchmate Encore Q. CX Stone Setters package. Yes, and that'll That's be an exciting one. Yes, so no, there is no. Oh, sorry, Katie's making a sea glass pendant. I got it completely wrong. Yeah, <laughs> but it's for Mind for the charity Mind, which if you're um, outside of the UK, it's um, a mental health support charity. charity. Mm. Super. Excellent. Yeah, with the super, super, super. Um, how much does it cost to subscribe? Alex, go to atthebench.com forward slash subscribe. Um, if you want to post a link up to that in a moment. So what's going to happen at 10 o'clock, we're going to bring a slide into place. We're just going to try and set the bench up. Louise is going to be pushing some buttons. There's going to be lots of links coming up in the chat. You can then go and select which one you want to look at if you haven't entered a competition just yet. And we've got a brand new competition coming on at 10 o'clock that enables you to enter to a chance of winning a whole lot of setting birds, some beading tools as well, courtesy of Otto Fry. Okay, we have four minutes before we start the flush setting masterclass. And that's what we do. Yes, we do. Rachel, thank you very much for the ten pound. Tried to donate, but doesn't seem to post. Tried a couple of times. Tech struggles. Carolyn, mm -hmm. I do apologise for that. I'm not quite sure what that is. <laughs> Mandy, Mandy. <laughs> People can't see me. Wonder what I'm doing. <laughs> Wonder what I'm doing in the background. Super, 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 absolutely amazing. I need that. to go to the shop. Can I come back to this later and still join in the competition? Yes, you absolutely can. Yeah. Um, maybe wait until, because in just a few minutes, I'm going to be releasing the um, the forms to enter the competition to win the Bush setting burr kit, the Velorb bead tool set um, from Otto Fry. So that's going to be 10 o'clock when Andrew starts the flush setting demonstration. And how long will they have to enter that? That's going to be running for two, two hours, hours until midday throughout the course of the demonstration. demonstration. Obviously, everything else that we've already posted will be reiterated. And yeah, but can we please request that when you're, Andrew's doing his masterclass, can we maybe reserve our questions for the end? Because there will be a window of opportunity at so what? half 11. Oh, it's not two hours then, is it? Yeah, it's about half eleven. Okay, so it? yeah, half eleven. Um... Yeah, half eleven. No, yeah. eleven o'clock. Flush setting Q and A. So it's an hour. Oh, flush setting Q and A. Had... No, 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 no. It's an hour. I thought you. Oh, had... I, thought I thought I had two hours. hours. Oh my gosh! Oh, I, I thought I had okay, two yeah. hours. Yeah. You... Okay, <laughs> yeah. So it's an hour. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Yeah, that's not a good start, is it? So yeah, it's an hour. <laughs> an hour. So at eleven, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. We're going to have a half an hour Q and A um, on the masterclass. So if we can keep our questions. Yeah. Until then, that would be absolutely great. But if there are any questions actually on what I'm doing, you can ask. For instance, if my hand gets in the way or you don't quite understand what I'm explaining at the time and the question applies to what I'm doing there and then, you can ask. But if it's a general question like, well, what happens if I do this, do this or what's the best way to do that? Save those sort of questions towards the end where then we can go through and, and um, and just have a check and answer the questions then. Yeah, yeah, but I won't. I won't sort of start reading them until the eleven o'clock mark. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, it's just gonna be too much. Yeah, it's, um, it gets very yeah. hard to keep track of what's happening. In okay. The chat, so perhaps, yeah. perhaps I can keep a check on the chat as well, and if I see anything that's relevant yeah. to what I'm doing as well, is that okay? Yeah, that's. Fine. I don't mean to, to steal your thunder when it no, comes. No, no, you steal away. <laughs> <This is fine. laughs> yeah. So we've got we've got two minutes now before we're starting. Um, um, are you doing beading today? We are going to be using the beading tools. We're just simply going to be raising some grains and then we're going to be using uh, the beading tools. So we're not going to do an awful lot with beading. It's purely to do with flush setting, although you can turn your flush setting into something with a decoration with the be uh, beads as well. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Zelly, thank you very much. Really do appreciate all the money that's coming in. Absolutely blown away with how much money we've raised in the first hour. First time catching you, how exciting. This is way better than US election coverage. It's been quite interesting, this election coverage of the US, isn't it? It's been really 
interesting. Wow. En it's been entertaining, it's been isn't it? So it has been entertaining. <laughs> it's been it's en just... here in the UK. It's really entertaining because nothing like that. It's unbelievable, really, really, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, mm. absolutely brilliant. But we better brilliant. not stop talking no. politics. We won't. No. <laughs> uh, where do you buy your silver solder bars? Um, I don't buy them in bars. I buy solder strips. Uh, you can buy it easy, medium, and hard. You can buy it from most of the tool suppliers, most of the bullion dealers. How do I pay after I pledge? I really have no idea. Fifty dollars, Judy. Oh, thank Judy, you thank very you. much. I'm flying away on my magic. There's not magic carpet. It's a rocket. I got a rocket between my legs. Look at that. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I have no words. so I think what we're going to do now, we're going to bring on a slide, uh, then we're going to prepare the bench. I'm going to grab myself a cup of coffee and uh, I'm going to turn the mics off for literally about two minutes. Don't go away. Louise then will post up some links to the competitions, what we've had uh, between now and nine o'clock, and also for the competition that's going to be coming up in the giveaway. Click on that, enter in it, in, in a few minutes' time, rejoin us, ready to do the flush setting masterclass. See you in two minutes.
Are we back? Okay, we should be back. We should be back. I've got this in front of me at the moment. This is going to be for the close-up for what we're going to be doing now, which is going to be the flush setting. As I say, this is not the only way to do it. There's lots of other ways that we're going to be able to flush set. And we're going to be using some tools and equipment within this that I think are really sort of really vitally important. One of the best things that you could possibly use before we start, let's just make sure that everybody can hear us and we're all hunky-dory and good to go. Are we good to go, Louise? Uh, looks oh. See us. Uh, welcome back. Good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, fat filming, uh, timing, just getting the puppies to sleep. Good, good. I got my coffee, so that's good. Louise has got her coffee as well. Had to run down and get the milk from the fridge. And you've got a gold coin. Or oh, best not, it's, cho it's chocolate and it'll affect oh, my throat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <I'm lucky. laughs> All right. Um, so I don't don't agree with um, drinking um, and eating at the bench, so to speak. But I'm going to be stuck here for 12 hours, and I've got to have something. Frank, 450 Danish Corona, I believe not Corona, Corona. Thank you very much, and do appreciate for that. Um, I'm only showing a screen. 12 hour autumn since I've come back from. Uh, are we on a break, or have I done something wrong? No, you're simply just on a break. We just put all this stuff on the bench here. So the best thing that I can possibly suggest you do is, is some magnification. I think, <coughs> <laughs> see what happens when, when, you, when you take a bit of chocolate? <laughs> so the best thing that I could possibly, um, a bit of advice is, is magnification because the way I see it is that if, if, if you have got magnification upon a piece and you make your setting or anything look good under magnification, when people see it in real life without magnification, they're actually going to be blown away. So definitely magnification. This is um, an Optivisor. Uh, who are they? Optivision. I can't remember the name now. I put my glasses on because I'm blind as a bat. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, yes. Uh, Donna, Donagan Optical, okay. Um, I would always recommend one of these. Everybody has their own preferences. I love these because they just simply just sit on the top of my head like that and it stays on basically all day. Uh, when I'm working, can look a bit silly walking around the house with one of these on, wouldn't I? So that's the idea. All right, let me just, just check. This camera is nice and image. We don't seem to have anything on that camera. Hang on a second, knock this off. Can I just interrupt you? Yes. Is the guest wine code um, that can't be used in Guess Wine Canada, can it? It's um, it was it was Guess Wine Japan. I don't. Th oh, Guess Wine Canada. You're right. Yeah, it can't sorry. be Guess Wine Canada. Yeah, I don't know why that was the case, but it's not available. No. And just another quick question. Um, Bridget is asking if getting discount from USA companies, we still have to pay tax. So does this make it worthwhile? If getting discount from US companies, mm -hmm. if you're in the US. You just get a discount off. That's what, what, what Bridget means. We still have to pay. Where are you based, Bridget? Are you US or UK or? or yeah, if, if you're in the UK and you buy from the US companies, yes, you will still have to pay tax and import duties, most probably. Mm. Yeah. But it's still going to be cheaper, isn't it? Yeah, but if you get five percent discount, but if yeah. if there's stuff that you can buy in this country, buy it in this country. But if you can buy it at five percent discount. In America, it's usually cheaper Which in America. In the, in the UK. Yeah, in so UK, yeah. I would just weigh up. I would perhaps mm. go, say, on Walsh um, and sign up for their newsletter. You'll get 10% discount. That may be better for you if you think about it that way. Boss. Thank you, Hannah. Boss. That's me, boss. That's what I believe anyway. Uh, what's the magnification on the visor? This is a number four. Um, I always use number four or number five. I find that... What's that, Louise? Nothing. What, what? I don't have a watch. No, I'm Sorry? just saying. You've only got an hour. Oh, I've got an hour. Oh, right. yeah, I got, yeah. okay. I got to get on with it. Okay. Finish, finish answer, answer the question. Okay. Yeah. So um, I find that a number four or a number five is brilliant because I can work by here and I've got this nice distance that I've got in front of me. Higher magnification, you've really got to go so, so close. Right. All right, then. Hmm. Okay. Cup of coffee done. Let's get on with it. So um, again, um, 
I would always try and use something like a Benchmade system. You can get away if you're doing flush setting on rings and so forth with holding it in um, a ring clamp. Uh, like this here. That's a bit on the close side. Let's just knock that back a bit. There we go. Um, a ring clamp like this, but if you can, um, I always try and use um, a Benchmate system, something like this. You've got a chance of winning one of these. The competition is going to go up for one of these a little bit later on um, for a Benchmate system, and I find it absolutely brilliant. The uh, Let's just alter this. So I got a few attachments for the Benchmate. I got something like this here. This is uh, let's come on to that one there. This is a little holder for me for today to hold this into position. And we're going to be doing some flush setting. Let's see how close we can get on this camera. Let's get this camera in. There we go. How's that? So that's what we're going to be looking at there. Super duper. How's that? So this is a, um, a plate that's around about 15 millimeters uh, square. And this is what we're going to be just doing some really simple flush setting. I've got some, I don't know why, I've chosen some really, really, really small, small stones. These are literally two and a half millimeter. Why I didn't get any bigger stones, I really don't know. So these are two and a half millimeter stones. Let's try and knock down that um, exposure because that really is quite bright. There we go. So we've got two and a half millimeter stones we're going to be setting into this plate. And then also I've got um, a couple of simple little um, like wedding bands as well. We're going to be setting some stones into the wedding bands because setting stones into a curved surface is slightly different. Um, and the reason being, I will quickly explain um, on the board now before I go any further. Um, can, we, can you all see this now? You should just be able to. Okay, flat surface, stone, no worries. Yeah, curved surface like this, Flat stone, you've really got to set the stone a lot, lot lower because you've got to allow for the curvature. But we're going to come to that a little bit later. Okay, I've got some protective um, plastic on top of this. Let's just remove this. Go try and find the center of my plate. I can do that using a pair of dividers. Um, let's just get this approximately right. So it's going to be a bit difficult because I've got the pins in place. So let's just simply put in roughly where we're going to be looking at. Okay, so can we see that? That's looking good. We're going to get a drill. So we're going to be using two and a half millimeter stones. Um, the idea is you would only use a quite a small drill to start off with. If you use a large drill straight away and you haven't got it exactly where you need to have it and it's slightly to one side, if you've got a big drill and you've drilled, say, a two millimeter hole for a two and a half millimeter stone you don't have much room to move that hole back to where you want it so i would always try and go with a thickness of the metal sheet yeah so i've got a drill this 0.9 this metal sheet here is i think it's one and a half millimeters thick yes louise uh, can we just get some confirmation on your magnification of your op device please it was a four a number a four, four. And what thickness is the metal um, on your metal sheet, please? One and a half millimetre. One and a half mil. Okay, great. Yes. Um, is it out of focus? It keeps... Let's have a look. Let me see if I can knock off autofocus because we should be pretty much there. So we should be in focus, I think, on the plate. Okay. Um, I've got some gravers and I've lost my gravers. Here we go. I'm just going to make a little dent exactly where I want my hole to go. So there is my little dent, and that is going to help me now when it comes to drilling. I've got a 0.9 millimeter hole, a drill to drill a hole. So let's just pop that into there. We're going to get, let's go into this way. We're going to get some um, little bit of lubrication upon this, and just going to come along and drill a hole right through the center of my plate. So what I'm doing, you can see I've got my fingers in position. Um, I'm not drilling sort of freestyle. I don't have it like this and I'm sort of trying to drill. I've got my fingers always coming down onto the metal itself. And I'm not going too fast, as you can see. So I'm going on and off, on and off. He says the drill's actually got caught. There we go, cool. Okay, so that's my little hole. Simple, nice and easy like that. 
Are we in focus? I think we are in focus, aren't we? There we go, that's better. So we've got a two and a half millimeter stone. The best, the best thing that you could possibly do to make your life so, so easy when it comes to, to flush setting is to get the right size stone to match the right size burr. So in this case, we've got two and a half millimeter stone. We have got burrs that are two and a half millimeter. If we had a four millimeter stone, we'd try and get a burr that was four millimeter. And before we start, let me just quickly go on to what burrs I'm going to be using. Uh, let's have a look. Two and a half millimeter. There we can go. Can you use beeswax to lubricate the drill? You can. You can like use. Like you can with the saw, or does you, it need something special? You can. No, you can simply use some beeswax. Uh, get nice and close on there. This is a little bit of beeswax, as you can see. Um, yeah, beeswax would be just good enough. Lubrication. Some people even use spit, which I wouldn't really Ooh. recommend for lubrication on your tools. Okay, so this is what we're going to be using. We've got some burst burrs. We're going to be using some 90 degree setting burrs and also we're going to be using some straight sided setting burrs. I do love a straight sided setting burr. Some people will use a 90 degree uh, setting burr, but I do like these. Now, also what you're going to find is that they're quite fine. The, um, let's just take that off there and just get one out. How would you move the hole? How would I move if the hole? If you drilled it in the wrong place. Okay, I will come to that now, but okay. a good question. So yeah, so this is the burr I'm gonna be using. It's a, it's a straight sided setting burr, as you can see. Okay, so that's the idea. So say that hole was slightly in the wrong place. What I would do is get, and I don't think I actually planned for this. Why I didn't plan for this, I don't know. You would get, um, da -ba -da -ba. okay, so this is gonna be a little bit too big to show you, but what I would do, I would get something like a like a bud burr, something like this, not as big as this, perhaps um, a one millimeter or one and a half millimeter bud burr. I would put that into the hole, and then I just perhaps pull the burr to one side just to try and bring the hole into exactly where you need to. I wouldn't try and necessarily use a drill to put it in and then try and pull. Um, but a little bud burr or a little ball burr would be absolutely spot on for that. I'm just frantically looking around to see if I've actually got um, a little burr that I could actually demonstrate. Here we go, I've got a little ball burr here. I should be able to demonstrate. I'm not quite sure how sharp this is gonna be, but if that hole was slightly in the wrong place, I would get a ball burr, and this is a bit too small actually. Um, I would put that towards the hole and then say I needed to have the hole a little bit further over to this side, further up the screen there. I would put that towards the hole and then as I drill, I would just pull. As the drill is going round, as the motor is going round, I would actually pull that across to exactly where it needs to, then go through the metal and then you're gonna have a hole then where you need to. And that's the whole idea of not making the hole too big initially start off with a slightly smaller hole just looking if I had a, a burr there I don't have a burr to hand but you get the general gist of the idea when it comes to that no I don't okay so that is that um, I actually I haven't actually prepared very well because I should have actually brought up um, some ball burrs as well so Andrew slap on the wrist for you and the reason why then I would use a ball burr next We've got a two and a half millimeter stone. I would try and then use something like a ball burr to take it up to around about a two millimeter. A ball burr is quite aggressive. It's quite an, um, an open toothed burr. Um, why I didn't bring a ball burr, I just do not know. So what I would do, I'd be inclined to use one of these. This is a ball burr like this. And you can see the teeth are quite open compared to a burr like this. So people do use ball burrs that are the right size. I always try and use a ball burr that is slightly smaller because it's aggressive. It doesn't overheat the burr. And then I'd finish off with a two and a half mil. Do you have any, any questions, Louise, that I can yeah, just... Yeah, we're kind of up to date, um, but I can't remember who asked what... Oh, Iona, what else can be used for holding the piece if we don't have a GRS system? Okay, what you can use is some... Uh, some Thermolock or jet set. This uh, here, we've got a couple of sticks of Thermolock. 
These are available from GRS, as I said, you can get a jet set as well. You put this in the microwave or you can put it in some hot water. And we're gonna be doing this a little bit later as well. And then this becomes quite um, putty-like and you can mold it and you can put it into the end of your um, ring clamp and then push whatever you're setting into it. Let me just quickly show you if I've got that over here. Mine's in all the leads now, I don't trip over. Um, where are we going? Here we go, here. Uh, there we go. So this is the, what we've got here. And this is a bit of Thermolock that I've simply put onto um, a plate, as you can see. And from that plate, that then go, can go into my ring clamp like that and push that in just like that. And the idea is then you put this in some warm water. This area here starts to soften. Once it's soft enough, you can get whatever you want then and put it into the thermal lock. And then when it cools, it sets hard and whatever you put into it gets caught and it gets trapped. Yes, Louise. Uh, why do you drill through first before expanding the hole and is it necessary? Um, I like to drill first because if you do happen to get it in the wrong spot mm -hmm. initially, you can't move the hole where you want to. I always like to have a hole all the way through because then it enables you to clean behind the stone with an ultrasonic or a steam cleaner or keeps the stones nice and clean. Um, Ooh, a couple of people are mentioning shellac as well. Can you use shellac? You can use shellac. Yeah. That's the old style, old school of shellac. Um, yes, absolutely. Old school, old school setting. Shellac sticks. Yes, you can. All right then. Um, I really should pop downstairs and get a two millimeter ball burr because I really have forgotten it. Do you want me to go and get your burrs? You don't know where they are. You're gonna have to. I keep... know what a burr looks like. Yes, I, I know that. <laughs> keep people entertained for one minute. Talk about whatever you want. Whatever I want. Yeah, whatever you want. Louise, the, 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 it's, it's, the, the, the stage is yours for a minute. <laughs> go, Louise, okay. go. I, well, I was actually just putting your photo on, on, um, on the bench. Oh, nice. Cool. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So if anybody else... <laughs> oh, I think we're closed, aren't we? To, we don't allow member photos or... But yeah, send them Send them to me. Send me yes. photos if, you, if you've got any good screenshots of, of Andrew doing his funny... Um, acting out his funny emojis. <laughs> Um, if you if you message them to at the bench, I can I can pop them on the page. If you've got any funny ones, that would be really good. Is there more luck? Mm. Talk about your birthday. My birthday. God, I feel like ages ago now. Yeah, I had I had a lockdown birthday, so we literally just went out for a walk, came back. Um, my daughter Jazz, who some of you know from the early live streams, um, came to join us for a glass of pop in the garden, and that was it, really. And normally it would be cocktails and town, a bit of dancing <laughs> and, and seeing a lot of people, but there was none of that, but it was really lovely. So I did, I like my, like my lockdown birthday. <laughs> I had a lockdown birthday as well, didn't I? I think most people have this year, to be fair. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think my, my lockdown... Can you, re can you reuse them a lock? Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah, just keep, just keep it warm. As you can see from what I've got here, this spirit has been reused. You just simply warm it up. You put whatever you want in it. It solidifies. You want to take it out, you warm it back up, take it out, and you can simply reuse it and remodel it and push it and squeeze it into place. All right, two millimeter, two millimeter uh, ball burrs, as you can see. I do like a two millimeter ball burr. I find it's nice, um, and I can do some nice drilling with this. Let's get that down to the plate there. So that's what we're looking at. Two millimeter ball burr, as you can see. You can see the teeth. And I was just explaining the teeth are slightly um, more aggressive. You can see how open those teeth are compared to the setting and I find it removes a lot of metal fast. If you try to use this straight sided setting burr onto what we've got there now, you may find this is going to overheat because of the very fine um, teeth. When you're drawing on the whiteboard, you need to draw a little bit higher because the camera's in the way. Okay, no worries. Um, when the stone is not perfectly round or in between sizes, do you have recommendations for what size burr to use? That's a Just try and use, if, 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 the, if the stone is slightly out of round, always use obviously a burr that is the smallest of the size. So you've got, for argument's sake, I'll try and write over here. So say so you've got what looks like a round stone, but it's slightly not. 
I would always then use a burr of the narrowest diameter. So that would be the size I would use. And then what did I read the other day? Do a bit of stirring some coffee. Just, just move the burr slightly just to elongate that hole a little bit for the stone to fit in. But if you're practicing, practice on calibrated stones. So they're basically two and a half millimeters. And fingers crossed, I haven't used these stones before, so this could go totally wrong. And if it does, it's gonna go totally wrong live on air. So, uh, so can you dip it in a nice bath to set it faster? You can, yep, cold That's water. I asking. Yep. Uh, have you ever used the ball, but in reverse? I find they are less aggressive that they way. They would be, yep. Saying, Abs yeah. Absolutely. If you've got a pendant motor or a flex shaft that has reverse, you can do. And don't get me wrong, a lot of people do use ball burrs, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. As I said, there's lots of ways to do this. Two and a half millimeter. I'm not going to go all the way through the plate. I'm going to go roughly around about halfway to three quarters of the way. But the idea is I want to remove that metal. So we've got, let's get my board up there. Oh, gosh. So we've made, we've got our plate now here. Okay. Can we all see that now just up on top of the screen there? Yeah, so that's our plate. We've drilled a hole through. So that is the hole through. We've got our stone that is like this. And now what I'm going to be doing is using the ball burr. The ball burr comes along and the ball burr is nice and aggressive. Um, it's going to produce a hole that is sort of this sort of shape now, okay? And that's what we're going to be removing, removing this amount of metal. So that's going to be the ball bird that's going to be coming on next, and that's the teeth, and that's the shape then that that is going to be cutting into the metal. The stone is going to be two and a half millimeter, so that's the stone, and we're going to be using a two millimeter ball bird. All right, so that's basically what we're going to be doing. So let's crack on and do this. Let's do this roughly around about halfway through. How is that looking on the screen? Absolutely gorgeous. All right, here we go. So right onto that, you can, you can see it and you can hear a little bit aggressive. Let's just put a little bit of... Do you use anything to hold it tight like a rubber washer? Do you... I have trouble making hers hold it tight. Should I say that again? Julia's having trouble making hers hold tight. It tends to move when I apply any pressure. Do you use anything to hold it tight, like a rubber washer? Hold what tight? The Sorry. curved arm of the GRS tightens onto the bench mount. I have trouble making mine hold tight. This, um, by there? Yeah. This bit by here? Um, no, th there are washers on there. I think there's... Um, Judy, the depth of the silver was, what was it, one point? One and a half millimeter. One and a half millimeter. Um, there's like a plastic washer on that one side but yeah if you do find you do get some movement but then again i never fasten this 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 is always loose you can see i, I never really fasten this completely i never really tighten up too much i've got one hand down here really holding on to it all the time i never really ha do it hands free so i always try and keep hold of it um, rubber washer, I think there's plastic washers there, plastic washers underneath the camera there, you can't quite see, but plastic washers in there. Just as a friction fit, so it just holds it so it stays in position when you let go. Um, I haven't got my toothbrush either to get this. So we've gone down two and a half, no, two millimeter ball burr onto that. Swap over now to our setting burr. Now, it's always good to get yourself something like a slide rule something like this here that has a nice um, digital display. Let's see if I can zoom in on this in a moment. You can see this has a nice digital display. We can reset that. Um, and this is ideal then if you want to be able to measure the stones. And what I would do is get your setting burr and put that between the jaws just to make sure that the burr is actually two and a half. It comes in on here just spin the burr backwards and it's 2.48, 2.49, as you can see. Then we can grab uh, one of our stones and just double check. I'm going to do this um, on my bench because I don't have a, my other gauge here, but we can put the, um, the gauge on the stone here and that comes in actually at, if I can bring this into position under the camera, this stone actually comes in at 
2.47, so a one hundredth of a millimeter. But the idea is you have quite a few stones to play with. I got about a dozen stones here that we're going to be able to use. And if they're not quite calibrated, which means they're not exactly, you can then choose a stone that's going to fit the hole that you're going to be um, setting with. Let's just make sure that is the right burr that I've got in front of me now. It is. Okay, we're going to use some burr life or some cut lube or some beeswax on this. And now we need to go down at 90 degrees. So it is really important now that we come down at 90 degrees. So this is the shape of the burr we're going to be using next. This is my straight sided setting burr. Can we see that? Yes, we can. And that's what I'm going to be using. And this is going to produce a hole that is now going to be pretty much that shape. Okay, in my metal. We may have a little bit of the ball burr sort of area by here, but what we're looking at now is for these nice straight sides. Some people will actually produce something that's a little bit of a slightly smaller and then, I'll be with you now, Louise. Yes, okay, and, Louise. and then produce, uh, get a 90 degree set in burr like that. And that would uh, just put a little bit of an undercut like this. Some people will do that. Okay, so the stone sort of clicks into place. I find that that's great if you've got some stones that will withstand the, the, the pressure of pushing into the hole itself. But I think for flush setting, if you've got a nice tight fit, that's all you're going to need. Yes, Louise? Just got a couple of quickies. What was the size of the drill bit that goes through the metal piece completely? Okay, I used a drill bit of 0.9 millimeter or a one millimeter. You could have 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2. Don't go too big, because I said, if you mess up and you're not quite in the right position, you can get a ball burr or a bud burr just to pull the hole back into position. Uh, what was that two called? The one that Andrew was just moving around. I've never seen that one before. Sorry, I was, what was, my, the... I was on my other computer for a moment. What was that two called? The one that Andrew was just so, moving around. Uh, like an electronic, <laughs> electronic slide rule. Um, you can do one of these or you can use a diamond, uh, a circular leverage grade, a gauge um, or a diamond uh, millimetre round gauge. But something like this is brilliant because it measures to the hundredth of a millimetre and you can make sure that you do get the right size stones for the right size boot. Um, a couple of people are asking, what's best, the Benchmate or micro block for stone setting? All right, I have a micro block. My only problem with a micro block would be... Okay, so there's a micro block. And whilst there's nothing wrong with a micro block, and I absolutely love my little micro block here, um, I find that, let me zoom out a bit, I find that it moves a little bit too much for me. I know you can hold on with this hand, um, but for me, I find that the, the Benchmate is a lot better because it's right where the bench peg should be. If you have the, um, you okay? Yeah, somebody's asked again. If you have if you have the ball vice, you've got to perhaps look over your bench onto it. And with these semicircular benches, I find it's a little bit more difficult. But yeah, if you've got a, a ball vice, just as good, use that. Yes, Louise. Um, what are the stones? Judy is asking. Uh, Swarovski CZs. Yep, and Swarovski Zirconia. Recommend buying stones from Craft. Yeah, Kuno Crafter is a great place if you're in the UK, um, but it is, I think it's important to get calibrated stones, which is pretty much if they're two and a half millimeter, they are two and a half millimeter. They're not mm, an approximate or the girdle's too thick. So when you're practicing, get nice quality stones. Don't buy cheap stones mm -hmm. because the proportions aren't right or the diameters aren't right. I got these from, from Cookson because I needed them because I forgot about them. Um, but I've got lots of CZs as well, cubic zirconias or CZs that are all the right size as well. I got these because they were the right sort of um, colour. Anything else quickly to mm, mention? No, I think we're up to no. today. Cool, excellent. Yep. All right. So, okay. okay, so now we've got our plate, we've got our hole, this two millimetre. We're now going to be using our straight sided 
setting bird that's a little bit of wax that's on it it's got to come down now perpendicular to the surface if it doesn't come down perpendicular and you're coming down at a slight angle the hole that is going to be drilled by the burr is going to be at an angle and the stone then is not ooh, yeah, focus and the stone is not going to be level and what we're looking for is we go as deep as for the stone to be pretty much level with the surface. Now, as the stone size gets bigger, that's not gonna be possible, but there has to be a certain amount of metal coming over the edge of the stone for enable us, in this case, to flush set. All these tools, all the straight size setting birds are gonna be in the competitions I think you've, you've put up already, Louise, yep. Yes, they were already up, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. excellent. In fact, let's... So the up, usually up to about, about two millimeter or two and a half millimeter, the table of the stone has to be level with the surface. And that's a good rule of thumb. Okay, so let's crack on with this one. Let's drill this one. We're still okay on the close-up camera. Yes, we are. Good, good, good. Let's just come down on here now and let's drill here. So. What is coming off, as you can see, is a lot finer. The dust that's coming off, you can see, is a lot, lot finer now. So that means that the teeth are cutting and it's quite a very fine teeth. So I'm just going on and off. I'm not doing too much. I'm not going too mad straight away. I'm going to stop, put a little bit of lubrication on it. In we go. Okay. So I don't happen to have my toothbrush up here to get rid of all this get a little bit of a toothbrush let's just remove that so have a look now and what we're looking at now is uh this distance we're looking at this distance now here between here and here this distance here is what we're going to be looking at and as i said a good rule of thumb is when the stone goes into place the table of the stone is level with the surface and that is what we're going to be looking for and that's the reason why I always make a hole in the bottom because if you put the stone in and the stone is a bit of a tight fit and it doesn't go deep enough, well then we can always push the stone out from underneath to get the stone back out to be able to go down a little bit deeper. Some people will be using ball burrs to do this um, and that's a fantastic way of doing it. This is the way that I like to do it. So let's go again, let's go a little bit further. I'm just double checking the height. You may be able to just see the height of that straight edge as we're looking. Let's go a little bit further. All right, so that's what we've got. We're going to pick up one of the stones. We're just gonna drop it into the hole just to see how it actually goes. What? Uh uh, somebody's asking best advice for keeping it perpendicular when using a pendant motor. Um, by eye. Yeah. You can, there are sort of um, little like um, drill presses that you can get, but for something when you're working on like this, when you're really close up, mm -hmm. it's not going to be possible. But you, what you really have to do is, is use your eye and just to get it perpendicular. If you have the bench mate angled at an angle this way, make sure that you come in perpendicular to it. It's got to be done by eye. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest size, biggest size stone that can be flush set? It depends upon the depth. Uh, because the depth, if you have metal that is too thin that you're setting it into, there's going to be um, a limit to the size of the, of the stone that goes on. And especially if you're putting it within a ring, the stone must not dip into the finger hole itself. Otherwise, it's going to irritate the person's knuckle that it's in. So let's just have a quick look at what we've got here now. So I'm just checking the stone. Let's just go on that close-up camera here. I'm just checking on the stone. It's happened to fall off my stick. Let's get another one. And this is the whole idea of having a few stones to hand. What's the sticky stuff? That's the bugger stick, isn't it? That's the buggy stick. I yeah. call it a buggy stick. It is purely a little bit of beeswax. Uh, with some charcoal in it, it would help actually pull my tray out so I can catch any stones. So at the moment, these stones are, are going on top of the hole. They're not going any further at the moment. So let's just have a look. I use the end of the stick, tap it. It's not quite going down. Let's just go a little bit deeper. <sighs> I 
And let's just try that again. Okay, so that stone is just going in. It's still a fraction, a fraction, not going into the hole. So this is what I'm saying. Now we need to stir the coffee, as they say. So just get the burr, and you can just spin the burr around a little bit like that. And all would this is a two and a half millimeter straight sided setting burr and it should be a two and a half millimeter stone that goes in okay. so that goes in now that sits in nicely you should be able to just about see if you can see it let's try it this way can we see oh, we can't really see let's try and increase the exposure on this for you to see it is it possible to flush set flat bottom cabochons. Yes, yeah. but you'd have to use a different type of, of burr. So you can just about see, if I just move that along there, you can just about see the stone now is pretty much flush with the surface. Let's just reduce the exposure on that a bit. There we go. So that's looking good. What you can do is use the end of your stick just to make sure that goes down nicely into place. Uh, if you want to, you can get a pair of uh, tweezers and you can use the back of the tweezers just to make sure that goes down into place or you can use a bit of a brass pusher and that is looking absolutely gorgeous and what i can see i'm not quite sure whether you can see how good the camera work is but there's a fraction of metal just above the edge of the stone so what i can see the stone now is in place as we got here and i can just see this little bit of metal here nice and shiny so that is the position that the stone is in at the moment, all right? Now what I want to do is swap over to something like this here. This is going to be um, a little tiny, tiny little burnisher. And we can make these really quite easily from an, an old burr. Was that gonna focus or have I gone too close? That's a bit too close, Andrew. Let's go back a bit, there we go. This is an old burr that I have simply filed the end and I've rounded it and I've polished it. So it comes to a real nice, close tip as you can see like that nice and shiny if the tip of this is nice and shiny it's going to produce a nice shiny edge to the hole which is exactly what we're after then we don't have to then go over the edge of the hole with a graver because this will produce a nice gorgeous edge this is where things could go messy this is where things will, can go wrong and <coughs> actually you can slip with you could slip with the burnisher and that's the whole reason why <clears throat> you've got to have a reasonable amount of metal showing if the stone is really really close to the surface okay so say we alter this drawing here and the stone sits in and the stone sits in and there's hardly any metal showing between the edge of the stone and here the burnisher is going to slip so what we're going to do now is get the burnisher in this angle, this is my burnisher, at this angle, and we're just gonna be pushing down in this direction onto the edge of the metal. If you come vertical, let me just remove that. If you come vertical, it's not gonna do anything. Plus, this way, the burnisher is gonna be rubbing onto the stone, which is what you don't want. But by coming down at an angle, we're gonna be getting this metal and we're gonna be basically sort of squashing this metal downwards like this. Okay, because the burnisher is coming in at that angle. So when you burnish, you try not to get the tip to touch the stone, you get the burnisher to run along the edge. And as it runs along the edge, it'll burnish the metal and it'll produce that sort of effect as we've got on there like that. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be doing next. These little burnishers we sell as well um, on andrewberry.co.uk forward slash shop. We do sell them. So let's just get on this nice and nice and close and let's just get this going. So we're gonna come in at this angle. You can see from this angle now we're gonna be coming in and I'm gonna be pushing down in this direction, okay? You can just about see here I should have actually got some bigger stones, shouldn't I? So we could really see. So as we move along, we're just gently running the burnisher so, so gently to start off with. Okay, so we're just running the burnisher very, very carefully 
around that edge, making sure the stone stays down into place like we've got there. And that's what we're doing, just running it along the edge and turning this round and around as we go. If you try and try and do it in one go, you'll slip and you will mark the metal. So that is not what we're after. If you bring the burnisher at a nice shallow angle like this, then you'll get a nice wider burnished edge. So that's what we're going to be doing. Nice edge like this. I find that if you come down straight, it's not going to do an awful lot, but a nice shallow angle now, and we'll produce a nice shiny edge securing that stone. As you can see, we're going a little bit at a time, not going too wild with this. Nice and shallow, nice and shallow as you can see. And if the tip of the burnisher is nice and shiny, it's gonna produce a nice shiny interior to the stone as well. As you can see, and I can't get any closer, I don't think. Let me just see if I can release this and see if we can get a little bit closer for you. Uh, where's my key? Here we go. So how close does this lens go? This will be very, very interesting. Let's put automatic zoom on and let's have a quick look. Um, can we zoom on this? How close can we get? Where's my zoom? Wow, there we go. So that is what we have got. Get back into serve. There we go. All right, so that now is superbly fastened. It's not going to move at all. Let's put that back onto there and let's get that back into focus. There we go. All right, so that is in place. Some people will come along now with um, a, a graver, um, with a graver, and what they will do is put the graver on the edge of the border as well and it just. <laughs> That's a mistake. Mm. Um, they are in stock. I do have them. We'll have to alter that. I do yeah, apologize. We'll get that changed, guys. Yeah. We'll take so, yeah, you can use the graver now if you wanted to to come along and cut an edge to tidy that up if you feel that you don't have a nice smooth edge to your. There we go. And you've got a tiny, tiny little sliver. Coming off like that then. So there we go. So that then now is nicely, nicely set. We've got a nice bright cut all the way around that. Absolutely gorgeous. As I said, if you want to go over with the burnisher again, you can do nicely and shiny, nicely set. So that is there how we can flush set a stone in a plate. A couple of people are asking, how do you make the grave and not scratch the stone? I think when we asked, uh, the, we have got like, um, where was it? Yeah, basically how do you protect the stone? Okay, in this case, the steel of the graver is not as hard as the stone itself. So you don't scratch the stone. If you are using a stone that is softer than the metal, you just have to be very, very careful and try not to let the tip of the stone drag or get pushed onto the stone. It's very, very delicate. This is why I always use magnification. Even though you don't necessarily need magnification, if you can produce fantastic results with magnification, then when you don't have magnification and someone looks at it, it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah, so that's basically how we will set a nice little two millimeter stone in two and a half millimeter stone. Any other questions, Eloise, quickly now before uh, we go any further? How do you correct a little slip up? Okay, so the best way you can do that, if you do have a slip up, you can use, in the pap, say you scratched the, the metal plate and you slipped, you can always do that with a burnisher. Get, you can use the same burnisher as we've got here. And what you do is get the burnisher and just rub over let me just come over this side over here now, see if we can get that in, in focus. 
you just see that there? So say I've slipped, what you would do then is just get your burnisher and just go at a very shallow angle just to go over the slip as you've got. And you're basically burnishing in different directions. Okay, so you're burnishing that slip with the surrounding metal. Okay, so that will be burnished. Don't use the point, you're just trying to use the whole width of the burnisher like that. Then you would get um, a polishing mop, perhaps like a bit of a, a calico mop. Do I have one quickly here now to show you? Uh, yeah, I do. A bit of a calico mop like this, and then you just simply go over that. Okay, so then the more you go over it, the more you're going to remove. So that would be the idea. Then you can polish over that. As you can see, the little line there is gone. What you can see now, the little scratches from the calico mop. Then you go over them with a bit of rouge and the little mark is gone. So that would be the best way to do that. And even if you slipped right next to the stone, you can still come along with the mop and you can simply go over the edge. But taking care you don't ruin that nice, neat edge of what you got. But you can simply go over it. Like that, or then you can then come along with um, a rouge mop or a bristle, whatever you've got to go over that, and you can get that nice and nicely cleaned up. So there we go. There we go, and that's what we've got. So it looks a little bit scratched under these high bright lights, but let's see if we can get a bit of a soft mop on that a second. See if we can get a bit of rouge on that. There we go. All right, so there we go. That is then how we have got a nice, nice flush set, blue cubic zirconia in that plate. Hope that makes sense. I'll take it out of there and I'll just quickly show you nice and close up again. So again, we'll come nice and close on this. Try and get a nice close up. Try and find my autofocus, there we go. Andrew, it's downwards, it's there, it's there. There we go. And that's a two and a half millimeter stone. It's, it is really, really small. So that is how we flush set. Anything else, Louise? I can just leave, just go on to the ring now. What yeah, is the time? Yeah, lots and lots of questions. Go on, far away. Um, oh gosh, um, wait, how far do we get? Um, optimizer, um, mm, 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 bit of stock, um, <laughs> burnishing tools. Mm, you can make your own burnishing tools as long as they're nicely pointed. They don't want to be sharp. It's not a sharp point. It's a, just a nice, gently rounded tip on the point and make sure it's nicely polished because if the surface here is nicely polished you'll impart a nice polish onto the edge of the stone that's the most important thing okay yeah um yeah Ooh, too many questions yeah there's so many questions yeah i think next time we're gonna have to just not answer any until the end okay sure because yeah all right no worries um, get a shoulder only metal clips of stone in um so yeah, so the, the little shoulder, you could use the 90 degree burrs as we've got on there. Can you see on that? You can see, yeah. Um, you would make the hole and perhaps what I could have done, if that stone didn't go all the way in, instead of, as, as I said, it's like stirring the coffee and doing that to make the hole slightly bigger, I could have got the 90 degree setting burr and just did a bit of an undercut as we have there for the stone then would go in and click into place. That's brilliant if you're using diamonds because the diamonds will withstand that sort of um, pressure being pushed into the hole. But if you're not using diamonds and you're using soft stones, the action of pushing that stone into the hole, clicking into place, could actually fracture and crack the stone. So it's not something that I would recommend if you're using soft stones. Any questions there, quickly, uh, Louise? How would you check it's secure? Um,
that's that that's a pretty good way mm -hmm. um you could also get a little um like a saw blade and just try and push from the back to see if it'll be pushed out put it through an ultrasonic and that's a surefire way of being able to tell if it's actually in in, in place the ultrasonic would actually shake it loose if it was um, but if you practice it in years of experience you've only really got to burnish because that stone was a, that, a brilliant brilliant tight fit into the hole you've only got to burnish the metal slightly on the edge you're not you're not trying to move the metal so you're not trying to push the metal over you're just simply burnishing it along the edge and the burnishing action on that little sharp edge by having the at the angled graver this way you're pushing in that direction okay so you're pushing in that direction and bringing it all around the edge of the stone you are simply pushing and squashing this bit of metal flat and as it does it will bulge out on the bottom and it'll just hold the stone in place. And you've only got to do it a fraction. If that stone was wobbling in the hole, that's when you're going to have problems because you've got to be able to move a lot of metal to hold that stone because it's got to cover the gap between the edge of the stone and the metal. So this is what I always try and do. This, the friction fit, it has to be a lovely close fit. If you can physically see the stone moving, you've got to move an awful lot of metal to get that stone to stay in place. But now I'm just going to do a little trick that what you can do to add a bit of decoration should the stone not be in place. Any quick questions before I go on to just um, one other thing? Scrap Over Engineering is asking, the close-up shows a little mark on the rim. Do you leave it like that? If I would try to fix that, I will definitely make it worse. If you want to, you can do because yes, as you're burnishing down this way, the metal may be lifted up slightly on the top as well. That's when then I would come along with um, a bit of a rouge mop and just go over the plate just to then finish it off completely um, or a bit of a calico mop just to go over just to remove that little bit of a rim and now there is no um, there is no rim because I've just gone over that with the where's my focus there it is there and I've gone over that now there is no rim sticking up on that at all um, there is no rim what you can just see is the edge of the hole that stone is in there we go. But yeah, that's a good question. Good question. Because yeah, because when you burnish it, it burnishes down and it burnishes up. But a, a quick going over with a bit of a calico mop, a bit of a hard mop, not necessarily a soft one, um, and then a rouge mop to go over the top would nicely smooth that off. Okay, let's just quickly go on to a ring, and I think we're going to run out of time, but we've answered a lot of questions, so I don't mind running over on this. So we've got a ring in place. Again, we're going to set. Is that okay, Louise? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we've got 11.30, we're starting making a spinner ring. We are. Um, so I'll rush through this now um, and just quickly show you what we're going to be able to use. You've got half an hour, you're okay. Yeah, so what we're yeah. going to do, we're just going to show you a different way but now. We just, sorry to interrupt, we yes. have got two um, competition winners to announce and it's the uh, bur the Bursch setting burkett and the beading tool set. Okay. Which so we'll announce. Well, shortly before 11.30, shall we? Okay, yep, so yeah. if I quickly get this done now, yeah. and then perhaps we'll stop perhaps in about 10, 15 minutes time, and then answer a few questions, and then announce the winner. Just give people a, a bit extra. The yeah. No, we haven't got a link for the birds, have we? Um, not on, not on Andrew not Berry, on bit, yeah. no. no. Um, but if you go, Sorry, on to, if you go on to Otto Fry and tap in um, the Bursch setting birds, it should come up. On auto fries. So what we're going to do, we're going to set the same stone into this ring. As you can see, it's, it's a reasonable depth ring. You can't have anything too thin because the bottom of the stone cannot go down into um, the ring itself. We need to find out the center. I've got a pair of dividers and we're going to just work out roughly where those dividers need to go. Rubbing, running one leg along the one side like that there turn the ring around, do the same on that side, and just to see where your lines come to. Then we'll get a graver. Then we can just put the graver right in the middle of those lines like that. So that then is the start of where we're going to drill. Can you see that? There we go. Is it the one? It's not that one. I can't remember which one it is now. Was it with the middle? That one? Down? Yeah. I think it's that one. Yeah. Yeah. So again, we're going to use a one millimeter drill. 
For this, um, again, I always like to drill all the way through because it enables me then to clean behind the stone if need be, and also the client can clean behind the stone. Janet, thank you very much indeed for all the donations that's been coming. Really do appreciate it. So let's go through here now, and again, we're going to start off just slowly. Now, what I would do, I'd start off a little bit. So the, the tip of the drill just starts to drill through. Check, look at it. Does that look nice and central to the ring? Okay, so this is where you would easily make this out of, um, uh, out of alignment. So start off, does that look in the middle to you? Okay, if it isn't and it's to one side, when you come to drill, just pull the drill to the one side a little bit just to get that nicely centered. Um, what I'm looking at here, it's looking pretty good. So we're ring it, drilling down perpendicular, do a little bit, have a look, make sure that that is nice and central. It is, let's just drill all the way through. Let's just double check, that's looking pretty good. So let's go all the way through with that, on and off like that, so there's the hole, that's looking good. Now we're gonna go up to that two millimeter ball burr. All right, there we got there, in exactly the same way as what we did before. A little bit of lubrication on that. Again, suspend, hold on to the... I turned your mic off. Yeah. <laughs> Come along and then just get the ball burr into where we're going. Just double check, make sure now that that is going exactly where it should go. Okay, so it's not to the one side, it's nice and even as you've got it there. And thank you very much for the donation, really do appreciate that. Back in we go. And you can hear it, it's, it's quite aggressive, isn't it? You can hear it. And that's looking pretty good. So again, we're gonna go down. With this now, we're going slightly further with this, because as I was saying before, we've got the ring and the ring has a circumference so we need to so here's the band that we've got here here is the the metal thickness it's absolutely rubbish drawing but we have just drilled a hole all the way through if we look at this distance from here to here so we're going to be drilling down now uh, we just drilled down with a ball burr. So we've done this sort of shape now. So that's the shape that we've got in the metal. All right, that's the shape that we've got. Like that. Cool. And now we're going to come along then with the, with the setting burr. And we're going to come down now in this fashion. Let's just remove that and remove that there. And we're going to come down now in this fashion. So if you can imagine that obviously we've still got the edge of that and we've got the edge of this. So you can see the distance between here and here is greater at the top of the ring than it is down the side here. So what I'm looking for in this case is for the stone to sit. Now does the stone sit flush with this area up here or does the stone need to sit flush down here? So this is the problem that you've got with the curved surface. We're going to set the stone so it's pretty much um, a fraction of fraction. So we're going to do it so the stone is going to be in this sort of look. Uh, okay, uh, that's completely wrong there. We're going to come down here. So we've got a small amount of metal down here, but on this side where the stone is here, it's going to be a lot deeper. So really draw it off the top of my head I need to plan that out so we've done, gone down so we're going to go down now with a two and a half straight sided setting burr on this one now again a bit of lubrication on this So now what you're going to find is the, let's go a little bit deeper on that. So what you're going to 
find is the distance between the top edge on this side here is going to be shallower than it is along this edge here because we've got to allow for the height of the ring. So again, let's just grab a stone and pop the stone down into place and see how that sits. Okay, so that actually sits and we've got the top of the stone just sitting slightly proud of the ring. So I really want to go is it just that little bit further. Okay, and let's just pop that in place again. Just like that. Should have some background music, shouldn't you really? <laughs> so the stone is in place. Now, we can come along and flush set that if we wanted to. Um, yes, we can, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do now with this, and this is the whole reason why the beading tools are being offered as well. Let me just quickly draw this out for you on here. We've done that. So what we've got now, looking down on top of the ring, looking down on top, this is the width of the band. Here is the stone. We've got the stone in place. I can come along with a burnisher and burnish it and get a nice flush set, nice flush setting. No worries. But what I'm going to do now is get a graver and I'm just going to put my graver here. All right, so this is going to be my graver here. And I'm going to just going to push a little bit of metal over onto the edge of the stone. So from the uh, angle we've got here, the graver is going to come in at this point. Here's the stone hole like that there. Here's the stone is in place and the graver is going to push it over a little bit of uh, metal into this direction here. And we're going to do the same then on this side and push a little bit of metal over onto the edge of the stone. So we're not going to flush set it. We're going to be using some beading tools then just to round off those little tips. I've got a, a round bottomed scorper or round bottomed um, graver. You can just about see that. And I've got the lines that we put on when we laid out and if you can't see them, do them again. We're going to come on either side like that. So we know where we need to go. We come along with our graver, come it along at this sort of angle, and we're going to put the graver in roughly around about a millimeter away from the edge. Okay, right in the center, and I'm going to push in this direction. So I'm pushing towards the center of the stone. And I'm pushing downwards and pushing over and you should just be able to see a small little bit of metal just coming over the edge of the stone there. Come around to this side, do exactly the same on this side. In we go and push forwards and down. And then if you wanted to, you can move your hand back and forth just to try and release that bead like that. And what has happened now is that we've got a very, very small little bit of metal. I can release this from my clamp to show you. What we've got on here now is a very, very small. Can we focus on this? Uh, there we go. You can just see, let's try and increase the exposure on that. There we go. Okay, so you can just about see the bit of metal that we've raised on either side of the stone. And now what we're going to do with that bit of metal is just use a beading tool just to help that push down onto the stone. Focus that again, Andrew. So these are the beading tools. Again, you can win a set of beading tools and a set of burrs from Otto Fry, courtesy of Otto Fry. They come in all different sizes. See how close we can get with this. There we go. So they come in all different sizes. And they've all got little beading ends to them, little cups on the end. And I'm looking for a tool that is going to be the right size. Um, I actually happen to have 
not have it with me. Uh, oh, there we go, there it is there. So what I'm looking for now is for the little tool to be, let's darken that, that's a bit bright, there we go. Can you flash the end of that scorper again, please? Yes, of course I can. So that's it, that's the way it looks there. Should we can come, see if we can come in? Right, yeah, it's better. There we go, how's that? All right, so that's the angle and the bottom is, uh, can you see that? Does that make sense there? Can we focus that? There we go. So it's a round bottom scorper or graver, whatever you want to call it. Beading tool in the beading handle. You can locate the bead right on top of that bit of metal. And I'm going to push down and just wiggle that around. And on likewise on this side, exactly the same again, wiggle that around. And what we're looking for is two little beads just to be placed on either side of that stone, just literally to hold that stone into place. Come up on this, you can see. Uh, there we go. So we just raised two little grains. Closer again, even better. Closer again, oh my gosh. Don't go too close, you can see how bad it is. <laughs> so there we go. So we've raised two little grains on either side of the stone. And that's all that we would need to do to hold that particular stone in place. If you then have got um, a nice sharp bottomed graver, you can just tidy it where you've just pushed and just tidy that up like that, just to make the little area behind the beads nice and shiny, like that there. Uh, wrong one, Andrew. Where's my there? Is there? There we go. And just so that is a way now that we can locate and hold that stone in place without having to burnish it. Nicely set into place. We focus on that. There we go. Do apologise. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's better. And as I said, we can get a nice sharp bottom graver to come in behind that bead just to sharpen up what we've got. Looking good. Beading tool over the top of it. And likewise on this side there. There we go, let's take that out. And that's what we've done to hold that little stone in place. Then what you'll find is that you may need to get something on the underside because where you have used the, um, the drill, it may have kicked up a little bit of swarf underneath. Let me get the wrong drill bit, there we go. You can get a little burn now on the inside he says, we can get this in focus. Mm, yeah, it's gone out. It's really, the, the depth of field here is so, so shallow. There we go. And get your ball burr just to remove a little bit off the back to remove a bit of the burr that gets kicked up when you drill through. There. So that's basically what we have got. So there we go, really, really quick. I think we've got about another 10 minutes to go. Um, any sort of questions now whilst I sort of tidy the bench up a little bit as we go now, Louise? Anything that we need to talk about? So that was, that was something, I know that was like just about an hour, wasn't it, really? To, to go, is that an hour? Yeah, about an hour and yeah, 20, an yeah. an hour and 20 to go through that. We were answering questions as we were going along. Two different ways. Yes, you can. You don't have to use these little beads here. You can just simply flush set and do exactly the same thing. But the stone does have to be set that little bit lower because on the edges here, the metal is going to be shallower between the edge of the stone and the edge of the metal as opposed to by here. But again, exactly the same way. You can burnish it in exactly the same way. And then again, when it comes to doing the little plates as we've got, you could do exactly the same way here. Instead of using the burnisher to burnish around, you could come along with your graver and put in a little grains 
at 90 degrees and do exactly the same with the beading tool. So the beading tools you can win and also the burrs as well you can win courtesy of Otto Fry. Okay, I'm going to leave you to um, answer some questions in the chat and I'm going to turn my attention to the competition okay. of the, All right. the setting burr kit and the beading All right. set. So, Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. So if you want to ask some questions now in the chat, Louise is just going to, the competition to enter the competition, no, the competition to enter the beading tools and the burrs now is going to be closed. You've all had a chance to win. Louise is going to go through all the entries on there. How many have we had, Louise? Can you just... Okay, for the burr setting kit, 505. Mm, nice. And oh, bear with me. So five, at least over 500 entries. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah. How to sharpen the setting tools. Um, you can't really sharpen the burrs, but you can sharpen the beading tools by simply using some fions. Um, or there's a special device that um, a, a Russian guy has, has developed. Um, I think GRS is selling that as well. Can you mill grain around flush setting? Yes, you certainly can. The best thing to do would be able to try and get the, a bigger stone to be able to get the beading tool and use a beading tool with really, really small little beads on it. You can do, that will take a lot of skill to be able to do that. But yes, that is something that you could do. No worries. Um, how do you do other shapes other than round? Uh, a with a lot more difficulty, you'd have to use uh, something like a ball burr to try and elongate the shape or to get the approximate shape of the stone and keep testing the stone in the hole all the time. Put it on, not quite, take it off, bit of a straight sided setting burr, I'm going up on the board there, but a nice straight sided setting burr, come along, take a bit more off, put the stone back into place, not quite, a bit more. It's a lot more work to do, but practice with round stones is far, far easier. Donations, Christine, the donations are for Cancer Research UK. So all the money that's coming in, we've raised over £1,000, so thank you all very much for all the donations, all the money is going to be going to Cancer Research UK. Even though it's UK, they still give money to over 39 countries around the world to help um, develop medicines for trying to, um, here we go, thank you Louise. Uh, they, they, they developed eight of the world's top 10 cancer drugs. They provide the link between the, the tobacco and cancer. They proved the value of screening and early uh, detection. Um, they invest over $500 million a year and they are the world's largest independent fundraiser of cancer research. Uh, cancer, I'm reading this off the screen, thank you. Cancer is a global issue and is in the rise with 18.1 million new cases diagnosed in 2018 alone worldwide and 29.5 million new cases are projected for 2040. But still, to have over 18 million diagnosed in one year is, is a huge number. And this is where all the money that we are raising today is going to be going to Cancer Research UK. As I said, it's a UK based, but they do provide research and provide the money to 39 countries around the world. Maybe just pop that back onto oh, the... Um, sorry. Oh, sorry. It's okay, thank you. Okay. Super, so there we go. Thank you all for all the donations. What size graver did you use for the beast Um I don't really know what size these gravers are. Let me just quickly measure the width. Uh, it depends on what you're going to be cutting. The width on that one is 1.5. Now, the the rounded bottom, I admit that is the most important one, actually. So what's, how big was the, my rounded bottom? <laughs> Saying mm. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, one millimetre, uh, 0.98. So it's one millimetre rounded bottom. The details, it, it, it's basically, it's like this. Okay, so this distance really across here uh, is literally one millimetre. And it's rounded bottom and it's that sort of shape. So this area down in here is a rounded bottom that does that. Okay, so that's how the graver looks. We can't see that because that's right behind the camera. I will shift that now. Bear with me a minute. We won't be needing that for a while. So let's just quickly remove that out the way. There we go. Okay, so that's what we've got. This is what the graver looks like. Okay, so this is a one millimeter rounded bottom. The other graver that we've got is um, is more of a, a V shape, and that is 
that shape and that's a bit more of a V shape and that gets the nice V looking grain that's raised up on the stone and that gets pushed into that way. So that's the bead there with a nice shine and this is the uh, stone here. Okay, hope that makes a bit of sense there. Uh, donations, thank you all very much indeed. Uh, would you see the beads after you polish? The idea would be to basically polish the piece beforehand. Try and get it nicely shiny polished beforehand. What you would do once you have, uh, let's get a nice, so do I have a nice soft rouge mop on here? Um, I do. So what I would do then is just to tidy up the ring, get a bit of, uh, we've got a nice soft mop there. We've got the, the ring and we just literally go over with a nice soft mop. How close can we get with this? This camera isn't the best above me. So that'll come across. And providing you don't use, there we go. And providing you don't use anything too abrasive, the beads will still stay there. If you decide to come along then with a big heavy mop or with a big calico mop, there's a chance that the beads are gonna be worn away. But a nice soft rouge mop like that would be brilliant. It polishes up lovely, but I would try and polish the piece up beforehand. Um, Gary, yeah, I've taken off that camera now, that, but that's different camera up there. Uh, what do you call the ring holder device? This is a, a Benchmate system. We're gonna be auctioning off, auctioning off. We're gonna be having a competition for this Benchmate system. Um, this little device was a special device as well, which is very much like the GRS. Um, ball vice but that fits into the end and the advantage with these types of uh, holders is that this will come off this can go in and you can hold that nice and safe like that there how would you remove flush head stones if needed for ring resizing or pendant resoldering it's a good question um, You'd always try and finish the piece, obviously, first of all, you'd want all the soldering operations to be done upon the piece before you come to set. So make sure nothing else needs to be soldered once the stones have been set. Thank you, Josephine, for that. Thank you very much. Miss Drummond, you're a star, 20 pounds. Thank you very much indeed. Really do appreciate all the money that's coming in. Um, if you do have to resize the ring afterwards and say we've got this ring that we've just resized, uh, there we go. So say we want to resize this ring afterwards and the customer has had it and they brought it back. You would use something like a thermo lock or a thermo gel to go over that stone to hold it whilst you then resize it on the opposite side. Um, how do you know what know the size beading tool to use? When you push over, you can firstly get a um let me just check it. Uh an indication. If you use a Okay, let me just draw that. So that's my stone. Here is the ring. I got the beading tool in here. So we've pushed the beading, the, sorry, the engraver down. So it's raised that sort of bead and we got a little bit of metal that's sort of just been pushed up that looks perhaps something like that, where you push the graver in at this angle. This area from here to here really denotes what size beading tool you would really use. If it's too big, the edge of the beading tool, which is going to be in this sort of profile, these edges are gonna to be touching the stone. So what you wanna do is to try and get the bead in, so the bead just comes in to the tool. So that would be the bead, and the beading tool would go along, and you roll the beading tool around, and you get that bit of metal nicely rounded on the top so it looks something like that on the top of there and that would be the bead and that's the reason why we have we have a winner we have a winner yes okay we got a winner yeah but we've got flush setting now no we've done flush setting we've got spinner ring at 11 30. we do sorry so, to shift you along no that's fine it's i got just, people might be coming on to see <laughs> right all right so this but yeah, is what i do got. have two winners actually you've got two winners too so that is basically what we're all about uh, mm -hmm. flush setting 
hope that helps you. We could then with a bit longer actually on flush setting. Mm -hmm. um, can't make donations work. I'm in Canada. I'll tell you what we'll do. We will post some links to the place where they can donate. Well, in fact, yeah. if you go to Cancer Research UK, you can donate on the page. Yes. Can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, what about removing the stone if it's not heat tolerant for resizing? You can still get away with people put the, 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 the heads of the stones in things like potatoes, but I'm going now, I'm going, no, I don't want to keep talking. Or you can use thermo, uh, thermo gel to protect the stones. Right, okay, so I think we have a winner, two winners, winner for the beading tools and a winner for the, um, the burr set as well. I've kindly donated by Otto Fry. Don't forget, you can use the Otto Fry code ATB5, I do believe. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Me there. Hang on, hang on. Uh, ATB5, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've lost the. Have you lost the plot? Lens? I've lost the. No, I've lost you. Hang on. I'm on the bottom. Are you? No, you're not. You've gone. Hang on. I'm, no, I'm actually still there. I'm on the screen. Just careful now, your microphone's on. Flip, I said. <laughs> Flip. Flip. <laughs> Go on, we'll be after. Are you, st are you still on? Oh, you've lost me on there. I've lost you on here. Oh, okay. Bear with oh, we'll skip, one. skip, skip the ads. I need this. This one. Where have you gone now? Here. Yes. No, I need to be in the. Oh, heck. You carry on. I've no. What? Well, we're going to be doing the next demonstration in a minute. Whilst Louise tries to tries to to get to grips with them. Um, she's panicking now, aren't you? No, no. Don't. Click on my name on the right no, hand I'm side. Here. Look, I'm fine. Okay, you fine? I got you. Yeah. Yes, because I'm fine. See? Yeah, we're there. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened then. It says connecting. There we go. All right. Are we all all right? Are we there? Yes. I yeah. don't know what happened then, but I, 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 well, I tried wow. to give you the Otto Fry discount and it just took me somewhere strange. Is it possible to flush set square stones? Yes, it is. Uh, you'd have to make sure they're round to start off with the right size. Then you'd use a graver. So you drill a hole and then you'd use a graver then to grave uh, away those corners. Square stones? Yes. Use a round round stone, round to start off with. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't, you, do you know, you don't get a square drill. No, I know that. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't work, would it? But you can get a square drill in wood, but that's completely diff different. Yeah. Right, so you, <laughs> you, you drill a round hole, then you get a graver that's like that, and then you graver away those corners for the stone, square stone, to sit into it. Right, we have a winner. And okay. I'm not going to talk anymore. We have a winner. I'm going to pass you over to Louise whilst I start to tidy up my bench now. Okay, you can still do the drum rolls, so can't you? Oh, okay. I'll still do the drum rolls. When do you want to do the drum rolls? Well, I'm about to announce the winner of the Velorby beading tool set. Okay. So, the lucky winner of that is... <laughs> Lynn Glassard. Congratulations, Lynn. Lynn. via email. And the winner of the Bursch setting burr kit is Jill Higgins. Jill, congratulations. Congratulations, Lynn and Jill. Fantastic. Congratulations to both of you. Make a note, Louise. You I have to. One step oh. ahead, you, Barry. Oh, what a woman. Nice. Thank you very much for all of you who have entered. Sorry you haven't won, but don't forget you can still use your, your coupon codes to get um, discounts at the uh, relevant suppliers. But well done, everybody who took part. And thank you all very much for taking part. And thank you for the patience uh, with some minor, minor technical problem. But super, super, super. So that was Flush Setting. Uh, we're going to be having nearly two hours for the next little project and it's going to be all about uh, making a spinner ring but we're going to be using things like texture plates we're going to be producing a couple of spinner rings a couple of little decorations um, and the whole thing to do with um, spinner rings and we're going to be using the rolling mill that's on the side of me we're going to be adjusting the cameras so we may be off air for about five minutes we're going to put a slide up louise is going to put some links into the description um, into the chat whilst we go and set this up now actually while while you're setting up i can actually release the next competition which is going to be it's not due till 12 perhaps you better wait till 12 if we said we're doing it at 12. yeah yeah for the shank bender and the needle file set 
Okay, well, we, we could, I'm sure we could still announce it, can't we? People can still. Well, yeah, I, I suppose if. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. We That'd can still right. set the link up. Yeah. And um, yeah, because it'll still be live at 12, so anybody coming on will be able to do it. So it doesn't disadvantage anyone, I don't think, does it? No, no, fine. Okay, okay. okay. That's as, long no. as, as long as it's there's free. that infamous one down vote lol. Oh, you know yeah. what? We, we we rise above that. We, we don't care about the negative. No, parts, because at the end of the day, we're all having fun. We're all donating money for charity, and that is the main thing today. And everybody's benefiting from all the discount codes and the um, little offers we're putting up as well, That's and the, the competitions. Thing. We're missing it. Everyone's learning. Everyone's having a good time, and we're raising money. Mm. Not to lie. raising money for charity, which is absolutely awesome. And thank you all very much. It's one point two, one thousand two hundred pounds wow. at the moment. Absolutely amazing. We've only been going only two and a half hours. So thank you all very, very, very much for all your donations. We really do appreciate it all. Um, so I'm just going to tidy it by here now. We're just going to pop a slide into place and to say what's coming up next. And Louise is going to put into the chat the links to the next competition as well and also some of the coupon codes that we've got don't forget 25 percent off durston um these are running hs walsh vouchers you can win uh four 50 pound vouchers kuno craft vouchers um oh my goodness me i can't remember what all we're doing but we've got yes, Louise? some some saws as well. We've got the we've got Stephen Satow's um, kindly donated handmade ergonomic saw. Yep. So I don't know when you want to. Um, we can run that on the next one because we're going to be using a saw now to cut out. Yep. And, and we've got yep. the new concepts. New concept um, saw as well. Just so. just the new concept saw. Don't worry about the other bits and pieces until we come to the soldering bit later. So just the uh, shall I put the two just, saws on now yeah, as just, well? Just the Seems saw we're as well. Have a couple of minutes so people can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so okay, Louise. There's a few people that I can just see who are coming on who can't donate. Um, is that can't donate on this page here? Um, oh. I think the thumbs down is an accidental mouse click. It must be. Oh, we're not. We're not oh. worried. Don't uh, worry. Yeah, we're not. We're not upset at all. We're no, really not. We not just any, not yeah. anymore. We've risen, we've risen above that, haven't yeah. we? Absolutely. You can't please all of the people all of the time. No. But we're all having fun. We're all. It's just a bit of light-heartedness isn't it it's not too serious whatever okay thank you Sonia for that 499 really do appreciate all this is coming in <laughs> right slide is going to come in place we're going to turn the mics off loads of links click them enter the competitions um, and we'll join you in a few minutes time see you in a few minutes bye
okay, so I've moved. I'm over here now. Oh, excuse me, right. All right, um, what are we doing, Louise? What's next? We're making a spinner ring, Andrew. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad someone's keeping up to date with these things. Okay, so we're gonna be doing a spinner ring. Uh, in fact, I did a one for Louise and I did a bit of prepping, so let me just pop across and pick up her ring a second. May I have? Thank you. So, in true Blue Peter style, this is one that we sort of did a little bit earlier uh, yesterday. Come on, focus ish. There we go. Um, and what we're going to be doing, we're going to be making a ring very similar to this. We maybe we may be making a couple of these different rings uh, with the spinners in the center. But we're going to be using uh, some various tools and various techniques as well. Now, everybody loves a texture plate. Now, we're going to be using a rolling mill primarily for this. And by the way, this is the rolling mill that you can win one of. This is the Agile C130 Agile rolling mill. We've got two of these that are on offer for um, up for grabs in a competition that Louis is going to be posting up in the chat. Enter your name, enter your email address, whether you want to be notified from us or Matthew or not, it makes no difference either way. And around about half past eight tonight, you could be winning one of these roller mills. So anybody, everybody's in with a chance of winning one of these roller mills. We've got two of them to give away. And also throughout this next two hours, we've got other tools to sort of giveaway as well, competitions. Thank you for all the donations coming in. Completely overwhelmed, aren't we, by what's been coming in so far. Absolutely amazing, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much indeed for that, everybody. So we're gonna be looking using the rolling mill because that is basically what we're gonna be giving away. And we're gonna be using texture plates. Yes, Louise. Shall we save questions for the end this time? Um, yeah, I can't see, I'm not in front of my, my um, computer at the moment, okay. but yeah, we'll leave questions up to, up to you. If yeah, it's something, um... If it's something what we need to talk about whilst we're doing it, I'm happy to do that, but you need to call them out to me. Okay, okay. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Um, yeah, so we're going to be using things called texture plates. Now, we've got quite a few, we love our texture plates. Uh, I can get this in focus a bit better on here. Turn this around this way. Here we go. So we do love our texture plates. We've got some absolutely gorgeous. Is that in focus? Is, is that, can people see, is that in focus? It looks like that's in focus, but I can't really see. Just about, I can't see the patterns. No. Particularly well. Let's go nice and close then, shall we? Let's get nice and close on these patterns. So these are the patterns that we uh, can be playing with. We've got lots of different, gorgeous. I'm just gonna flick through them. Okay, doggy paws, gorgeous. Um, yeah, there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of texture plates. Now, hit that nice and wide again. Now, where are you testing the texture plates from, Andrew? Where, right I just fell over the boxes that are on the floor <laughs> that I just got to unwrap in a minute. So we've got all these texture plates. We, there are there are two suppliers that I like to use. Uh, one's in America and one is here in the UK. Um, the one that I think a lot of you have heard about is called Oregon Trail Silver. Roberta has um, some amazing texture plates. She produces texture plates each month and you can buy them. I think they're around about 70, sorry. <laughs> they're around about $70, $80 a piece. Um, and Louise is gonna put up some links in a moment. If you're here in the UK, there's a lady called Moira from Oxford Texture Plates. I've got some gorgeous plates from her as well. These are, uh, not that one. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous looking one with an absolutely amazing, amazing pattern upon that one. Uh, let me just double check. Let me have a look and see what I'm looking for. Moira's, that's Moira's as well. Sorry, I have to excuse the clanking. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous plate as well. You can see the amazing, amazing detail that we've got on all these plates. So these plates are available. Louise is going to put some links up in the chat. Um, you've done already? Yeah, I have done. Oh. Yeah. I'll do it again. What more can you say? So go and check out these two people. If you want texture plates, if you're in the UK, Moira is the girl for you. She does some absolutely amazing texture plates. She has a Facebook group. Um, go to there. If you're in the UK, if you're in the, in the US, 
try Roberta or vice versa. You can always go to Moira if in the US, you can get the general gist of the idea. So that's what we're gonna be using. You can use the texture plates with a hammer if you don't have a rolling mud, but we're gonna be talking about a rolling mud because that's what we're gonna be doing. Now, it is, it, I found texture plates used to be really sort of hit and miss. Um, you've got to sandwich your piece of metal on the top and put it through the rolling mill. Now, what sort of pressure do you use? What sort of, do you get the, the, the thickness of the metal and divide the thickness of the metal and, and adjust the rollers to get the right height and so forth? And I always found that really, really hard. And you've only got one go at this. You can't put it through and go, damn, that wasn't deep enough, I'll put it through again. Because you can't, because you can't necessarily align up the pattern for the next roll. So you've got one go at this. So I would suggest you get some copper, around about a millimeter thickness, 0.8 of a millimeter, and just have a go with um, some copper. We've got, um, what happened to that there? You're stacking again, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> we have got um, just a couple. I just did some samples. How close? Oh, there we go. That's pretty good. So these are a couple of samples I put up on Instagram last night. This um, is a little doggy paw print, as you can see, and this one here is sort of some bubbles. And these are the sort of definitions that you can get. And we're going to be using these texture plates. Oh my goodness me, I've zoomed in on the wrong camera. Uh, we're gonna get some texture plates to do um, some an interesting ring to make our spinner ring with. So we can make these without using texture plates. We can make these without using a rolling mill. You can just buy the metal the correct width. The metal we're gonna be using is 10 millimeters in width. You can make them wider, you can make them narrower as they're going to be spinner rings. Um, the metal thickness, I think, is about 0.8 millimeters, but obviously as you roll it through the mill, which is what we're going to be doing, it may be a little bit thinner um, overall at the end of it. So we've got, and I'm also going to, I'm also going to do in another huge one like this so we're going to be putting this to the rolling mill for this is for a project a little bit later on on another new piece of kit that you got a chance of winning but i'll be doing that one a little bit later but you must make sure that the metal that you've got has been annealed it must be pretty soft let me just adjust this one camera here because it's a little bit on the close side there we go so you want to make sure that your metal is nice and soft. If it's too hard, it's not going to be able to be forced into the impressions of the texture place. And also with these pieces of metal that I've got, we've got a bit of a, a blue wrap going around it as well. So we need to remove all this. Uh, let me just try and get this paper off. I do have a problem getting this paper off, even though I've got nails. Oh yeah, mind the camera on the floor. There. You okay? <laughs> that, oh, that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got um, a texture plate. So the metal is going to get a little bit on the longer side when you put it through the uh, through the roller mill. A good one would be Louise is just coming around taking some some, some pictures for some socials. Um, so we've taken off the blue paper off these pieces here. Let's go to the close up there so we can see. So the idea is we're going to pick a texture plate. Louise, this is not a trick. This is not a magic trick. But pick a texture plate, any texture plate. Ooh. What one are we going to have? Well, you know which one I'm going to pick. Which one? Do you, which one are we going to have for the purpose of this demonstration? My favourite. You go on then. That one. Oh, can I have another one instead? You knew I was going to pick I know, that one. I know. I know. I know. I know. Go on. Okay. Choose another um, one. What do you want to do? Go. Go. Oh gosh, um, let's have the doggy paw prints. The doggy paw, okay. They're very cute. Okay, so we've got one of the doggy door, doggy paw, doggy paw prints. Thank you. So, <laughs> Can I sit back down now? Yeah, if you want to, yeah. <laughs> so this is the one we're going to be using. It's um, a doggy paw print. So the idea is we're going to put this through the, draw, the, the rolling mill with our bit of metal, but it's going to be a bit silly just simply putting that on top like this because we need to protect the rolling mill, we need to protect the plates. So 
what I'd advise you to do is to get some closed, I think it's called closed cell foam, which is what this is all about here. This is, you can get this places like Hobbycraft, and this is about a three, this is a three millimeter. Let me measure the thickness of this, because this is actually quite important. Um, here we go. So what is the thickness of this? This is two millimeter. So we've got two millimeter closed cell foam. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna double this over so it's gonna be four millimeter. And this is going to give us enough force to force the plates or the, the, the metal that we've got into the plate itself. So you don't have to guess. You don't have to go and, oh, I'm not quite sure if this is gonna work because I guarantee that this will work for you. Grab yourself a piece of paper. This is gonna be squashed. So it's just a piece of normal A5 and A4, just normal white paper. Okay, so we've got all that to hand. We've got that, we've got our foam, we've got our texture plate, and we've also got our piece of metal, but make sure this piece of metal is nice and annealed. So put the texture plate uh, with the piece of metal on the top first. Open up the rolls to the roller mill. That's what we want to do first of all, okay? So open them up, put the plate and the bit of metal in the roller mill and tighten up the handle. Let me just put it the camera so we can see what we're doing. Um, let's get this up a bit so we can see what we're doing. There we go, that's better. So we wanna put that into the roller mill. We're gonna tighten the handle down until it just grabs onto it. So not loose so you can pull it in and out, but just turn it until the metal just starts and you can't quite pull it out. It's just, we can there. So it's just caught, so it's just pressing, okay? Remember the position of the handle of where that is. All right, so that's virtually, it's about half past five sort of position to me. Loosen the handle, bring out the plate and the bit of silver and put the handle back to where it was. Okay, so that's important. Do that straight away. Now what we can do is get our bit of paper because this paper is gonna protect the plate and the roller mill. Okay, so you've got the texture plate. You find the part of the pattern that you wanna put your bit of metal on. I'm just gonna put it right in the middle like that there. We are now gonna double over our bit of foam. Now this is important. This now then is four millimeters and as it's foam, it's gonna compress, but it's gonna push our bit of silver down into the texture plate. Put that on top and put the other bit of paper on top so it holds it all together. So that is exactly what we're looking. Do you know, and if, um, if you can have custom plates, so can you request things? Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I know they are, um, I know Roberta and Moira design these and they do then put a resist onto the steel. I guess just contact them then and Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, please get in contact with them. They're, they're, they're bound to help. Um, it, it, the cost may be slightly more if it's just for one, perhaps, mm. as opposed to a production run. Um, but yeah, answer, ask, ask away, yeah, by yeah. all means, yeah. Okay, so we've got our, uh, what have we got? Our bit of paper, and we're gonna put this through. So remember, we put this handle back through to exactly where it was. We put it in, we'll turn the handle. Now, this is where a geared rolling mill really, really does help. So let's put it onto the close-up camera can over here now so we can see. Them, please, just one Pardon? sec. Can I borrow the plates? Of course you can, yes. Um, there we go. Do you want a few more? Yeah, just... There we go. Thank you. There we go. So then we have come along now. We've got... Okay, we've got our sandwich of everything. We've got... The, roll, the plate, our metal, we've got the foam on top all together, put it through, and this is where, as I say, it's important that you really do have something like a rolling mill with a gearbox on the side, because this really does help uh, when you pass all this through the rolling mill. Let's put that through here, and then, then as we turn the handle, it'll take it in, and now it feels a little bit harder. Okay, so it comes through, 
out to the other side. And this is what we got. This is what it looks like. So this is, you can see how the bit of paper is being sort of obliterated. We open this up, as you can see. Here is the foam that, yes, you cannot reuse again. And take that off. And what you've got under all that now, here is your bit of silver. You may find that it's in the silver and it won't come off. But if you just get your nail in just underneath the edge, you should find that it'll come up. No worries, like that. And if you have a look at that print that we've got on there, that is an absolute gorgeous, gorgeous little paw print upon that bit of silver. And I will guarantee you perfect results every single time you do this. Because in the past, you used to have to sort of put the metal on top, put it in, turn the handle. Now, is that enough? Do I have to turn the handle more than that? But by having this closed cell foam, there's enough pressure that forces the metal into. And because it's foam, it takes the shape as well and it pushes the metal into the plates. Absolutely gorgeous. So I, I absolutely love that. So I'm going to put that on my bench. Perhaps in a moment, Louise can come along and take some more pictures for that. That's an absolutely gorgeous one there. Um, and what other one shall I make? So that bit of paper now has had it. You can throw that bit of paper away. That bit of foam. Oh, you <laughs> You're right there. Uh, let's have a look. Let's see if we can pick up another one. Let's pick up one from um, from Moira. This is a gorgeous one, this one. We're going to use this one. And again, we've got uh, the texture plate. We've got our bit of silver. We're going to get another bit of paper. We're going to get another bit of foam for this. And the, the trick is um, getting this closed foam closed cell foam uh, to be able to do this because this really does make your life so much, so much easier. Uh, okay, let's go on to the close-up camera. Let's see what we've got. Again, we've got this. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous plate, as you can see. And this is one of Moira's plates. Absolutely amazing. Let's find a nice pattern up on there that we can use. We're going to have this sort of area. Uh, let's have a bit of a, a mishmash by there. So that's sort of across some patterns there. All right, we're going to get our closed cell foam. We're going to fold that in half, put that on top as well like that. Get our paper, put that over the top. And that enables us to hold the whole thing together. And let's put that through the mill again. So again, I don't need to play around with the handle this time because I know it's the same thickness metal. Um, in fact, I should do it because as this is a new plate, I should actually make sure that the plates do vary in thickness. Well, in fact, just as well, I did do that because this plate is a little bit thinner. So that's where it comes to, so I can't pull it out. Loosen that, take out the plate and the silver, push that back into place. So that's exactly where it was. So if I put the plate through and the silver through as it is there, nothing would happen. But by increasing the pressure with the foam that goes on the top and put the paper top and bottom, we'll pass that through. Here we go. And again, we'll pass that through. And again, as you can see, that's completely obliterated the paper, so we can throw the paper away. There's a bit of foam. What well, we could use the foam, couldn't we? We could cut that little section off if you wanted to. But there now is our silver. And again, you can see on that, what a gorgeous, gorgeous texture pattern is on that. Absolutely gorgeous. And that was from, gosh, that was from that plate there. Absolutely happy as Larry with that. So those are the two rings that we're going to be making up. The one thing I want to do before I go any further, I need to do this one. This is for a project a little bit later on this evening. And I'm just going to do this one as well. This is a, a bigger piece of silver. And I just want to do a nice, gorgeous pattern on this as well. I'm not liking the foam. 
No, not like the fur? Not good, is it, for your carbon footprint? No, I suppose not. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kitchen roll paper toweling. Um, Carol mm. uses kitchen roll. Mm. Um, kitchen roll for the sandwich. Foam re reuse, folded, can be used again. Yeah, it, you've got to be careful because it can't be because in this certain area by here, you can see it's completely flattened it so i suppose if i was a bit more economical with the use of it i could have had a smaller piece and i'll use the other half of it so yeah i i totally agree with you yes we should reuse it uh, but yeah kitchen roll is just as good you can dispose a kitchen roll but it is important to get the number of layers right and to get the required thickness every single time because that is imperative to get an, a guaranteed result every single time as well leather leather um i suppose you could do but I think that would it, it would compress it, and then what you're going to do with the leather afterwards? I'm not quite it's sure. Stretch, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. It's probably probably effective, but not very cost effective. Yeah, mm. most probably. Yeah. All right then. So I want to do one more plate on this because I want to do a little bit of a project uh, a little bit later on. Uh, let's see what we got here. There we go, let's use, um, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. let me have a look here. There's that one, there's that one, there's that one, there's that one, there's that one. Um, I do like this one here. So we're gonna come on to this one. So I'm gonna be using this bit of a texture on this one. And perhaps I'll make better use of my bit of foam when it comes to this so that's a bit too short that one is now let's just cut this but no I, I agree what everybody's saying it isn't as economic economic ecologically friendly is to use the foam so but no but thank you for that you buffering I'm buffering yeah are you buffering yeah. In fact, this computer's gone off. Oh, yeah, no, somebody, everybody, yeah, yeah. Not a problem. Is everything all right? I don't know yeah. why, why this has gone off here. Oh, back, better. Okay, yeah, cool. That's yeah. fine, yeah, that's everything okay, guys. Okay. Back, yeah, cool. Okay. My monitor's not on. Miss gone to sleep, is it? There we go. We're back. There we are. We're oh. back. So we're back. Not quite sure what happened then. Sorry, guys. Internet land is. Uh, <laughs> we've blown it up. Andrew Berry blows up the internet. Internet, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I'm still on the back on that screen, actually, so I don't know what's happening over there. The lead camera, perhaps I. No, I don't think so. I'll have a look. I'll have a look at it. I'll have a look at it in the in the middle, in the, in the middle, in the minute. Don't worry. Okay, so we're going to get that on top of there like okay. that. We're going to fold our foam up. Put that directly on top as well. Put that on the top and let's pass that through last go. This is gonna be for a project for a little bit later on in the evening and pass that through. Okay, so there we go. That, that, that. There we go. So that is a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. Pretty symmetrical, actually, all the way along. Nice. Nice, that isn't it? Nice. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So that is going to be for a project a little bit later on this evening. So I'm just going to put that to one side. So there we go. So that's how we use the uh, texture plates. Um, some of you don't like the foam, and I totally understand that but there are lots of other ways that you can do it. I like the foam because I can be guaranteed the same result every time. Texture plates can be available from Moira or from Roberta. Uh, Louise has been putting the links down in the, um, in the chat. Let's just bring everything back over onto the bench now. I'm gonna have to move my camera back a second, so bear with me a minute. Let's just move this across. Do we have a, um, a slide we can just put up onto the, uh, must to move all the cameras or, or not to worry? Don't worry, no, it's fine, don't worry. It's fine, let's just move everything around. Uh, let's move that down to there. How's that? That's looking cool. 
Just talk amongst yourselves a minute, guys. Pop up some more links, shall we? Yeah, pop up some more links. Nice, well. Well done. There we go. Let's just get these going. See, next time, Louise, we're going to have a cameraman. You know that, don't you? Really? We're going to have a cameraman. And do you know who's going to be the cameraman? Who? Matt. <laughs> what? Our Matt. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. 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 He'd be good. He'd be good, wouldn't he? Yeah. So I don't. Um, you haven't, you're just telling him you're not going to ask him then. No, I told him he's, he's doing oh. it next time. Oh right, you just told him. <laughs> I'm just. Told, I told him yesterday. Oh. <laughs> you see, he said anything I can do to help. And I said yes, you can. Yes, he's going to regret saying that. Isn't you he? can be cameraman. <laughs> you can be the cameraman for next time. So I don't know why we haven't got anything coming out of this one here. I'm Nick's not working for texture plates. Anybody else having trouble with the links for the... Oh, hang on, what did you do then? What was happening then? You made my screen go all funny. Okay. Oh, Any I'm better? back. Yeah, 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 that's fine. You back? Yeah, I'm back as well. <gasps> there we go. Okay. How are we doing, Louise? Okay? Yes, I think we're okay. Super duper. Let's put those... Focus. Oh, I'll change focus. Is it snow? Okay. <sighs> all right, so I'm back now. This is what we've got. We've got, let's bring that close up camera to the side there. So. Can you, um, yeah, can, I love the foam. I'll be more diligent with my environmental footprint in other ways. Is there any way you can get um, um, recycled foam? I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. But I totally understand where you're coming from. Um, no, there's no competition between the texture plates, sorry. <laughs> Good luck, Matt. Cameraman duties, yeah. Next time. <laughs> okay, so here is the link to win Shank Bender. Um, no, I haven't got the Shank Bender yet. No, I've been putting that up. Have you? Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, we'll, we can, hang on, we can have I in. dropped a... No, no, but... Oh, the Shank yes, Bender's the on, but I haven't come to that yet. Oh, but that's, that's yeah, no but worries. No, but, yeah, oh, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Phew. All right. So and the needle and the needle files. Needle files. Cause we're going to be playing around with some needle files. So what I want to do next, because we've, we've textured. In fact, let me just quickly take a picture of this for a bit of social media. Um, very very quickly. Nice. <laughs> there we go. So that's what we've got, okay? We've got lovely, lovely textures, but what you'll find now is the fact they have become work hardened. So we need to make sure now that these are nice and soft, because otherwise, oh, this is so noisy, they're not gonna bend, are they? So let's pop them over there out of the way for a moment. So let's quickly anneal these. We're gonna use, um, a nice soft broad flame we're going to heat these up we're going to anneal them because i need to basically work with these now and make sure that they are nice and uh, nice and soft for the next stage let's just anneal this uh, should try and do this under better conditions the studio lights are really really bright There we go, so that's that one, just a bit of pink coming onto that one. This one. Nice, and then this one. This one's gonna take a little bit more heat, a little bit bigger. There we go. Alright, so that's going to be nicely annealed. Whilst that's cooling down, I'm going to sh show you something that we're going to be using and that you're going to be in with a chance of winning it free as well. Let's have a bit of a drink a minute. Mm. So as Louise just quite rightly said, there's one piece of equipment that... I'm at, actually, I'm, I'm that far behind I haven't even unboxed mine yet. I'm that far behind, Louise. So this is the shank bender. 
This is Durston's um, 11 piece, uh, let's go into that camera, Durston's 11 piece shank bender. You can win this by entering the competition that Louise has been putting up in the chat. And we'll actually unbox this and we shall see exactly what it's all about. This one is one of Durston's new um, shank bender. Yes, this is, yes. Let's just unwrap this. And you've got a chance of winning one of these by entering into the competition that Lewis has been putting up. And if, unfortunately, if you're not, um, if you don't happen to win, you can still get 25% off your Durston products by entering the coupon AUTUMN25 in Durston's checkout. Let's just try and make this place a little bit tidier. So that's one. Uh, let's just go on to camera number three and make that a bit wider. See, if Matt was here, we could actually get this. There we go. Is that better? That's a little bit better. Not brilliant, but it's a little bit better. Uh, number two, make it a bit wider, perhaps. Yes, there we go. So then this is the shank bender. This is going to enable us to bend the metal. You don't necessarily need to have this uh, piece of equipment, but as Matthew was saying, Andrew, what do you want to give away? I said, well, I'll tell you what, how about a shank bender? <laughs> Let's just put that down my bench to protect it. So what does the shank bender entail, I hear you ask? Perhaps I should have actually unwrapped this a little bit before today to see what the hell thing was going on about. So the idea of the shank bender is you've got this. This is the shank bender itself. It enables you to force the metal, um, the dies around the metal, which forces the metal into a particular shape. Whilst we're on air, let me just put this together whilst I'm talking to you. I didn't think you were actually going to come in bits like this. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't think it would be as complicated. No, I'm mind joking. So let's just, we've got some, um, do, 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 do they go in there? No, they don't. So we've got some little bolts here. Let's just go onto here so we can see what we're doing. We've got some bolts. They go in, they go into there, and then they will screw in like that. Do you want a couple of questions? This is, this is real raw stuff, isn't it? Yeah, go on, fire away, Louise. What other questions have we got that are coming in? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said you want some questions, but they're not prepared. Can you explain how to use, a couple of people have asked about um, botanical material, leaves, that sort of thing. Yeah, we, we did this last time, didn't we? Yeah, we, we, we used did. it. You can do it exactly the same, um, but what you'd do, you'd have um, perhaps a piece of, of, of copper, then you'd have uh, perhaps a piece of grass, then your metal on the top, and then you can sandwich that in a bit of paper and pass through. Um, I wouldn't necessarily pass your silver and the grass right next to the roller mill. I always make sure there's another cover on top of the grass or anything like that. It just protects your roller mill should it be a bit damp or perhaps you're trying to put something through the roller mill that's going to be a little bit too hard and it may mark the mills. But by having your, um, your bit of silver, that's not a very good thing to, to try and show you, is it really? Anyway, you, get generous, you make a nice sandwich. You have a bit of copper, you put your organic material, your silver, and then you can pass the whole thing then through the rolling mill, a bit of paper around the outside, and you should be absolutely fine with that. Any more questions, Eloise, now? Mm. Uh, Story's asking, when annealing silver and gold after heating it to dull red, can I quench it in water? If yes, how long after can I take the flame away? Okay, so what I... It would suggest you do is this you can as soon as you you've heated it up you can put it straight away in acid that is what i would normally do and that really does help it quench by the side of me here i've got something a little bit different at the moment this is a baby bottle warmer okay this is a baby little bottle warmer where i've got a water bath and then inside here is my acid 
The reason why I'm using that today is that I plugged in my proper safety pickle warmer and it blew the electric. So I didn't want to take a chance today of anything happening because if the electric goes off, everything goes off. So that's the reason why I brought that up from downstairs, but that's what I use. But yeah, I just put those in my warm pickle and literally within seconds, they are nice and clean. Now, I do have stainless steel tweezers and I can put my stainless steel tweezers in my safety pickle with no worries. As you can see, they just went in and we have got two pieces of silver now that are nice and being pickled basically. And the stainless steel tweezers don't harm the safety pickle at all. So you're quite safe. I'm just gonna put that half and half in there. You're quite safe to do that. You can use brass tweezers, you can use plastic tweezers. It really, really doesn't matter. All right, now we've got our two strips. We're just, just literally gonna put this together. Uh, what size diameter are we gonna use? Uh, da -ba -da -ba -dum. Let's use 16 mil, 18 mil. All right, with these dies you've got, uh, this is the metal part that goes in here. Okay, then you've also got corresponding metal dies. Uh, zoom in. You've got corresponding metal dies and also Delrin dies. So that's what we're going to be doing now. As I said, you don't have to use this equipment. You can simply get a pair of half round pliers and just bend this around with your half round pliers. You can simply do that. It's entirely up to you. As I've got one of these to give away, it just makes sense to show you what this is all about. Now, how long do you make this piece of metal? <clears throat> there are lots of tables out there. Uh, what we've got here is a ring uh, blank length table. We can work out what length ring blank we want depending on what thickness metal we want. Um, and on this, you can pick these up from most places on, on the internet. It's called length of ring blanks. Across the top, we've got the thickness of the metal. Down the side here, we've got the finger sizer. Here in the UK, we go from A to Z plus six. So for argument's sake, if I wanna make this a size P, this metal thickness now is, let's get this on here. So this metal thickness is now, in fact, it must be one millimeter, because this is 0.9. So we're gonna class this as um, 0.8 here. So we can come down the 0.8 to the side of where the size P is. So come across with the P. Uh, the metal should be 59.1 millimeters. And this is the best way to get the exact length that you want. Now, as what I always say is you never cut the metal straight away. If you cut the metal to 59 millimeters, there's hardly a chance you're gonna get the ends absolutely parallel, okay? Because if you cut it wonky on this side and this side's wonky as well, when the ends come together, you're gonna have to start to file it and then your 59 millimeters is gonna get shorter and shorter and shorter and your finger size then will be smaller and smaller. So I would never ever think about cutting the metal yet. I'd get my ruler, uh, which camera, that one? Yes, let's zoom in on this one now. So I would get my cam, my camera, my ruler, get my bit of metal, and I wanted 59.1. I'm just gonna come in a little bit on the side here with a bit of a mark, come along to 59 millimeters, and that comes to there. So I've got a mark on my silver. That is important, but I'm not gonna cut it. Now I would get, whether it be your half round pliers and bend it round, or what we're gonna be using now is the shank bender in the vise. Just bend that round now until the ends come together so they just come and perhaps overlap. So let me just remove all this from here. So what I'm looking for now is for you either to use the shank bender or your half rounds or tap it round a mandrel, something like that. So your metal will come along like this and that'll come around underneath like that. Okay, so that's what I'm looking. I'm looking for the ends to overlap, okay, like that. So you have one mark here and you've got one mark here. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're just gonna run over to the um, what's that thing called over there? The vice. 
Let's just quickly run over there and we shall get one of the Delrin steaks. And let's just quickly make that round. In the meantime, Louise, questions? Questions. People are talking about what they're using instead of a pickle pot. Yep. Jalabre uses his wife's old wax warmer. Oh, yeah, cool. okay. Uh, slow cooker. Yep. Bought from Macar Booty for one pound. Nice. Um, yeah. Cool. That's what we got. What is the thickest gauge metal that can be used on the shank bender? Um, you can, if you use the metal dies, I'm sure you could get up to at least one and a half, two millimeters. I've never really tried. The metal that we're using here is one millimeter, uh, one millimeter silver. But in fact, I tell a lie, three milli two millimeter, two and a half millimeter square. I think I've done a three millimeter square, but you couldn't use the Delrin dies. You'd have to use the metal dies for that because the Delrin would so squidge a bit too much. Um, a slow cooker, yeah, I find a slow cooker is for me would be too big for my situation. But a little baby bottle warmer, if all you're doing is small little pieces, would be absolutely brilliant. I've used snake skin before too. Uh, wow, comes out can, lush. Can you imagine? I love that word. <laughs> <laughs> comes out lush. Comes out lush. Comes out lush. Mm -hmm. um, anything else on there? Wedding, yeah, um, wedding cupcake wrappers are fab. There are lots of people who do laser cut card as well that you can use for um, for textures as well. Any but other ideas for what you can use? Anything in place of a, a texture plate. Anything you can use. Let's say kitchen towels. You can use a bit of wood although that would obliterate the wood, obviously. Mm. Um, as you say, grass, we did grass last year. Yeah. We didn't, we did the grass heads last year. Um, a ball of string, some fabric, some, some um, netting, um, fishnet stockings. I don't know, I'm, do I'm, do I'm just, <laughs> just, just clutching at straws here or clutching at fish. The world's oh, your oyster. It is, but anything that you think that would impart a texture upon the metal, you could easily use. Um, Bubble wrap, as I said, netting is really good, um, like pea netting. Um, yeah, just let your, um, as I said, um, like drapes, um, net curtains, anything that you think. Nice texture paper. Bit of lace. Thick, bit of lace, laced, yeah. Doilies. Mm. Mm. Whatever you want, whatever, ever you want. Right, let's just go across over here a minute now. So here now is the shank bender. We've got everything in position here. Here is the lever that we're gonna move back and forth. Hope everyone can still see. Yep, yeah, yeah cool. Undies, I may have done this. Pardon? Who? What's that? Lace undies. Later. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any lace undies, Louise, like you can use? We won't go there, will we? Right, okay, so, uh, so we, we're gonna be producing, uh, it says 18 millimeters on here, but we, um, the metal has a memory, so it may make that just that little bit bigger. So let's just pop that into place. And as we push this, it's gonna be pushing the metal around the shank bender, around this part here. What I'd suggest you do is that once you've bent one end, you wanna turn it around and bend the other end as well. Whilst you've got it, as we've got it there, okay? So we're getting this sort of shape. I know this is a bit overkill for the metal that we're using, but basically you can win one of these. You can win one of these shank benders. Um, well, how much is this worth, Louise? 300, 280, 300 pounds, something um, like that. One second. Um, the sh oh, shank bender is worth 270 pounds. 270 pounds worth of equipment that you can easily be in a chance of winning. Uh, wrong one, Andrew. Where's number three? Number two. There we go. So that is what we've just made up quite easily using the shank bender. I do like this uh, slight uneven edge, but we can come to that a little bit later. Let's go back onto the bench now and let's sort this out. Next, let's move the cameras around. <coughs> okay, there we go. So let's now I can remove all this off my um, off my bench. So basically, with this kit, the uh, there are extra little rods that will go into the base of here. Let's just widen that so you can see what I'm looking at. 
These will go into here. This will then go on top like that. Okay, so this is up here out of the way like that. And then this can be moved out of the way to gain access. And it all is very neatly put together in a nice little compact um, little set. I absolutely love it. Okay, let's just pop that down on the floor out of the way so we don't get that confused. Oops, a daisy. Okay, that's that. Let's turn this around in here as well. Like that there. Let's fill that up again. So, there we go. All right then. So we've got, um, and my other one is there. So with this other one, we can do exactly the same with what we did with this one. Let's make this up again to whatever size you want. Um, excuse the noise, the noise is coming from my burner, my burner might. Okay, so let's mark that one. And we can do exactly the same with this one, but we can use the... Um, the half round pliers. Again, if you're using the half round pliers, bend the first part, then swap over onto the other side and bend that. It just makes life far, far easier because you can hold on to this length whilst you just bend that around, okay? Then if you want to, you can get your mandrel and then you can put that up on the mandrel and just bend that around. D Green, 20 pounds, you're 20 euro, sorry. Thank you, you are a star. Thank you very much for all the donations that are coming in. Really, really do appreciate it. So there we go, that's what we've got. Two rings we're gonna be quickly making up. So these are the rings, we're gonna be doing some soldering next. Let's just check all these little bits on the floor. As I said, we've got two hours to, to sort of to play around with this. So that's the reason why I'm not rushing too much on this now because we can just work through this. There we go. Everything okay? It's cold as hell, shut the, shut the door there. <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry, it's okay. All right, so this is what we got. Let me adjust my camera a second on the top whilst um, Louise is just going to uh, put up some coupon codes, a coupon code, some codes on the chat a second. If you don't mind, Louise, the camera's on you now. So just okay. put some codes on there as well. Let's just... Oh, just general, general codes? Yep, yeah, general codes, what we got, yep. Yeah. Um, so that the, you can, in this particular segment of the 12 hour, you can win uh, the shank bender that I've just shown you and also something that's going to come up any moment Ooh. shortly, any moment shortly. Um, yes, so I'm sure some of you may have seen on Durston's website already, it's a brand new piece of equipment that I only just got in yesterday, was it yesterday wasn't it, I had in? Yesterday, day before yesterday, day before yesterday, but yesterday I tried it for the first time. The first person to ever have it. Yeah, first person to ever, ever have it. Yes, ever, ever, first ever. Person ever. ever. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, so, so you go down a millimetre. What's the biggest torch you have there, please, Andrew? Um, I've got a sieve. Oh, my kiss off. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, Scott. I'm back. What gauge are you using for the ring? Okay, so I know you guys in America um, look at gauges. Uh, we don't here in the UK. Where's my bit of paper gone, Louise? I had a bit of paper with my gauges on, so I knew I would not forget. I knew I'd be asked this question. Is it in here? Ah, it is. Thank you, Hayley. So yeah, one millimeter is what we're using. One millimeter is around about 18 gauge in the US. So 18 gauge is 1.02. Um, 18 or 19 gauge I'm using for the ring, but you can go a lot, lot thicker. Hayley, thank you very much. Right, um, so also within the hour, we are gonna be giving away, perhaps, yeah, what the heck, um, new concept saws. We, uh, we love our new concept saws. Wrong camera, Andrew, get the right camera. This is the new concept saw. I will talk about this just for a moment. Um, Brian at New Concepts is very kindly donating or giving away two of these new concept saws. They are the ones with the lever action on the top. 
The best thing about these saws is the fact that you don't have to go about tensioning the blade. You get the blade, you put it into the holders, you, obviously it's quite loose, you put the lever over the top and it's going so it gets tensioned the same every single time. So you don't have to worry about pushing your into the sternum here or pushing your shoulder in to get the right tension. You get the tension every single time. And Louise is gonna put up into the chat the competition to win one of two of these saws. And it's gonna be about an hour or so before we draw the competition for this. So there's lots of things to enter for this particular competition. You've got the competition to win the shank bender, competition to win the velorb uh, needle files, and also the new concept saw. Yep, mm -hmm. makes sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right then, let us now um, cut through. So we've got the, let's just move this camera now because we're slightly off. Let's move that to there, there we go. We've got our marks on here that we have. And now we're actually gonna think about cutting through. We've got our two marks there and there that we put on. And the idea is now you simply make sure that the metal is nice and flat as you can see there, and we've got our two marks, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut through. If, you, if you're clever enough, you can cut through in one go across the two marks. If not, cut them in two separate areas. But the important thing is you cut through exactly keeping the metal on the peg. This way, you don't turn the metal over. So we come along, we cut one side, and then we cut the other side. How's these cameras looking? Okay, can't go on that one just yet, because that's gonna be in time for the soldering. So let's move that to there. There we go. All right, we're gonna find the marks that we put on, which was one is by there, and one was by there. So that's that in there. So now we get it onto our peg, we get our saw, and we just simply cut through. Like that. And the way I look at it is that if you've made a funny cut going this way, you just simply move the metal around. And if you happen to cut at an angle this way naturally, and you come around to the other side and you cut it an angle funny the other side, well then you can be guaranteed that the ends are gonna go together nice and parallel. And they come across like that. And now when your two ends come together, I'll just simply just push these together. But as you can see, when these two ends come together, they are going to be parallel. All right? Just like that. Obviously, I'm going to bend it now so they're going to be nice and tight. But as you can see, the ends are parallel. You don't have to go getting a file to file one side because you've measured it to 59 millimeters. If you've got 59 millimeters and you start to file one of the ends a bit shorter, you're gonna find that that 59 is gonna be less, you're gonna be down to 58 and a half, perhaps even 58 millimeter. So the finger size is gonna get shorter and shorter. So don't cut the metal. Bend it first, once you've bent it, then you cut it and you don't have to go playing around then trying to get the ends parallel because the ends will be parallel every single time, guarantee. All right then, let's just quickly just turn that around in there, like that there. I need a bit more, no, nope, I think we should be fine. So we're gonna be using some hard solder. It's important now because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be flaring the ends on this ring. So the... Should I put the coat on? No, we haven't got... <laughs> Don't let it. I can't. <laughs> We're going to be flaring the ends of, yes. So the metal, I think, was one millimeter originally. It went through the rolling mill. It's a little bit less than one millimeter now. Anything thicker, you're going to have problems trying to flare it. Um, anything thinner, and it's going to be too soft. We're using some hard solder next. Hard solder is going to be the best type of solder to use because it contains the most, in this case, silver. It's the strongest type of solder for what we're doing. So we're gonna cut um, a little pallion, and I'm gonna cut our two little pallions for this and just pop them on my block. Let's see if we can get an overhead shot now on what we're doing, see how close we can get on this. Nice. So here is our joint. We've cut through the joint. 
Let's move on to the other camera as well now so we can really see what we're doing here. Bear with me a minute, guys. There we go, there we go. So we've got the joints. We're just gonna bend this joint now to the ends so the ends come together nice and tight. And as you can see, we don't need to go filing. You can see the ends come together. And I just wish more people would make joins like this because it just makes your life so much easier. And also, you notice the ring is round. Oh, please, please don't, <laughs> please don't do this. Please don't make it so you've got this sort of shape when you come to solder your rings, please. Please don't make it into a D shape like this. So it's like that shape and there's your join across here. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. It's not the right way. Make the ring round. You put less stress on the joint because if you happen to bend the ring into that shape, you're gonna have to bend this area into the ring shape and it puts an awful lot of stress on the joint. So please don't cut the metal, bend it around. Once you bent it round, then you can cut it, please. Okay. That was a very heartfelt plea. It was. Please, <laughs> oh please, don't. Please, just just do it. If there's one thing, if there's one thing you come away from today, is that you make rings this way. And I know Andrew is being big-headed, but I did a film a few years ago saying everybody's making rings the wrong way you make it this way. And it was a very controversial film and that's basically what I did because I wanted to see what sort of reaction I got. A lot of people said, yes, Andrew, your way is the best. We've, we've been taught the other way, but we tried your way, that is the best. I'm not sure people really saw Melissa, sorry, Melissa, Mrs. Bliss is saying, did you cut through both sides at the same time? I couldn't quite see from the angle. Sorry, I didn't, yeah. no. Mm. If you can line up that particular mark, you can cut in one go. I cut one side and then I cut the other side. I didn't turn the metal over. I just came along and cut the one, <coughs> one side and then the other. Yeah. Hmm. All right then. So that is the one thing that I would, I would stress. Um, and it was such a controversial film that I think Rio Grande picked it up and, uh, and they did a little bit of a test to see if actually it was quicker. Now, within their film, they said it took exactly the same time, but they cheated. What they didn't show you was when it came to do the second method, the ends of their bit of metal was already cut and measured. So if you take that into account, my method was a lot quicker than theirs. Mm, Teresa just said, I remember Rio did a video comparing your way to other methods and agreed that your way was better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but they did, but they did cheat. I think they came up with, they, they timed both methods and um, yes. Does Louis. your way even work with thick bands? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it does. It became, I'm using a wide bit of metal here, but you saw the ends come together perfect because when you saw and you saw, sometimes you, you saw and you may saw naturally at a slight angle, but if you cut the other side at a slight angle, well then those two angled sides will come together perfect. But if you happen to saw at an angle uh, when you have the piece in a strip and then you cut the other end, when the ends come together, they're not going to come together parallel. They're going to be like this and there's going to be a gap in between that you've got to file. And if you file it, you're making the metal shorter and it's not going to be the right size. And this is the thing. This is what people really, really um, get stressed out about is the fact that the rings are never the right size. But do it this way and you'll guarantee you that the rings will always be the right size. Right then. The joint is looking good. It's absolutely perfect. Um, get one of your velour needle files. If you don't have a velour, you've got a chance of winning it. Um, and just go over, oh, just tip them all over my desk. There we go. And just need to go over the, um, the joint now, just to make sure that everything is nice and clean. He says he just drops the ring. Come onto the inside and make sure the inside of the ring is nice and clean as well, where we're going to solder. So what you don't want is any fingerprints or any grease or any oxides on the surface. Because we've got a pattern on this ring as well, we've got a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. I'm not gonna put the solder on the outside. I'm gonna put the solder on the inside of the ring. I'm gonna try and do this so I can get a nice close-up from the side camera. 
on this if I possibly can. That's about as close as I can get, I'm afraid, for that camera on the side. Obviously, yes, Louise. Yeah, we're going to talk about, there's a lot of soldering questions coming up, but there is going to be a soldering masterclass at four o'clock. Yes. A two hour soldering masterclass on soldering and granulation. So, but people are asking specifically, how do you stop the solder running? Mm -hmm. This is a pattern that I was in. It, yes. So, mm. Yeah. So that is the reason why I am using what I'm doing. I'm soldering from the inside of the ring out. The solder likes to go to the heat. Okay, the hotter the section that the solder is going to move. So if you had a piece of metal and you melted the solder and you move the torch to the one side, the solder will follow because the solder likes and is attracted to the heat of the torch. Not necessarily gravity, so don't believe what people say about solder loves gravity. Solder will travel upwards. If the heat is going up, you can pull the solder up against gravity. So don't believe what, what all that people tell you when it comes to that solder will travel upwards. It likes the heat and is attracted to the heat. So what we're doing, we have got our ring here. Here is the inside of the ring like this. Um, there we go. So this now is the inside. The pattern is on the outside of the ring, but this is the inside. We're going to put a pallion of solder on the is that right? I can't even draw Louise. Oh, I, I, can't even, I can't even draw them. My mind, I need, I need something to eat. Is that the pattern on the top? That's the pattern, yeah. <laughs> That's Andrew's texture plate pattern. A bit of bleh. That's lower plates. So lovely. Yeah, it's lovely that. Every leather pattern plate like that. So we're going to put the solder on the inside because solder loves the heat. If we put the solder on the outside is Andrew's gorgeous texture plate pattern. If you put the solder on the outside, because the heat is on the outside, the solder is going to go and it's going to flow in all these areas here and it's going to fill up some of the texture. There are ways that you can stop the solder from flowing. You can use things like yellow ochre. You can use some whiteout, some correction fluid. You can use some um, rouge. You can use some pencil lead. And if you wanted to, you could fill in some of the detail of the um, texture with a little bit of that if you're unsure with your soldering. But if you don't use too much solder, the solder will not flow and fill up those textures. And this is the reason why I'm soldering from the inside, is that now when I heat up, the flame is going to be in this angle, this area by here. This is my flame, okay, here. And because this area around here is going to be hot, the solder is going to melt in this area here. Because on the outside, there is no flame, the solder will not flow through and fill the joint because it's underneath. The hottest part is this side. The solder will stay primarily this side, but it will go through the gap because it loves capillary action. And if there's two surfaces that are touching, the solder will flow. Okay. <laughs> you right, Delete. You have it. <laughs> so that is the reason why we're soldering from the inside. On the outside, the solder is going to flow and fill. The inside, the solder is not going to flow to the outside. Hope that makes a lot of sense. Um, so we've got our uh, ring. We've got a couple of pieces of solder by here. We're going to just get a little pallion and I'm just going to dab it onto the inside of this area here like that. So that is what we've got. A torch to warm this up. I did have the other bit of solder by there in case I need it. I don't think I'm going to. We're going to put some of the, thank you, Sally. Really do appreciate the, the 21.99 euros. Fantastic, thank you very much for everybody who is donating for cancer research today. Really, really do appreciate this. So we're gonna put the torch on the outside. The flux is gonna to start to bubble up. You can't really see too well. I wish we could get a bit of a closer picture on that one camera. Coming along, we're gonna try and get the camera a little bit closer for the next time. Just move the solder where you want it. Okay, so here we go. Solder any second now is going to go. There we go, perfect. So the solder has flowed on the inside. And if you look to the outside, you can just see where the solder has just come through. 
we can get here. Uh, not quite, Andrew. Ish, 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 there. So there is the solder joint. That is the flux that you can see. Let's just make sure the solder has come through. You can warm up the outside if you want to, just to make sure. And what I'm looking for is a very faint sliver of silver as it comes through. Beautiful. All right, that's looking good. Let's just quickly pop that into the safety pickle. I don't have a lid on this one. Oh gosh, unfortunately. There we go. Okay, so that now is what we have. And I'll quickly show you on this close-up camera by here now that the solder has not filled in that pattern. Uh, here we go. Uh, that's about as close as we're going to get. And you can see, you can see the solder seam, but you can see that the solder has not filled in the pattern. Okay, I hope that makes a lot of sense. I'm just going to leave that in the acid. I've got a bit of uh, flux on the inside on the inside of that. We're going to pop that into the safety pickle for that to clean up. And I'm quickly now just going to make up the other ring that I've got. <coughs> in fact, while I'm doing this, I'm just going to... You're doing well for time. Hmm? You've got a good... Hour. Mm. 40 minutes. Yeah, 35, 40 minutes. That's okay. That's okay. We're doing well. Mm -hmm. Doing well. Um, so don't forget, if you can win one of these new concept saws, I think... I think um, I used to have an association with a company called Sutton Tools many years ago. And one of the first trade shows I did for Sutton Tools, um, we demonstrated these new concepts saws. Um, they were brand new out in the UK. They were the UK distributor. Um, this was, it must have been about, about nine years ago, perhaps. And we demonstrated these saws and they literally sold out within the morning of the trade show. I love the saws. Some people love green lions, some love they're Swiss make, they're adjustable frames and so forth. I absolutely love this one. And you can see how light this is. This is so, so light, titanium. Um, it looks very space ages, as you can see. So yeah, I love this saw. It's got the lever on the end. You can adjust it. You can make sure this the same tension every single time. Uh, let me just quickly cut this. Any questions, Louise, just shout them out and I'm just going to make up this other band here. But any questions, just shout them out, please. Uh, does quenching right away put stress to the metal? Um, it will do if it's, if it's red hot, yes. But if you just let it cool down to a bit of a black heat, you should be fine. Next. Yes. <laughs> um, there was a question earlier on about how do you resize the spinner ring once you made it? Okay. Um, you've got problems because you would have to, if you try and resize it and make it bigger, you can't stretch it, otherwise the spinning part is not going to spin. Mm. You can't really shrink it because there's no way of shrinking it. So it's going to be really hard to resize it. You'd have to cut off the outer bands first. Yeah. So you've got the inner band left. Resize the inner band to the right size. You'd have to try and get the pieces back over. It is a lot of hassle to try and do, absolutely. So the thing to do is not to, um, uh, not to resize them. <laughs> And that's it's an easy way out, but it's very hard to resize them. I'm sure um, this one I made uh, yesterday, um, we could make a little bit bigger because the center band is a little bit loose, as you can see. So if need be, we could make that slightly bigger by stretching it, by perhaps putting it on an upright ring stretcher to stretch it perhaps about a size. But it'd be very hard to reduce that without cutting a section out of it. So try not to resize try and make it the right size first go um, any more questions Louise uh, lots of questions about soldering with the texture yeah um, we've addressed that haven't we uh, lots of uh, love for your method of making rings thank you thank you uh, avoiding soldering and pattern um, what else we've got? Do you have a preference for a specific saw blade when doing this spinner ring? Um, not really um, in the sense of size or brand. Um, I always use um, a three stroke O. Um, these ones are uh, Super Pike. These are three stroke O. This is basically my go-to blade. I, I, 
I very, very rarely change to a different blade. They say you should use a thicker blade for thicker metal, thinner blade for thinner metal, because you've got to have three teeth in contact with the metal at all one time. I agree, but I'm too lazy, and I use a three-stroke O blade. Make sure you get branded blades, Hercules, a gold, a laser, super pike, Valorb, I think the Valorb are the super pike, but make sure they're branded blades. Don't buy cheap unbranded blades because it is important that the blades are being made correctly. If they haven't been made correctly, the teeth may be more prominent on, the, on one side than the other. So when you cut, they'll cut in a different direction to where you should be cutting. So I would always err on branded blades because they're gonna be the best for you to use. Um, any more questions? And let's get that bit of solder on the inside. I think it may be a little bit big, this bit of solder, but I'll solder this now. So we're going to warm this piece up. Did you find the right size blades for the concept saws? Mine are very just in the way. They were very. What did you say, sorry, Louise? They did were very. Did you find the right size blade for the concept saws? Mine are very just in length. Um, they're, they're pretty much standard, but that's the reason why I usually stick to a particular brand of blades because then every single time when it goes into the saw frame, um, it's always going to be the same size. So I would always stick to a particular brand. I think they should be, is it 165 millimeters long, something like that? I think they are, if I remember right. Um, yeah, but once you've got the right size branded saw, it, it, it's so easy then coming along and putting it into the saw frame. So I'm going to leave that one in there. Let's get the other one out a minute. Uh, so what other one it was that one there? So this is what we've got now. As you can see, this is the one, the first ring we just did. Um, all the borax has been taken off the inside. It's all nice and clean. So. Let's put the solder away. Let's put the tweezers down there. Um, I got to think about what we're doing. So this is going to be the spinner ring. So we just want to make uh, this nice. So I'm not going to remove any of the solder off the inside of the band just yet. If we do that now, we may make the metal a little bit thinner. So when it comes to flaring out the edges, it would stretch more on the thinner edge. So always try and not file if you possibly can to make the metal thinner. Because the thinner the metal, the more it will stretch. Obviously on the outside, I'm just gonna buff the outside <clears throat> just to get the, uh, the join nice, but it's not gonna take hardly any uh, buffing at all. I would normally do it on the end here. So that is literally all I'm going to do. Um, outside edge. I do love it when it's slightly um, ragged and not completely smooth. When we, we texture it, the edges become slightly wavy and I love that effect on, on a spinner ring. I don't necessarily like the edges completely smooth. Some people do, some people don't. I really don't mind. So I'm not gonna remove any solder off the inside of the band. Put that upon your mandrel and just gently tap it. And what I'm looking for now is just to gently tap this round. So I'm not looking for anything in particular. Um, a size P is what I wanted. Let's just tap that over and bring that down. So a size P is what I wanted. And, you know, obviously you can see now there's no wizardry, there's no, um, <laughs> there's no nothing. And you can see that that band, here we go. Uh, let's have a look, we've got there, we've got M, N, there's O, and then P is going to be underneath, and that's going to be Q. So you can see that the 59 millimeters was exactly right. I don't have to go playing around with the ring. If I had to file the ends of that band because it wasn't meeting flush, the ring would be smaller. But as you can see, I don't have to go messing around. Live, live on air, unedited, not edited, perfect results every time. So 
Yeah, okay, so that's the band that we've got. I'm gonna quickly make up something now to go on the middle. You can make up whatever you want. I've got some amazing types of metal that we can use to go on the inside now of our spinner ring. We got some gorgeous, gorgeous wires. Uh, can you focus on that? There we go. We got some gorgeous, gorgeous wires. Peter, thank you very much for the donation. Really, really do appreciate everything that's coming in. Really do appreciate it. We got some gorgeous section wire. Um, this I absolutely love. I love this. This is gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. So I've also got some beaded wire as well. And what is also quite nice is to have a bit of a contrast, perhaps have some silver and some copper. Um, I could make an, in fact, should I make up a little bit of a twist string? Yeah, let me make up a little bit, should I make a twist string to go on the inside of this? I said, yeah, go on, how long we got? 40 We've minutes? Got half an hour before we're having Q&A so right. on, um, on the spinner ring. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let me make up something to go on the inside. Let me make up, um, uh, a bit of a twist. I want to make a bit of a, a twist to go over this ring. I've got a bit of copper wire. Uh, this is going to be half a millimeter thick. There's my length of copper wire. Bend it in half until it just comes together. And I'm just going to go over across to that side now. I'm just going to twist this and you can see what I'm going to be doing on that. Bear with me a moment. Any questions, Louise, that come in since um, then? Nope, just catching up a minute. Okay, yep, no worries. Um, let's just make that there. Let's just do that there. Where there. are your wires from? The wires, they're from um, a, a variety of places. Some of them from Cookson. I think some of them were from, from Rash Bell um, here in the UK. Uh, but there's lots of different types of, uh, of wires you can get. You can get beaded wires, you can get like gallery strips and so forth. So you can get some gorgeous, gorgeous wires. Um, let's bring this camera around nice and close to here. So when it comes to putting things into the vise when you want to twist, do this to the ends, okay? Bend over the ends so they cross over like that. So when they go in the vise, they're gonna be trapped. Don't leave them straight hoping that the vise is gonna hold on to both of them. If you bend the ends over so they cross, when the vise tightens, the vise will hold both of those pieces together like that. Okay, so pop that into the vise like that. Here's the wire, nice and straight. We're gonna to come to the end. I'm gonna get my scribe here. I'm gonna to come to this side over here so we can hopefully see what we're doing. Ooh, how do you get the join of the patterned wire to match up? Right, sometimes you can't. But what you would do is get the pattern to match and then you'd size the ring afterwards. But we can just come to that now in a moment. So let's, this camera's in the way now for me. So let's just twist this round and around and around. So this is very, very quick. I hadn't actually prepared this, but let's just quickly do this. You can twist it like that. And then we're gonna get a nice twist upon the, easy, upon the wire like that. Nice, like that. I'm gonna be really quick on this now. I'm gonna put this now through the uh, rolling mill and I can just desection this wire as well. So let's just cut off there and there. So here's my little bit of wire. Just gonna pop that through the rolling mill like that. Let's just tighten it even more so. Da, 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 da. There we go. Okay, let's just desection this wire. There we go. A bit more. Nice. So we've just desectioned that wire, and that's looking really, really nice and gorgeous. Let's bring this camera back round so we can all see what we're doing. 
uh, where are we to? There. All right, so that's what we've got. We've got this nice band. We can make two of these bands to come around this ring if we wanted to. Don't forget, because we have um, put it through the Ronin mill and we twisted it, it's quite hard. So we're just going to anneal this. We're gonna warm this up. Make it a little bit on the softer side. Now remember where we measured the length that we wanted to make the ring. That size was quite important because that size has to fit the client. Um, now we don't necessarily have to measure this exactly. We can wrap this around the ring and mark off where we want the rings to be because this sort of measurement isn't as important. The only necessity with this is to make sure that the, uh, the metal or the, the other ring will just about spin. There we go, pop that into there like that. How's my bit of silver doing in here now? Oh yes, looking nice. All right, that's for a little bit later on this afternoon, this evening. Super, super, super. So that now is our little bit of copper. How's everyone doing here now? Desection, half round, yes, desection. Desection, 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 blah, 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 it's going too fast. I have a question about soldering with a, a steel mesh. My flame and heat somehow cannot get to the ring mesh on the upper side when I'm heating from beneath from the screen. Um, I don't normally deal with um, screen meshes. I just simply find using um, a solder block like this and sometimes I would even go to using something like one of these, again, these little new concepts, little trivets, and, and I find that they're really good as well because the metal um, holds the, the, the soldered area up and you can get underneath. So I never use a steel screen. I find they're far more trouble than what they're worth. So there is our bit of um, copper, our copper twist. Um, where's our ring on? I've lost my ring now. Which one's this one? Ah, my doggy print. This is the one. So what I'm going to do now is just simply bend this wire around the ring itself and I'm not really worrying too much it's nice and soft I'm only going to make one ring out of this I think I don't have enough wire on this come along where these two overlap we can check out the design on this and just to see how close we're going to get it I'm not worried again too much on how this is going to be because I can always stretch this a little bit uh, so there and there we're going to just cut through that again. Don't forget with your new concept saw. Have you entered the competition to win one yet? Crochet hook also works well for twisting. Yeah, anything like that, you can put it into a handheld drill and do that or a, or a very slow electric drill if you want to do a long piece of metal. Um, okay, let's just quickly cut through um, that bit of metal as well. Let me see if we can come onto this and move this one around that way. There we go. So let's just cut through. Um, so I try and be flash and cut through both at the same time. Yeah, why not? So there and there and there. Let's just see if this will work. Should I cut through? No, I'm not going to be flash, Harry. I'm just going to cut through one at a time. So that's where I'm going to cut on this one. Let's move that round a bit that way so we can see what we're doing. There we go, that's better. So that's through that one there. And looking at the pattern, looking at how we're going with the pattern, that's that one there. And cut through here. And there may be a little bit of swarf cut up. So again, needle files, enter the competition to win the Valorb needle file set as well, uh, courtesy of Otto Fry. Come along with this now. And again, these ends should come together and the pattern should be looking good, as you can see. Onto the soldering block. For this small little bit of solder, so as everybody entered the competitions to win the prizes that are going to be available at the end of this hour. I hope you all have. I can use hard solder on this now as well. Put this back over to here so you can see what we're doing. I can use hard solder now. 
because I'm not uh, anywhere near another solder joint. Um, hard solder, hard solder. Cool, cool, cool. It's hard solder, isn't it? Yes. And we can make a small little pad in the solder. Now, I'm not worried about the discoloration, not discoloration, but the silver solder against the copper. I'm not concerned too much about that. It's only going to be a very, very small um, area that we're going to be soldering anyway, so I'm not concerned about the discoloration or the colour. Uh, let's get nice and close for this one. Um, I've lost my solder joint, is that good? Where's my solder joint? There it is over there. Solder's there, turn it over, make sure the solder has come through and is actually going along both of the wires. So that's down to a black heat. Pop that into the acid. So that's that ring done. This is getting exciting. Um, let's have a, what's the chat saying on here now? Impressed how quickly Andrew lined up and cut the pattern to run through. Um, it's just, it's just knowing exactly where to cut. Especially if you've got like a twist pattern. If you've got like a twist pattern where it just crosses over like this, yep. It's easy to cut across there and on this edge here, just cut through there. Then you can be guaranteed that those patterns are gonna match or cut through where they're biggest and likewise on this side where this one's biggest cut through there as well that's the easiest way now pardon? pardon so i'm just saying the camera's off which camera i don't know camera's off uh, um, are we okay are we good are we good yeah camera's off no yeah no okay no we're good we're good is that all right yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. how come i can't see myself on the on the television there we've gone really small now haven't we or are you okay on yours you blue you okay on those um, screen I'm there? I'm okay, yeah. Yep, yeah, cool, all right. So that's what we've done so far. I hope that's all going right. All good, all good. Yep, excellent. Um, now we can look at getting your um, tennis camera again. See, if I had Matt up here, it'd be awesome, wouldn't he? Right, uh, desection file. Let's just remove a little bit of solder off the inside and a little bit of solder on the outside. Just to try and smooth that in, that's all we need to do. Looking cool. Pop that up onto your mandrel. And at the moment, I'm not gonna tap it just yet. I just wanna see what size it is and see if that actually fits over the ring. We're looking at this now, here we go. That just about, in fact, that's absolutely perfect. Huh. Couldn't get it any better if I tried myself. That is an absolute perfect, perfect fit. I would try and err upon the smaller side when you make these little outer patterns, uh, rings, because you can put them onto the mandrel and then tap them slightly bigger just so they fit over. But that went on absolutely gorgeously. Let's just get um, a little block and just tap that straight, because it's not quite straight. Okie dokie, coming on really well with this. I'm really pleased with what we're doing so far. So that now is gonna be our, uh, the, uh, here we go. That's gonna be our center to go on top of the ring. Now it's time to polish up. Um, I've got a big polishing motor over there, but I'm just gonna try and use the uh, bristle brushes that I absolutely love. A bristle brush, bristle brush, bristle brush. Where's my bristle brush? Um, let's use a brown, oh no, there it is there. So when it comes to the pattern, you don't want to go too wild with the pattern. As you saw, the silver was nicely um, shiny at the start of it. It's still pretty shiny now, as you can see. All I'm going to do is just polish over gently over that join to start off with. Again, I'm not going to be polishing too harsh. I don't want to remove too much of the pattern. I'm not going to polish the inside yet, okay? So remember that. So let's just go on the outside. 
and just run it over the outside of the ring. And you can really do um, what you want with this. You can use liver sulfur afterwards just to make the pattern show up. Uh, you can leave it nice and shiny. I'm just going to leave it like that a moment. It's a little bit dirty, I know, but I'm just going to get my cloth. I actually don't have the ultrasonic turned on at the moment, so I'm a little bit stuck, but perhaps I'll put it on for a little bit later. Now then, this is the exciting thing, the exciting time. Traditionally, this is what you would do. Okay, so this is what we got. We got a steel block. We have got our copper ring that goes over our spinner ring like this. So this is the traditional way of, of doing this whole thing, okay? So what you would do, let me get the other camera pretty close on this because this is what we're gonna be doing. Um, Louis, oh, you're, yes. you're stuck, it's okay. No, I can, I can get That's out. Okay. So what you would traditionally do is, oh, I gotta get this punch out. <sighs> What? You're wondering what Andrew Berry's doing. <laughs> so what you would traditionally do is do this. You would get something like a ball punch onto the end of your spinner ring and then you get your hammer and you hammer. And as you hammer, that outer edge will flare. Okay, so you flare one side first, you turn the ring over, you put on the ring that is gonna be spinning and once that's in place, you get your punch again, put that on top, and you bang, you tap, and you flare the other side. And what happens when that goes on is, uh, is you have um, your ring here, okay, with Andrew Berry's gorgeous pattern. You then have your ball punch on here, and as the ball punch comes in, it'll just flare out the edges, okay? Because the action of this ball punch flares it out. You turn that over, you put your spinner ring in the middle and then you flare out the other side. Not anymore, not anymore. This is the old fashioned way of doing it. Now you may have seen um, occasionally on things like Etsy and so forth, a, a certain device that um, will do away with a punch and a hammer and a steel block, blocks, bl a steel block for flaring the edges. Now, this is the piece of equipment that I have been talking about. This is a ring flarer, a spinner ring flarer. It's not a unique, it's not an original idea, but it is something now that you can buy. And you can buy this for 40% discount on Durston's website, okay? I think it's 55 pounds normally, but with a 40% discount, it brings it down to, I don't know, 25, 28, 30 pounds, something like that. So it's this, this is what I've been sort of playing around with. We made a spinner ring yesterday, we made this ring yesterday, Louise has been wearing this today. And with this device, it enables you to, to flare out both sides of the ring at the same time. No hammering, no messing around with a, a dapping set or anything like that, or even getting a, a ball pane hammer to go around the outer edge of your ring. This will do it in one go and it'll flare both sides. So this is the reason why you don't take any metal off the inside of the ring because it's got to stretch evenly, all right? So this is what I've been going on about. So what we do, we take one end off, we put on our spinner, our ring, our spinner ring, and then we put the other cone on. And because we've got these cones, as we tighten the cones together, they will then flare out both ends of the spinner ring at the same time. Now, I know these devices have been available from various, various places. 
Cookson don't stock that. Uh, yeah, sorry, Cookson's nylon brushes are very poor. Yeah, I have to admit, I don't get mine f from Cookson. But the, the, don't get the bristle brushes. Get the white nylon brushes. Yes, Louise? Can I put the code out? Put the code up, Louise. Mm. So this is takes you directly to Durston's website. This is a 40% discount coupon code off only this item. This item will be 40% discount for the next week. There's been, what, uh, what do you do if you uh, don't have a ball and punch? I'm a beginner and don't have many tools. Um, a lot of people would use something like a ball pain hammer, um, something like that, and you'd have the ring, let me get the other ring out, let me, let me just, let me so you'd have the ring here and you get the ball pain hammer and you'd hammer around the outside. You'd flare it out that way. It's not the best way, but if you don't have many tools, a simple hammer, that's like that, it's a ball pane. So you've got the ball end there and you come along and you just tap on the outside of the edge all the way around, turn it over and likewise on that. And that is the cheapest, most basic way of flaring the edge. But if you're into making spinner rings, this is the tool to have, 40% off on Durston's. I know it looks very simple, I must admit, uh, this lady's not able to click links in there for a reason. Don't know. So go to Durston Tools, durstontools.com. No, I tell a lie, it's durston.com. On the top navigation bar, you've got new it or takes, new uh, in. I put the link on to take you straight to the product, I think. Let's double check. Just, it should take you tra straight to the, um, the spinner ring flare. It should do. Hang on. It's getting there. Um, shouldn't take this long, should it? We are just double checking Does the link. Does my code work, guys? Has anybody actually followed the... Mm. Durston.com, that's it, you got it. Does it work? Let me know. Does it work? Yeah, it, it does. does. Okay, it, do, it does take you to the... Because mine doesn't... Mine's not taking me to the right... It does take you to the actual page. The spinnering page. Cool. Okay. okay. Yeah, fab. That's okay. Cool. Just slow loading. Okay. Yeah. Mine, mine was slow. Great. Okay. Fab works. Good. Good. Uh, good, good. If good. it's not under the new tab, it's an. If not, it's it under the new tab. That's right. I made sure that slow they put it up there. I can't be patient. <laughs> it's not in my nature. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Great. All right. The website might be overloaded. Fabulous. <laughs> so yeah, go and buy. Brand new out. It was only put on the website yesterday. It's the first time this has been aired in public. Ooh, uh, misses. Uh, <laughs> um, so that is what we've got. It is this. It is the ring flare. Now, let me just show you how we're going to use it. You're going to need a spanner. Now. Right, how, long is the, how long is this code? This coupon code is available for a week. For the, for the, for the duration. For this, uh, the spinner flare. Yes. Cool. So if you can't get on straight away. Yes. Then. Um, I'm not quite sure on the quantity that Matthew's got. Um, he may sell out. So if he does sell out, please be patient. It's worth waiting for. 40% off, isn't it? Definitely. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Amazing, amazing. Let me put the right camera on. Uh, wrong camera. Here we go. So the idea is I'm just going to take off these little liners off my... Okay, so that goes in place into the vise like that. We have the spinner ring. This is the center one that is going to be spinning. Can we get even closer again on this? How close can we get on this? Not that close, he says. use the angle of a center finder from a disc cutter to flare the ends. Yeah, I suppose you could, yes. See no reason why not. See no reason why not. Okay, now, this is it. So the idea is now you get your spanner, you put it in, and as you tighten the spanner, the spanner comes in view of the line of the shot so you can't see it. So then as you tighten up the spanner, how close can we actually get? Let's have a look. Can we come around here? How close can we get can on get this? Through this actually, because this I think that's about as close as I can really get on can I, here. Can I come across this way? Yeah, you can come across, yeah. And, and then we will just do this a little bit more and well, as we we'll come along. So checks, as you can see, the center band is still loose, but we're starting to flare the Are outer. You the way that... No, you're correct, it's just on this camera, that's all. 
So the idea then, you're going to be flaring it as you go along. These cones are pushing the ring and you're actually flaring. That is so cool, isn't it? Even though this one is starting to move, the, the bolt is pulling it together as you go. Okay, so it's still loose, but as you can see, we've got the flares appearing on the outer edges and we can carry on going and so forth. Okay. There we go. And if for some reason or other it hasn't flared the other side, this one hasn't actually flared the other side as well as the other, flip it over. Oh. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Pop that on and we shall some reason I didn't fail the other side, but there we go. So let's just pop that in place and let's turn that better. So we've still got that loose spinner ring in the center. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah, cool. Thank you. You didn't miss anything. We were just like two headless chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so that is now what we've got. So let's just bring this camera up and around. Da, 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 da. Let's bring this around on Thank here. Thank you guys so for your patience. Yeah, appreciate it. I think I pulled out a lead when I came over to take a photo on, on my way back to my desk. Sorry. There we go. All right. Then. I'll just stay here for now. <laughs> Not at all. We're back. Okie dokies. There we go. So that is now the ring that has been flared out. Excuse my filthy, filthy fingers. It still spins in the middle. And there is what we're looking at. Now we can now clean up the inside. So that is the important part. You don't file the metal too much because if it's too thin, it will stretch more so in one place than the rest. Now you can find the join. If you want to go over this, just gently go over with a ring file, clean it up. Like can that. we combine the two different discounts for just an in one or no? No, you can't. Sorry, no, you can't. You can't get 40% off and 25% off. One or the other. In fact, I did try to see if you could and you can't. You. you can't go. <laughs> <"Rah!"> <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, that's like that there. And then we want to just get the brush on the inside as well. Let's just get that. On here, so we can all see what we're doing. Did you, you did all see? When did I? When did when did we go off? I think when we you did, walked back. It was when I came back. So yes. we, yeah, people did see that. Okay. If not, I can go back over and do it again, guys. There's no worries at all. So I'm using the bristle brush. Sorry, it's a white nylon brush, just to go over the insides. Give that a clean. How are we doing for time, Louise? Oh, we should be getting into Q&A now. Okay, no this. worries. So, yeah, we're, we're doing well for time, I think, aren't we? Okay. We're doing well. So we're just going over nice and quick. Is that Tripoli, Andrew? Uh, Tripoli, yes. Yeah. So we're doing pretty, pretty good for time. So this is a real, real rush, just to quickly get some sort of polish on what we've got. Who needs to buy a class on how to make spinner rings when you can watch it free? 
That's what I say. That's right. Absolutely. That's exactly, exactly right, yeah. <laughs> So this is why I love these brushes. Uh, it's a white nylon brush. It's not a bristle brush, it's a white nylon brush. I find that if you have the bristle brushes, they tend to shed. They do tend to shed, but purely on um, uh, decorative things like this, it's gonna be so, so easy, so, so quick and easy to do. Don't forget there are competitions to win. You can enter, no you don't enter, you get 40% off your ring spinner flarer tool. You can enter the competition to win the shank bender. You can enter the competition to win a new concept saw that we're gonna carry on that competition for the rest of the afternoon. Um, it just, what are you, you trying to find the spinner? You, yeah. yeah, then uh, I think people are having a bit of trouble. Here we there are. There we go. I post the direct link. Uh, but yeah, don't forget the code. I think it's SPIN40. SPIN40 is the code to use to get 40% off the spinnery. How is the how's the course is going? It's going really well. It's just taking longer because I seem to be doing more than what I'm, I was thought I was going to do. Doesn't like my address. It's just cut it off because it's too long, so we should be able to just click on it. And it no, should, I should... think it doesn't like the what your delivery address. Can you put both codes? And no, you can't. You can't get forty percent off, and then an additional twenty five percent off. No, no, I've tried. You can get forty percent off the the spinner ring flare. Only. Only, and you can get twenty five percent off anything else. There we go. So literally within that short space of time, I said short space of time, we now have finished this little bit of a spinner ring with a lovely doggy door, doggy door, doggy paw print. Yeah, Hatha Stockham as well. Yes, I totally agree with you there. Guys, what's the problem with the address? Is it, is it when you're putting in your delivery address or? Can Same issue with Matthew my address. Can to look at this? Hmm, okay, sure thing. So what's, so if you, okay, um, I've got a phone number. I can, I can message um, the tech guy with Durson because he said he's on hand today. Should anything go wrong? What is the problem that you're having? It won't accept my, my address. address. Is it your, your delivery, like your home addresses or your business addresses, your physical addresses, postcodes? Ah, right, okay, doesn't, so it's your shipping. Okay, no problem, we can get this fixed. It's shipping. So do you want to just, just go on to it, um, Louise, and just enter yeah. your information? Uh, don't forget your coupon code, Louise. I was going to do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, oh you, gonna you put see. two in there. Oh, I think, I think I put one is going to be a present, eh? <laughs> yes, your Christmas present. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, I tried it yesterday, didn't I? Um, what okay, so Louise is just going to go through on the checkout now and just to find out. So, the, yeah, the coupon code works because we tested that yesterday, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look and see what's going on. This is, you are blowing up the internet. <clears throat> So it doesn't like the delivery address. Total. Right, so coupon awesome 25. Yep. That, oh, okay. Proceed to check out. We'll just double check in now, guys, just to make sure and see what's going on. Um, it's just a number yeah yeah we're up there so in case who likes that hang on where are you guys based where yeah, it's so not if, working if, for you so if you're having problems where is it are you all from a particular country that's not letting you ship um no let's just have a look ship to a different address create an account yeah, it seems can to be... you double check your delivery address and postcode please and try again? If this is correct, please contact Durston. Okay, yeah, we need to make Matthew or Chris aware of this, don't we? Okay, so it's yeah. actually coming up, yeah? It is, it's, you're saying... Okay, how? i keep it there. Okay, so just I'm just going to... take a little screenshot of that. Sorry, guys. We'll get this fixed. All right, then. So I'm just going to send this to Chris a minute. And it's probably just a little glitch on the website. We had a similar thing, didn't we, with our website? Yes. Um, 
Yes, it's a, what it says, um, can you double check your delivery address and postcode and try again if this is correct contact. Is it only on this particular product because no one seems to have had a problem before? Mm, good question. Okay, I know that people have ordered from this using that code and there hasn't been a problem. Um, so bear with me everybody, let's just make sure and see how this is going. Let me just search for Chris. Um, both he only code. says fifty-five dollars. Then in cart cost is seventy-one. It's because it's probably adding VAT. VAT. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, the prices you see um, are, are, are before VAT. Yes, they are. Um, okay. Problem with Durston. Um, so if get, I remove getting remove this, the so is it the? Mm -hmm. We're just going to double check this now, everybody, okay. just to make sure. And we can come back to you on this. Um, and I'll say problems with shipping. 700 people just logged in and ordered a flare and melted the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we try... Ooh. Live on air, people having problems. Okay, Let's no worries. Putting and rolling mill in, shall we? Can you flare the ends with a center finder from it? Yes. Yes, we did that. Yeah, yep. we did that one. Um, Okay. Double check delivery address or contact them. Spin 40, spin 40. Thank you, guys. Um, doesn't like any. Yeah, it's. it's what doesn't what's it like? for lunch? Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. Oh, we're going to have some lunch, aren't we? <laughs> um, we're going to finish answering a few. What time is it? Uh, gosh, 20, 20 to 2. Yes. What happened to lunch? What happened to the morning? <laughs> Goodness me. So that's um, it. So scroll up someone has a question related to spinner rings. Um, did you have a question? Who had a question? Um, somebody's questions got swamped. Sorry. Did somebody have a question? Can you repost at the bottom yes. if you have a question? That if you have a really question, handy. please let us know. We are here now. now. 55 pound excluding that. That's right. Yeah. So it's £55 pounds before that. Yes. So you have to take off the... Gillian, you, you can't without great difficulty. You can't reduce the size of a spinner ring once you've made it. No, Without a massive pain in the... Yes, you can't. You can't resize it. So the best thing to do is perhaps make the ring a fraction smaller. And before you flare the ends, put it upon the mandrel. Make sure it's the right size. This is what we did yesterday with Louise's ring. I made it the right, made what I thought was the right size. Uh, got to try it on before I flared it, put it on the mandrel, tapped it slightly bigger. Once it fitted, fine, then we flared the ends. And as you can see, looking pretty good. It's a bit dirty, that's because my hands are dirty, but as you can see, it's looking nice, easy, and fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Um, okay. Any Likes to ignore the checkout and go via. Oh, so if you go via PayPal, somebody okay. said they've had some success with PayPal. All but right. you know, obviously it shouldn't be happening anyway, should it? So no. yeah. No. So they need to be aware that. Yep, I've messaged Chris, um, and we'll just see what. It'll happens. be worth the wait. Promise. Absolutely. So if I'm, what have I got in here now? Agile um, C. One more. Let me just make sure Chris sees that. Uh, what are the smallest and largest size these make, please? Okay, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you can make about a size E here in the UK up to a Z plus six. I, say, I came up with the dimensions for this particular spinner ring flarer to cater for a lot of sizes. You can't go narrower than 10 millimeters in width if you've got a size Z, okay? Because you're limited because you have that cone shape. So in the US, I think that's like, is it a size, what's a size E? Let me have a look. Have I got an equivalence on my little table here? Okay, um, I've just tried to order a mill and it's, it's no problem there. So I'm wondering if it's either the code or the... Shipping for the... Or the, okay. or the, um, the spin flare. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, no problem. Okay, we'll get that double checked. I've messaged the um, tech guy, Durson, he's going to check on that for us. So the US size 2, right up to about a size 15. This uh, little flarer will, um, will work. Obviously, if you go too narrow, it's not going to flare out. Plus, you are limited to the design, to the style of this. So this is... Um, that comes across straight. 
So yes, this is the style. So obviously, if these uh, you're limited to this distance, whatever this distance is going to be, whatever size ring, because as soon as these cones come together, you can't flare anymore. So long as these cones are separated, then you should be able to flare out the rings. So they go from an E to a Z plus six, or that's like a size two to a size 15 in the US. So it's, it's pretty much, hopefully, it's pretty much universal um, over the whole thing. And we've got two little spinner rings here we've made up. Oh, it's working now. I've put the, yeah, so perhaps, yeah, let us know how that goes, guys, because it seems to be working for me now. Cool. Perhaps it was just the website going, oh. Oh my God. 700 people want to spin it right there. <laughs> <laughs> so whilst we're here, let's just quickly take a picture. Um, we're gonna have some lunch now, aren't we, Louise? We're gonna have a little chat. Oh, oh, we're oh. gonna um, announce some winners. Winners, Louise? Yeah, winners. You, you, you keep the guys entertained and I'm gonna draw some... So actually, now would be a good time for some donations because you can act out all of the, um, all of the emojis. <laughs> and I think what we can do a bit later also is use these couple of pieces that we've been making up in the gem light box to um, put straight onto some social media a little bit later and that'll be really cool to see won't it Andrew oh it really will Andrew yes it will let's pop my punch back a moment okay um, so everybody's doing well everybody's entered the competitions to win the shank bender uh, the velorb um, needle files as well I do believe um, what else should we been offering uh, during this uh, hour. That's okay. it. Okay, uh, Brian's asked what method do you use to announce the winners? Um, they're all in a database. Um, so they get filtered, the emails get filtered, so duplicate emails get filtered out of um, that field. So yep. if, you've, if you've applied twice with the same email, then it takes out any duplicate emails. Yes. Just in that one competition. Um, and we then use a random Picker. Picker. Mm. It's a bit of formula which you put in the spreadsheet and it pulls MIDI out at random and that's the winner. And that's what we do. And then, yeah, that's what we do. They are after successfully so, ordered it. Super, super, super. Brilliant. Um, brilliant. That's exactly what we're after. So, yeah, it's, it's a nice, easy little bit of kit. You don't have to bang. You just have to get your spanner and turn it and it will flare. Um, but thank you very much. I do appreciate that. That's something that I've wanted for a long time. Matthew is also going to be doing a bangle version as well. Not as popular as spinner rings or spinner bangles, but he's going to be doing exactly the same thing with bangles as well. That is due to come um, over the next few months. Okay, there's the last codes here for the Volorby Needle file set. The Durston Shank Bender, um, Steve Satow's Handmade Ergonomic Saw. Oh, yes. And also the New Concepts Saw. So, but then so, the, the New Concepts Saw, we can keep going for the rest of the afternoon. You want to keep that going, do you? Yes, the New okay. Concepts one, because I can be using that a little bit later when we come to pierce in some um, of the designs for our Soldier Ambassador class, the design that Louise came up with last night. Well, it's hardly a design, is it? Because everything I said. <laughs> can I make this? No, Louise, you cannot make that. Yeah, but can I? No, Louise, no. I've got like an hour to make this. You can't have that. So we came up. I don't even know. Ah, the design's in the bag, I think. It's so here. I got it here. Louise came up with this awesome design, okay? It's something that was just put together over a glass or two of Prosecco last night. Um, and we're going to see how that goes. As I said, we haven't made this. Um, we're going to be doing a soldering masterclass based upon this. <laughs> thank you, Maggie. Thank you so much. <laughs> Maggie, you're a star. Thank you very much for all the donations. Thank you for all the donations coming in. We have, we have I'd say we have exceeded our um, donations for the day. We have. We have. We have. One and a half thousand pounds for Cancer Research UK. Really do appreciate it so, so much. It means a lot um thank you very much uh, can we just uh somebody's Go. asking what Stephen saw is like sorry i'm just getting the information up on here um he's very kindly donated a hand made ergonomic saw and he did send us some information on it this morning i don't know if he's watching but um 
Oh. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, uh, Stephen messaged some information through at three o'clock this morning. We weren't yeah. up <laughs> well, at three o'clock. Well, yeah, you were up, yeah. Um, yes, so we've, we've put the form together quite quickly this morning, but um, the photograph of the saw is on the top of the form. So if you haven't seen it, it's here. Uh, dual, uh, dual cut straight and 90 degree blade holders, ergonomic handle, super stiff dual rail frame, extra large blade tightening knobs. Fab. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Um, do you have a picture? Um, yeah, well. Can I it's... just show it on a, on a close? No, no. <laughs> 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 you just, just wiggling your... your... <laughs> right, so this is uh, Steve's saw. Picture's not on the photo, oh, is it? No, I didn't. So this was, yeah, this was like quarter to nine this morning. I was putting this form together because it was a bit of a late. So this is a picture to Steve's saw. This is an ergonomic handle. Um, I actually haven't even seen this. It's a like a double framed drive. Oh, this, looks, this looks, looks really cool, doesn't it? It's cool, yeah. Not on the form. Oh, okay, yeah, I ran out of time this morning. It, it literally came through to me three o'clock this morning. Um, where have I put... Where have I put the form? Where have I put the form? So that is what we're looking at. Let me just put that back onto the and there. So here we are. Yeah, sorry, I didn't have a chance to put the photo up. So um, I've just had a couple of messages come through on um, Facebook, on the At The Bench Facebook, uh, At The Bench, yeah, Facebook group. Someone's asking how did they enter the competitions? Um, are you able to, to watch. Yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, so ain't chance just popping on second. Okay, it's just taking forever on here to load it. What we're we doing? Uh, onto Facebook. Yep, I'm not at, in all at, of the groups there. At the bench. Yeah. And just say you've got to come on to here to watch it. Yeah, because yeah. these guys are watching and participating, so I think it's only fair that the Direct onto here. Are, yeah, I yeah, wasn't for the competition the on. The codes, yeah, great. Yeah. They're for everybody, but yeah. I think it's only fair to keep the competitions for the people who are joining in. Yes, and that's what mm. I was going to say. How do yeah. I enter the competitions? You come over onto here. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. But I haven't done it. I'm asking you to do it. Oh, that's what you're asking me to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I didn't get that notification. Oh, here we are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, and, um, <laughs> I have. Yeah. It, it, that, was, that was really cool. I haven't seen Steve saw before. As I said, that came through at three o'clock this morning. And, and Steve is um, Tom Negotiator. Hello. It is Tom. Hi, Tom. Yeah, you got it right. Because someone said up on there, oh, D said God. Tom Negotiator. <laughs> so I can remember. Um, yeah. Yeah, funny. <laughs> okay, let's find the. So the idea is. Um, I can't remember. Why don't I use copper solder on the ring? I don't have any copper solder. I found it was far me? easier. Would you have my spinner ring back, please? Yeah, I want them back for um, photograph later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, everyone's coming. Around. Everyone loves Tom. Yeah. We don't have any copper um, solder. We just use silver solder. And to be honest, for the amount of area that is soldered, you don't even notice it at all. Everybody, we're going to have some lunch now. And no, we're going to we're going to um, oh, no, we're not. We're going to oh, announce some winners. We're going to announce some winners, Louise. Yeah, I'm just going to um, reply to. Okay, so. Uh, I know we're supposed to be grabbing some lunch, but Louise wants to announce the winners. <laughs> uh, yeah, no matter what you do, putting the spinner ring brings up uh, your dressing cap process. If you pay via PayPal, um, it actually works. Um, I don't make Louise a lot of jewellery, no. Um, at the, the torch, Sister Tech, it is a Sister Tech. Go to andrewberry.co.uk, top navigation bar, stuff that Andrew uses, the link is there to where you can buy it. Seven delivery is a steep, even when it, does, it doesn't give you the delivery price till after you've submitted the order. Agree to a PayPal price and they add on seven pounds after that. A bit sneaky. Yeah, it's, I think it tries to be transparent. It comes back seven pounds for delivery. Um, yes, it can be expensive, but to be honest, it's quite a big bit of kit and it's quite heavy and they use DHL. So they don't use the post office, they ship it out with DHL. So, yeah, I'm afraid not, but I don't know anybody else who's selling it. 
Um, it's still 40% off. It's still 40% off, mm. yes, exactly right. Can okay, you I can't use, get my messages. Can you use Menzurna with an nylon brush instead of Tripoli? Yes, you can. Use Menzurna quite often with the white nylon brushes. Will this be recorded so we can watch later? Yes, you can, Kathy. It's all going to be on um, YouTube, although the competitions, if you're watching this on replay, the competitions have most probably closed by now. Some of the discount codes you will still be able to be used for the next week. So, yep, you can watch this back on YouTube should you desire. Everything okay? Everything okay? Yes. Do some products ship from the UK? Yes, they do. Um, soft or stiff or soft nylon brushes. There is only one type of nylon brush that I buy. Um, I get them from places like uh, Marauder. Is it Marauder? And from Sutton Tools. Um, and they are just one stiffness. I don't know what it is. I don't think they're soft. They're quite a hard and it's just a nylon brush. They're not bristle. It's a nylon brush. Thank you Mihai for 50. Thank you. Great speaking teacher. So much for your videos. Thank you very much. I do appreciate the donations. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. Still not working for an Australia, Australian address. We are checking in on this. Do not fear. The code will still be available to you for at least a week after today. What uh, compound do you use to polish the rolling mill? Um, I've got a film on YouTube that um, shows you how we clean the rolls. We use a metal polish to clean the rolling mill. There's a certain special way of doing it. Um, you just double check out the YouTube films for polishing the rolling mill. Put Andrew Berry, polishing rolling mill and the films come up. Um, stainless, I said, ah, okay, so Ella, I said stainless steel can go into the pickle, not steel. They've got to be stainless steel. Steel will contaminate the pickle. It's got to be stainless mm -hmm. steel or brass or plastic tweezers. Uh, D says, take your shower, take your, your lunch so you can go and take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Otto Fry, Stock the white nylon brushes. Use ATB5 for a 5% discount. Uh, you have to stop answering. Thank you so much for today. It's fun and fun with it. And you and Louise are hilarious. But now midnight in Australia. Have a great night. Cheers. Also, Susie, thank you very much. You should also come back when you wake up in the morning and catch up on the next six hours that you've missed when you've gone to sleep. But I do appreciate your company. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Okay, um, do you have a link to Stephen's saw website? No, we don't. Does he have a website? I'm no. not sure that he does, does he? No. No? Mm. Not as far as I'm aware of, no. Um. <laughs> the dog's crossing her legs and I can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, autosol, that mm. is what I use, but you use a rag and a dowel to clean it. There we go. Okay, have we announced? We haven't announced the winners we yet. We haven't. We're announcing the Shank Bender. Okay, here we go. So we're announcing. I haven't. I haven't done them yet. The um, Steve's saw. Steve's mm -hmm. handmade ergonomic saw. Yep. Um, what else are we doing? And the the needle files. You're hanging on to the new concept saw for the minute, Ian. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Give me two minutes. Okay. Because I've just got to filter this and, um, and so put now the... The, the, the competition for the Velour needle files, the competition for the shank bender is now closed. Louise is going through all the entries that we have received for that. Thank you all very much for entering the competitions. Everybody has a chance of winning. Even if you don't want to be contacted afterwards from myself or from uh, from Otto Fry or from Durson or Gessler or whoever, you've all got a chance. Thank you. You've all got a chance. My mic was off. Thank you. Yeah. I was starting to eat. <laughs> it's live. It's fun. I'm back. Uh, the rolling mill will be announced around about half past eight tonight. So we've got about another six hours to go of entries for the rolling mill. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, Louise is now going through all the entries. She's getting rid of all the duplicate entries. She's sorting out exactly who is who, what is what. And I'm sorry if you've entered multiple times, but only one entry is counted. Uh, Instagram name. Um, so Jennifer, how do you enter into the competitions? Um, you need to keep an eye out on the uh, chat that is going through. 
Throughout the day, Louise is posting links. You go then from those links to a form. You put in your name, your email address, and whether you want to be contacted with newsletters or not. And it's as simple as that and press submit. Yes, where is the rolling mill from? The rolling mill is from, oh, where is the rolling mill form? Bear with. Louise is going to press some links oh, now. Oh, I pressed the wrong one. So that's your distant discount. Don't use that on your spinner ring because you've got your, your 40% one for that. There, okay. Okay, we'll be covering silver and copper soldering. Uh, we will be doing some soldering a little bit later. We've got, what time is that due? Soldering is going to be four. Is it four? Yes, soldering the granulation four o'clock. So at 4 p.m. we're going to be doing soldering, we're going to be doing some granulation, applied designs, applying different metals to, to, to some silver, granulation, making the granules and putting different aspects of um, decoration up onto silver. How do you donate? Jackie, down below in the chat box, there's a little dollar sign, a little box, a little dollar sign. You can click on that, you can donate some money that way. If you can't do it that way, um, you can simply go on to Cancer Research UK and you can donate directly on the website there. And thank you all very much. So for, for the one and a half thousand pounds that you have raised, that is absolutely amazing. And we are so, so happy with that. We've beaten last year's hands down. So thank you very much. Uh, please tell us about the plate used with a the thermal lock in the ring clamp earlier. Um, I don't have it, it's over the other side of the room. It's a T piece. I think when you buy the stone setters, is this my baby bottle warmer warming up? Okay. Shine. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep it on for later. Um, uh, yeah, it's um, a simple T piece, but anything you can use. Let's just get rid of these drawings a minute. So the stone setters handpiece, stone setters, the stone setters package that is available, um, I think comes with um, a piece of aluminium that looks like that. You melt the thermolock on this, and then the clamp then goes and holds that in place. So that is what it's all about, okay? That's your thermal lock on top of there. It's just a simple T-piece like that that gets held into the ring clamps. You can buy them, you can even buy, on the, I think on the GRS site, you can buy um, a similar sort of thing um, that looks like that. And that's what you put things like shellac in upon that. Um, Voices Forever, thank you very much. Rana, thank you so much for all the donations. Really do appreciate it. And then you can put your piece in here to, uh, to work on. And you can put these then into the Benchmate or you can simply use, I haven't got it to here, I've kind of put it away, a simple ring clamp to hold on to it. Or if you just had thermal lock and melt it, you can melt it in the microwave. You can simply squidge it into, a, into that sort of shape anyway for it to locate in your um, Benchmate or into your um, ring clamp. How are we doing? How long is the next break? I'm out of milk. Liz, we're gonna be having some lunch, but we're gonna be talking over lunch. We're gonna be talking about things like, where we too? Uh, marketing, pricing, and showcasing your work. But it's just a, a simple chat um, about what we do, how we market, how we price things, and about the social medias, and some information on some um, courses that Louise has been taking regarding Facebook marketing. Um, the GRS Benchmate is still available. Louise will post that. Steve's frame is done and dusted, I'm afraid. Let me just quickly post a link on here. Um, um, I can't, I don't know where it is. <laughs> Louise has done what, that. What, um, what are you looking for? Um, someone just mentioned they didn't, couldn't find, do you have to be present to win? No, you don't have to be present to win. I have missed the competition winners. Um, no, you haven't. We're going to announce them very, very soon. Thank you, Beverly, 499. Really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, Erin, the... Winners are going to be coming up shortly, very much indeed. Can't find nylon brushes in the US or Canada. I think Otto Fry sell them. Uh, do the emo do the emoji. Yeah, do the emojis. Sorry. So what are we doing? What's it? 
Ooh, so that's uh, Beverly's. What's this one? I haven't got anything that I can hold up. I don't know why it's holding up. And what's this one? It's this, it's this, woo, 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 woo. It's with, the, with this horn. Yeah, I have been forgetting to do this. I do apologize. <laughs> uh, link for the bench, mate. We will come to those links in a minute, so just bear with, okay? Louise is busy getting the competition winners for the last couple of competitions. She's getting all the, rid of all the duplicates and she's getting the winners for us. Once those competitions have been drawn and announced, we will then start posting up more links to the rest of the competitions. Uh, do you set stones before centre for hallmarking? Okay, so the assay office here in the UK bear no responsibility for the work that they have. If a stone comes out when they are hallmarking it, it's not their responsibility. So it's entirely up to you. How is it going? I can't lie down on the bench, but no. What's this way? This way. There's my leg. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Vic. Vicar, thank you very much indeed. Appreciate that. So the assay office bears no responsibility for stones. What I would do is send it up before the stones go in, then set the stones afterwards. You should have no problems with that. Um, use ATB5 for a code 5% off. Yes, you do. Negotiator, Tom, you need a rolling mill. Mike Ham, thank you very much. Do appreciate it. Is that right? I don't know. Uh, do appreciate all the money that comes in. It is going towards a good cause. It is going towards cancer research. They're $10. Number one, five. Number one, five. Number one, five. Yeah. Listen to all of this. <laughs> you can watch it on replay, Louise. Uh -huh. 49, my gosh, 49.99. Tia Marub, thank you very much indeed. 50 United States dollars. Thank you very much. The bench mate, it will come back up. Janet, it will come back up. Don't worry. Oh, what's this one? Thank you, Leslie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh. If you were getting laser marking, we set the stones first. Yes. So there are two different types of hole marking. There's a stamp and there's a laser. Laser is less intrusive. Um, you should really try and get a really nice deep laser cut. I don't like these, these very light laser cuts that actually the, the hole marking um, hole mark comes off when you just put a polish and mop on it. I don't like them at all. Make sure they're nice and deep. Do the floss, the floss dance? No, I don't do the floss dance. No, I've never, no. I'm have not going go. to, no. Have a go. No. Don't be so defeatist. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you put the acid in the bottle water? No. We've got a baby bottle one, but that's the acid. The acid is in a separate tub. What is in there is water. What is in here is acid. Yes, just bring out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was the other ring that was in there that was going to be worked on, but we didn't really have time. So um, that'll be another ring I expect that we can do. So also what we're going to be doing, the items that we're sort of baking up today, the spinner ring, perhaps I'll make up this spinner ring and what else we're going to be making up. We're going to be um, auctioning off for, um, for again, for cancer research um, later on in the week. We did this last year. Uh, we did a sand casting of a shell that uh, Louise picked up on one of the Welsh beaches. And we did some sand casting live last time. Um, we did it in Delft clay. And from that little shell, we made it into a pendant and we simply, everyone pledged a pound or two pounds to win the shell. Uh, Natalia won it. Natalia, I know, was on a little bit earlier. She said that she was going to wear the shell today, which is really, really lovely. What acid are you using? I use alum. Yep, um, this is a simple, a safety pick em, pickle, sodium bisulfate. Uh, this is just basically what we use. Alum is just as good. David Collinson, five hours late. What have I missed? An awful lot. You have to stop uh, what you're doing tonight and then go back and watch the, <laughs> the, the last five hours worth. Um, in eight, you are amazing, amazing. Well, let's see what you do. There we go. Yeah, amazing. It's all about a bit of fun. It's about fun. The G G everyone wants to. Louise, can you just press the GRS oh, the G Benchmate oh. link, please? Because everyone is no, going. No, because we haven't launched that competition yet. Haven't we? No, that's on the schedule for. 
2 p.m. Oh, I do. Oh, it's 2 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, okay. Better have them, I? Should we announce? Should we announce first these winners, and then that's done and gone, yes. and then we can start on the. Okay. Yes. Is that okay? So we're going to announce the Valorb needle files and the Durston shank bender that we just demonstrated. We literally, literally unboxed it. Although you won't be winning that one, you'll be winning a brand new one sent directly to you should you win it. Right. So we've got Stephen Sato's handmade saw. Okay. And I have a winner. For Stephen Sato's handmade, handmade saw. Handmade saw. Yeah. There's a drum roll out here ready for the symbol. Oh, hang on, it's jumped. Wait a minute. Uh, Neris, Neris dug in. Congratulations, Neris. Neris, you've won Stephen Sato's handmade saw. Awesome. So Neris... Fabulous. All our competition winners will be notified by email as well. Yes. So, and um, we will get in contact with Stephen to send that to you. Thank let you, me, Stephen, for donating. Let me saw. know what it's like, because I haven't even seen this. This came through three o'clock in the morning. Um, Stephen Sato is a good uh, friend, always chats in, in the... Um, in the, the chat when we're live. So thank you very much, Steve, for that. Let us know what that is like. Thank you very much for entering for that. And do we have another winner? Yes, I have a winner for the for the Valorbi needle set, Valor needle file set. Excellent. So here we go. Drum roll. Give me my symbol. It's my tray ready. <laughs> Stacy Price. Stacy Price. Congratulations, Congratulations to you. You've won. You've won a uh, Valor Needle File set courtesy of Otto Fry. Thank you so much indeed for everyone who, and we do have one more. We've got the shank bender to come. This is for the shank bender, the Durston shank bender. Done roll again? Yeah. <laughs> David de Camoris. Say who? David de Camoris. David de Camoris, yes. that's awesome. Lovely, super duper duper. Well done to everybody Yay. who has won. Yay. Um, I'm sorry if you've entered, you haven't won, but you've still got loads and loads more chances of winning. Don't forget that. You can win at the bench membership. You can win at the bench merch. Have we actually mentioned win. about the at the bench merch? Uh, yeah, a bit, I've merch. been putting it on. Yeah, Where's You can win. There's still a rolling mills. Two rolling mills. We've still got a bangle forming die set to come from Durston. The Durston disc cutter. Yes. We've got. Um, the Guess Wine Hammer Hand Piece, that's coming up next. Ooh. And you can win Kinder Craft vouchers, HS Walsh vouchers. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Okay, so Everything. here are some new codes for you guys. You've all been waiting for the GRS Benchmate, so here it is. And what's the other thing now? Hammer Hand Piece, the Fordham Hammer Hand Piece from Guess Wine. So those are the two competitions that we're going to be running now over the next couple of hours. Also, the GRS. Yeah, the GRS. Yep, GRS. Cool. So we've got super, super, GRS super. Benchmate, Guess Wine, Fordham Hammer Handpiece. Thanks to GRS and to Guess Wine for their kind um, donations of these amazing tools. Super duper duper. And don't forget, you can still enter all the other competitions that are running all day for things like for the At The Bench t-shirts, different types, at the bench aprons, at the bench memberships, as Louise just said, Kuno Craft vouchers, HS Walsh vouchers and so forth. Don't forget 25% off Durston throughout today and the rest of the week. Don't forget you can get 40% off the spinner ring flare, although somebody was having def difficulty with that. Has Chris come back to me? He said he would be ready waiting. No, he hasn't. He's a naughty boy, isn't he? Don't worry, Andrew. I'm, I'm around in case anyone comes to you with issues over the weekend. Ah, please refresh your end working okay here now. Yeah. So I please, can okay. you just double check if it you're interested? It did for me just now, so that, as long as... Cool, thank yeah. you, Chris. Cool. Excellent. Brilliant. So, yeah, cool. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Chris. So, yes, yeah, so they're out there. We'll keep posting those links to the... Competition for the Benchmate Encore QCX Stone Setters package with six hundred pounds, um, and the Fordham Hammer Hand Piece. Nice, nice, nice. Worth one hundred and thirty-two pounds. Very good. From can, can we have some lunch down? I think we should. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have a chat about some things as well. Uh, let's put that by there. That is also what we've made today. So we're going to be auctioning off some of those bits and pieces. Um, Coming over. You gonna come up and have a chat as well? I'll stay here for a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lynch. 
I, no, I wouldn't um, usually sit down at the bench to eat lunch. So um, I, this is not something that, That's I, why I'm staying over that here. I would recommend doing, to be honest. But as we are in this little, little room here for 12 hours and the cameras are in here, this is what we're going to be doing. So I would not recommend you eat or drink whilst at the bench. Always make sure you wash your hands first. How are you doing there, Louise? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you started already, you have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's all right for you. Yeah. So what we're going to be talking about, Louise, we're going to be talking about um, some sort of social marketing. Now, what has been really, really interesting is when it comes to things like, um, like Facebook, I must admit, I think <sighs> over the years, um, Facebook and all the other social media um, sites have really, really exploded in popularity because of how easy it is to get your message across to the guy next door, the woman down the road, the man in Australia, the other side of the world, literally at the click of a button. It is so, so easy. I don't know what the stats are for Facebook. I know it's billions of users, isn't it, around the world. And it is really a, basically a go-to place. Um, you want to find something out, you go on Facebook. You want to find out what, what your friend did last night, you go on Facebook. And it's so important to have some sort of page on Facebook. Uh, it's always important to be members of groups on Facebook as well, because if you're um, like me when we're manufacturing and we're selling, to be able to go onto the different groups to be able to help people, that's an absolutely fantastic resource. But if you want to sell to people as well, not necessarily sell within groups because groups don't really like you selling, but if you've, you're making something, you've got, say you've got a website and you can pick up websites really, really cheaply, make them for no charge, basically on things like Wix and Squarespace and so forth. You can get your own little domain name, um, whatever's out there you can buy. It costs you about five or six pounds, was that $10 a year to have your own domain name. Um, Horatio Well said, do I win anything? No, not yet. Keep trying though, because there's lots more to win. Yes, keep on trying. There's loads more prizes to win. Loads and loads more to win. Okay, so yeah, so everybody now is out there if you have a website. So with Facebook, you can produce a post and then you can click on boost to boost the post. If you've got like an event coming up, um, if you, you're doing something for charity, brilliant idea. You've got some, um, some pieces that you've just made and you wanna get that seen on Facebook. There's lots of ways that you can do that. The easiest thing is put a post and click boost. And then I think you can choose a, an area uh, that you can actually boost that post to. It does cost you some money to do that. Facebook will do an awful lot without you paying, and this is what happens. But obviously, if you do pay, you then can get a far wider, bigger audience to the product that you're selling. Now, Louise has been on a course, and she's still carrying on with the course at the moment. It was initially a free course. Do you have any information? Not, I not, no, not, not anybody... to, to talk about it, but mm -hmm. a link that you can take it to Michaela. Um, it's a, a Facebook page, but if anyone's interested, yeah. I can... I can share it, no problem. Yeah. Um, so I didn't mean to do, do, do the, the camera directly on, on your Facebook. No, no, it's fine. It's Facebook ads. Mm. It's all based around Facebook ads, which is a whole topic in itself, really. It's, it's, the course was brilliant because it feels like a bit of a minefield. I don't know if anybody uses Facebook ads, but there's sort of do's and don'ts and things that, you, that you're doing wrong, which you don't even know you're doing wrong. Like, for example, um, if you put, a, put out an advert on Facebook, um, the mistake a lot of people make is like, and, I, and this is what I was doing, you'd put the advert out and then you'd, you'd find your demographics and it would be, oh, people interested in jewellery. Hmm. Hands up if you're interested in jewellery. Yeah. yeah, but you're not necessarily going to buy, I assume, no. or, you know, via Facebook. or So yeah, you, what you end up doing is really targeting industry professionals and people like yourself who might be interested in your competitors, but they're not necessarily people who, who is, yeah, is, is, is going to buy anything from you. So, um, yeah, so this is where, this is where the training really comes in handy. But if you didn't really want to pay for 
adverts. There's still lots and lots you can do. There's so much to learn about Facebook and the algorithm. And there's a really good book out by a man called Carlos Gill. Um, and I think the book's called The End of Marketing or The Death of Marketing. And it's all about social media and the way it's changed and evolved, and particularly Facebook and Instagram over the last sort of two to three years. Because over the last two years particularly, Facebook has changed the way um, that it allows businesses and brands to post. So, for example, if you put a post on your Facebook page, which is just basically an interesting post, which gets people to talk, get asked a question, gets people engaging, that's great. So every time somebody, suppose you put something like, for example, I put a post on our Facebook page a couple of weeks ago about metals, mixing metals. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this? And if it's a little bit controversial and you think it might make people go, oh, no, I'd never do that. That's terrible. That's great because people are engaging with that post. Somebody else will come on and say, yeah, I completely disagree. As long as it's kept kind of friendly, it's, it's, it's fine. Nothing too controversial, but just something for it. Start a little bit of a discussion about it and, and engage with that as well. So when people start putting things on, oh, thank you, Brenya. Yeah. When, when, people, when people start engaging, and I'm, I know, I'm saying all this, but I don't always follow my own advice. So if when you look at our social medias, you're going to go, well, they don't do any of that. Well, we do try and do some of it, but this is what, this is how the algorithm works. And um, so you should then be going on and engaging with every single post, which we do try and do if we have time. But then, you know, it's easy to say that if you've got a social media department or a social media person who just does that. So this is what the big brands do. They, 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 they like to go on and engage separately and keep those conversations going. So as soon as people start engaging with the post, if you're there and you're, you're answering their questions and then coming up with more questions to keep them engaged in that post, Facebook goes, oh, people are liking this post. It's, it's, it's kind of organic. People are engaging with it organically and they like anything that goes viral because it keeps people and Facebook users in the app. What they don't want is, is users to be leaving that app. So... Um, Oh, yeah, don't be afraid of it, Ben Forged. It really is just something, it's like a beast to tame, that's all. Mm. And once you kind of understand, nobody fully understands the algorithm because it's it's just insane, isn't it? You, you can yeah. kind of, you can find out bits and pieces about it, you can research it, but nobody will fully understand it. But anything you can do to get people talking on your posts, um, anything relatable, anything shareable, anything like that is great. What Facebook really don't like and the algorithm doesn't like, if you want to upset the algorithm, ask for engagement, ask for shares, ask for likes. Maybe two or three years ago, that was something which Facebook, you could get away with on, but now you do that and you, you, you really pee off the algorithm. And then, for example, I did a bit of a test for you guys <clears throat> last week, and we had some really lovely reviews on our shop page. And I've got some figures here for you, so, I think it was on Tuesday, I shared a review which we had, which was somebody came, a lovely kind review. And I just said, what a lovely kind review, thank you, with a heart. So that reached over a thousand people, which was great. So Facebook showed that post to over a thousand people. And then later on in the day, because we had a little bit of a flurry of these reviews, later on in the day, um, we had another lovely review. So I, I shared that as well. But I added, if you would like first class service to pop in on Monday or shop online at da -da 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 -da, .com, com. So um, I shared the web page and a link to our, our online shop. And bearing in mind the first post, which was just what a lovely thing to say, Facebook showed that post to over a thousand people. This one, directing the user off the app, showed it to 330 people. So you can see all of these insights in the app as well. So a hell of a difference. It didn't like the fact that I was trying to direct people out of the app and onto the website. So it's just it's just being that I've said that and I put multiple posts on this week directing people <laughs> to YouTube. So I, I you know, that's yeah. so these are all things that that yeah, that were major considerations really. Hmm. But yeah, no, no, no. Carlos's book is brilliant because it explains all of it in, in detail and far better than I'm, I'm explaining it. But basically, it's, it's all about not peeing off the algorithm, really, and, it is. And, 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 and writing shareable and relatable content. I suppose that the thing is, you can't... Um, 
they, they, they're not mixing. Uh, they can't, you, you can't keep post every single post being um, uh, favorable to, to, to the algorithms, can you? You can't, yeah. you can't do it that. Sometimes you've got to say, well, you know, thank you, this, well, let's go to Facebook, no, let's go to YouTube, or why not visit our website? There are certain posts that you, that you want people to visit. <clears throat> But that does not help the algorithms at all. It's called the, the end. Sorry, the end of marketing. The, somebody the asked. End, the end of the marketing. end of marketing by Carlos Gill, and I'll just see if I can post a link. And the whole idea is to make sure that you do um, not annoy the algorithm. Mm. Algorithm. 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 The algorithm. It's it's about as well. Um, being a person, there we go, there's a link to the book, being a person behind yeah. the brand and just being available, being sociable, because that's what people mm. want from social media. People don't want to be sold to. The algorithm doesn't want us selling on our organic posts that we're not paying for because it wants us to pay. To pay for it, exactly. Because yeah. we're businesses <laughs> at the end of the day. So that's yeah. what that's what they expect us to do. Mm. So, But there are ways to get your posts noticed without paying mm. for them. But that yeah. is just... Like say. And I found it that really hard when I wanted to produce um, an image, but I wanted to put lots of text on an image and it won't let you produce a lot of image. It's got to be, I think at one stage it was like less than 30% of the image area could be text. Mm -hmm. But then you want to try and attract people and I can understand it now at the time. I thought, well, why not let everyone put a lovely picture up with all the text, go here, go here, co co coupon code, blah, 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 and that sort of thing. Because you're trying to sell on Facebook, but what Facebook want you to do is pay them to sell. So I think that was, was the reason why, and then you don't get good engagement or your ads don't get allowed because you're not, a, uh, you're not adhering to what Facebook wants you to do. Tanya's asking, do you know if you, how do you know if your mix are good enough? I struggle with showing off my work confidence. And I think you do have to be an authority, don't you, in your field? So you have to you have to act like an authority and speak like an authority, blog like an authority. Yes. Because, absolutely. yeah, mm -hmm. it's your job and that's what you do. So, yeah. Mm. I, mean, I mean, goodness me, we've had 700 people watching. Two people have still disliked us. There's always going to be people yeah. who are going to have a problem with what you're doing. Or do, and this is a charity. You know, mm. it's just one of those things, isn't it? Because you're not going to like everybody. I think, that, I think what I found from quite an early, early time when... I've really put myself out there, um, voicing who I am, the authority that I am, um, posts, links, that sort of thing. Um, Just in case someone says my work is crap. If someone says your work no. is crap, it says more about them than it does about anything. That's, mm. I, I genuinely mm. believe that. Absolutely. Mm. And I think the more you put yourself out there, the more you are exposing yourself to be exposed and people to criticise you. But do you know what? Believe in yourself. And you just got to put your work up there. If 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 you, you you want to put it on some of the Facebook groups, for ask for opinions beforehand, um, and you shouldn't get flamed or anything. Is it called flamed these days? Roasted. Roasted. <laughs> you won't get roasted um, because that's not the way that that the groups or at least the the admin of the groups want that to be carried out. So it's always good to test the water that way. But um, just, 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 just put it out there. The just change the business manager. The business manager app can be tricky to negotiate. But um, the lady who runs the course I did um, is a, a bit of a, a business manager guru. So if you want some information on that, contact us and we can put you in touch with uh, with her. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. So yeah, it does feel like a bit of a minefield. Mm. I'm meant to be my Christmas now. Okay, you go ahead. <laughs> um, it's, it, it's the same as a customer being in your store with a friend referencing another piece of jewellery in a straw down the street. Facebook doesn't want you referencing other sites. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, that, that is true. Just added the book to my Audible. Well done, Debbie. That's cool. I've been told literally hundreds of times and many more times that my work is decent, so I really don't no, care. Yeah, absolutely. No, 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 you've got some lovely pieces, Bill. I love the little... Is it the urchins you did? No, it's, it's just, no, I, I would never, ever listen to what other people say. Not at all. I think that's, that is the big fear with social media. Is if somebody going to, if somebody says something horrible about you, it's, it's never nice, is it? But if somebody publicly nags you, it's kind of 10 times worse, isn't it, really? It's, it does make you feel... Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, Mimble, work in, pro work in progress, behind the scenes shots, always fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Thanks, Jenny. I need to finish my crispy. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got any other questions? Um, yeah, behind the scenes, any, anything that creates engagement. People don't like to be so. People love photos of Andrew with the cat. No. Don't they? No. They like the photo. We had, a, we had a photo of you cleaning the shop in the last lockdown, and that had something like 120 likes and just. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk about use on these on Etsy? Um, you don't use Etsy, I'm afraid, do you? No. Yeah, so I'm not sure I'm about. Sure. Somebody asked about Twitter as well, but I'm not sure. I don't. You don't see that many adverts or um, that sort of thing on, on Twitter. I mean, I'm not a big Twitter fan, I'll be honest. No. No. Mm. That was nice. Cats are awesome. Yeah, they are. If you have a nice one, not like ours. Um, no, <laughs> cats are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was always told that a negative review means you've made it. That's a nice way of looking at it. Yeah, why not? Instagram mm. is great for engagement, yeah, definitely. Mm. And when you run your Facebook ads, because Instagram is owned by Facebook, um, you can run them on both platforms yes, you simultaneously. Because I've mm. seen our adverts. And this is the thing. Again, going back to, to, to the Facebook, because again, you know, Louise had been experimenting with this, and, and this is the amazing thing. Because Louise was um, has been brought on board to, to to do this and do everything else with the shop. She basically does everything now in the shop. <coughs> don't you? you yeah. yeah. You, you 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 order the stock. You put the stock away. You put the stock on the system. You sell the stock, and you do all the social media as well. But what I failed was failing to do was the social media. Um, used to have an idea, oh yeah, I'll put that on Facebook, I'll do this, I'll do that. And you don't realise how time consuming the social media is. And so Louise is, is, is one of the jobs, one of the many, many jobs next to, to World Dominator, <laughs> Coordinator, um, is the social media. And even Louise gets, not bogged down, but she could spend an hour, one afternoon, just going through. You're just getting a loop. Mm. Mm, absolutely. Mm. Because as, as Louise said, it's important to engage with people. And I, I'm the world's worst. I don't engage with people. Someone posts up something, I don't often come back and go, oh, that's, that's a really nice comment. Thank you very much indeed. I don't really engage. I think I'm really awkward when it comes to that on social media. But Louise is absolutely brilliant. She has a lovely, lovely manner about her, mm. both in public. <laughs> no, both, no. Both, no, both in public and also on, on fire social as well and I think you've really got to be that person to do that and you've got to devote so much time to social media and it really is really interesting to do these these Facebook ad manager and so forth about the what what Facebook knows about you it, it knows um, about the websites that you've been on and how long it takes you to scroll through a page um, all to do with the uh, Facebook pixel that you can put onto your website. So it knows all this information. It's quite anonymous, but it knows if somebody has revisited that page, it knows. And what we've been doing recently is doing some Facebook um, adverts. Um, what's, it, what's it called again? Re retargeting. Mm. Mm. Retarg retargeting the adverts. So it will show the retarget advert to the audience that initially looked at. So you may have seen with At The Bench, it says, are you coming? Or are you going? Or have you signed up yet? So those adverts are going out to the people who have actually looked at the page. Yeah. So it's not going out to, to, to new people, it's actually going to those people who have looked at the page already. Facebook knows. It does. Mm. And what was really scary was, we were trying to find a price on a piece of jewelry that was long gone. And we went on a particular website to find it, and we found it. And literally within about 20 minutes, was it? Mm, it was less than that, I think. 20, mm, 10 minutes later, Louise then came up on her Facebook page, we saw you looking. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was the scary, that was the that's title a, of the advert. That's a bit creepy, I saw you looking, yeah. I was like... We we saw you looking. So obviously that advert has been put together, targeted at, at people like Louise, who has visited a website but has not bought anything. So ah, we saw you looking, and then mm -hmm. perhaps you can offer, excuse me, perhaps a discount code or something to get that person to go back onto the site and and order it. And it works on me. I mean, it didn't work that day, obviously, because they don't tend to buy jewelry. Mm, I should but, think so. Though. I should think <laughs> but no. it, it works. 
it works it works on me i know it works on me and i know how it all works but david's asked the question with social media would you keep your personal and business profiles and pages separately personally absolutely yes yeah even my even my personal profile i try not to put anything political contentious anything there's a group locally isn't there and there's always yeah arguments on there and we can't afford to get involved in no. anything contentious no. or argumentative because it's going to no. hurt the business isn't it mm. so the, so the so business would never put anything like that but also with our personal personally, pages no give me two glasses of chardonnay and i'll blab about anything <laughs> but yeah but no not for us anyway no you've got to be really careful what you put in because it is a reflection upon upon you um um, there's someone who I know that has um, his personal Facebook page and he puts stuff on there about, but anyway, would you be open to me donating a sea urchin? Yes. <gasps> only, if I, if, only if I can join in. <laughs> <laughs> William, yes. Bill, you're more than welcome to. Oh, we'd love um, that. And what, what we'll do, we will, um, we'll, we'll tie it in with some of the pieces that we've made today. And it won't necessarily be an auction, but people can donate perhaps like a dollar or a pound to it. And we found that we raised a lot of money when it came to the little um, shell that we did last year. So it won't be an auction. It'll be like a buy a ticket and then we'll draw a ticket. But yes, yeah, Bill, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much indeed. Uh, yeah, so a friend of mine has his own personal Facebook account and he, he complains about the 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 public who have been into his shop. He said, oh my gosh, look at the state of this stinky watch. I had this in today. Can you imagine the person, you know, doesn't this person wash and post a picture of a watch? Of a watch? You think, no. Someone's going to see that and no. go, oh my God, it's my watch. John, that's your watch, isn't it? Yes, it's it is. Yeah. Your watch. So you can't do things like that and go, oh my gosh, Look, who's been saving up all the old no, well, we'll be watching um they, oh, who's been saving up all these watches to bring in i got 13 watches and i got better things to do than just change batteries <laughs> and things like that it doesn't work you, you, make ca it up. you can't do that sort of thing you can't be that vocal on facebook because that person it ha has has a shop and even though that shop has its own Facebook page, the two overlap and you can't say anything contentious or about any customer who comes in because they're always going to find out and they're always crossed over. How's that? Um, William, thank you so much for your donation. That's so kind. Awesome. One one, one million, one, <laughs> one thousand, it seems like a million, one thousand seven hundred pounds. It's amazing. Thank you all You're very all much. You're such a lovely lot. Thank this you so This is absolutely much. superb. Um, okay, it's half past two. Oh. We should be vessel setting a cabochon. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Let's go. Um, so what, what are we doing now? Oh, um, someone said about, um, can they post the link to the Durston disc cutter? Not yet. That comes at four o'clock. Um, um, yeah, I refuse to use Facebook or any social media due to the data login algorithm. And it, yeah, the, the, there are people um, who, who are yeah, definitely like yourself who, who really want to keep themselves themselves. And I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, it's not for everybody, but these days it is a big part of advertising, I think. Mm -hmm, definitely. Absolutely. But then, oh, did I tell you, there was a dental practice years and years ago. And it didn't, it didn't even have a name. It was just like, it was, there was no signage outside, nothing. It was just literally mm. looked like a house, mm. but you, it was a dental practice. Mm. But they got all of their referrals exclusively by word of mouth. Mm. And they were just, the waiting list was insane mm. because it was such just an exclusive place wow. to attend that, just, yeah. Just word of mouth advertising. Yeah. 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 And you had to be referred by an existing patient. So it was a little bit like, mm. Mm. like a, mm, wow, uh, awesome. it was that exclusive. So yeah. You can make that. You can make that a thing. You know. Yeah. You can. You can turn something like that to your advantage, can't you? No, we're not on Facebook. Why not? Because. Because it's exclusive. It's too good secret. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Bill. Yes, you can. We'll let you post that. Um, we're, we're not allowing certain things that are coming through because we don't want to see these things. Um, but yes, please, Bill. Yes, if you would like to put a link up to the sea urchin. Um, pendant I think it was please do Louise will let that go through that's absolutely gorgeous and thank you very much of you for that um, 
Yeah, so there's lots, it's, 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 it's a whole thing. And I think what I'm gonna try and persuade Louise to do is, is to actually to put together a little course on things like the Facebook advertising that we're gonna put on at the bench and, and, and sell, I think, as well, because it is such an amazing, amazing um, piece of information that, that um, the Facebook holds on to that would really benefit a lot of people who are into that. Okay. Okay. Let's have some more. Somebody wanted a link. Um, post the links for the bench. The bench. Okay. Oh, the new concepts. Andrew said um, I wasn't to draw that one just yet. So you haven't missed the new concept. So um, that's still to be drawn. Because we're going to be using that now, yeah. and we're also going to be using that at about four o'clock as well when we came to do the granulation. That's not why we're not drawing. It's not that saw. Oh, no, you not get this your own no, saw. <laughs> you get a brand new one. I think they deliver them in pizza boxes, which is really cool. Pizza boxes? Yeah, because oh, it's the right size and then it's the right sort of Does it come with a pizza? pizza? I don't think so, no. no. Hmm. That's still good. <laughs> okay. Um, right, okay. So what have we got next? What have we got next? You are going to be Bessel setting a cabochon Ooh, and, and, and demonstrating hammer hand pieces. Okay. And we've right. got... So what are we going to do? We're going to, put the, we're going to put a slide up over the front just to be able to... So we can prep everything on the bench for what comes next. Louise is going to put some plenty of links up um, on the... GRS? <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got the GRS is going to be happening. And we're going to talk about it. Have we done the giveaway for the rolling mill? Claire, no. The, the, the rolling mill is an all-day competition. That's going to be announced at half past eight tonight. We've got two of them to give away. So in this segment, we're going to be giving away... Uh, it's down there. Fordham Hammer Hand Piece. There's lots of you who want to see hammer hand pieces. We're going to be doing that. But first of all, we want to be making up bezels. How long have we got for this, Louise? Uh, we have an, uh, ooh, an hour. An hour? An hour plus 30 sure. minutes for q and A's. Okay, so we may end up just going over an hour. Okay. I have to make, I haven't done this yet. I have to <laughs> make... <have to, laughs> thank you, Suzanne. <coughs> Suzanne, thank you very much for the five pounds. Really do appreciate it. <clears throat> we have to make up a bezel, solder onto a back plate, put it into a thermal lock, and then we're gonna be using the hammer handpiece to force the bezel over. And that's what we're gonna be doing now. Someone asked about pear-shaped um, stones. We're gonna be, if, if I get chance, I can do a pear shape. Oval, definitely, and I think I've got a few others as well. So whilst I set up the bench, Louise is gonna bring a slide into place, and we're gonna set that up, and there's gonna be links coming up on the chat of the competitions that we have left uh, for today. So any second now, is that, that the one Louise? Mm -hmm. Come on. All right, any second now, I'm going to disappear. A slide is going to be put over my face um, and we're going to join you in about five minutes time. But don't go away. Use this time wisely. Go make a, go make a cup of coffee. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> go make a cup of coffee. Go and walk the dog. Open the door, chuck the cat out. And if you do need a comfort break, go and do it now. See you in five minutes.
I'm just having a snack. I'll be back now in a minute, guys. I've just had my snack. I'm just sipping a cup of coffee now. Back now a second. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. I just had to have a snack and I just made Louise a cup of coffee. I have it known, please. Don't, I have I made Louise a cup of coffee. Okay, so um, we're going to be doing some bezel setting. Time is running on. I wanted to do two or three bezels. I don't think I'm going to get a chance today to do all these, but we are going to make a bezel. We're going to solder the bezel up onto a back plate and we're, then we're going to use a hammer hand piece to force the bezel over. I got two hammer hand pieces that I've got. Uh, let's make that a little bit wider on here. This one is we're, we're going to be giving away. Th not this particular one, because this one is mine. But we're going to be giving away a Fordham hammer hand piece thanks to Guess Wine. Uh, this is a hammer hand piece. Um, it's got the anvil on the end that you can change. And we're going to be using these. I was also sent this one. Now this one is um, a, a Badico. Um, that's, uh, it's about twice the price of the Fordham. This is the Badico one. I, to be honest, I haven't tried this one yet. I've yet 
to come on and to use this one. So that's gonna be a first for me. But the Fordham one, this one here, you've got a chance of winning this hammer hand piece thanks to Guesswind. And Guesswind, if you put in, is it um, ATB20, you can get 10% off your um, order with them as well. Okay, so let's have a look. <clears throat> uh, just got a WordPress notice from Durston that my password changed anyone else. Very interesting. I don't see the links for drawings. I don't see the links for drawings. For drawings. Drawings, as in... Oh, oh as in the, the drawers. Yeah, sorry, uh, there's been some chat since I last posted them. They're coming up now. Okay, so we're going to be looking at making a, a bezel. We've had people ask for unusual shaped bezels, and we're going to be doing this. We're going to be making wrong camera, Andrew. No, well, that was the right camera. We're going to be doing this. This is um, a pear-shaped stone. Deb Collins, thank you very much for the donation. Really do appreciate it. We're up to £1,700 so far. So absolutely oh, me. brilliant. This is a gorgeous little pear-shaped stone that we got from Kurnow Craft. Don't forget, you can still win a £100 Kurnow Craft voucher as well as 11 £20 Kurnow Craft vouchers. Uh, Louis, Louise, yeah, Louise is going to be putting... Um, Yes, I'm Louise. <laughs> well done. I'm just looking at all the names. Oh, oh no! What? I, I just clicked the wrong thing. <laughs> I'm not supposed to really start one yet. Bin, 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 bin. <laughs> Nobody saw it. Didn't happen. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Okay. That's the one. We're going to be doing a bezel for this little pear shaped stone. I had planned on ovals and I had planned on a few other bits and pieces, but we're not going to get a chance to do that, unfortunately, now. But perhaps again, we'll do a masterclass when it comes to some stones um, another time. So this is quite a deep stone. Um, this one here, how close can we get? No. So this is a nice, quite a deep labdarite stone. I think this one is, as you can see quite a deep pear shaped stone and we're going to be using this to make a bezel fall. Um, okay so there's lots and lots of things to think about when it comes to bezel setting. Let me just quickly use my board. This stone that I've got is quite a deep stone. It's like that. So if you have a bezel that's going to be too shallow, okay, and the bezel would be down here, it's not going to have an awful lot of metal to push over to hold the stone because the angle of the edge of the stone is very, very slight. So with that, you'd have to have a bit more of a deeper bezel. So the bezel comes up a little bit further. So it's got a little bit more space to come over onto the stone. If you have a very shallow cabochon, Okay, like that. What you don't want to do is to have a really, really deep bezel like that because you've got far too much metal to push down. So you'd have to come along with a very shallow bezel. All right, so there is no direct proportion. Um, height of bezel to height of stone. It all depends on how fast and how quick the, uh, the curvature of the cabochon starts. In the case that I've got now, this pear shape, it's very much like this. It's quite, quite deep. So the side of the bezel is going to have to be quite deep to have a little bit of metal like this to come over onto the stone. <clears throat> a hammer action hand piece is a fantastic piece of kit. And we've got one to give away. Just follow the links in the chat for a chance to win a hammer action hand piece courtesy of Otto. No, guess wine. Do apologize. Uh, part of guess wine. You can use burnishers, you can use the old fashioned, and you can, burnishers to burnish the metal over. But if the metal is just that little bit thick, it's going to be really hard. Short, you can come along with a little hammer and a bit of a punch and tap all the way around. That's fine, but a little hammer action hand piece, when you put it into a flex shaft, really does make the job far, far easier. Right. <clears throat> Let me just see if I can get all this sorted because I've going to be doing some of that there. Okay, so what you want to make sure, first of all, because this is a pear-shaped stone, I want to make sure that the metal that I've got, and we're not going to be using bezel wire or barrel wire, which is uh, metal of this sort of profile for this particular stone, because we've got a bit of a closed back on this. So we're not going to need that. If it wasn't going to be a closed back, that's the sort of idea profile that we would be using. But again, this height here, this is where the stone would sit on. This height of the bezel here would have to be high enough 
still for all these rules to apply. The bit of metal that I'm gonna be using, I know is not annealed. And how do I know that? It's because I rolled it yesterday. So I haven't annealed it. So always make sure that your metal is nice and soft. Why? Because when you bend metal, metal will have, what I call it is a memory. It'll bend and it'll always go back, all the way back, but you know what I mean. So if I got this bit of metal here, I try and bend it and it springs back. Yep, it springs back. Look, if you bend it, it springs. You don't want that to happen because if you bend this around a stone, the metal will open back up again and we don't want that. So we want to try and make the metal as soft as, as, soft as possible. It's called annealed. You can buy the metal from the um, stone merchant, stone, from, from the metal dealers, um, already annealed, soft, uh, half hard or hard. When it comes to bezels, this is what I would do. I'd always make sure that I anneal it before I start on it. Then I know that it is nicely annealed. You can use fine silver. I don't like to use fine silver. I always use sterling silver. I don't seem to have any problems with sterling at all. So this is what we're going to be using. This bit of metal here is uh, three millimeters in, in depth. I think it's about 0.8 of a millimeter in thickness. <clears throat> and we're gonna be shaping it around the pear-shaped stone that we've got. Now with that bit of metal, you bend it and it stays, it stays down. It still has a bit of a memory, it still comes back up on itself, but not as much as when it was work hardened. Um, <clears throat> my stone, I've lost my stone now. What have I done with my stone? Ah, there it is there. So this is what we're gonna be doing. The, the stone looks like this. There it is on top of there. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get a bit Ooh, closer. There we go. Cool. So what we need to do, we need to make the bezel to fit the stone. Now what I'm looking for is for the one edge of the uh, metal here just to come flush with the end of the stone. Then we're going to wrap it around and the other end then is going to come up and out. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to have the stone here. Okay, so here's my stone. We're going to put the metal so it comes along like this, so it's flush with the end of there. We're gonna bend it around, and that is gonna overlap that way there. Okay, so that is the idea. You can bend the metal all the way around the stone, but it's likely to open back up again, so you must make allowances for that. So let's see how we go. First of all, we wanna make sure that the end of this bit of wire is nicely um, flush, as straight as possible. You can simply use the file for that, or you can use, well, a lot of people tend to be using these days, or with these little mitre vices like these here. Um, very, very rarely use these myself, but you can put that through. You can close these up like that, and you can put that nice and flush against that edge, he says. It's even harder to use it because I haven't really ever used this before because I don't usually rely on these sort of things. Put that into place, make sure that's nice and flush, tighten them up, and now we can go across with a file to ensure that we get a nice flush edge to the metal. See, see I don't, don't I find, these, find these really, really difficult to use. Let me put it onto here like that there. There we go. Also, it would help if I actually had a file that was sharp as well. <sighs> okay, so that now is what should be, but it's not. See, don't like using these. Let's try again, shall we? Let's rewind, rewind all that and start again. Try and get that nice and flush. There we go. That's better. <clears throat> so, we're going to be soldering this up onto a back plate. Um, you can open the back plate. You can make the back plate open if you wanted to. Uh, you can cut it out completely, make a little ledge for the stone to sit on. Um, we're just simply just going to be doing this for uh, the purpose of our demonstration. See, it's, it's moving again. Okay. So that now is our piece of metal that's supposed to be a straight edge on the end. 
Nice. Okay, so that's our piece of metal that we've got here. Now we want to make, just try and make a bit of a bend. You could simply hold on to this and then bend the uh, wire around the stone. But as you can see, if you do that and let go, it opens back up again, as you can see. So it's not a technique that I would really um, recommend. And if you had some fine silver, it would really hold into place a lot better than what this is doing. Um, but I'm simply going to use a pair of half round pliers. and I'm simply going to fashion the bezel by hand to fit all the way around. And I've got that coming around there. That's pretty good first go actually. Uh, we've got a nice curve now around the bottom here. So I'm going to use a mandrel for that and just put the bottom of the mandrel there and just bend that around like that. So that now is what we've got. And that's looking pretty good straight off. Let's put that over the stone and let's see how we're looking on this. So that actually comes together quite nicely. Bit of a gap on this side by here. So let's just get our pliers. What is the thickness of the bezel uh, wire? 0.8 millimeter. 0.8, okay, yeah. So what we're looking for is for the stone to sit in. We don't want the stone to be forced in. It has to just simply drop into position. So at the moment there, that is much, much too tight. So we need to adjust all this. It has to drop in. And this is where it is a little bit time consuming just to get this right. Let's have a look, let's bend that around a bit further, not quite. So um, you can really just talk amongst yourselves whilst I just get this right. Uh, yeah, so do this by hand. As I said, if you had some fine silver, the silver would sort of, um, is a lot better in one respect than sterling silver <coughs> because it's a bit more of a dead soft metal. <coughs> So let's just get this going as quick and as easy as we possibly can. And where can and you buy the bezel wire from? This is just normal sterling silver wire. This was nothing in particular. This was a piece of rectangular section that was three millimeters by two millimeters that I simply rolled down. You can buy bezel wire. It's nothing in particular. It's just a certain size um, uh, section that people will call it. Um, I like to make my own because the stones that I use are always slightly different. So that's not too bad now. We're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. Patience, patience, patience. So the stone just has to drop in when it's been soldered together. Bit more. So we've got this. Goes together pretty good. Not too bad. I, I do need to rush this through a little bit now because otherwise we are going to simply run out of time and we're going to overrun our schedule, which I don't really want to do. I want to try and keep everything on track. So let's just see how that goes. That comes across the end here. Okay, virtually there. There we go. So that is looking pretty good already. Now where this bit of metal here overlaps the end here, we're going to get um, a Sharpie. And what I want to do is arrange it. So my head's in the way. Yes, it is. There we go. So I want to arrange it. So we solder that area that I've marked. <laughs> Don't rush it or it will go pear shaped. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Very good. <laughs> It's always one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so that is what we are after. We are after to solder the pear-shaped stone at that particular point. Let's see how we're going to be doing this. Let's see if that's any better. How are we doing now? There we go. Looking good. Okay, I'm going to... Make sure my head's, in the way. my head's in the way. It yeah. is, yes, thank you. 
carpet. It's such a big head, Lou. It's just <laughs> yeah. a big head. I Don't said it. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's just quickly put this. It's still not quite right. I do need to hurry up now because time's going on. It doesn't, if we overrun a little bit, it doesn't matter because we've got half an hour's buffer. Yeah. All right. You're not soldering till four. There's plenty of time. Plenty of time plenty for Plenty of time. Do, 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 do. Okay, so the stone goes in. I got a little bit of room there. Stone goes in. How are we looking? Mm, we got a little bit of room, which I think I'm just going to have to put up with a little bit because I don't want it too tight. Rose is asking about a square cabochon. Um, <coughs> may, is, there a, is there a full man at the bench on setting a square cabochon or can you do one? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. You can do it. You have to have it's to talk about that quite afterwards. Different, yeah. <laughs> we'll make a note to talk about that in a little while when we do the question and answer. That's something that we can talk about. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for your question, Rose. We won't forget. Learn how to deal with 90 degree corners that dip. Yeah. For a square cabochon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much there. Okay, so I've, I've, I'm getting bored now. <laughs> I'm getting bored now. I've had enough of this. Right, let's just put that straight to there. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Um, right, that's okay. I'm happy with that. The stone goes in. It's looking good. I do have a very slight bit of room, but hardly anything at all. So that's gone in. Looking good. I do have a slight bit of a gap on that one edge there, which I don't want. Okay. Um, yes, I have think I have chosen a really awkward stone to set, but that's the whole idea of these little these little, um, what's we called? What am I doing? I'm doing something, aren't I? <laughs> these little masterclasses is just to show you that um, we can do this sort of thing live and we do everything warts and all here. Um, okay, we're looking at, oh, Monroe, thank you very much. No, thank you so much. Um, We're just getting this sorted, so we are doing this. I'm just trying to get it so it's a nice and nice fit um, without it being too tight. I don't like it if it's too tight. That's better. That's looking better. So let's just take that. It's just where it comes around to the point. It's just making it a little bit more rounded. There. Oh, my pen's run out. Oh. Okay, that's going to be pretty much where we need to do that there. Let me just put on the overhead camera. So that's pretty good. It's just touching. It's just touching on there. All right, there we go. Uh, why are you putting the join at the end and not along the side? Wouldn't it be weaker at that point? Um, yeah, I put it on the end because it's going to be a nice solder joint right on the end, uh, better than having it on the side. If you have it on the side, you've got to get the joint right, then you've got to get the join right when it comes around to here. Have it on the end there, and it's going to be a lot, lot better um, look because there's going to be no seam halfway along a bezel. So it's, it's, it's a lot better to have it where that is just by there. But yeah, but good point, good point. How about any more questions? Oh, uh, that's, that's been absolutely. Asked for perfect. For a moment. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's get this in place. Let's just solder this now. So we've got the bezel, it's, Got a bit of an edge by here, but at the moment that's going to be fine for me because I can just alter that a little bit later on. We're going to get 
this camera a bit closer. Uh, oh, that's as close as that'll go. Okay, there we go. We're gonna flux that area as well, inside and out. We're gonna get a small little bit of hard solder onto that as well. Um, a small little pallion of solder. Elaine, thank you very much for the donation. Really do appreciate everything that is coming in. Thank you guys, really do appreciate it. 1,800 pounds now for- Wow, that's, that's amazing. That's brilliant. Thank you all so, so much indeed. You're all gems. Okay, let's get this soldered. Let's turn it around this way. And warm this up. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to refine this a little bit after we've soldered this joint because it's going to be a lot more stable. Like that, perfect. Turn it over, the solder's come through, gorgeous. Pop that into the acid, mind yourself there, put into there first. There we go. All right. So that is our bezel. Uh, bezel? That's our bezel, and let's just... You're losing it. What's that? You're losing it. <laughs> thank you, Judy. Thank you very much for the 10, 10 pounds. Thank you, Judy. Really do appreciate everything that is coming in. <clears throat> Simply going to cut off that edge of the bezel now. There we go. So you can't see that, but that's what we've got. That's our bezel now. Looks a bit odd on that one side there, but we need to make sure that the bezel just simply just drops over the stone, okay? If that's too tight and um, the stone just won't go in. So we just gotta look at that just right. It is a little bit bulbous on that one edge there, so we can move that along, okay? And just gently squash it closed a bit. There we go, perfect. So that bezel fits absolutely gorgeous now on top of the stone. The stone, there is a slight bit of movement, but I'm not gonna play around with it too much. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. You can see the bezel, we've sawn it. We're just gonna tidy up the edge of that joint next. And by doing that then, it's gonna bring the bezel in looking absolutely gorgeous. Focus on that, there we go, brilliant. So let's just sort that out. That's looking really good, I'm really happy with that. Now that's coming along well. Let's just buff the edge. Like that. Mm. My bus stick is deciding to disintegrate on itself. Cool, okay. Now we need to make sure that the bottom of the bezel is gonna be nice um, and flat, but your bezel may be slightly tapered or it may be the fact that the stone is not quite even. So make sure now that the bezel fits one way or both ways, which is what we've got here. If the bezel only fits one way, well then make sure that the bezel will always go that way. And if that was the case, well then you'd then make sure that you solder on the back plate like that. As it is, I do have a little bit of room in this to play with. I didn't really want that little bit of room, but I'm in a little bit of a rush to get this all sorted out within so, okay, so now we've got that. We've got plenty of time. I'll So we now want to get the bezel and make sure that the back is completely flat. We can do that and make sure we've got a nice flat edge here. So you get a nice even edge running all the way along. So that's the area we're going to be soldering. We now have this piece of silver. I'm going to solder it slap bang 
in the middle. It's got a protective wrapper on it, so let's remove that. How about something to do with some questions? Anything coming through, Louise, on some questions? I'm just yeah. answering a question about the spinning <coughs> ring on Facebook. Yep, carry on. Okay, so my, again, again, this is something that I have always done. I don't believe personally in having loads and loads of buff sticks with loads and loads of different grits. I find for me that's a complete waste of time. I have a one grit buff stick, if that makes sense, okay? So this buff stick here is 600 grit. Um, I've got um, other buff sticks that are 600 grit. I don't go any rougher, I don't go any smoother than 600 grit. So why don't I have like 800, 000, 1200 and so forth? I find there is no need because when you make a buff, Lynn, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So what I find is that when you make a buff stick, you've got 600 grit on all the surfaces. Fantastic, it's nice and aggressive, yeah? As you use that buff stick, the grit gets smoother and smoother and smoother. So your 600 grit is now not 600 grit. It may be uh, the equivalent of about 1,000 grit. So on one side, you've got 600. On this side, then you'd have perhaps like a, an equivalent of 1,000 grit. So you've got two buff sticks down in one. So you don't need to have another buff stick of 1,000 grit or 1,200 grit. You keep your several buff sticks along the way by the side of you. Some of them then are going to be a bit rougher. Some are going to be worn. Some are going to be smooth. This one here, as you can see, is really, really smooth. So that was 600 grit, but now it isn't. So I don't need to go fussing around going, oh, what's my next buff stick? What's my next buff stick? I can pick up a buff stick. One side is going to be rough. One side is going to be smooth. Or when that smooth side has started to disintegrate, I can simply rip off that one side. So I've exposed a 600 grit paper on that one side and the other side has been slightly worn. So that's my argument. I don't need to have three, four, five, six buff sticks, all different grits. I simply have one buff stick or two buff sticks with 600 grit on it. Oh, that's better. Um, <clears throat> if you were hand setting the bezel rather than using the hammer hand piece, wouldn't 0.8 of a millimeter sturdy be very difficult to push over? Yes, this is the whole reason why we're using the hammer hand piece. Right, this bit of silver now is not clean enough for me. Uh, we have removed the plastic covers off it. It's not clean enough for me. So what we're gonna do is warm this up we're going to quench it in some acid. Nice. So that now a bit of silver is going to be nice and clean. There's going to be no oxides on it. It's going to be lovely, lovely and clean. We're going to get <coughs> some Hiroko. Thank you very much for the 1,220 um, yen. I do believe that yen. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, cool. Um, you can see now how the flux covers the whole sheet. Let's get our bezel. Let's just pop that in the middle. Like that. And we're going to put some borax around the insides and all around the outside. And we're just simply going to solder it slap bang in the middle. I wouldn't normally solder it slap bang in the middle. But on this case, I am. Uh, we've used a hard solder. We've used a hard solder on the top of the bezel. We don't want that to come undone. So now we're going to be using a medium solder, which is the next melting point solder down. <clears throat> yes, you could thin the edge of the bezel. Yeah, exactly. You could come along. If the bezel edge was too thick, you can simply file it down here. So then you would make that a little bit thinner, which would be a lot easier then to push over. Exactly right. What is the thickness of the back plate? Half a mil? Half, half a mil. One half, half a millimeter or in um, gauge, da, 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 14 gauge. And what's your brush made out of? This is just a simple, um, Artist's brush. Half a mil, Jennifer, thickness of the back plate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We now are going to put the... Now, it depends. 
where are you going to put your solder? Are you going to put the solder on the outside or are you going to put the solder on the inside? I always like to have things nice and neat, so I'm going to put my solder on the inside because if the solder happens to run across the plate, um, it's going to ruin the plate. You're going to see the solder. If the solder then will run up on the outside of the bezel, it's going to look really ugly and you've got to remove that from the outside of the bezel. So I would always put the little pallions of solder on the inside of the bezel where when they run, they won't be seen. And what you see from the outside is going to be the most fantastic solder joint. Do you need um, a thick um, a mill on the back plate? Do you need that thicker mill on the back plate? Um, it's only half a millimetre. Half a millimetre may even be less than that. I'm not, I have to measure it when I, um, when I take off and finish soldering. I will certainly check. Um, William's asking, have you ever used the clock spring to place the object you are soldering? <laughs> I wonder who you've been watching. Scaffold, yeah. Um, no. I, I haven't. What um, I sometimes use, things like this. This is a little, um, let's try and get the on there again. I sometimes use this. This is a little trivet and this little trivet you can pick up from um, New Concepts. You can use that to hold it and that will get the metal um, nice and hot. Let's turn that over that way around because the flame can get underneath it. Let's get our bits of solder. Um, I've never used, I've never actually had a clock spring, to be honest. I've never had a clock spring um, to be able to use. Okay, then let's put some of the little pallions of solder. People going. are confused because you said 14G for the back plate. Oh, what's, what's 14G then? Is that not 14 gauge? Hang on, where's my, where's my thing? Uh, millimeter, half a millimeter, sorry. Is it 14? 10, 11, 12, 14 gauge, 0 0.51? 10, oh, 14. 24. Sorry, yeah, no. Sorry, I do apologize. 24, Kelly, so yeah. yeah Bad. 24. My printing wasn't very good. It's missed off the first digit. <laughs> <laughs> now, who said that? Was it Nellie Pledge? Nellie who? Pledge, ne or oh, years ago, this is Louise. Nellie Pledge. She didn't know what the time was because the second, the second hand or the minute hand had fallen off her watch. Um, okay, let's just ignore that. That's just. <laughs> is anybody old enough to remember Nellie Pledge? Ooh, she knows you know. Right. Your head's in the way. I know it is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right, I, I have to see myself. <laughs> there we go. So there we have our, our plate in place. You can see the little pallions of solder I've placed along the inside. I've used, um, I've used a, a, an artist's brush just to put them neatly into place. Now, here's another trick for you. This is a little trick that you will thank me for. 24 gauge, yet not 14. I do apologize for that. So here is my... Oops, Daisy. Yep, yeah. so here is my bezel. It actually looks like that because it's not quite, not quite bare shape. <laughs> so the idea is we're gonna be soldering this now onto our back plate. And on the insides, I have put my little pallions of solder. Okay, so that's what that view is. That view, believe it or not, is supposed to be that, or that is supposed to be that. Okay, so this is our solder joint is by here. I know we've used medium solder around here, but now what we want to do, we want to solder the bezel to the back plate. We want to make sure that this joint does not come undone. If that joint comes undone or becomes molten, because there still may be tension within the bezel, especially if we've perhaps been using it with our pliers to try and get it just the right shape, there may be tension. And if that joint happens to become unsoldered for whatever reason, this is gonna open up and you're gonna be left with a gap and this is not gonna be the correct shape then for your stone. 
So by using medium solder, that's one way that we can stop that joint here from coming undone. The other way we can do this is when you solder these sort of bezels onto back plates, do not start in this area. So what you want to do, you want to bring the flame down to this area first, okay? This is the area you want to heat up first. You want to make sure that these bits of solder will solder, okay? Then bring the flame around here, okay, here, and then bring your flame around here. You want to solder these areas first, the solder has to melt, the solder has to melt, the solder has to melt, and then just come through to the outside. So once you've done this, okay, and you can then remove the flame, this area all around here is going to be fastened onto the back plate. Now you can bring your flame up to this area, okay, and start to heat this area. Now, if you happen to overheat this area and this joint comes undone, because the bezel has already been soldered onto the back plate and this solder down here is solidified, this will not come apart because it's been held by here. If we did it the other way around and heated this area first, there's a chance that that would open up and the whole bezel would move. Because we've soldered down here, we saw we brought the flame to there, we brought the flame to there, we brought the flame to here and perhaps brought it around a little bit further as well. We've made sure that the bezel is securely fastened around here first, then we bring the flame around to this area up here and then we solder up here last because if that joint comes undone, the bezel is fixed in place because it's been soldered there. Does that make sense? Cool, let's get this soldered because I've been talking enough. <clears throat> How are we doing for, for time, Louise? It's half past three? It's half past three, so yeah, we're not doing very well until four. No, we're doing quite well. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've got half an hour question answer and I've got to finish this off. Yeah, but we've been asking questions as we go through, so okay. yeah, cool, don't cool, cool. worry too much about that. All right, no so worries. Just, yeah, just okay, so the advantage it. with these trivets is that you can get your flame in from underneath. And also then bring the flame down on top. <coughs> and we just want to make sure that those solder chips are where they should be. And I'm going to bring the solder, the, the flame, I'm going to turn this around this way so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to solder this area over here first and I want the solder to melt in this area first as I was saying. So bring the, the, the flame here, here and here to get that solder to flow. I just ask Andrew, um, Sandra's only got a chef's butane torch, is that enough heat for hard solder? Um, yes, you can use these little ones as well, yes. So this is a slightly larger than, a, than a, of the chef's one, that's the chef's one. Um, I'm using this one, it's just a little bit easier at the moment because I'm a bit pushed for time and I need to get this heated up. But a small little chef's torch will melt hard solder, yes. Plenty of time. Okay, so let's just go it. You can see this, the color of the flux. If you put the torch on the outside, the solder is going to be drawn through from the inside to the outside. There we go. Solder is just starting to go. Gorgeous. Right, you can see the solder flowing all the way around. It's going to be, but I should have put the other camera on here and we could have seen. Okay, so now, keep that going. The solder has been soldered all around here. So all this now is solid. Now I can concentrate the area now where the joint is to melt the rest of the solder. And if that joint happens to come undone, it's not gonna spring open. It's gonna stay closed because the bezel has been soldered already. It's sweat soldering work when doing the bezel. Um, I don't normally sweat solder that because um, I find that this way myself is a lot easier to do. Okay, so come around to here. Perfect, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. That's really looking good. Nice, 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 nice. Nice, 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 there we go. How can, how can um, Carolina avoid the back plate to get fire stain? Um, you can coat it with plenty um, of flux and that will stop the, um, the fire scale and the fire stain. As you can see, we do have quite a bit of oxides on here as well. 
you can use your acids to get rid of that to a certain degree or just use some elbow grease um, and buff it off. But the more flux that you can put over that surface, the better it's going to be. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, the, 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 I'm not enough. I have to watch the restaurant replay. Thanks so much, Louise and Andrew. You're very you, you, Debs. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. So, what I would never do is put in the acid for a second. What I would never do is is fasten the bezel down. Um, you can get these little titanium uh, solder strips, and we're going to be talking about these in the next section. Um, and some people will use those to try and pin the bezel down onto the back plate. Never ever need to do that because as long as the back plate of the bezel, the back of the bezel is completely flat and your back plate is completely flat, they're going to make a gorgeous contact. And providing you put plenty of flux on it, the flux can go underneath the, 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 the joint, if the flux can go underneath the joint, it'll protect the joint and when you solder it, it'll be covered completely. The bezel will just automatically just drop down into place. So there is no need to clamp all this together. You can see how I did that nice and easily. So there's no need to clamp. Yes, Louise. What do you think about paste solders? <laughs> right. How long have we got? Well, yeah, not that long actually. Okay. So. <laughs> paste solder. I would paste solder. Put it in a drawer, lock the drawer. Don't use paste solder. Things like this, use pallium, use proper solder. Paste solder has its time and place to use it. Paste solder is ideal if you're soldering little jump rings, if you're soldering little bits of, uh, bits of chain, really delicate stuff. Never use paste solder for things like this. Never use paste solder for ring shanks or anything that needs strength. I find it is rubbish because it leaves quite bits of porous joints where the built-in flux is. I would always use proper pallet, pallion, solder strip, solder wire, never use uh, paste. It's an easy way out, but the reason why it's an easy way out is because it's not that good when it comes to this sort of soldering. Okay. Is it not very strong? Or? It's, I don't find it very good at all. Mm. Uh, a friend of mine was saying, um, I'm getting lots of, um, lots of um, pitting in my solder joints when I'm doing bangles. So I asked him what solder. He said, I'm using a hard solder. I went, okay, that's good, that's good. Um, what type of solder? He said, oh, I use syringe solder. Oh, I said, don't, don't use syringe solder. Use proper solder wire, solder pallet, and proper flux and the, the joins will be far far better and he did and they were so in my argument is paste solder has its place at in a drawer locked out of the way or just don't buy it at all i really don't favor paste solder for anything decent or anything constructive when you want to repair something yes it's okay then but apart from that, I really, really would not consider um, using it at all. So there is my um, bezel. All right, you can just, you can see on the inside, we have these little bits um, um, of solder. In fact, what I'm going to do is just heat up this again, because there's one of the solder areas there that is slightly not completely um, liquid. Now this is the problem about having the solder on the inside of the bezel because if it hasn't melted completely the stone is not going to sit flush with the back of the plate and I totally understand that. If I was cutting away the bezel, uh, the back plate, just to leave the bezel, well then yes you could put the solder on the outside and then you're cutting away the solder completely. Uh, so there are pros and cons in both ways of doing this. I'm just going to heat this up again because the solder up at this end up here hasn't quite melted enough. You can just see it's a little bit gloopy, a little bit lumpy. So let's just warm this back up. Uh, plenty of uh, flux on this and let's come to warm this back up. I'm just going to try and get that solder to flow just that little bit more. Any seconds. Mm. 
much better, much, much better. Okay, so that is looking good. Let me just wait for that to cool down a minute. So yeah, that's my, um, my take on um, paste solder. Uh, what's happening on the, uh, would love to see gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous shoes. <laughs> That's an idea, I'll make a note of that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. How do you spell gorgeous? G-E-O-E-S, yeah. Gorgeous times three shirts. Nice. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Let's pop that in the acid, lovely. So then is our bezel. And also when, when solder melts, it melts usually upon the surface to start off with and then it flows underneath. But you'll always find there's be a little shadow of where that solder has always been. So always try and put the solder where it's not going to be seen. Otherwise you've got to try and remove that from the surface. Uh, T-shirts and aprons, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> Um, can you please talk briefly about your pickle pot during the question and answer? I've never set, set it like that. Um, I'll talk about it now very, very quickly. This is um, a baby bottle warmer. You know the bottle warmers you warm up babies' milk bottles with? Yep, when the babies. Um, and that's what I've got. Here's my pickle in here. As you can see, there's steam coming off that. Um, and it's in a little water bath. There's water in that. Um, and it's got a, a temperature regulator on the outside as well. I usually have a proper pickle pot, a proper pickle warmer. I think they're like a hundred pounds, 150 pounds. I plugged it in this morning, it tripped all the electrics. So I wasn't chancing that. So that's what I have downstairs. And to be honest, I must have bought about two or three in the last 30 years. So it's, it's on all day, every day. It's on nice and low. Well, as you can see, there's a bit of steam coming off that. Um, and it just seems to work absolutely brilliant. Buy a slow cooker. Slow cookers are pretty good. I just don't have the space for a slow cooker because this is so neat. This just fits on the side of my bench. Um, small ones in Argos, I bought that off eBay for about seven pounds. It's as easy as that. <coughs> okay then, so here now is my bezel. Uh, the one little trick that everybody should know by now I'm trying to finally look through my drawers, is this. This is a little bit of dental floss. I wanna make sure that the stone goes in place. I wanna make sure that the stone goes in, and if it goes in, I can't get it back out because it's a closed back. So I can lay my bit of dental floss over, there we go, over that, and I can then see if my stone fits into place, and I can always get the stone out by pulling the dental floss. So does that stone fit? See, that stone fits nicely. I do have a little bit of a gap, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> but you can pull that and the stone comes out. So that is the idea behind the dental floss. So that now is in place. We had um, a request for some t-shirts, Louise. Oh, okay. Um, it's got to say, um, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, oh right, okay. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to have um, like a little emoji of you. Okay, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, always try and get there, but yeah. So I've always got some, some dental floss by the side of it, as I said, just to put over the bezel. Stone goes in. If it happens to stick and stamp, stay in place, you can just pull that either side. Stone comes out. Right then, um, what are we doing next? Oh yeah, we've got to set the stone now, haven't we? Um, the solder joint on the outside is really, really looking absolutely fabulous. The joint is looking really uh, good. You can see the state of my fingers already. That's looking good. Um, I could leave it in the acid just that little bit longer. Um, in fact, I will do for five minutes just while we do a bit of talking, actually, before I set that. Um, <clears throat> it's hammer time. Yes, it is. Nearly, nearly. <laughs> mm. um, okay, any questions? I use a silicon pad lid. Middle, 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 middle. Okay. Yep. Mm. Mm. 
fishing line. Fishing line is pretty good. I do favor dental floss or dental tape because it's a lot, lot thinner. But yeah, fishing line would be absolutely brilliant. If we get to £2,000, will you do the MC Hammer dance? I have no idea how it goes, Louise. I really don't. don't I know, I know. Everyone knows. No, I don't know how the MC Hammer dance goes. <coughs> shall, I, shall I find it for you? Come on in. <laughs> no sound. No sound, no sound off, off you, Louise, is it? Off you? I, I, yeah, but I've put it back on. No, sorry, okay. No. Is it hammer time? <clears throat> what if the cabochon isn't entirely flat on the back? You, some people use um, perhaps a little bit of card on the back, or you can get some sawdust. <laughs> I'm just looking to see what you're, what you're getting up on there now. <clears throat> oh, come on, guys. Well, we've got to get to 2,000. If we get to 2,000... I'm, I'm not a dancer. That's why it's better. <laughs> Here we are. <clears throat> Any tips on repairing a broken trivet? These little trivets um, are titanium, and um, I think this has been arc welded. Yeah. Maybe I, not. I can you? spin. You I, haven't got I, the trousers I, 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 for I, I, it. I haven't got the trousers for that. They're a bit too tight, <laughs> aren't they? We'll do that again. You can do that. All right, I'll have to do that tomorrow. I promise I'll do that tomorrow. I'll practice. Have, yeah, you can learn it tomorrow I'll learn morning it, I'll learn if we it get to 2000. <laughs> I'll learn it when I go home tonight. Use a thin bit of leather off from an old handbag. Yeah, even better in the bottom of the, the, the trivet. Um, as a trivet. Oh, hang on, we've gone off again. Why have I gone is off? Is this lead? It's this one, isn't it? It keeps... Yeah, is this... What? Lead, let go of it, Louise. It's, it's around you. It's around your chair. Why is it around me? It's, it's around your chair. <laughs> Good grief, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, what are we after? Benchmates. What are we after? Right. So let's do some hammering. Um, right. <laughs> Dum, 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 dum. Right there, we now have our bezel. I'm not going to worry about polishing or anything like that. Sarah, ah, thank you so much. And no. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that one is. Thank you, Bill, for that. Appreciate it. Where's the trivet from? The trivet is from uh, New Concepts. I was told that the bits of titanium on the trivets were part of the um, the cutouts on some of the saws. Ah, let's have a look. Um, let me just think, what am I doing here now? I only said this. So what I would normally do is get some thermolock, uh, which is the thermolock here. I put some in this little device here. So these are the little devices that you can warm up um, with a uh, hot water or you can put it in the microwave but once you put them on metal you can't put them in the microwave you can warm them up you can get a, um, a hot air blower something like that to, to, just to melt the surface and then you can get your uh, your back plate or whatever it is sunk into this little area here or likewise on this area here let me just see if this will actually this will actually work a minute. Just bear with me a second. Let me just see if I can just get this in place really, really quickly now. I don't want to melt the thermal lock, but I just want to melt it enough so that I can put this in place. Or I'll have to use the um, device I used this morning to put it in place. Let's just gently melt this. Is that going to go on? Is that going to stay? All right, I think that's going to be staying in place, so we're going to use this. All right. Let's just bring... I know you can't quite see. I'm going to bring the camera around so you can see what I'm going to be doing. Now, 
Okay, so that's what we've got. Let me just alter the cameras a second on this. Go stand up on this one. Get this one. Oh, I see. If only I had a production team that could be doing all this. Uh, Stop whining. What are whiners? What are whiners? Whiners are wieners. Yes. There. Get that into place. There we go. How's that? Three camera. Ah. Oh, I left my drink in the bathroom. Hmm. So that's what we've got. Uh, this camera here, how close we get on this camera as well. Um, there we go. So that's what we've got. We're going to grab our stone. So I've, I've warmed up this thermal lock with my torch. Usually I would use um, some hot water. As you can see, it's still a bit molten and put that into place. So now I can just simply drop my stone into place. Um, what you want to do, perhaps first of all, perhaps before I even get to the stage, is make sure the top of the bezel is nice and level as well. Um, I should have really done that uh, beforehand. I'm just going to use a file just to go over the top of that bezel. Um, and also we were talking a little while ago about the height of the bezel as well. It has to be the correct height. Uh, let's just get this filed, making sure it's nice and even. And yes, if the bezel was uh, too thick, we could always just get the, uh, the file just to go around the outside edge, just to thin that down as well if need be. Um, but I don't think I'll be needing to do that at the moment today. Let's get the bus stick over the front of that. So really, really quickly now, because I'm really running out of time on this. We show multiple cameras from multiple angles on the screen at once. We can probably do that, but not today. Because um, they're not set up on the bench, are they? Uh, what have we got? We got that one. We've got that one, we've got that, and we've got uh, picture in picture, but I've only got my main camera coming in on that feed. So at the moment, it isn't something that we're gonna be able to do, but it is something that we will look at for another day. Certainly no worries at all with that. Uh, let me just get up on top of here and move this that way. There we go, cool. There we go, that's better, much, much better. Um, yeah, we do have, as I said, we do have a picture in picture, but it only shows me going around the screen at the moment like this. But yes, it is something that we certainly will look at, look at in the future. So we're gonna be looking at uh, removing the um, adjustable hand piece from our flex shaft. We're gonna be putting on the uh, in this case, the Fordham hammer hand piece, spin the flex shaft, that down should go together and locate. So that now is our hand piece. Let me just make this a bit bigger. To switch the shots, it's the ATM. ATM, ATM Mini Pro ISO. We'll do a bit of a shot of that a little bit after this. Okay. Um, it allows us to have, have four camera inputs. Uh, this camera, I that camera, that that camera and that camera. <laughs> Luis is going, ooh. <laughs> so it allows us to have four camera inputs. It allows us to have different microphones um, and we can fade in and out, fade to black and all that sort of thing. And with the software that is on the computer that Louise has here, we can bring different slides into the shot as well. So this should be um, cool enough by now. Let's just zoom back in on here. We're going to have to hurry up, haven't we, Louise? It's 10 to... No, I'm not just saying you've got 10 minutes. Got 10 minutes. Okay, so now we know the stone goes in, no worries at all. Let's get the picture from above. So that's looking nice. On my hammer hand piece here, these little anvils on the end here um, are removable. And these little ends can be shaped to whatever shape you want. The good thing with these is that you can get these little um, pieces 
anvils that have upturned diamonds in it, like a diamond. So every time the hammer piece comes out, it'll put in a dot at the back of a diamond, also almost like sparkles. And I think that looks really, really cool. And I love that look. We got them downstairs in the workshop downstairs. That looks really cool. Um, with this particular um, uh, anvil, I've just simply got it um, at a slight angle. So the anvil on here now uh, looks like, so the anvil, um, here's a hammer hand piece here, and the anvil comes out and it's, um, it's like this sort of shape. It's that shape. So then when I can hammer the hand piece, sorry, hammer the, the bezel, I can have it that way, or I can have it sort of, uh, how can I draw this, that way up as well. So I can have it, I can turn it around 180 degrees, either have at the face of it or the end of it being hammered. And you can change the shapes. You can buy these anvils and you can make them all different shapes and sizes. So let's quickly have a go. <clears throat> the handpiece has this little ring on it here. This little ring will adjust the amount of force that comes out of the handpiece here. You turn it in one direction, it's, it's very, very slight. You turn it in the other direction and the force is a little bit more, you can hear the difference. And if I put it onto that camera, you can see that coming. You turn this the other way, it's hardly moving at all. You must not spin this very, very um, much. <laughs> <laughs> You mustn't spin this. I think the maximum sort of revs is around about 6,000 revs, if that. What you don't want to do is go because that does nothing. It's better if it's because that is much better. You get a bit much better um, power and the metal will move a lot better. When it comes to setting stones with corners, always do the corner first. Steve, thank you very much. Do appreciate it, Steve. So Steve set out $50, thank you. Always do the corners first. So we've got our pear-shaped stone. Always do this edge first, okay? Don't do down here and then end up up here because the metal will always become stretched and you'll have a gap between the end of the stone and the metal. So always concentrate on the tip of the stone first. This applies to marquee shape, to square shape, and also to pear shapes as well. So let's come on to this. <clears throat> How close can we go with this camera? Uh, is that it? That's about it with that camera. Yep, that's about as close as we can go. So let's just concentrate on the tip first of all. Let's hope this is gonna work. Okay, so I think that my bezel is too thick. So, <laughs> ah, the joys of live television. So let us make that bezel a little bit, a little bit thinner, as someone just said, we can file the edge of the bezel just that little bit now, just to make sure that is gonna be a little bit easier to push over. And yes, 0.8 of a millimeter, Andrew was a little bit ambitious, I think, at some stage. I'm not quite sure whether you thought you were um, actually the Hulk trying to, um, to move it. Will the stone come out? Yes, it will. Cool. Uh, we should have looked at this beforehand. So let's just remove a little bit of metal from the edge of the bezel. And that'll make it a little bit easier to come over. The beauty of live television, eh? Well, of live YouTube. So you can win yourself a hammer hand piece, um, courtesy of Guesswine. Uh, the links are going to be in the chat box. Come along and pick whichever competition you want to enter. Uh, you do have to enter 
you can't enter one competition for them all. We do need you to have individual um, entries for the competitions. During this hour, we're going to be giving away um, oh the GRS Benchmate, isn't it, Louise? Yeah. We are giving away the GRS uh, QCX, QXC, XCQ uh, Benchmate. We're giving away new concepts, not saws. Yes, Louise? Yeah. No, sorry, a couple of people are saying um, they were taught to just uh, file in one direction. File in one direction, mm. yeah, and not put it back? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yes, sorry, I, I am in a bit of a rush, yet you always file like this, never drag the file back, never, never do that, but yes, as you say, sorry, thank you for picking me up on that. Plenty of time, plenty of time. So there we go, that's a little bit smoother, let's grab the buff stick. Now with the buff sticks, we can go anyway, can't we now, which is cool, yeah. there we go. Okay, that is looking a little bit better. Let's pop the stone into place. Nice. And now we should be able to use the hammer hand piece to come over. As I said, always do the tip, that's better. If the stone's wobbling around, just hold it in with your finger. So always do the end first. So the end of the stone here is, is getting nicely set. Okay, so that is now nicely done. It's nice and tight, pretty close up to the stone. Now it's just a matter of going around the rest of the bezel. I'm just gonna try this Badico handset to see what this is like as well, to see if this is uh, just as good. I haven't shaped the end of this one so this is going to be completely new. I've never used this one. So yeah, this is just as good. And again, with the Badico, you can turn um, the nozzle, the nozzle, but the knurled nut here to get it a lot finer. And what I'd advise you to do is do it in sections, do it in opposites. So do it from this side, then come down to here, and then come down to the bottom. Does the hand piece leave marks that then need to be sanded afterwards? Um, because the face of the hand piece, the, the anvil is nice and flat, it's not marked in any way, so it's going to leave a pretty sort of planished finish. We would need to go back over it, perhaps with a file or a, perhaps a pumice wheel, just to take out any slight dents that it may have put in there. But you can always use them as perhaps a bit of decoration, couldn't you, at the end of the day, if you wanted to try and do it that way. Let's see if we can how we go in. So this now is going to be a lot. Vibration crack in the stone. Okay, so yes, there is, but the um, the metal would have to be in contact with the stone if that was the case. At the moment, we got a slight gap. I'm going to go as close as I possibly can to the stone with this, but not necessarily so far that it hits the stone. And then once the stone is pretty much, we're getting there, um, you can just use the uh, hammer hand piece just to sort of smooth out the bezel. Sorry, oh, I do apologize, yes. Sorry, there we go. Thank you, Julie. So, 
once you've got the stone pretty much nicely in place you can sort of start using longer motions with the hand piece and that is going to sort of iron out all the marks you can come along in a few places and then these gentle gentle blows will sort of iron out and make the bezel nice and nice and smooth No, I'm, I'm hammering right up on that top edge. Uh, Horatia tried it once and split the bezel strip from the base, but I was using fine silver and I guess it's not thick enough. Yeah. So I'm coming down right on the edge. Let me just see if I can sort of do it on the side here. So what I'm doing is, can we see on this? Yeah, do it from the side. So I'm not coming down the bottom like this because you can't move the metal where it's soldered. I'm actually coming down at an angle on this edge like that, which is probably around about 45 degrees, right where the gap is between the edge of the bezel. So yes, if you sort of, I can't really see, but the bezel's nice and level, and I'm roughly around about 45 degrees on that. Um, would you use this on setting an opal or a, um, a soft dome, like yeah, amber or opal? I, I would, mm. but I would stop short. I would make sure that the bezel does not necessarily go all the way to hitting the stone. So I would use perhaps some stronger magnification so you can actually see the gap between the edge of the stone and the bezel. And providing there's a slight, slight gap, you should be fine. Stop, then get perhaps a hand burnisher just to burnish over that little bit extra. Okay, but so you do have to be careful with soft stones, definitely, yes. Okay, so would you use the hand piece to get as close to the stone as possible and then use manual to yes, just to finish off? Yes, I would, yes. Would you use a paste solder for stud earrings? For soldering the post on, yeah. Yeah. Anything that's small like that, definitely yes. So, what is the strike strength you prefer, e.g. softest, hardest, or somewhere in between? I think it depends on how much metal I'm trying to shift. Does it depend on the stone as well? Um, yeah, I've, on, on one side I said I had that little bit of a gap, so I'm playing it a little bit more on that one side and trying to push it and perhaps coming a little bit higher just to get the edge of the bezel to come over that little bit further. I did mention that right at the beginning, I had a bit of a gap. Um, the idea is not to but I'm having to move a little bit more metal and by having to move more metal, the strike has to be more so um, to shift the metal as I'm, as I'm doing it. But this is causing a havoc with the microphone. Yeah. So we still got a slight little bit of a wobble with the stone. Let's go back over one last go and I'll just stop after this now. So I'm going really quite close to the stone now. A bit more of a steeper angle just to get that last bit of metal over to hold it in place.
And I think we shall leave it at that. Okay. Beautiful. So gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So let's have a look at this um, on this camera here. So that is what uh, we've been doing. How close can we go and how close does this go? Not that close. Uh, there. So you can see where the edge of the bezel I've been tapping. It needs a bit more work. I need to go over it a little bit more just to refine that edge a little bit. Perhaps we'll go onto the overhead camera here. That make life a little bit easier. Can we see that? Uh, there we go. How about that? We got this on the edge. I've been taking it down on this outside edge, as you can see. It does need a little bit more work going over, but we're sort of overrunning a little bit on this particular uh, topic. The handpiece, well, that was the, the Badico. We got the Fordham here that we're actually going to be giving away. Um, it's a brilliant handpiece. Um, I'd never used the, the Badico before, uh, but the Fordham hammer handpiece. Um, not quite sure. Is it number fifteen? number 15 something like that let me put that back on and show you that in motion as well again let's just quickly show you that so again it's exactly the same um, you can taper the points to get exactly where you want to that's it that's better i can get right down right next to the stone with this now So I can get right down on top of that bezel, making sure that bezel now is going really nice and close. Nice, that really is nice. The tip does have to be nice and smooth for it to impart a nice smooth finish onto that. But that is absolutely gorgeous. I will need to come along with perhaps um, a needle file just to go over the edge of that bezel, just to tidy it up, or perhaps a nice little bit of a pumice wheel just to go over the edge, just to get rid of any of those little file marks, not file marks, yeah, file marks that you put on or the hammer marks that may have been put on. So your chance to win a hammer hand piece, courtesy of Guesswine. You can also win the GRS Stone Setters package as well. That is available for the competitions that we've been running over the last about hour and a half, two hours. Uh, do you get vibration white finger if you do this for a long time? No, you don't, because it's not really vibrating an awful lot. It's just tapping. What I do find it hurts is, is this, is the fact that the flex shaft has this curvature and I'm constantly having to keep it lift up like this. And I find that that does really hurt. Perhaps my flex shaft should be a little bit higher to have a nice gentle flow running into the handpiece that way. But I find even just doing that, my hand is starting to ache slightly. So there we go. That is a little bit of an introduction, a little bit of a tester, taster to a bezel setting. So yeah, I totally agree. The hammer hand pieces are really good. As I said, you can use them purely for, uh, for stone setting over thick bezels because I'd have a hard job trying to move that bezel by hand, but the hammer was giving me that little bit of resistance. You have to make sure that the piece is securely fastened because if that piece can move slightly, every time it hits, it's gonna be moving and it's gonna have no effect on the piece at all. Um, <clears throat> what if you do accidentally tear the top of the bezel? Um, the bezel is really going to be thick enough that you shouldn't happen to tear it. Uh, as I said, that was 0.8. I must have filed that down to about half the thickness um, on the outside edge. Um, if you do happen to tear it, what I suggest you do is perhaps get um, a needle file, a safety batch needle file, and just file all the bezel down, protecting the stone wheel with the safety edge, just to remove that little bit of the bezel and file that down and then carry on tapping that. Are you doing the, the competition, you Louise? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Hmm. Um, does uh, GRS sell the table for pitch? Yes, it does. GRS will sell these little holders. I think they even do the little um, rectangle, rectangle, these little T-piece as well. 
So I think they do that. Um, a what question, how long should be heated silver and gold? Well, there's a difference. You know, <clears throat> I don't know, I'm not gonna answer that now because that's not really appertaining to what we're doing at the moment. Um, can the hammer handpiece be used for engraving? Mm, no, not that particular handpiece. I know that uh, there's a company out there who's gonna be sending me some, um, a handpiece with a special attachment for a graver that can be used for engraving. I think the reciprocation on these are just that little bit too much for hand engraving. Suze, thanks very much, do uh, appreciate that, thank you. And thank you, Tom, as well. Um, <clears throat> Let's have a look, what else have we got? Thanks, do you know why it's called? I can say that the problem, I don't have a fuming extraction here, which Micromotor brand um, has a hammer piece. I think most of the Micromotors do, the nice, the good quality ones will have it. Um, see, I can't remember the brands now, to be honest. I can't remember off the top of my head. No, there's not enough strokes. Um, no, the strokes are too hard and not fast enough. What is the tea piece called? I don't know, it's a bit of aluminium. And it's a bit of like, a, almost like a tea piece, like a table with a tea piece ending. So I don't know exactly what that's called. Did you cut your bezel with a handsaw? No, I just simply rolled it down the rolling mill. Drew, thank you very much for the mic drop uh, emoji. Really do appreciate that. 1.9 thousand, 1,900. Lion Punch Forge Graven Adapter. Somebody is going to be sending me a Lion Punch Forge Engraven Adapter. I am waiting for that to come through. Uh, what are the holders called? I presume they're these holders. Shellac holder. That's a shellac holder. Um, could you run through how you would use some of the other anvils, please? <clears throat> Neil, yes, you can you can shape all the other hand pieces. You know, we've used the, um, the burnisher right at the start of the, of, of the day to be able to burnish um, your flush setting. So you could fashion the end of the anvil to like a bit of a point that you could produce like a stippled effect over a piece as well. As I said, you can buy the anvils with an industrial diamond on the tip. So when it comes along, it imparts a little, little, little dent, a little shiny, shiny dent, and that's almost like a diamond effect. Um, just shape the anvils. The Badico one here was just um, simply a flat end to that one. That's all that I was sent, and I haven't had time to do anything with that, but that's just simply flat. The uh, the anvil on the end of the uh, Fordham one, I have just fashioned into a bit of a, a chisel point for that. But fashion it however you want, and whatever you fashion that as, it'll be imprinted into the surface of the metal. Um, how do you get that pendant out of the plastic without heating up the stone? What I would do now is get some warm water and put some warm water around the outside of the um, thermolock and you should be able to get that off. If not, I haven't actually pushed this down an awful long way, so what I can do is get a bit of a pen knife just to lift up the edges, because you can see, uh, let's get this camera here. So I've just pushed over the edges here, okay, like that. So what I can do is just get a knife and lift up and perhaps take off these little edges here, and then that piece then will simply come straight out. Or some nice warm water will soften that. It shouldn't damage the stone and you should be able to get that piece out of there. Do you have fume extraction? No, I don't. Pitch cup, thank you very much, Chloe, for that. It's a pitch cup. Claire Jarris called it a pitch club cup, thank you. Um, is it possible to read through all the comments after the live show, some brilliant info? Yes, Leslie, you can do. All the comments will still be there throughout the whole live 12 hours and you can scroll through, absolutely. And if you are scrolling through and watching this on replay, the competitions have now finished. Um, <clears throat> I've got some competition winners. Louise, you have some competition winners. I have. Okay, so what would the competition for if this hour or so? Right, so this is for the GRS Benchmates. Okay. And the Fordham Hammer Handpiece. Nice, and, yeah, is that it? Yep. That's it for now, yep, unless cool. you wanted me to... No, I think that should be fine. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, what we got, yeah. Yeah, okay, let's, okay, so, let's start with the hammer hand piece. Okay, so we have, do we have a drum roll? Yes, please. Oh, hang on, i got to put my drum in place. Oh, my mic's off. No, no it's not, where is it? No, it's down here. What have we done with it? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay, thank you, Natalia. 
Okay. Uh, General, please. No, I've, I've lost. My, I've lost. Actually, lost my bench peg. Oh, guys, I lost my. Where's my bench peg? I couldn't have gone very far, could it? I could quote here. I could quote you here, couldn't I? What's that? What? What, what do you always say? Ouch! Oh. No, not that. Trap my fingers in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I always say? It's a bit rude. Oh yes, you can't say that, can you? No. <laughs> I'd forget my head if it wasn't screwed on. Okay, we're going to come to that in a minute, can't we? I can't find it. I have to find it in a minute. <clears throat> right, shall I just, shall I just, oh, just, just, on? just, we're, we're just a give us bit, the winners. A little bit off schedule. You need, a, you need a coffee. Yeah, so I'm going to, unlike these winners, we're going to have five and then we're going to start some soldering, okay? Yeah. Right, so the winner of the Fordham Hammer Hound piece is Esther Krupa. Esther Krupa, congratulations. Krupa, Krupa Esther. Oh, sorry. Krupa. Krupa. Sorry. Yeah. Esther Krupa, congratulations. You have won yourself uh, the Fordham Hammer handpiece. Not that one, a new Not one. Not this one, a, br a brand new one. Yes, well done. Congratulations <laughs> for that. Fabulous. Is it on the floor to your left? <gasps> How did you know? It's down there. <laughs> okay, we've got one more oh, to announce. This is for the GRS Benchmate. Don't set a package. Which is worth five hundred dollars. Six hundred quid. Six hundred quid. Woo! Um, and the answer is the winner is. Oh wait, I've got to scroll back up to the top of the page. <laughs> the suspense. Oh. 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 You're still scrolling. Chris Moon. Who? Chris Moon. Chris Congratulations. Moon. Congratulations. Hey. So you have won the. It's not just this, it's the attachment, it's, it's, it's this, and it's this, and it's other things as well. It's absolutely brand, brand, brand brilliant piece of equipment. £600 worth. We will be contacting GRS um, and Guess Wine with the information of the winners, and they'll be posting them out in due course. And in other news... We've reached two thousand pounds. Wow. You have to learn the MC Hammer dance wow. when we go home tonight. Do tomorrow when we go live. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I love it. Oh, I said, I said, brilliant, isn't it? That is absolutely amazing. That is fabulous. Thank you all very much for the two thousand pounds that you have raised during, and we've only been going seven and a bit hours. So that's brilliant. Yeah, the charity Thank you is very the real much. winner, and that's the most amazing thing. Exactly. And, and people have run fast. And we've still got two rolling mills to we've go. We've got two rolling mills to and go. We've got, we've got a disc cutter to go. We've got new concept saw to go. Bangle we've... forming die kit. Oh, oh yeah, bangle forming we've die set, the got... brand new one as well. What else? We've still got Walsh vouchers, Kerner Craft vouchers. Amazing. Yep. We've still got lots to go. The day is still young. A bit like Okay, me. right. I'm going to pop you on a break for two minutes so you can have a coffee and then we're going to start some soldering. Okay, so what's yeah? next then, Louise? What next? are we doing next? Okay, for, we're a little bit off schedule, but it's fine. We still have time. Um, we've got the soldering and granulation masterclass coming up, including a demo of the dust <laughs> and disc cutter. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm laughing at the drawing I've got to work with. Okay, anyway. This is, this is the drawing, me. guys. This is the drawing I've got to work don't with. Don't show them, don't spoil it. <laughs> Stop spoiling it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll resend all the links now. Yeah, okay. But um, so when we start the soldering um, granulation, in fact, when we put the, the Andreas's little coffee now, I'll put um, some links up to win the Durston disc cutter worth £300, um, kindly donated by Durston Tools. And I think we'll put the new concept solder strips in as well. Yes, we will. Yeah, because it's rather <coughs> now. But we still yes. got the saw, the new concept saw to raffle off. So we'll perhaps do, do that the at the end of the saw. Saw at the end of clock. this one. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Well, we, well, yeah, we've got. <coughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Because I'm not going to be using the saw anymore. Okay, but let's, yeah, let's do that then. So for the next two hours, we're going to be and doing this uh, soldering masterclass, um, soldering, uh, we're going to be doing some granulation. We're going to be adding the granulation to pieces, applying pieces using uh, the disc cutter, using the um, titanium solder strips as well. And that's what we're going to be doing. I have no idea how this is going to work out because I've never done this before. I have done this before, obviously, but this <laughs> I was is... going to say. No. <laughs> So this is uh, this a is a bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm brand new to this. I'm just winging it as I'm going. <laughs> so this is this is the idea. Okay. So ponder over that. Um, and Louise is going to bring a little slide into place. I'm going to have a very quick coffee, have something to eat because uh, I'm absolutely famished, and we will rejoin you in about five minutes' time. 
But in the meantime, as I say, use this time wisely. Yes, master. Use this time <laughs> wisely to have a nature break, natural break, a bit of a comfort break. You don't need to be told to go to the toilet, Andrew. <laughs> you don't want to miss anything. Use this time wisely. Go and take the dog for a walk, open the door, a bit of fresh air, stretch your legs, get a cup of coffee, get a whiskey, get a gin, whatever you want, grab yourself a beer and join us in about five minutes time. See you very soon. Bye bye.
Okay. Okay, and we are back. <clears throat> oh, the voice is really. I went. A bit, I was a bit. I was a bit panicky in the last section because things were just taking that little bit too long. I wanted to do another couple of, of bezels on that, and unfortunately, we didn't manage to do it. But you still got the idea. The idea was to demonstrate bezel setting, solder onto a back plate, and the hammer hand piece, and I think we did that well. Why do we have five thumbs down? Who knows, Joe? Who knows? People are thumbs down in for no reason. Basically, we have raised over £2,000 for charity. So thank every single one of you who has come on and who has, has donated money. It's been a blast so far, and we still got about another four hours to go. So thank you all for your donations. Every single penny of that is going to Cancer Research UK. Do appreciate it. Um, even though it's Cancer Research UK, the, the, the cancer research will give the money to 39 countries around the world. Um, here we go again, the global impact cancer research, it funds research in 39 countries. They've helped to develop eight of the world's top 10 cancer drugs, prove the link between tobacco and cancer, prove the value of screening and early detection. Um, they are investing over $500 million a year. They're the largest independent funder of cancer research. Um, so I think that's fair enough to say. And this uh, charity has been inspired to us by um, a good friend, Mark, um, who I hope is watching because this is the, the charities for him. Um, he's just been diagnosed with cancer a few months ago um, and it's non-operable. Is that the right word to say? Mm. It's non-operable. Um, so our, our hearts and thoughts go out with you, Mark, and your family as well. Okay, I'm very grateful for winning the prize. Thank you very much. Great for your introduction, provided regular. Thank you so much indeed. You're more than welcome. This is what it's all about. It's all about having a little bit of fun. Oh, my light's still on. Oh, they're still on. Cool. It's all about having fun and all together um, raising money for charity. I was just messaged by uh, Chris from, um, from Durston. Um, around about quarter to two, we did actually break Durston's website. <laughs> so, <laughs> for all the orders that have been going in... We collectively, not just, not just me and Andrew. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Jones, hey, 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 thank you very much for the donation. Yes, we officially broke Durston's website with all the orders going in, so thank you all very much for that. I think it must have been the spinner. It must have been the spinner ring flarer that you can still get your 40% uh, your discount off this. Don't forget, durston.com. Put the uh, coupon code SPIN40 in. You can get the flarer. Let me just quickly put it on here so you can quickly see. I'm really running out of time now. I didn't realize we were going to be so far overrun. So the idea is the spinner ring flarer goes together like this. That goes on the outside. You have the spinner ring in the middle. And then as you tighten the bolt here, put that in the vise, you tighten it, it flares out the spinner ring. And it will do that. So that is something that uh, Durston uh, literally went on last night. Um, I sort of came up with the, the dimensions and so forth. It's not a new idea, but we just developed that with Durston. It's brand new out. Here is a little spinner ring that we made earlier. We made it live on the 12 hour. And it works really, really well. So you can pick up one of them, 40% discount. Use the, car, use the coupon code SPIN40 on that. Brings it down to about £30, I think, something like that, including shipping anywhere throughout the whole wide world. Cool. Okay. What are we doing now, Louise? Soldering. Please tell me, what are we doing now? We're doing we are doing soldering and granulation. Soldering and granulation. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad about that. Um, and what have we got to give away during this hour-ish? We have got um, Durston Disc Cutter worth £300. Mm. We have got the new concept soldering strips. And um, we're going to do the new concept saw as well. As well. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, so I'm going to post these links back up, actually. <clears throat> okay. Jason B, um, you can just simply go down, down there. There's a little dollar sign in a little grey box. You can click on that. You can donate. Um, every penny goes to Cancer Research. Do appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Um, there we go. All right. So the 
A few little things we're going to be giving away is the new concepts saw. We've got two of these saws to give away. We've been using them all day. Absolutely brilliant saws. We've also got these. These are the soldering strips. You can pick these up from new concepts um, and other tool suppliers around the world. They are simply just titanium strips, a certain type of titanium. And from those titanium strips, you bend them into little clamp shapes. And I got a couple by here that I have made up a little while ago now. So one of these strips, you bend it simply with a pair of parallel pliers and you can bend it into these sort of shapes and it holds your pieces together. The advantage with titanium, it doesn't really sap the uh, the heat away from the torch and everything stays together and they don't really lose their springiness either. So that's one advantage that we've got using the titanium strips. I think we've got a dozen, dozen packs. I think there's 10 to a pack. We've got a dozen packs worth around about 25 pound a pack to give away. Also two of the saws as well. And the other thing that we're gonna be giving away in this hour-ish is the Durson disc cutter because Louise has very kindly came up with this design last night over her Prosecco. <laughs> um, this, I think this is a chain coming through here. Uh, we've got some granulation here, granulation here, and these are some applied designs around the outside here. That's the, well, my design had a heart in it, didn't it? it you is. said no. <laughs> because we're not giving away a heart disc cutter, you see, or no. dis a heart cutter. Uh, TJ, thank you very much indeed for that. Yeah, um, let's finish my coffee a second. Mm. One thing I haven't done, again, I'm getting so far behind. I haven't unpacked. Ugh. This is the, so this is what you could be winning. You could be winning a brand new Durston disc cutter. We're gonna be using this. This is, uh, we won't be winning this one. This one's mine. So what we've got in here is Let's get the camera facing downwards that you can't quite see. Let me go, hang on a second. There we go. So there is the Durston disc cutter. Oh, very nicely laid out actually. He says, oh. Can you smell? No, oh, it's okay. There we go. Oh. There we go. So this is the A or A. Durston disc cutter model 1201, I think, 1201. Uh, three mil to 32 millimeter, 10 piece disc cutter. Let's put another camera angle on here, shall we? So this is what you could be winning. Uh, if it wants to uh, go back, there we go. My coffee. This is what you could be winning is the Durston disc cutter. I love Durston because it's made in Britain. And this is what we're gonna be using now just to produce that gorgeous little drawing that Louise has put together um, over a glass of Prosecco last night. Nothing about leaving it until the last minute, is there? I didn't know I was doing it until about four o'clock <laughs> yesterday in my defense. <laughs> And every design that Louise came up with, um, we, we couldn't do. You said, oh, oh God, I've only got an hour to do this. You, I mean, you've actually got less time to do this now. <laughs> have I really? Oh, hell, yeah. have I really? <laughs> mm, mm. All right, thank you very much, everybody. All right, so let's have a look. Um, a disc. We are going to be using the disc cut. Let me just put that down first of all. Um, it also comes with... <coughs> Um, a urethane pad as well, although I won't be hammering out. I'm going to be using my vice to do this because we're going to be pushing out some really, really thick. Um, uh, is there something else that should be enclosed in here? Yes, there is. There we go. I knew there's something else. So <clears throat> the important thing about when you um, use a disc cutter is that you've got to keep both plates, both platons. That's not me. That's the disc cutter. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Louise. <laughs> um, you've got to keep the plate on the top parallel to the bottom. So if you put a piece of metal in this side over here, uh, the, and then you screw the plate down, the plates are going to be slightly off. So what is supplied is some little packing pieces that you then put in the opposite side to um, counteract the plate. The plate has to be level. Um, <clears throat> I've got a 0.8 millimeter 
metal here, I'm just going to, um, let's have a look. Let's just punch this out. As I said, this is something that Louise did last night. I'm not, I'm not having, I'm making a joke or anything like that. This is something that, so we've got 0 0.5, <coughs> uh, wrong camera, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, so that's 0 0.8. We're gonna put that in the opposite side. Let me just change over the camera a second on here. Uh, bear with me a second. And let's just move this camera a little bit in so we can see exactly what's happening here. There we go, cool. <clears throat> that is much better. So we've put a piece of metal in here. This is 0 0.8 millimeters. We're gonna put it in really nice, quite close to the edges. We then, on the opposite side, have put two pieces of metal in. That's 0 0.5, that's 0 0.3, so that equals 0 0.8. Put it in the other side, and we're gonna screw the top down. Make sure that's exactly where you want it. There, there, and there. Screw this down. We've got a little Allen key as well for this, so we can tighten that nicely up on the top like that. We've also got a bit, of, got sound. A bit of dirt and lubrication. I have sound. Do we have sound? Yes, we don't yeah, have sound. We've got no sound. Are we okay? Uh, yeah. Sound. I have sound. My sound's working. Your yeah, sound. Okay, that's yeah. fine. It's okay. We're all okay. Okay. Uh, all right, so there we go. So this is some Durston lubrication as well. Let's come nice and close on here now. There we go. And we're gonna get the uh, 28 millimeter. So that's the 28 millimeter die that goes in here. We're just simply just gonna run that along the edge of the lubrication just to make sure that's nice. And then from there, ideally what we should do is hit that with a hammer. I don't have a hammer big enough up here. I've only got my small little hammers. So we're just gonna take the camera and show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna use the, um, the vise to be able to push this out. Everything okay, Louise? Yeah, yeah. what cool. is okay. under the cutter, Andrew? Pardon? What is under the cutter? Under the cutter, it is a little urethane pad that is supplied and that does protect your bench okay. should you wanna hammer it out with a nice big hefty hammer. I don't have a big hefty hammer up here unfortunately. So I'm just gonna go over to the uh, to the disc cutter over here a minute. Uh, not disc cutter, to the vise. And we're simply gonna put this in place over here. Um, uh, let's have a look, let's have a look, see how we can do this. How is that looking? Cool. So let's take this. Let's go onto this camera over here now. So what we're gonna do is open up the jaws of the disc cutter. No, the vise. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure that the, the punch that we've got, as you can see here, is gonna be right in the center of there. Close this up. And this is the reason why we have the jaw protectors on the vise to protect it. And we're gonna use the vise now to push through. This is a 28 millimeter disc that we're gonna be punching out. Um, I'm doing it this way because I don't have a hammer big enough and heavy enough to punch out. So we can do that, hold on to the disc cutter, bring it out, and there is my 28 millimeter. He lands on the floor. This is my 28 millimeter disc. And it's that is as simple as that. Okay, so that's that. That'll come through like that. We can undo the disc cutter and that there. And you can see nice use of metal we got there. Let's come back over to the bench a moment as well. So let's come over here, come back over here. And now, according to the design that we've got, we need to make another little hole it's a little bit further up now. So we're gonna produce another hole, wrong camera. There we go, beautiful. And we're gonna produce another little hole a little bit further up now. Um, pretty much going by a little drawing that we've got there. So that's gonna go on there, that's gonna go on there. That's gonna look really simple and cool. Um, what size is this? Uh, 13 millimeter, so let's take the discs, the packing pieces on the other side, 13 millimeter. What I'm going to do is just mark on my bit of metal here a little bit of a line by there. Oh, steady, that just hit the floor. 
So that will go in place. Um, to what? Let's get my. Let's get that pen that just fell on the floor. Let's get my pen. Dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. All right, let's get this now. Let's just draw a line right through the center. And that's basically where I want my hole to go in that area by there. It's a 13 mil. Put this in. What's the thickest gauge you can use with that, Andrew? I think I have actually punched out two millimeter. Two millimeter, millimeter thick. Now, I must stress that I didn't use a hammer for that. I used the vise for that. We had a two millimeter um, gold disc. That was the thickest I have ever done. Um, I had to use the vise, obviously, because it's just far too thick. Let's pop back over there and let's just do this. I don't have a hammer um, big enough for that. So let's come back over here, put that into place on here. You can also use a hydraulic press as well to do this. Um, I do have a hydraulic press, but it's in the other room. And there's the punch coming out. There's my disc. And let's go back over to here. So that's that. So ideally, that is what we're going to be using the disc cutter for. Do you anneal before punching? Um, I haven't in this case, no. Uh, you can do. If I was perhaps using um, Perhaps a doming set now, just to dome this slightly, perhaps I would um, anneal it and then dome it because by forcing the punches through, you could work hard on the metal. Um, but in this case, no, we don't. This is what we've simply got now. It is a disc with another hole through. There we go, just like that. So this is what we're gonna be doing. Something very, very similar to what we got on here. It's not going to win any design competitions, I'm afraid, Louise. Oh. <laughs> it's not going to well, win. I was very limited yeah. in my... Um, in your what? In my, my design options, <laughs> really, wasn't I? Anything goes as long as it was round when you punch holes in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lovely. Okie dokies. Let's pop this into, back into fast, place. It was fast, John. Thank you very much. <laughs> Kathy, thank you very much for your donation. Really do appreciate it. Let's put those back. I'll never design again. No, you no, can't. No, 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 no. It's too sad. <laughs> I'm going to nag you now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I tend to use the uh, the vice for me. It's going to be a lot easier to do that. Okie dokie. We're going to make some granulation now. Let's have another little bit of a sip. Mm. Let me bring my other camera around. So in this hour, we're going to be looking at uh, winning some uh, goodies from Durston. We got the disc cutter that you just saw is what we're going to be giving away. We're going to be giving away um, some of the new concepts, titanium strips, and also the two titanium saws from uh, new concepts as well. Uh, let's have a, a quick look. Do we have um, anything back from uh, from Chris a minute regarding the knocking out? No, we don't. Okay, let's just come back to. All right. Now, when it comes to granulation, there are lots of ways to make the granulation. There's lots of ways to use the original um, Belinda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the donations that are coming in. £2,100 are oh, absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> Designs Limited Award, yeah. <laughs> so to make granulation, the best material to make granulation on is gonna be charcoal. Um, I've got a little charcoal block in front of me, like this here. And you can see we have pinned it together or tied it together with a bit of binding wire all the way around and that really helps to keep the block together. As you can see on the other side of the block we've got some small little holes and depressions upon that and we've been using that in the past to make up the uh, some granulation. <clears throat> now it's always nice to have rounded balls. Yeah. <laughs> 
Here we go again. So, when it comes to granulation and you're melting bits of metal down upon um, a block or a charcoal block, uh, you have um, the charcoal block. You melt a small little bit of metal down and it'll ideally go into pretty much a round ball because when the, the metal has become molten, it tries to go into the smallest area possible with the least amount of surface area and a ball is that shape. Kelly, thank you, thank you so much indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, but as your balls get bigger, you'll get a flat on them. Louise. So, What's Andrew's rule? The bigger your balls, the flatter your bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so as your balls get bigger, okay, um, it'll, they will do that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous rambles. See, my brother will be on the floor laughing now because he's the same childish sense of humour as me. John will be uncontrollable. <laughs> so the smaller the ball, the rounder it is. So the bigger your ball, the flatter your bottom. That's what I say. And perhaps I should have that. Write this down. Can we have a T-shirt with that on? <laughs> the bigger your balls, uh, the flatter your bottom. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a t-shirt with something like that across the top and underneath <laughs> I'm going to have the bigger your balls the flatter your bottom and I'm going to make up a t-shirt. I'll tell you what we'll do. Everybody who has won something today, everybody who's going to be winning something tomorrow whether it be things like the um, the t-shirts or anything, if you win anything today all of you can enter a competition to win a t-shirt with the bigger your balls, the flatter your bottom. Just the winners? Just one. Just, oh, no, there'd be competition. Ev one. Oh, everybody who's no. entered anything? You, all you winners will be in with a chance of winning a t-shirt. So they win twice? Huh? The winners, the the winners, winners will go be to in another draw, draw to win again? Yes. Shall but we they'll have, have to people enter. who aren't going to win? Yeah, oh, you haven't won. Yeah, okay. otherwise right, somebody's then. been in. Twice. You, you only get into the All second right. competition okay. if you've already won. So you... I, I totally agree with you. you. Know I, I do apologise. Sorry, I know Louise is up for fairness, aren't you? Well. I totally agree with you. I, yes. So well, let's just include everybody. Okay, we'll... everybody. Okay, everybody. We're going to do two t-shirts. We're going to have gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> and the bigger your balls, the fatter your bottom. We're going to have two t-shirts, okay? <laughs> And everybody who has entered the competitions today, you're all going to be put together and I'm going to draw two people yeah. to win two t-shirts. You One... that's not fair. Yeah, I agree. We'll do this in a fair way. Okay. I will make sure of it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and if we get enough demand, I'll put them up for sale. So I'll make two t-shirts with gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm not quite sure going, <laughs> I'm not quite sure yet. A cartoon character, me doing that, whatever. Um, and also a picture like that across the t-shirt with the bigger your balls, the flatter your bottom. How's that? We'll do that. <laughs> right, let's go. Let's have more okay. fun. Right, okay. So granulation. So granulation, the, yeah. The granulation. <laughs> uh, the bigger your balls, the flatter your bottom. So how do you get away without a flat bottom and ensure your balls are round? Well, what you have to do, you have to have your charcoal block, don't you? Okay, small ball, nice and round. The bigger the ball, the flatter the bottom. So how do you counteract that? You have to make a slight depression in the charcoal block. That can be made in several ways. It can be made with um, a little ball burr. It can be made with the end of your paintbrush. Anything that has a rounded end. And the idea is because now you've made a depression in the charcoal block, when you melt the silver, the silver will have or gold will have a round bottom. So that is the way to stop your balls having flat bottoms is by making depressions in your charcoal block. Does that make sense now, Louise? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's your charcoal block there. This is your charcoal block here. So this is your charcoal block. So if you want <laughs> to have flat balls, have them like this. If you want to have them virtually completely round, have them like that. I've got a charcoal block in front of me. You can use, um, as I said, a little bulb burr. 
you can just simply push it in with your hand and twist it or you can use it in your flex shaft if you do use it in your flex shaft be careful of the dust because that's going to come out at you um, let's just put that in here and we're going to melt some balls we're going to try and melt some various sizes i don't think we're going to be going to the extent of this many balls around here because it obviously is is quite small so i may just make some um design alterations based upon the time we have left and which is what how long do we have left louise oh oh let's see um where are we two o'clock four o'clock we've got another hour oh, i'm looking at the wrong sheet i do beg your pardon we've got another hour so we finish, we finish at six. We finish, but yeah, but then we've got half an hour as Six to half past So two. yeah, we haven't got, we're doing the Gem Light Box demo at six. At so, six? No, 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 6.30, sorry. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I thought I was running out of time there. Yeah? No, 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 there is time, there is time. <clears throat> so basically we've got an hour and a half to do granulation, solve this together and questions and answers. Yeah, but we'll, if I shout questions out, is that yeah, better yeah, yeah, for you? Yeah, as we're yeah. going through, yeah. Okay. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Um, charcoal block, little ball burr. We can make some little depressions as we go along. All right, little depressions like that. Keeping the dust out of the way. Can I use the soldering brick instead of the charcoal block? Yes, you can. The, yeah. the best thing about a charcoal block is because it's charcoal, it keeps the balls nice and shiny as well. And because the charcoal is a lot smoother than the soldering block, the balls will be nice and smooth as well. So that really, really does, um, does help. I got a bigger ball burr here. We can put some slightly bigger Now, so I just made those few little depressions. Now, we want to, to, there's two ways. You can make the balls all the same size, or you can make the balls all various sizes. Now, the best way to ensure that you get balls of an even size is to use the same amount of metal every single time. Now, in my tray down here, I have got an assortment of bits of silver, okay? Now, if I want to make up the balls of an even size, um, I would not do it this way. So this is um, all bits and pieces from my tray. And we've got little bits of metal and so forth. So I cannot guarantee the size of the balls if I use all different pieces of metal. Or if I try and cut off a little snippet off this edge here, is that gonna be the same size ball when it's melted down as perhaps a little bit of this because it may be thicker and so forth. So if I want to make um, some balls, some granulation balls, all of an even size, the best thing to do is to get um, some um, silver jump rings. I know that seems quite costly. I've got some silver jump rings um, by here that we can use. Or you can get a piece of wire like this. Uh, where we go, here we go and cut off an even size as you go all the way along. And providing the piece of wire you cut off is even, the balls are all gonna be the right size. If you don't mind what size your balls are, you can just cut little bits of silver off and just arrange them and so forth. But I wanna try and make sure some of these balls are pretty much all the same size. <clears throat> uh, let's have a look. What um, is the largest block made of and do your soldering block? That one, that's a, a thing that's like, like a solderite board. It's something that I've had, must be for about 15, 20 years. You can tell by the color of it. Um, I tried to clean it by rubbing it on a, a brick outside, a pavement outside, and it's come up pretty clean. I purely use that just to protect the bench because sometimes the flame goes over this little square little block here, you see. It'll, sometimes it'll go over this, but that's just there just to protect my bench at the end of the day because I don't have a separate soldering area. I always solder in front of me. I don't walk across the other side of the room to solder and then come all the way back. I try and do everything right in front of me here so I don't have to go walking about. Um, if I can do everything in front of me here, it saves me so much time. 
Um, these little jump rings, I think what I'm going to do is um, cut a few of these in half because I think they're going to be a little bit too big initially for what I'm after. Um, could you weigh it to make sure it's even? You could do if you have an accurate enough scale, but these are tiny. They must be weighing a fraction, a fraction um, of a, a gram each. And even the most fraction of a gram is going to make difference when it comes to the size of the balls. So yes, you could measure, but purely measuring the length of the wire every time is going to be far better uh, to get the right size balls. Brian is asking if jump rings, they, they have solder in them. Is it okay to melt down? Do I need to add more silver to offset the solder? No, you, you, can, buy, you can buy jump rings. I wouldn't necessarily buy the jump rings because then that then really is a little bit more costly. I would get a little bit of wire and wind it around um, perhaps a dapping punch or a nail and then cut them off from there. That's what I would do. It's going to be far quicker and cheaper than buying the jump rings. If you buy solder filled jump rings, don't think about melting them down because there's solder involved in them. But ones we have here are simply um, wire that we have simply just twisted around. Joe, 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 so don't laugh. Joe, we never laugh. Um, well, not at people, we might laugh at Andrew's. Sad jokes. Yeah, big flat balls. Um, <laughs> don't laugh, but if you use the rings for ball size and and you get them, uh, sorry, if, if, you, if you use the rings for balls size and you get with the first time the right size, could you melt another ring on top of the ball and make it a bigger one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The um, charcoal I find is a lot better for melting down because it provides the right sort of atmosphere and the balls do stay a lot, lot shinier. I've got a few little jump rings here. Let's just quickly melt some of these down. As they start to melt, I'm gonna direct them into uh, wrong camera. I'm going to direct them into my charcoal uh, block little holes. So this little guy here is going to start to melt. There we go. And he drops straight away into there. Lovely. Gorgeous. I say gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, that one into that one. Just put that into there. What um, if you get bits of charcoal and still the block dust in the balls? It doesn't. It comes to the surface. Mm -hmm. melt them when it's the same amount every time. The there we go. Doesn't, the charcoal doesn't mix with the metal yet. Um, click the thumbs up. Yeah, guys, if you could give us a thumbs up, that would be fab. How about weighing the silver scrap for the same size balls? Yeah. You can do it, but your yeah, scales are going to have to be so accurate, I'd say down to the nearest hundredth of a gram, because the, the, the weight of these balls is, is, is virtually negligible. Okay, so there we go. Just going to take them off. You could put them into the acid, and perhaps I should have been a bit prepared and had something like a tea strainer to put them in, to put them into the acid. So there we go. There's a whole load there. Let's get some more of the jump rings. Can you explain more about alum pickle? Is it better than citric acid? Um, alum is better than citric acid. Citric acid really is does not necessarily uh, isn't strong enough. It's okay if you're at home and you need something that is going to be really safe, but um, I would always try and use so perhaps sodium bisulfate, which is the safety pickle. I find that a lot better. Um, and obviously keep it covered when you're not using it. Uh, bobbly balls. Bobbly when balls? When it comes to the surface, my balls are bobbly. What do I do? Um, sometimes that's due to perhaps no flux on the surface. Um, you'll also find that fine silver actually melts down a lot easier as well. So if you have problems, use some fine silver for the balls. Okay. Uh, don't we usually use fine silver for granulation? Yes. I did a little trick on at the bench where I just simply, no, that's a big one there, where I just simply um, rolled up the, the metal and as it rolled up into a ball, it just ran off my block into some uh, water and that was pretty cool. All right then, so there we go. So we've got some larger balls. We're just going to melt down a few more into these little holes here. 
like that. Let's get a few more jump rings out of my tray. So you use flux? Uh, we're putting flux onto the jump rings, yes. Yeah. It just helps the metal melt a little bit easier, yes. What is the biggest size ball you could granulate? Um, I really don't know. Hmm, that's just trial and error, I guess. I think it? it would be, yes. Okay. I normally use sterling silver and done some gold ones recently, golden balls. <laughs> that's what I'm going to be doing now in a minute. So yeah. I have a little bit of gold that we're going to be using, yes. And also if you just draw the flame away slowly from the balls as well, as opposed to just taking it away, just, just take it away very slowly and let the silver just cool down very slowly as well. You won't get much um, pitting on the surface as well. Uh, my tweezers are getting rather hot. Oh, we've got one big ball there. There we go. Oh, there we haven't. There we go. That's cool. All right, then. I've got one more. Oops, Daisy. All my balls are gone. <laughs> <laughs> right, those trees are getting rather hot. So those are balls. Those are the balls that we've got. I'm just going to pop them into the acid just to give them a little bit of a clean. I'm just going to cut a little bit of gold as well just to um, apply a little bit of a shape to the... A um, little bit of shape to the... To the gold. The pips, um, of the, of the, um, the pips of the binding wire, does it help stop it breaking apart? It really does, yes. Um, let's try and find a small little bag a minute. Um, yes, it does. The Because sometimes the... Sometimes the block will crack. Uh, so the binding wire holds it together, stops it cracking, but, but if it does crack, it won't fall apart. One little tip now. <clears throat> I've got my balls, I'm going to, my balls are cold, I'm putting my balls in the bag. <laughs> Louise, um, I've got one of these little grippy bags like this, let's just pop the balls in the bag. Uh, because if you put these balls into your pickle, um, you may find your balls will become stuck at the bottom or you won't be able to find them in the bottom. But by putting them into a little bag like this, pop them in the safety pickle, um, and they'll be able to be held into the bag. You can also use something like a tea strainer as well. So there we go. So there's the balls in the bag. What about brass? Can you make balls from brass? Never tried. Mm -hmm. Never tried. Um, Never tried. So there we go. Often, there's my balls in my bag. And we're going to leave them in there for a few minutes whilst we have a bit of a chat. Yes. How often do you go through solder blocks? Very rarely. Um, I don't often use charcoal. The charcoal blocks we very rarely use. I find them a little bit too messy. But these sort of blocks that we've got here, are oh, I'll have them for years and years and years and years and years. Um, magic stones. I've seen making balls on cotton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Never seen that. Never seen I, that I, have, of these I have dropped my balls on the floor somewhere, can but I don't know where they are. Can you use the same it. charcoal block on uh, gold and silver? Yes, you can. Contamination? Nope. No? <clears throat> nope. I'm just going to cut some, some gold. I'm going to make a couple of little gold um, balls as well now, whilst we have the... How do you polish them? Uh, polish the balls. Um, they, are, they should be nice and um, fairly shiny when they come out of off the block because it's it's a reduced atmosphere because it's the the charcoal on it you can always put it through the barrel polisher not individually but when the piece has actually been soldered together i've got a few little things i'm going to show you a little bit later on to do with um, cleaning and polishing as well so that's to come a little bit later let's put a bit of a uh, bit of borax on some of these little bits of gold just to enable the gold to melt down um, nice and easily. The bits that come off the blocks, presume they just brush off, do they? They, they don't go into the metal? No, no, they don't, no. Seen people using potato instead of charcoal block. Yeah, uh, people do use potatoes, yes. But that smells a bit nicer. I don't know, to be honest. Mm. But potatoes are often used um, 
for aligning rings and things like that? Yes. Oh, somebody was asking about brass balls. Um, I was told if you heat brass too much, it can explode. Wow. So be very careful. Okay. Yeah, wear safety gear or just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> or just don't do it. Yeah. Okay, where's my little bag? Here's my little bag. Celia, yeah, don't worry. If you've accidentally entered a competition twice, that's fine. I can filter. Yeah, that's no worries. Um, maybe next time we can find a, a better way of... I don't know, I'll have a little think about perhaps an easier way of... What, entering the competitions? Yeah, so people haven't got to worry about... Mm, I think okay. something. Perhaps we'll have a little. Hmm. Yeah, no, I've already thought of something actually. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it needs work. But yeah. Um, Claire, my silver balls keep going coppery. Same silver, same pickle, same heat. Hmm, okay. Um, are you putting it on charcoal block? Because that may help. We want me to find out. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, Copper ball before. Never tried brass. I was thinking copper. Yeah. So yeah. No. Uh, TJ was thinking of copper. Um, yeah. Just be careful if you are gonna. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, make them on the cotton one to fit the same as a fire blanket. I see what you mean. Yes. So a fire blanket would be pretty good, wouldn't it? Where are you? Oh, where are you? Uh, I'm about making it on cotton. They mean like a cotton blanket, like a fire blanket. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Really mm. cool idea. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut out a little bit of a disc um, out of my little bit of gold here as well that we can use to apply. I'm going to use um, a small little one here. I got a bit of gold that we should be melted down yesterday. I was going to cut out um, like, like a rectangle something like that but um, we're running out of time so I'm just gonna hammer this out let's put the metal on the other side tighten that down I'm actually gonna hammer this it's about so what's this this is a three this is a six millimeter hope this is gonna go through Okay, so I got a little disc off that. Uh, pop that away. And put these away now. There we go. So, not the best use of um, a bit of sheet is to cut it right in the middle. Always try and aim to get it near the edge. But I'm just rushing a little bit now just to get this sorted out so I can just show you some sort of techniques when it comes to doing things like sweat soldering and so forth. Um, okay, that's that. Um, another little nice little item that you can get from Durston is this. This is a soldering turntable. Um, it's, it's really, I think it's over engineered. It's got a bearing in the bottom here that this sits on um, and it spins. Absolutely brilliant. As you can see, it keeps on spinning. A gorgeous little soldering table that we can be using if need be. We've got our disc, we've got our balls that we've got in our bag and they are now nice and clean. We're going to make sure that all this comes out of here. There we go, like that. I'm going to make sure that plenty of water gets in that bag now just to make sure there's no excess um, that's what I'm looking for. Where's my cloth gone? There is that. There's no sold, not sold, there's no um, pickle or anything like that. So this is what we got. Water comes out and let's get these little balls out. Okay. So the idea with them going into the bag, into the acid, it keeps all the balls together. And we've got quite a few what little did balls. What you use to cut the gold? What did I use? Mm. Top cutters. The gold was the, 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 the gold was about a millimeter. Again, this is a little bit of wire that we just simply melted down, rolled out for the purpose of today. But that was one millimeter square. I simply used a pair of top cutters, come along and just snipped it. 
Um, I wasn't being accurate, but if you want to make sure that all the balls are the same size, make sure you cut off the same size peach piece each and every time. There's our little pile, number three, there's our little pile of balls that we've got that we're just going to play around with now, putting them onto our disc. We've also got a small little ooh, three millimeter, sorry, six millimeter disc that we're also going to put on to this design as well. I'm going to add a little bit of granulation um, as we see fit going around it. Let's take that off there because and do that another time. When when to use top cutters and when to use side cutters? It really doesn't matter. Mm. I would use top cutters, have a limited depth, a limited throat, because you have only can go as far as here. So for these, if I wanted to cut a bit of wire, perhaps longer than that, I'd have to bring it down the side, onto that side there. Are um, top cutters flush cutters? And um, These awesome. aren't, no. They're different um, things, are they? No, um, they're not. They, um, I've got side cutters, like these here, and I've also got top cutters, but they're not flush, no. Okay. Um, I find that with flush cutters, you've got to be really careful with the thickness that you, um, you cut. With, with the normal beveled edge cutters, you can cut quite thick metal. I do have flush cutters downstairs, but you can't cut anything bigger than one millimeter, otherwise you'll damage them. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's my there. All right, let's just put this together. We've got another. What company makes top cutters? I think those that I've got there are from. Um, they're just from Sutton Tools. They're just. I think it's a bog standard, simple um, commercial cutters and pliers that I've got. Um, make sure the joints are all box joints, as opposed to lap joints. Um, and they'll see you through years and years and years. Um, okay, what other questions have we got here now? We don't share, we're not sharing any other videos, I'm afraid, um, upon here. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so we've got our design here. Here we go into this one. We've got our design here. What we're going to do, we need to, first of all, make sure that this disc is nice and clean. We're going to heat it up. We're going to quench it in some uh, some acid to start off with. We could get some emery paper ice. It's got a lovely shine about it already, so I'm not going to be polishing this up at all. Let's just heat this up, quench it in the acid. That will get rid of any acids or any oxides or anything on the piece, and also it'll preserve the look of the surface. This little disc that I cut out, when you um, punch out a disc, you will invariably, uh, there's your sheet and you punch out a disc, okay? So you punch out a disc, what comes out of the disc, the top surface will be slightly rounded like that, and then it'll have a little bit of a burr underneath the bottom from the action of where it's been pushed out. What I want to do now is just remove that bit of an edge on the piece of metal. So we can get um, a buff stick, put that down onto our bench like that. Have a look at our disc. There's a good side, there's a bad side. Um, I, saw, I call the bad side the bit that's been on the bottom where it's been punched out. And we're going to go over that and we're going to solder this in place onto our silver pendant, making sure that it's nice and flat. In fact, I'm going to turn it over because I want to make sure the other surface is nice and flat as well. So let's have a look at that. Nice, gorgeous. And go back on the other side. Nice. And what we're going to be doing now, we're going to be sweat soldering this onto our silver pendant. Now, because we've got gold and we've got silver, we've got the option of using two different solders. For this, I'm going to be using some silver solder. There's not much point using gold solder. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to sweat solder. We're going to put the solder onto the disc first of all, and then we're going to put the disc then on top of the pendant. How are we doing there, Louise? Anything? Yep. Competitions coming um, up? Absolutely gorgeous. Yep, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous, brilliant. gorgeous. Is there a problem? I thought the soldering and granulation was on at half past four. No, that's four o'clock. Four o'clock we started that, but it was running a bit late, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, it was. So Apologies it probably was that. about 20 past four by the time we started, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, hard solder. This time my hard, 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 hard. We're going to get a little bit of um, solder and we're going to put it onto the back of our little disc. Try not to use too much, but just use enough so it spreads across the whole disc. So there's our little disc. Heat that up, put the solder onto it. There's a bit too much flux onto this. Thank you, Andrew. Get off. Get off. Solder onto the top. If the solder wants to come off. No, it doesn't. It did then, because it went into my... There we go. Let's put the solder in place. Just make sure that that solder covers the whole disc as well. If you want to drag it across so it covers the whole disc, tease it away. The solder covers the whole disc like that. If you want to put that in the acid, you can do like that. So that little disc now has silver solder on one side and that's gold on the other side. Here is our bit of silver. We're going to make sure that we try and cover it with as much uh, flux as possible to try and protect it. It's a little bit damp, but just going to warm that up, make sure that we're going to get lots of flux over the whole disc. What would be nice would be to, to dome this disc as well before we do any soldering, or even perhaps we could try and dome it afterwards we put on this design. So that's what we've got there. Let's pick up this disc, and we're simply going to drop this disc now, try and get it symmetrically right in the center. Now, if you want to hold this disc in place, okay, so it doesn't move, what you could use is the titanium soldering system, which we've just been talking about. Turn it into a little clamp that can hold that piece exactly where you want it. Be careful with the tension that you put on it. If you have it too hard, the metal is likely to squash, but all we really want to do is just to hold that piece exactly now where we want it. Let's just come on top, look down on top. Is it exactly where we want it? Actually, no, it isn't. We just want to move that piece across a little bit. Okay. So there it is there. What we're going to do next is get our soldering clamp. And just, we're gonna clamp that in place using one of our soldering clamps like that. And that now will stay exactly where we want it. Let's just move that down a little bit because it's not where we want it. Your head's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I got a big head. So that now is going to be in position. How about this one here? This is close. This will go. Oh, there we go. Go a bit closer. There we go. <gasps> nice. So that's what we've got. We now can heat this up. And what we're looking for is I've got all my, all my balls out the way by there. I'm going to come to them now in a second. So now we can sweat solder this little gold disc nicely in position. The the solder strip, sorry, the, the, sorry, the titanium strip is not going to take away an awful lot of heat, but it's holding it exactly where we want it. If you want to turn this over, you can do, making sure we get that soldered exactly where we need to. There we go, beautiful. Nice. That is soldered. The advantage by doing it this way, as opposed to what you, what you don't ever want to do, there's loads of little grains of nuggets of information, isn't there, here. So what you, we have um, a plate, okay? So this is the plate that we've been soldering onto. The hole is down here. We've got another plate we're soldering on top, and it's the little round plate. So here's the oval, there's the hole upon the top, Okay, and we're soldering on this little plate on the top like that. It's easy enough to come along, put this plate on top and put a little bit of pallion of solder by there. 
on the outside. So when this all melts, the solder will go underneath. So here's our little bit of a pallion of solder on the side. But what you'll find is that when that solder melts, it'll melt onto the surface first of all, and then it'll flow. And what you're left with, as I was explaining when we did the, uh, the bezel setting, you're gonna be left with a little bit of a shadow on that bit of metal. And what you don't want is any solder showing on that surface because you won't be able to clean it up, you won't be able to polish it off and there'll always be some sort of mark or a deviation or the surface won't be quite level. So, in instances like this, always sweat solder. So, you have your round disc, you put the solder, here's your disc, you put the solder on the edge, on the bottom edge here, you put that on top with plenty of flux, the solder melts. When the solder melts, what you'll find is that the solder will stay underneath. It'll stay in this area here because solder likes to stay between two surfaces. They like it nice and tight, they like, they like it nice and close. So the solder, it's like saying it's nice and comfy and warm between these two pieces of metal. That's the warmest bit. You go outside that warmth and it's cold. You don't want to go outside, you want to stay inside. You want to be between two pieces of metal. The solder will not flow out because it likes to stay between the two pieces of metal. So you will never get a solder flowing out of the piece because it will always stay between two pieces of metal. Any questions, Louise? Come here. Um, do you have any tricks to keep the pieces shifting when sweat soldering? Do you? Have any tricks to keep the pieces shifting? From shifting, you yeah. can use the titanium pieces okay. to hold the piece. They come in strips looking like this, um, and from that you simply bend them into the shape that you want. That's a simple, nice little shape because you can sort of use it to prop something up. You can stand it up. We've got one here that we cut out. This is what we use. Not quite sure what we use this for. There's a groove along here. I think it was, this was for soldering, um, earring posts onto um, a backing sheet, something like that. You can do that, um, but you can use these titanium strips and you can use them over and over and over again. There's lots of drawings um, and diagrams on New Concepts uh, website that shows you all the different permutations of the styles of, of clamps that you can make. Do you neutralize the piece with bicarb after the pickle? No, I don't. No. I just have a little bit of water in front of me by here. You could put bicarb in it if you wanted to. I just simply swill it out in the water. Um, I find that's all that I need. John, thank you very, very much for <laughs> the $20. Appreciate it. Any more questions? Uh, Brandon, bowling 925 wire for toggle clasps. Mine seem to almost always come out dimpled. Um, I think the, the trick is the, is the atmosphere. This is the reason why we always use uh, charcoal because it produces the correct atmosphere for what we require. If you, if you take the flame away too quick, it's sort of perhaps the, the, the metal is actually bubbling and you may have actually boiled it and over melted it, so to speak. So the surfaces will end up slightly wrinkled, but just pull the flame away slowly just to allow the metal to cool slowly. If the metal cools rapidly, you're gonna get dimpled surfaces. Where, where can one buy those titanium strips? You can buy them at New Concepts, okay. newconcepts.com. Um, you can buy them from Cookson. You can buy them from most tool suppliers. Um, if you're not, uh, uh, if you don't win one, um, I think we've got a dozen strips to dozen, give away. Yeah, yep, a dozen strips mm -hmm. to give away, dozen packs of, of, of 10. So that's what we've got. There's our piece that looks something like this. He says, Focus, Whoa, there we go. So the solder has not flowed, the solder has stayed exactly where it's needed. It hasn't moved anywhere, it stayed exactly where we want it. Absolutely brilliant. Greg is celebrating with champagne. Every time you say whoopsie daisy, he's having another glass. Oh, whoopsie daisy, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> whoopsie daisy, Whoa, a glass. How, how, how much have you got? It's not going to see nine o'clock. It'd be pie on <laughs> <laughs> Don't, 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 don't have a glass of champagne every time he says whoopsie daisy. It's gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, I'm, I've come to start to play with my balls now. We are going... <laughs> 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 oh, the childish behaviour again. Do you ever pin tumble your granula granulation balls in the magnetic tumbler to brighten them up? Um, no, because mm. I don't have a pin tumbler. Okay. Um, you can do. Um, I find that the balls tend to be nice and smooth. We've got some of these little, uh, what are they called? Eve, uh, E-Flex, and we've got a whole pile of these. Um, absolutely brilliant things, Eve Everflex. E-Flex, E-Flex Twist, various grits. I find that these are really good. They're slightly abrasive for going over the balls and they will get into the little nooks and crannies. Then you can use your white nylon brush to get in there and give it all a nice polish. I find I like to do things by hand as opposed to by machine. I feel that I get a better, better look purely by using, um, using things by hand. Uh, where to get the clamps? Zobo, so, you can buy them from newconcepts.com. You can buy them from most tool suppliers as well. Okay, now we're going to look at putting some balls up onto the surface um, of our, um, let's just separate some of the gold ones. Oh, there you go. Uh, we're going to put some of the balls on top of the surface. Um, I'm not going to go too mad with this because we are slowly running out of time, but just to show you what we're going to do. Years and years ago, back when granulation was first discovered, um, people have used um, chemicals, they've used um, solutions that they paste upon the, uh, the balls themselves. So when it is heated up, the point of contact between the two metals uh, melts and they will become instantly attached without solder. You can do this with fine silver as well. You can come along just when um, the metal starts to fuse they will fasten themselves without any solder. When it comes to things like 925 that we got here, sterling silver, it doesn't really work very well if you use fusing, and also it doesn't really work very well um, using say, gum tragosanthin, copper sulfate, and those sort of chemicals as well. So we're gonna do it really, really the cheats way, and we're gonna use some solder. Now, you saw what we did when we melted the little bores on the, um, charcoal block. We use little ball bird to make the little depressions. You can do that in this way and that way you can know exactly where the balls are going to go. Or you can simply do it random um, if you wanted to. I like to know where my balls are going to go. Um, so I'm going to try and quickly find my ball birds that I had this morning, um, which should be in my boxes that I've kept to one side in case I needed them. Can I just, uh, yeah, Jennifer on. wants confirmation that you melted the solder on the small disc and then reflowed the solder onto the larger piece. Yes, I did. Yeah, great. Yes. Okay. Um, that, I think, is, is the best way of doing it. If you happen to have too much solder mm -hmm. onto the small disc, you can always file it off, but always reflux it and then put it onto the larger piece. Yes. Um, what did you use to cut and file them? Cut and file the... Um, I'm not sure, so I'm just catching up with the question. Oh, sorry, yep, yep. If the solder runs in the wrong direction, do you clean and repickle the piece? And how do you get rid of the leftover excess solder? So if I'm sweat soldering, it's usually you solder the whole surface, especially in the little applied um, little disc that we got here. This little disc, we have the solder across the whole surface. And as you only heating that flat area, the solder will stay on that flat area. So. For instance, here is the disc here. In fact, let me use a different color. I've got loads of different colors here. Why well, haven't been using them? I just don't know. Uh, when you put your pallion of solder on top here and you use the flame, the solder will flow. It will stop at the edge. The solder will just fill the flat. The solder won't go and, and go down. <laughs> <laughs> solder doesn't often do that. So the solder will stay on the edge. When you turn that upside down, then the solder is purely in that area there. The solder will not run. It will not run over here and it will not run over there. I guarantee it will not run. It likes to stay between two pieces of metal capillary action. So that is the best way uh, of thinking about it. It's like two sheets. 
get into bed between between the bed between two sheets it's always oh, lovely and warm if you put your foot out when it's cold it's freezing cold and you bring your foot back in that's what solder does so, so <laughs> I'm, not, I'm absolutely losing it, I think. You really are. Is it important to use distilled water when creating borax flux? No. no. You can use ordinary, I think, providing it isn't too, um, too hard a, a water, but I've just got normal tap water. We've got quite soft water where we are, though, aren't we? I don't know, have we? Have we? Yeah, we, we've got really soft water. I, I know, like, are. Wiltshire Way, public places in England, it's really mm. limey, isn't it? Is it? Um, um, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose, yeah, Grace can tell you, because Grace lives up towards um, Kenilworth and they do find it quite yeah, hard, don't they? Yeah, quite nice water. Um, do you have a tutorial on how to form the strips so folks can get an idea of what to use them for? Um, I think, oh, I have to check out YouTube titanium strips. There must be something on there. Um, I'm sure we've done a film on At The Bench and we may have done a film on YouTube. But if you just go into the search on um YouTube, put in titanium soldering strips, perhaps Andrew Berry, something like that, it may come up already. Uh, but there's lots, go onto the New Concepts website and on there is lots of, of, of pictures of, Rachel, thank you, woo, mm -hmm. and there's lots of, of, of pictures on there showing different clamps uh, that people have made. Uh, one is James Miller, he's, develop, he's helped develop these as well, and there's so much information on there, you won't believe it. Okay, any more questions whilst we are here now? Um, uh, soldering strips, you know, titanium strips, did you use titanium strips? I'm not a fan of paste solder in general, but would it be good for granulation? I suppose, yes, it would be. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just simply coming along now with this, if because what I'm going to be doing on this now, I'm just going to be putting some simple little balls on here, like we've got, um, and I may just put perhaps uh perhaps three on the top by there as well something like that i'm not going too mad because i'm slowly running out of time with this um so that's the sort of layout i'm going to do it's 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 even sim more simplified than louise's drawing but based upon that that's what i'm going to be doing so <clears throat> so for me now what i'm going to do is just make a little dimple where I want the balls to go, and then I can be sure that is exactly where the balls are gonna go. I'm gonna put the smallest amount of solder in each dimple. The solder, again, will not flow anywhere else because where I put a little dimple like this with my ball burr, I'm gonna make sure that I put the smallest, a little bit of flux in this area here, and then I'm gonna get the smallest piece of solder in there as well, all right? So what's going to happen is that when the heat comes along here, where's my red one? Can I use my red, my torch? Perhaps I'll start using colours now because that looks a lot better. So when the heat comes along, and that should be blue actually because it should be a blue. Uh, the, because we've got flux in this area here, this is going to stay nice and clean. There's flux protecting the surface. There is no flux on the rest of the surface, so the rest of the surface is going to oxidise. Solder will not flow on an oxidised surface. Solder will always flow where it's nice and clean. The flux has kept that little ball area nice and clean. Heat up the area, the solder will melt. Where will the solder melt to? Exactly in that little dimple and will not melt anywhere else or flow anywhere else because it will be oxidized. Hopefully, fingers crossed, as they say. With a bit of luck and a ferro wind. So let me quickly come along and just get. If you wanted a hammered effect, to just the gold disc, would you do it before soldering or after? Um, I would do it before, because if you're hammering, you, you're limited. You want to try and get the dents perhaps underneath the balls as well. So I would hammer it first, do all the main decoration over the whole piece, and then do the applied decoration on top of that. Definitely, yes. So let's just get a ball burr. Again, this is, again, this is really, really rough. Uh, right by there. I'm going to put one there. I'm going to put one there. I'm going to put one there. Like that there. Um, right by there. 
How do you use the ball but around closer to the gold disc? How? Yeah. I haven't done. So what, How do you use the ball bearing around if, closer to the gold disc? You'd have to have, a, have a, um, a little bit more of a smaller ball burr if you wanted to get really, really close. Uh, let's just put one, two, three on the top. How do you protect the big piece from getting fire scale when heating to solder the granulation ball since you mentioned the oxidation on the outside is helpful to prevent solder flow. That's a good question. Um, I will most probably get some fire scale on it, but, but an oxide is not necessarily fire scale. So I won't necessarily um, put borax over the whole piece. I will only purely put it in the little dips. And because I'm using an easy solder now, I shouldn't have to keep the flame on the piece for very long. If I did do that, the balls are going to melt. So I may bring my trivet into place so I can heat from underneath the piece. And don't forget, it's the oxygen from the flame that really does produce some of the uh, fire scale. And if I can heat from beneath, um, I won't really get too much uh, fire scale onto the outer of the uh, piece itself. So I've got a little bit of borax. We're just going to put it now into the little dots. Did you use the side of the ball burr as opposed to the end? I did, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I'm putting three up there. Okay. Um, all right, so that's what we got. Uh, we're going to use some easy solder next. I'm going to use the thinnest, smallest little pieces of easy solder. Um, when you get some solder, it's going to be quite thick. Um, I really want some very, very small pieces. So I either cut very, very small pieces with my shears or I can hammer the end of the solder a little bit thinner. I'm just gonna quickly just pop onto the roller mill and just to roll the end of my solder a little bit thinner to make it nice and thin. Uh, looking something like this here. As you can see, I've rolled it a little bit thinner so I can be sure I get the smallest amount of solder that I actually need. If you want to go over that little bit of solder with your emery paper, you can do if you want to clean it. And we're just going to cut some little snippets of solder to go into those little depressions. Any more questions, Eloise? Yes. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, lovely comments from everybody. Thank you so much. Um, can saw frame, what burr are you using and what size? Um, it's a two mil, um, two mil ball burr that I was using this morning. It's purely just to make the little depression that you can put your little bit of solder into and then when the solder melts, the solder will fill the ball and it's just something, it's like almost like um, a golfing tee. You can put the ball on top and the ball will sit on top of the tee because the tee has a bit of depression in it and that's what I'm going to be utilising for this. The solder may fill the ball, uh, sorry, may fill the dip, but as soon as the ball goes onto it, the ball then will sit down into the dip when the solder melts. Can you solder copper and silver balls? At, oh, uh, go back to the yeah. Go back to the. Yeah, you can. can you, yeah, solder and uh, solder and copper balls at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Could you coat the whole piece in rouge to prevent fire scale, or does that only stop solder spreading? Um, I think anything that you can use to prevent the oxygen from the torch touching the metal would be beneficial, yes. I'm just gonna get onto the overhead camera a second. I don't think of the overhead camera on this. No, we don't. Tanya, of course, please feel free to copy. It's not really a, a design, is no. it? No, oh my <laughs> gosh. I don't, I, we would love to see you do it. Um, practice, please go ahead, yeah. Yeah, it's just something that we've just been playing around last night. Louise and I were just simply going along. I said, Louise, you haven't made a design for tomorrow. And you said, just likes bossing me around. But, I, but I'm drinking my, my Prosecco, and I went, Louise, <laughs> we need to have a design for tomorrow. I'm not making it up as I go along. So Louise said, oh, okay, okay, you say, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> and we very, very quickly came up with this idea. And he went, I'm bored now. Oh, okay, so. Uh, yeah, because everything I suggested, you went, not doing that, not doing that, not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Bridget, 
Hope you have a nice bottle of fish chilling. You did put something in the fridge, didn't you? Yes, I put a bottle of Prosecco in the fridge Excellent. for us as well. Thank you. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. gorgeous Greg, girl. that's another glass. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Jack, yes, my design is the best part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, one lucky person is going to win this. How would you sold it on tiny silver? Oh, I've jumped. Uh, filings like stardust. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, we've done that in the past, and you have to fuse that. Um, if you get some. Um... There you go. So I think I've. I'm one ball short. <laughs> I'm one ball short of solder. Uh, the what would what, what you say about then? I've just missed that. Um, what was the question then, Louise? Sorry, um, I missed that. Oh, how would you solder on tiny silver filings like Stardust? Yeah. Now Ooh, I'd like to see that. You, yeah, we could have like done. Mm. Ooh, now Ooh. you're thinking. Yeah. Mm. Oh, thank you, John. My brother's saying nice things about me. Your brother? My brother, He's yeah. the first, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> he can say what he likes about me, but nobody else can. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the rule. Right. We now have got all little... Can you use methylated spirit? We're getting asked that a lot. Yeah, methylated spirits, yes, methylated yeah. spirits with boracic acid and borax is a great barrier for fire scale, yes. Um, how are we doing with tweezers? Uh, right, okay, so now we come to, we've just got little bits of the solder in the little areas that we want. In fact, let me just repeat that up one more time. I uh, want to make sure that they're, they're soldered into the depressions a minute. Cool. Right, now we can arrange uh, the balls. What I would advise you to do is to just put some borax on the balls to start off with. We're going to have to use the larger balls nearer the, um, nearer the disc in the middle. And we've got some of the gold balls we're going to put quite close as well. And we're just going to arrange these now onto the piece. Uh, we've got some gold balls here. Let's have a quick look. Uh, that's a gold ball there. We're going to put a gold ball there. It is the stand you're using titanium. It is, yes. Mm -hmm. um, again, new concepts sell these. I some really, really hot tweezers. There we go, it's better. <laughs> um, we're going to use some of the larger balls that we got there to go in that place there. Thank you very much, Sonia. Sonia, thank you so much for the $20. I do appreciate it. Every little bit helps, doesn't Guys, it? Thank you so much for all the likes as well. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, put the balls here. And let's just arrange these around. It needs a bit more solder. That's my titanium strip falling. There we go. And because now we've got a little bit of flux onto the balls, it's actually holding it where it should do. It should be, if it should, it should be behaving itself, but it's not. Thank you so much, guys, for the donations that are coming in. Absolutely amazing. There you go. Okay, there. I'm going to put a few more balls on as well. There, there we go, that's better. Now they're sticking to where they should be going, he says, as they all start to fall off. There. Along here as well, by there, by there, by there. And then we're going to put three at the top. One, two, three, just by there, like that, he says, as they completely roll over the floor. There we go. Like that there. Cool. Is that your stomach, Louise? I think it was, yeah. <laughs> so that's what we got. And now we're going to heat up the whole thing and see how it goes. So the little areas, because we put a bit of borax onto the balls and because the plate is slightly warm, the borax is actually holding onto the, onto the balls as well. So fingers crossed it's going to go to plan. We're going to come underneath 
with this and we're just going to warm up the plate to try not to get the balls to go too far we can arrange them back where they should be Gonna come down on top and have a look at this. When you have balls close together in a design, do you drill the seats for all of them? Um, the three little ones on the top, I did. You don't have to because they're just simply going to stay together. I think I actually placed them slightly wrong over there. Uh, can you use sterling silver filings for the stardust or fine silver on I think a sterling you, you, back? Uh, right, you should. Yes, you should be able to. Since to Yes, you should yeah. be able to use sterling. Use sterling granulation. Yes. Yeah. There we go. So all the bit balls now. You can see the balls all starting to move, and they're all locating into the positions they should be going into. Can I use a acetylene? Acetylene, yes, you can. And a on silver pieces that have only some gold on them, similar to the one you're making now. Say that again. Uh, can you use a set and an A on silver pieces? Yes, that, you that can. Have only some gold on them. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much, Sean. There we go. Yeah, so they've all been sold into place. The spacing is a little bit out. Sean, thank you very much. 20, do appreciate it. You are amazing. <laughs> Let's just pop that in the acid. Okay, so that is something really, really quick. It's not 100%, it's not accurate. The spacing of the balls is slightly off, but you get the general gist of the idea. Questions? 90s frosting on his hair too. Hmm, okay. Hmm. We, do, we have fused filings. The important thing with the filings is that they really have to be rough, uh, big, coarse filings and we have to use a big coarse file. Louise, what is that big coarse file called? I, I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> Why is it? It's a bastard file. It's a, a bas big bastard. A big bastard I file. My, I hope my <clears throat> niece and nephews are watching. Sorry John if they are. It's called a bastard file. Um, <laughs> and that will really get an awful lot of the silver off. And you can fuse that onto, onto a, a silver plate um, and make like a stardust effect. So you know, yes, we're you skipping can. the soldering and granulation. That's what, we're, that's what we're doing now. That's what we're actually doing, believe mm. it or not, yes. <laughs> uh, how are we doing for time? What are we on to here? We've got 30 soldering, minutes. Soldering questions and answers so we can carry on doing carry soldering. Carry on, yeah, we're, we're good for half an hour. We're starting a gem light box demo, but we've got some competitions to draw as well before then. We have, okay. and we Keep can sort date. of come along and we can sort of text, not text, but we can come along and get the um so that's what we've got so general far general gisting of the idea yeah that's another one that you say all of the time what's that what's that general gist of the idea that's a general gist of the <laughs> yeah <laughs> um well the... observed leslie yeah <laughs> you get the general gist of the idea in other words i can't be asked to carry, to carry on oh, any further i'm um, only joking what would you advise when layering balls near each other or on top of each other um, what you can do, you can actually put a little bit of solder onto the outside of the ball, heat up the ball so the solder melts on the outside, and then you can sort of lay them on top of each other and make little pyramids and so forth. You can do it that way, but the most smallest basic amount of solder possible. You don't want to go flooding too much solder onto the ball, and you've got to be careful that you don't melt the ball as well. Um, I've got lots of little balls on my block now because I haven't used them all. Um, so we got this design now. It should be nice and clean, as you can see. We've got this. Let me try and come onto this camera by here. So that's what we've got so far. You can see my spacings are a little bit more open here than by there. Do apologise. <laughs> can you explain what fire scale is? Fire scale is. It's um, it's where you have sterling silver. Sterling silver has copper in the alloy, 925. 925 parts silver, 75 parts usually copper. Copper, as you know, when it gets exposed to oxygen in the air, it, it turns a funny color. If you have a copper plaque, you leave it outside, you get verdigris on it. It becomes oxidized and it, it reacts with the oxygen. That is what happens when it comes to um, 
using the torch. Because you've got air with the torch is being blasted at the silver. The copper reacts with the oxygen, okay? And what you'll find is that the reaction takes place. You don't really see it until you let the piece cool. If you quench it in acid, you think it's got rid of that fire scale. But usually when you polish, you take off that fine layer and what is left underneath is the cupric um, oxide, which is the copper oxide that is where the copper has reacted with the oxygen. So the idea is you've got to try and protect the surface from the oxygen from the torch. And that's why you would use like a, a flux or a mixture of methylated spirits, boric acid and borax to cover the whole area. Oh, we, we got, oh gee, what's this? Wow, 48, 90, nah, so that. Oh, hang on a second, I can use, I can use my little thing. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> and Richard, thank you so much. And thank you, Richard, as well. Here we go. So I guess tomorrow I'll have to be doing my... You've um, got to learn the hammer time dance my hammer, tonight. My hammer time. Thank you, Fairy. Thank you very much. Fairy, thank you very much for £5 as well. You're more than welcome. So the cupric nitrate, cupric oxide is there. You don't want it there, so you've got to protect the surface. And that's why we use borax and a flux. It, you can get away with it by not having the barrier and getting in and out of the uh, operation really nice and quick. Um, sorry, Louise, go on. Question, where does one purchase a big bastard file? <laughs> From, it's, it's, it's not necessarily called a bastard file. It's called a bastard file. That's what you made it, me say. It has a particular cut, and I think it's just a single cut. It is called a bastard file. So you're not just making me swear, are you? No, no, Louise. It is called a bastard file. It's a single cut. Usually in engineering, they use a big bastard file. It's not necessarily a big bastard file. I'm going to ask my dad. It's just called a bastard file. Get him on the phone. <laughs> Get Ron on the phone. A rasp file. No, not a rasp. Bastard. It has, a, it. it has a single cut. Get I'm in, sure it's called a rasp file though. Getting back to my um, fire scale. If you Sorry. in and out <laughs> fast with the torch, the oxygen won't react with the copper of the alloy. But the longer the torch is on the metal, the more oxides you're gonna get. Samantha, thank you so much indeed. Now I'm just gonna quickly get some of these Eve Flex. Uh, what have we got? 500 grit. You can use um, 3M wheels for this. You can use whatever you want. And I'm just going to come along with this on the surface of this disc. What would be nice would have been to have, um, to have uh, domed the disc as well. But we are limited to the time that we're doing here. Uh, let's just try and get that camera action there. There we go, come on to that one now. So this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna get one of these, these mops. Uh, we can now go over the whole piece and these will get in around. Around the boards, these will get underneath the boards as well. And if you do have any excess solder that happens to be um, around on the surface that you shouldn't really have, but these will go over and these will get around in between, all around, and so forth, all around the piece. And there we go. Whoopsie, that was clever. <laughs> uh, fly away. Uh, these are pretty good uh, and they got lots and lots of different grits. We can go on to the next one. There's loads and loads of grits to these. Um, I just find these pretty, pretty funky for going through and just going down through the various grits. For this I have to thank John, I think, for this from Eve who gave me this at some of the trade shows. Um, Eve Flex, a uh, little bit finer, going through, getting in between the balls. As we go, thank you, Cheryl, for your donation. Thank you so Cheryl, much. Cheryl, go, go, back to the job. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the idea with these. Uh, you can get three M 
uh, radial discs as well. They're really good. So those we can use. Uh, my bench is getting a bit of a mess now. I'm now going to swap over to Lorraine, my... Lorraine, is there an entry link for this piece to win? Not as yet, but there will be. So we will post that on the website at a later date. For? For raffling the... Yes, they will um, be on the... Bill's lovely prize as well. As well. So yes. We, yeah. Absolutely. So that's going to come a little bit later stage. And again, all the money is going to be going towards cancer research. So as you can see, these little nylon brushes are ideal for getting in and out of all of these little gaps when it comes to granulation. And I'm using a, a root, not root, um, a triple E here just to go over the whole piece, just to get really nice and close behind the boards. Any questions, Eloise, whilst I'm doing this? Um, what grit did you start on with the E polishing? 500. 500. I didn't What's really. The best general okay. Range? So I didn't really have to go onto those. They are really, really good. For, uh, for cleaning in between. I could have just simply come along with my white bristle brush um, and just simply gone straight on with this. Sorry, Louise, next question. Uh, maybe have a look, a closer look at the Everflex discs, please. Kathleen is in the US. The, the dollar link doesn't work. The what link? Oh, why would it not work? Is it, is it to do with login or how can I donate so you get credit? I think it's, yeah, it's from the dollar sign at the bottom. I'm not sure why that wouldn't be working. No, I thought that should be working. Yeah, yeah that should be working. I don't know if somebody can, can, um, can help Kathleen that. out. Janice, yeah, hit the, hit the dollar sign at the, uh, the bottom left-hand side of the chat. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Do you have any cute single cousins in the US? No, I don't, Mike. Sorry. Um, do you use the nylon brush after going through all of the grits? Yes. Yep. I just simply, I just simply sort of went to the 500, then I went to the 800, then I gone straight on to that uh, white nylon brush because I, I know what the white nylon brush can do. Um, it really does clean up absolutely fantastically. It's going to need obviously a little bit more work because we really are sort of not running out of time, but we could entertain you a little bit better by um, saying, gorgeous, 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 Greg, that's another glass you've got to drink. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. And then you should put this through the ultrasonic. Um, in fact, let me just put it on the ultrasonic over here a second. Um, uh, da -ba -da -ba -dum. Annabelle, thank you. Thank you so much. You're on, Louise. I put, oh gosh, I, I put you on a minute. Okay. Pass them over here. Um, yeah, we've just we've just come into the end of the soldering and the granulation, um, Gillian. We've been doing this for ooh, coming up to two hours. Why is my ultrasonic? What not mop working? are you using with your Tripoli? Um, it's a white nylon brush. Okie dokie. Greg's on his 30, so please don't say it again. <laughs> <laughs> gorgeous, 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 <laughs> Greg. <laughs> oh, thank you, Annabelle. Um, I don't know why, but my ultrasonic just decided oh, thank you guys. not to work. I think the drinking phrase was... Gorgeous, 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 no. Greg. No. It was whoops-a-daisy. Oh, whoops-a-daisy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing myself. So my ultrasonic, for some reason, isn't turning on. Perhaps it was something to, to due to the uh, tripping of the power this morning, but uh, um, it's still on you, Louise, at the moment, okay. the camera. Just thought if, I'd tell you. You don't have yeah, to keep that's talking. Fine. If I want to cover a plate with small balls, would I breath? To cover it with solder would i would i need to cover it with solder or fuse them yeah i would actually come to fuse it if you're going to have that much uh, because fusing is going to be far far better i i don't like the use um, of solder really it's it's a cheat way of doing it but if you're using on a small scale like we've got here it's perfectly adequate Sandy, for that um, you 
been forbidden from getting onto Justin's website. Yeah, I, I think we've actually crashed Justin's website. Um, they've been um, completely inundated. Check that out, Louise. Can I check it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can get on. There we go. New spinner ring maker. Oh, did you know the look? You're on dollars there. Oh, look, I'm actually on there. Yeah. That's absolutely amazing. Oh, that's cool, Thank you, isn't it? Chris. That's really oh, kind of you. Fabulous. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> you do have actual real names, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Sandy, try again. I think um, there was an issue that they had just everybody, everybody rushed to... Um, Buy the spinner. To buy the the, the, the the spinning ring flarer and crash the website, which is is great for Durston, but not well. It's not great, but it's yeah. <laughs> it's everybody wants it. Um, sorry, I lost my connection. I'm not sure if you answered my question. Is the support Andrew used when soldering the balls also made out of titanium strips? It is yes. Yeah. Coming before or after the balls? Auto fry. Um, Turn again. Sorry. It's okay. I'm just I'm just okay. going through some of the questions. What is the best way to solder 0 0.7 mil gallery wire? Uh, carefully. Um, yeah. Um, what, soldering it edgeways or soldering it flat onto a surface? <gasps> Beverly Squiffy, been doing a sip of wine every gorgeous times three. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> Does it work when I say it? It's got to be you, I think, isn't it? <laughs> right. I have very, very quickly done this now. I have polished Thank up. Thank you, Gail. Gail, thank you very much. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Every pound that we are raising is going to Cancer Research UK. Really do appreciate it. I just had got put a new mop on this little thing and it's just going absolutely everywhere. We have got this so far. You have to excuse my mucky paw prints. We've just quickly polished up this one area here. Haven't really done too much on this side. We've just put the um, the uh, bristle brush on this side. We've just quickly gone over this now with a, a rouge mop. It's going to take a little bit more work as you can see, but we've got some nice gorgeous added decoration. We've got the gold disc on that as well. Um, it's okay. Thank you, hey. Tom. Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Four dollars. Cup of coffee would be nice, but there we go. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? There. So this is what we've got. Let me just quickly come on to here. This side, I've only just triple e This side, I've very, very quickly rouged. Um, why aren't we coming to... There we go. Really, really quick. I need to have a little bit more time over this side just to polish it up. But the whole idea is that you get the general gist of the idea. Hey! hey. We're going to have bingo cards next time. <laughs> Distance sight like, still says I'm forbidden. Mm. Okay, where are you where are you logging in from? You logging in from the US or somewhere like that? Is it just you or is it anybody else? I don't know. That'd be interesting to, to see, won't it? I'm just gonna have a little sweetie a minute because my go throat it. is really I did go and look for some um, strepsils for you downstairs, but um They're by oh, here. you got them a few. Yeah. I went looking for them. Um, yeah, polish on a polishing motor. Yes, you can. You've got to take good care with that. Let me just turn this around. I'll, I'll, oh, shall, I shall do yeah. that now for yeah, you. John just come up with a good question. Was it a work network that you're that you're accessing if you're trying to get on Durston's website? Because it may be blocked. Yes, it may be. Yes. Via a VMP? VPN? VPN, yeah, private, close. Virtual, <laughs> private, virtual private network. So, um, polishing motor here. This is a rouge mop on this side. I'm using some uh, Menzurna Super Finish on here. And again, yes you can. You've got to take good care. I've got Tripoli on this side here, which really isn't, isn't the, the right way of doing things. You shouldn't really mix up mops. But I'll do half just to show you what we're talking about. Andrew, what if you wanted a satin finish? If you want um, 
a satin finish. If you wanted a satin finish. Okay, you can Kathleen, get. Kathleen, thank you so so much. Abby, thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Mm, thank you very much indeed. Oh wow, Kathleen, thank you so much. Abby, what's this one? Oh gosh, I'm falling over now. Kathleen, you didn't pick um, you didn't pick an emoji, but the hammer dance tomorrow's for you. The hammer dance. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very quickly um, onto that polishing mop. It has cleaned it up a lot, lot better on this one side here, as you can see. Uh, if you want a satin finish, you can get these little, um, almost like a scourer, Scotch Bright. You can use that to go over the piece. Try and do it um, not unidirectionally in one uh, direction, but try and attack it from different directions. Well, let me just turn that one around. We don't want that on the polishing mop anymore. Mm. Um, what polish did you use for rouge again? Uh, it's Men's Urna Superfine, that was. Fine. Okay. Um, what is the best way to get polish off a stone set piece if it can't go in the ultrasonic? Uh, warm, soapy water. Okay. And or, a baby toothbrush. Uh, yeah, baby toothbrush. Or if harder. you've got a steamer, mm. that would be another way of doing that as they well. They makeup brushes, don't they? Nothing harder than a... Like if you've got like a sable makeup brush or something like that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, warm soapy water, it'll just dissolve the polish, yeah. yeah. And then nice okay. soft yeah. brush, yeah. Uh, okay. What type of mop next with rouge? Um, the big mop that I was just using there is a very soft swans down mop. Yeah. Six inch swans down mop with super fine menzerna. You can use that. That's what I've got over there. Or you can use a little bit of rouge with it. Pretty much the same sort of thing. How would you make a would you make well would you make a bale for it or would you just um, simply with this we didn't really go it into the details of a bale but all we're going to do on this is just pass a chain uh, come on come you zoom in there we go we're gonna pass a chain through the top um, loop it through double the chain pass it through and then loop it around the top and that's all we're gonna do with this Obviously, we're going to spend, if it wants to focus, there we go, we're going to spend a little bit more time going back over this because uh, this side over here is pretty much just like triple -ed. This bit over here is being polished up with a little, little bit of rouge, but we're going to spend a little bit more time and finish that off when we get a little bit more chance. Yes, Louise. We need to get onto Walsh tomorrow. They've signed, uh, Liz Ho and a couple of other people have signed up to the Walsh newsletter, but no discount as yet. No, it'll come through. Okay. It'll come, it'll come we will through. chase that. Please, if, if there's any issues, come back to us and we will chase that up for you. It, you don't necessarily get a notification straight away. I think you should get a notification so you signed up to the newsletter you won't get the newsletter straight away but that will be going out very shortly and you'll be getting a discount code 10% off Walsh site throughout the whole of November so hang fire you will be getting your discount codes coming through very soon um, that's pretty much um, about it for the sort of the granulation um, I do love sweat soldering. I find a lot of applications you can sweat solder because it just stops the flow of solder. And all this rings true with anything that you want to sweat solder. Somebody mentioned about sweat soldering the, uh, the bezel, the pear-shaped bezel we did onto a back plate. You can do. You can put solder all over the back plate and then put the bezel on top of that so it all flows. I feel that's a little bit of a waste of solder myself, personally. Uh, but the way that we did it allows the solder to flow exactly where it needs to go. Um, anything else coming through? Oh, lots, lots, lots. Um, like an eyeshadow brush, yeah, really soft brush. Or a baby toothbrush. Uh, will you be raffle independent? Yes, we will. Um, it's going to be at a later date like we did with the shell pendant mm. from the last yeah. um, 12 hour. Yeah, um, absolutely. Melody's question regarding scratched stones. What's the best polish to uh, repolish a stone if it was scratched while setting or polishing? Well, what I would, you wouldn't necessarily use a polished mop as we've got there. What I would be inclined to use is a dual tool. Um, because they have the certain mops upon the three. Estelle, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, the Dual Tool has nice hard 3M mops specifically designed for polishing stones. If it's a faceted stone, 
please take good care with anything like that because it's likely to round off the corners and it won't be quite faceted. If it's something like a cabochon, you can use a jewel tool, something like that to polish it would be no problem. But if it is faceted and you've scratched it, try and perhaps send it off to a stone merchant and they can repolish that for you. Um, the sweet I'm eating is a strepsil. It's a throat sweet, it's to help with my throat. Um, it's a um, sore throat and cough lozenge because I've been talking for the last nine hours non-stop. Which is what I normally do throughout the day anyway, isn't it, Louise? Well, eat. No, talk. Oh. <laughs> uh, check, eat, out, yeah. check, check out the jewel tool for polishing. Yep, exactly. Can I polish by hand if I do not have a motor? It's going to be a little bit more awkward. If you don't have a polishing motor and if you don't have um, a flex shaft, well then you can always use a Dremel. This is a, a Dremel that I have had for quite a few years now. And this would be ooh, a bit close, Andrew. Uh, this would be just as good. Something like this is gonna be brilliant. These cost around about 50, 60 pounds. Um, really good machine. You are limited to the speed. This is variable, but only in set stages as opposed to a flex shaft where it's variable across the whole board. But this is better than nothing. Polishing by hand, I think is gonna be really, really difficult because of the, um, the enders of the, of the balls. Kate Wade, $10, thank you very much. Really do appreciate it. Thank you so much indeed. For something like this and you have a, a problem, I would perhaps use a little bit of a scratched finish. You can grab some really, really, I got some really aggressive 60 grit paper here. This is really coarse paper and that will produce a lovely scratched finish. You could wrap that um, around the end of a pencil or the end of a tip of a pen and get in there and scratch it. Um, Irene Five, thank you very much indeed. Phil Wait, thank you very much. Ooh, 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 ooh. And keep it up, keep it up. Thank you so much indeed. How much have we raised, Louise, so far? Oh so my far, God. we're on two and a half thousand pounds. Two and a half pounds. thousand absolutely pounds. Well done, you guys. I'm absolutely amazed, to be honest, at that. That's, I feel quite that, overwhelmed. I, 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 did, mm -hmm. I, I had a bit of a sense coming over me then. Mm -hmm. Two and a half thousand pounds. Uh, for cancer research, thank you all so much indeed. This has exceeded our expectations. Two and a half thousand pounds go into cancer research. Um, and there'll be more because what we'll be doing is finishing off what we've been doing today. There's the disc there. We've got that little ring as well that we did a little bit early on. So we're gonna be auctioning off this pendant, uh, this ring we've got here. What else have I done? The plates, well, if you want to auction off the plates, you can do the plates there. We've done the little um, cabochon set in there and Bill is gonna donate one of his urchin pendants as well. What we're gonna be doing is doing this at a later date, but all the money that we raise from everything that we've done today and auctioning off these pieces is all gonna go, every single penny is gonna to go to Cancer Research UK. Thank you so much indeed. Cancer Research UK, it's the United Kingdom UK, but they do, they are the biggest fund, a funder. Just pop that back on, please, Louise. Yep. They are, they are the biggest, they, they donate um, an average of $500 million per year. They're the world's largest independent funder of cancer research. They research uh, cancer research in 39 countries around the world. Cancer Research UK have helped to develop eight of the world's top 10 cancer drugs to prove the link between tobacco and cancer and prove the value of screening and early detection. Together, we will beat cancer. Thank you all very much for all of the money that you have donated. Absolutely brilliant. Everyone deserves a pat on the back. Thank you all. Lynn, thank you very much. Jane Frost, woo, we go. I love this one. You do like that one. I do like that one, yeah. Um, so yeah, this has been inspired by, by um, a good friend of ours, Mark, uh, a fellow jeweler um, who diagnosed uh, with, with cancer. Um, really, really sad, um, but we won't dwell on that. But yeah, we've been inspired to do this for, for cancer research. It's a worth, worthwhile cause. 
Oh, I think we're sort of virtually back on target now, aren't I we? I think we pretty much are. Um, I've just been... Uh, uh, yes, I've got some more competition. S Ray. <laughs> you just talk amongst yourselves while oh. I figure this out. Because we've got the Dustin disc cutter to announce any minute. Yes. We've got um, the new concepts. Oh. Through. You've got two of them. So they're going to be announced. The solder kits the solder strips, there's 12 of them, so perhaps we'll do them tomorrow. I think so, yes. Yep, so we That's won't be, worry about be them far too many just to... for a minute. Thank you, S. Ray, for that. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Angela, Angela McCarthy, £10. Thank you so much indeed. 2.5 or 2.6 thousand pounds. Oh, my this gosh. This is brilliant. Yeah. You guys are all mm. so amazing. Yeah. Mm. So we're going to be announcing the winners of the saws, uh, the winners of these saws, and we're going to be announcing the winner of the disc cutter, the uh, 10 piece, 3 mil to 32 mil disc cutter. You are amazing, Elizabeth. You are amazing. Do, 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 do. I'm not quite sure what this emoji is doing. It's just, oh, what's this with Sandy? I said you were announcing that one before. Number one, number one, number one. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you all very much. So whilst um, Louise is going through just weeding out all the duplicate entries of the competitions and also um, any people who, well, yes, we know all the duplicate entries. So everybody has a fair crack of the whip, as they say, when it comes to competitions. Um, yeah. Have a, talk to me, guys, talk to me. Um, Amy, thank you very much. 10, whoosh, she wants this one. Oh, thanks. Oh, <laughs> you're losing the plot. <laughs> you're, I'm missing me. I should be photographing this. <laughs> uh, so, I'm sure you do. What's this one? Boss. Boom. Boss. That's me, boss. And thank you so much indeed. Really do appreciate every single penny that comes in. Where's the tab to donate? I was able to join. Um, it's down below, down there, um, underneath the chat. It's the little square with the little dollar sign. Click on that, you can donate. Um, William. Bill, uh, the recipient can choose the colour of the semi precious stone in the Keener pendant as well. How Brilliant. Kind. How kind is that? Bill. Very nice, very nice kind of bill. Thank you very much. Where in Wales is your shop? I would love to visit when we can. We're in a lovely town called Astrid Munach, mm. which is, you've heard of Cardiff, go up a bit, you've got Caerphilly, then you've got Astrid Munach. Thank you very much, Captured. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Shard. Thank you very much, because thank you very much. I would recognize these. Tom, um, my family passed away from cancer. My mum, my brother died. Oh my gosh, a few years ago from cancer. Thank you, Andrew and Louise. Everybody that's donated, God bless. That's Thank you so much wow. indeed. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm just going to quickly just tidy up my bench here. Lots of things that you can go and buy. You can go and buy our tool. No, what's it called? Our spinner ring flarer. This is our spinner ring flarer. Um, spinner ring. This is the ring we made up a little bit earlier. You tighten the nuts here. It flares out. The spinner ring, we gave 40% off. The code is SPIN40 for that. If you want to go and buy that from the Durston Tool site, if you want 25% off all of Durston range, we can get 40% off that. Use the coupon code AUTUMN25 on the Durston site. Lots of other coupon codes. Um, keep entering the competitions. Uh, <laughs> Joyce, thank you very much. And uh, what's your favorite self-made tool? Um, I don't really know what I, the, the, the one, but it, it's, it's, we were gonna do some, some uh, a film on, on making punches. I do love a good punch. This is really something so, so simple. It's a square piece of steel with um, a little angle, little sort of like a, almost like a chisel point on it, but it's quite soft. And I use this quite a bit for um, tapping rover bezels and so forth. That's just very, very cheap, very, very, very basic, simple um, type of tool that we make. We don't normally make up an awful lot of tools, although there are lots of people who do consider making tools an absolute, but it's a priority when it comes to uh, to jewelry. Um, Let's have a look at we got. So yes, um, lots of things. Um, ATB5 for 5% five, five off. 
uh, Otto Fry, I think ATB20, you get 5% off guest wine. We're gonna be putting all these codes down underneath the film. We're gonna be putting all these codes down on At The Bench's Facebook page as well, as well as on atthebench.com as well. We've got um, competitions. I'm just gonna quickly run through whilst Louise is picking some. Um, you can win At The Bench t-shirts with a white logo. You can also win At The Bench t-shirts with a uh, coloured logo as well. You can win At The Bench aprons. Always wear an apron. Whenever I sit down, if I don't sit down at my bench without an apron, I feel naked. Ooh. So I would always <laughs> wear an apron. It just protects your clothes because when we were negotiated, Tom, thank you so much indeed. Another five dollars. Thank you so much. Really, really do appreciate it. Um, I always wear an apron because when we're working downstairs in the shop, I'm back and forth in the shop and I wear nice clothes. I wear a nice shirt, nice trousers, and I want to protect what I wear. So I always wear an apron. Even when we're filming for at the bench, I always wear an apron. Even if I just pop in on a Sunday morning in jeans and t-shirts, I always put an apron on. I find an apron, if I make a hole in the apron, it doesn't matter too much. If I make a hole in a nice shirt or my trousers, I have to throw it away. So aprons are pretty much, can Louise dance for your donation, Steve? Yes, I'm sure she can. Uh, but we'll okay. come to that at the end of the day. Um, so I always wear an apron and you can win all that. We've got a um, hundred pound Kerno Crafter voucher. We're gonna be drawing around about two hours time. We've got the competition to win two Durston Roller Mills as well. That's gonna be drawn in about a two hours time. Please keep your entries coming in for those. We've got 11 20 pound Kerno Craft vouchers as well. We've got four 50 pound HS Walsh vouchers as well. Uh, if you don't win the t-shirt or apron, is there a way we can purchase them? Yes, you can. You can go to Ah, the bigger the balls, the flatter your bottom. I remember that one. That's going to be an awesome t-shirt, that is. So go to uh, Andrew Berry dot co dot uk. Okay, and on the top nav bar, you have something called shop. Click on that and that will take you then or if you hover over shop, it'll take you to aprons and t-shirts and so forth. You can buy the t-shirts if you don't happen to win. We ship throughout the whole world. They come direct from the manufacturers, not from us. So unfortunately we can't sign the t-shirts because they get shipped from the suppliers, not from us. So unfortunately we can't sign the t-shirts. So that is what you can do. Um, let's have a look, what else we got here? How do we enter the competitions? Um, we are gonna be posting up all the links in a moment. Where's the coupon discount code for, for yeah. For, so it's autumn 25, let me just quickly write this down. Um, a -U -T -U -U, autumn 25 for 25% off Durston. So autumn, as in the winter, autumn, spring, Autumn 25, 25% off anything on Durston's website. Go, go, 20 pounds. Thank you very much, Vadim. Um, wearing an apron makes it easy to return gold dust to your bench tray. Exactly right, because then if you do have any on here, I've got a little tray underneath me down here. You can't actually see it because that's there. And yeah, and I will just flick it into there as well. Yes, Annie, I was. Um, I could bring my shirt to you and Louise Lol. Yes, you could. What's the best way to anneal wire? If it's really, really thin wire, a kiln is best, uh, just so you uh, don't melt it. Little trick is if you've got a bundle of wire, bundle it around into a tight little coil, wrap it with some binding wire, and then you can use a nice bushy flame to anneal the whole little bundle. But the best thing is to put it into a kiln to get it nice and evenly annealed. Do we have some winners? We have winners, yes. Would you like to hear who they are? Oh, so what are we winning in this little section of the 12 hour? Okay, we've got the two new concepts, three inch saw with lever tensioner. Tension. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and the Dostin disc cutter. Excellent. So we've got three winners? Yep. Excellent. Okay, so here we go. The three winners for the uh, two saws and the Dostin disc cutter from New Concepts and Dostin and the winners are... New hang Concept on, hang on. Concept saws we'll do first. New Concept saws. <laughs> Hildy Skade, Skied, Skied. Hildy Skied? Hildy Skied. Hildy Ski, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Hildy. Hildy Skied. Hildy Skied. Excellent. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations, Hildy. You have won a new concept saw. Thank you for entering. Thank you to everybody's entry. And entering. another new and, concept oh, saw. One more saw. Hang on. <laughs> Yvonne Froelich. Froelich? Fro Yvonne Froelich. Froelich. Yvonne Froelich. Sorry, I am shocking at names. <laughs> Clearly, I embarrass myself and my husband. Okay. So Hildy Yvonne, and Yvonne. Hil be... Hildy and Yvonne, congratulations. You have just both won a new concept saw with a lever on top. I prefer the lever than just simply the screw. You get a good tension every single time. Brilliant. Well done for that. We've got one more competition coming in this section of the show the show, the 12 hour live stream. This is going to be now for the disc cutter from Durston. That is gonna be coming up any second now when Louisa's doing what she's doing. Are you ready? We are ready. Gladiators, are, are you, you ready? ready? <laughs> Andrew, you will go on my first, first whistle. whistle. <laughs> okay, it's getting silly now. Okay, okay are you on, ready? Oh, that sounded good. <laughs> Fran Linden. Fran Linden, congratulations. Well, you have well won done. the Durston Disc Cutter. Well Woo. done, Fran Linden. You have won a Durston Disc Cutter, 10 piece, 3 to 32 millimeters. Well done, congratulations Fabulous. to you. Super, super, super. Oh, gosh, it's half past six already. Yes, it is. Nine. We are going to launch into a demonstration of the wonderful gem light box. Am I? Now? Right, okay, we're going to have to yeah. try and clear some of this space here. We'll um, okay, so again, we're just going to drag one more slide onto the screen. We're going to go quiet. You're going to have that come up on the, the top there. We're going to get the gem light box into position. We're just going to run through this very, very quickly. We've got about half an hour to go through this. There is going to be a discount code available for you to have the gem light box with a free postage coupon code. Um, are you ready? Are you ready? So a code's going to code, no, a screen's going to come across. Say what we're going to do next. We're going to go quiet for a few minutes. We're going to come back on. We're going to demonstrate the Gem Life box. But congratulations to everybody who's won so far. Plenty more chances of winning. Don't forget, Louise is going to pop up onto the, uh, the chat. The codes, not the codes, but the ways to enter the competitions. Because we still got Kuno Craft vouchers, HS Walsh vouchers, we got Dustin Rollinville, we got Bangle Forming Dice Bangle Set. Bangle Forming Dice Set, yes, that should be, actually, I should have put that code out, so that's going to be next, the link to the Bangle Forming Dice Set. Yes. So even though we haven't sort of talked about that just yet, Louise is going to put that out because that's only going to be on for about half an hour, but we'll give you a couple of hours to enter that. So the new Bangle Forming Dice Set, you may have seen it already. We posted it on social media about two weeks ago. Not only can you produce concave bangles, talk bangles, but now you can produce convex bangles as well. And that is something else that we are going to be raffling off, a nice bangle that you've seen us make on the 12 hour. So for now, Louise is going to drag the little slide onto the screen. We're going to go quiet. We'll see you in about five minutes time when we're going to demonstrate the gem light box. Everyone, see you very soon. Don't forget to take this opportunity. You know what channel, just the idea. See you very soon. <laughs>
Okay, guys, um, I think we're back. I can't see. I'm stuck behind here. Are we back? Are we on, Louise? Uh, Karen, thank you very much. $10. Are we on? Yes, we are. All right. So I'm nice and small, but I'm going to come up towards the camera a minute because in front of me here, we have what is called the Gem Life Box. Now, I just thought I'd have my kind of chomping around some things. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a horse eating an apple here. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> you have no doubt at all that we can do it. It makes me happier. So, the idea is uh, people think that, that we get given stuff and we get paid to promote things. Um, no, we don't. We don't get paid to do anything like this at all. What Louise and I are doing today is completely off our own back, completely. We're not making a penny. The idea is for you to donate towards the uh, cancer research. And I thank you all. Thank you. Keep it up. Keep it up. So this is the idea. So we rave about tools and products that we think are a game changer. This is called the Gem Light Box. It is a box that enables you to take photographs. Yes, I know you can buy different types of light boxes out there. You can buy lighting tents, you can buy little pop-ups that you have extra lights and so forth. But the whole idea of this, this is not um, a cheap box. It is over a thousand dollars. I know it's expensive. Yes, I paid for this myself. We bought this at the beginning of lockdown, the first lockdown that we had um, back in March, April time. Um, I've seen this around. I was going to, well, Louise and I were going to go to New York uh, to the MJS, MJSA trade show to have a chat with Pickup Media who were exhibiting there regarding this. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't go because of COVID, but we were so impressed with what we've got with the gem light box that we thought we would buy it. Um, we're glad we did buy it because what it does is so simple. It's a thousand plus dollars and we've got some accessories that we're going to show you as well. It is not cheap, but it saves us so much time. Now, if you um, have loads and loads of time and you don't mind setting up a little pop-up tent and putting a light here and a light there and a reflector here and so forth, that's brilliant. If that works for you, I haven't got a problem with that and that you can get things like that as cheap as sort of $20 and I agree with you. That's, that's, that is, is awesome. But what we've got here is something that will produce images straight away. You don't have to mess around with color balance. You don't have to mess around with Photoshop, taking little bits of dust out here or there and everywhere. You don't have to worry about getting the white balance right. You don't have to worry about getting the right time of day to get the right photographs. It produces images the correct size every single time. With certain attachments, you can have a Bluetooth turntable that turns automatically. It has an app you can upload from the app directly to social media straight away. So the moment you take the photograph, within seconds of you actually putting this on your desk, putting something in here, taking a photograph and putting it onto social media, you can do literally within a minute or two. Now, thank you very much for all the money that's coming in. 499, thank you for Jessica. Uh, 400, I'm not quite sure what ARS is, but thank you very much, Fleur, for that. Absolutely brilliant. That is absolutely amazing. 2.8 thousand pounds that we have raised thank you very much indeed thank you can so much. we make it amazing can we make it to three thousand it would be absolutely amazing if we could so we've got another two hours to go if we could get that up to three thousand pounds you will see me well you're going to see me anyway do my yeah my mc hammer dance i can't oh, I think people deserve a little bit better than that well yeah it's tomorrow i'm Good I've, Lord. I've, I've got i've got a stool you need to I've, practice. I've got <laughs> Three hundred, three thousand pounds for that dance. Good lord! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So going back to the gem light box. Okay, <laughs> Kelly Wilcox. Thank you very much. Um, so for us here, taking photographs, putting them on the website, putting them on social media, quick, fast, and efficient is time well saved, money well spent. So let me just quickly come across here and show you exactly what it's all about. Coming quite personal now, coming quite close to the camera. <laughs> the light is back here, so I'm in a little bit of a bit of a shadow at the moment. So here it is. This is the gem light box. It is <coughs> a self-contained box. Switch on the side, open it up, nice little void in here, 
switch on the side, the inside of the, um, the screen has a bit of a mirror on it, as you can see, and it's connected by magnets. You can put that on the top like that there, or put that horizontal as well. Okay, so you've got two different positions to, to, to shoot through. You've also got the top that can come off as well, and again, underneath the top is completely mirrored. That little section comes out as well, and I'll come to that a little bit later on. So it's an amazing simple piece of kit. There are two buttons on this side over here, as you can see. We've got one that says daylight, one that says sparkle. You should be able to see a little bit of a, an increase in light if I do that. And also if I press the daylight button, you'll be able to see a slightly different color as well. Let me take that off there if you'd have a better look at it. So that's daylight, that's not daylight, that's sparkle, and that's not. So we've got two different buttons. The sparkle produces a little bit more of a, um, a sparkly light from the inside. It lights up a few more lights. And if you've got diamonds, it gives the diamonds that little bit more of a sparkle. Now, there are also gemstones that don't necessarily like, like the bright um, light that we've got inside there. Things like a bit more of a natural stone, like ambers, excuse me, perhaps some opals and some things like emeralds will like a bit more of a daylight. And that lowers the quality, not the quality, it lowers the temperature of the light by pressing that. And that produces a bit more of an orange light, which is a little bit more sympathetic and complementary to the stones that we've taken a photograph of. The basic gem light box is what you've got here. It comes with a little stand that you can adjust. It also comes with um, this little backdrop, uh, the, the, the infinity backdrop, there's a bit of a magnet on the bottom here. That then will go in and it's all magnetic and that will pop in just like that there. So that provides that little bit of an infinity background. Louise, do we have anything that we can put in here to take a photograph of? But this one thing that we don't have. Cool. Uh, so this is, is um, a ring. Almost like a magic trick. This, this is Louise's uh, uh, engagement ring. So that can go in the gem light box. It can be really hard for you to see, but I'll show you exactly what we're going to be doing. Um, I've lost my phone. Here's my phone. Okay, so I've just popped that inside in here. Uh, let's, oh my goodness me, I'm getting tired now. So let's just zoom in on that a moment. You can just about see Louise's ring in there. Now, what I don't like are the cases like this, phone cases, um, because they're black. Um, and if you're taking photographs, everything that is reflective, you'll see the reflection of black. So I've got a little <clears throat> iPhone case here that is white. And admittedly, we do have that little bit of a black section in the middle. Unfortunately, I can't do anything about that. Gemlight Box comes with its own app as well. Nope, that's body fit, Andrew, thank you. <laughs> so Gemlight Box comes with its, <clears throat> with its own app. Uh, tap on that, and then you have uh, the app that comes up. Bluetooth, camera, and gallery. At the moment on gallery, we've got the pictures that we took of our uh, spinner ring, and also some samples that we've taken over the past few months as well. Uh, camera, tap on camera. <clears throat> This then screen comes up, as you can see. You can put the, <coughs> um, this bit here, which is the cover, in place like this. We've got the cutout, we have the stand. The stand, I'll put by here a second, you can move the stand up to make it a lot more upright. You can bring it down to make it a little bit more horizontal, but you can simply put that in place, as we've got just like that there. Okay, so bear in mind, I've just put the ring in, I've opened the app, I've just put that in place like that. Let me just quickly show you, can you actually see on that close up? Yes, you can. So that is the image we've got straight away. Simply, as you can see, it's not a picture, it's that is the actual image that we've got exactly straight away as we've got. If you want to come a little bit lower down or a little bit higher up, you can do. And you can move this away and you can zoom in as well if you wanted to have a picture like that. So within the app, you can zoom and so forth. So that's the ring you've got there. Press the sparkles, that's the daylight. Press the sparkles, it's a little bit brighter. Upon the bottom of the app, there are various <clears throat> um, adjustments. You have a filter, um, white image, 
So white background, manual and eclipse. Eclipse will come to a little bit later. You can tap on the white background. You can alter the white balance, the manual focus and adjustment. Let's put that into place just like that there. We're just, just going to tap on it, tap on it to focus. Now you can adjust the, let me see if I can get a little bit easier, a bit closer with that camera as well. There we go, so you can actually see what I'm doing. And from here now, you can adjust the background. As you can see, you can blow out the background. You can adjust that whichever way you want to. The tone as well, so you can make it, the saturation a little bit darker and so forth. And that's exactly what you can do. All right, take the picture, tap, it's taken, you save it. All right, so there we go, that is saved. You can come onto here now, you can close that, go onto gallery, and there is the image we have just taken. It is perfect, it's a complete natural background. You can zoom in, the quality on the app itself is not that good when you view it, but when it goes onto the website, the quality is a lot, lot better. You can add a school, you can add a lookup code onto it as well if you wanted to, and you can simply come along and um, alter it. You can add text onto the image, uh, you can add a logo, you can add a watermark, you can add text and you can even crop it if you wanted to crop it and wanted to come a little bit closer into that and save it. So that is the image that you've got. We can save that. Uh, you cannot reverse it, so that's what we've got. And then you can press the button down here and now you can save it to wherever you want to. You can save it to all your friends, you can send it to all your friends, you can then do it to airdrop, messages, mail, Instagram, Chrome, Messenger, so Dropbox, reminders, you can save it, save whatever you want to do. Um, you can save it to Messenger and so forth. You can copy, so you copy the link to it and you know what I mean, there's lots of things you can do. Save the image, assign the contact, print it, you can save it to your cloud, save it to your shared folder, save it to files, create a watch face, save the Dropbox and send to camera too. So there is lots of things that you can do with that image and you can upload it to your website straight away. It's simply as easy as that. If you've got pendants, you can use the background that we've got that comes with it as well. Not quite sure what happened on my phone just then. So there's Louise's ring. We can take out the stand. And again, we've got, if everything's magnetic, that can go in like that. That can go in on top of the stand. Can it? Yes, it can. Nope, it doesn't. It goes in that way. There we go. Just like that. And you can hang necklaces upon that. And again, you can get a nice, perfectly white background. What I love is the, the Bluetooth turntable. I find this is where the gem light box really comes into its own. This is an added accessory. It is simply a turntable that plugs into the side. Are you okay, Louise? Yeah, the light, the, was the light, is there one light? Or is there, you can see how often I've actually looked at it. I just put things in it and shoot. Where are the lights? No, there's just one light. It's not LED lights, is it? All they, around, it's just um, one. There are, they're, they're are all around. They're all around on the top. There's a, underneath here, there's a light. It just comes from everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it does, yeah. yeah it's it comes, it it's, it's, it's all around, yeah. all around the sides, the sides, under the top mm -hmm. as well. The whole thing is just, it's just. Completely lit up yeah. for a nice, even light. On the inside of the box, just down by there, let me just see if I can just get a bit of a close up on this now so you can see what I'm doing here. Let's move that to one side. Down here you've got a little socket, you can just about see. The Bluetooth turntable uh, goes into place, like that. That plugs in there, and the Bluetooth turntable is in place. Now, I love this bit. Within the app, you can go through onto the front here. Let me put it onto this right so you can see what I'm doing. We've got a Bluetooth section. We can tap on Bluetooth. That will connect up to the turntable that's going around there. So now we've connected the app to the turntable. This is a brilliant side of it. We've got a camera. It will do video now as well as still images. So again, we can get Louise's ring. We can put that right into the center. There's a little, little dip, a little bit of a, a dimple right in the center of the disc. So you can look down through the top and make sure that that ring is nicely central, exactly where you want it. Bring that into front this way. Again, you can come onto here and on the bottom of the app as well, 
we've got a little notification that says video. Tap on the video, line that up. Again, you've got settings. From the settings, you can have it so the turntable goes all the way around, 360. You can have it so it goes 90 degrees this way, back, 90 degrees that way and back, or 45 degrees. So it'll just go 45 degrees, 45 degrees, all right? You can have it going fast or you can have it going slow. So we're just gonna simply put this on fast at 45 degrees. Again, you've got the same filters, you've got the white balance, the tone and everything else. So the best thing about this now is all you gotta do is press the button down here that starts the turntable. The turntable will start, come back to the center, go back, and stop into the center. And the best thing about that is that image will be looping, so it'll be constantly going back and forth. Let me just quickly show you what I mean on this. So there's Louise's ring. Gail is asking what effect does it have if you don't put the front panel on when you take a photo? Um, you, the advantage that you've got with this, it does reflect the light back um, into the piece itself, or you can turn it around the white way around. If you have it so you don't have the front piece on, you will get this big rectangular here, perhaps showing if it's a really shiny piece. It depends what you're, what you're shooting really, because sometimes I take it off just because, I don't know whether I'm doing it right or wrong, but I take it off because I just think the photo looks better with it off. Yeah, absolutely. I think with some of the, the spinner rings that we were doing yesterday, mm. it was just too bright and it just washed yeah. out the image. Mm. So I removed it as well. Yeah. So it wasn't as washed out. You know when you... Yeah, oh yeah, you know absolutely. Because you'll just see and, and you'll know. Yeah, yeah you'll be able to, to see exactly what's going yeah. on. So again, we can tap on it. We can adjust the background, adjust the tone. And then as soon as we press the go button and you get to see it starts to spin. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, starting to spin, it goes back, it goes forwards, and then it stops. There we go. That's the preview. <coughs> As you can see, it just keeps looping and looping and looping. And we can save that. And then from there, again, you can quickly go up to Instagram with it as it is. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it to Twitter. You can email it to your friends and so forth and Messenger. And you can crop videos now as well, which it's a new feature <coughs> on you, isn't it? Yes, you certainly can. Mm. Uh, let's go up to here. Let's go on to uh, gallery. So it's not just the light box you're paying for, it's the software. Oh, absolutely, yes. It. It's so easy to use from your smartphone. Mm. It's not just the case of it's the box and you take the photos and it's everything that you can do with it afterwards. Yes, exactly, the, the app. You don't have to use the app. You can always use your normal photo um, application on the phone, but it won't tie in then with the Bluetooth. And again, as, as Louise just said, you can come along, you can actually crop these now as well. Uh, let me see, there we go. You can crop it so you can come nice and close into it like this. Okay, we can save that. Victoria, there are lots of cheaper alternatives, but absolutely. the reason this is not a cheap box and it's because it's just out of really, this world. Really lovely, yeah, yeah, it's really good. It looks yeah. good. It, you know, it takes lovely photos. The app is amazing. The yeah. functionality on the app is just, and it's so easy to use as well. And this is why we like it, because straight away we can add text to this, we can add a watermark, we can trim it. So if you don't want it going all the way around, you can do, you can crop it, and you can even add music to the videos now. But as, you know, as people have been saying within the chat here, yes, there are cheaper options, but they don't do what this does. And that's likewise with everything that you can buy. You pay a lot of money for this, but you do get a superb quality product and also the app that for me is a time saver and and for me time is is money um so i'll quickly run through this now because i know that we are we're running out of time what's our we, um we're, seven o'clock that no, bangle okay. forming oh, yeah no, we've so gone over, we've gone over. right yep sorry yeah so yeah it is it's, it's it's not the cheapest on the market, but it is good. It is, it is good. It is the, good. The other things as well, as I said to you just now, we have uh, the turntable. We can take that turntable off. Whoops, that's your ring dying just there. I better have that back in case I lose and forget to put it back Here. on there. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you've got another Bluetooth device. This will go up from underneath. Okay, so that goes up from underneath, that gets held on by the little logo. 
And what this does, this again will plug into the connector on the inside and you can connect the app up to this. So what does this do? This has other attachments now that enables you to hang earrings from here, hang earrings down, and it'll do exactly the same thing. The turntable will go all the way around, 90 degrees or 45 degrees, so it'll do that. You've also got the watch hanger as well, so you can put a watch onto here and do exactly the same thing. The watch can turn, and there's other various lengths of attachments that can be used as well. So yes, I totally get where you're coming from. There are cheaper options, but those cheaper options don't do all of this. Shooting necklaces. Shooting necklaces, yep, necklaces. So you got you the can, necklace dangler. I, oh, I do have the necklace dangler. Oh, where is it, Louise? Oh, is it in there? There was some bits and pieces in that box. No, is it? I think um, you've got it. There is a necklace dangler. I'm not quite sure where I've done, what I've done with that, but there is. Like oh, it's there, it's in your hand. Is that it? Look, is it? There's another bit that goes on there, isn't it? Yes. Oh, it's there. Is that it? Yes. So there's all these here. Yes. Yeah. There is a necklace dangler. Um, ah, there it is. So here's the necklace dangling bit here. You so can. They're all magnetic. They're yeah, just yeah, so, so easy to just. They're all magnetic. You can hang the necklace down here, and again, you can have a, a 360, 45 degree, and so forth. I'm rushing through this now because we're slightly overrunning. Absolutely brilliant. Then they've also just re released the uh, the dangling bits, but in black. I won't go into this in an awful lot of detail. And also the Gem Light Box Eclipse. We've just done a film on this on At The Bench. It's a turntable cover, in this case, that will sit on top of the turntable. Yes, I know it looks like a toilet seat and lid, but that, have you seen that? <laughs> so that will sit on top of the turntable. There's a black disc that goes on top that turns. And I'm not going to put all this together now because we're slowly running out of time. But to have a black background when you're doing things like opals and certain colours of stones is ab absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, let's have a look in a minute. Let's go on to here and I'll just quickly, uh, we'll save that. So that's Louise's ring going round and round and round. We did a video. Let me just see how close we can get on here. So this was a video of, let me just kind of make some close on this. Here we go. So there we go. That is a video of an opal ring that we did as well. Um, the black has a slight, it's, I, I was handheld in this, so that's why it jumps. The black, uh, here we go. This is a little um, diamond ring we did for, for a colleague. Now, you can't tell me that a little cheaper version of this on the market can do this, literally within seconds of putting it into place. You don't mess around with lights, you don't mess around with reflections, you don't mess around with Photoshop, you don't mess around with anything. It is automatically done for you. As you can see, it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's the time it saves, isn't it, as well? It's not just that it's so easy to use, it's just the... Mm. So there we go. It goes back and forth. Um, and likewise, and you know, I've, I've got lots of videos in different positions for this as well. As you can see. So that is the gem light box. I'm not going to go any more into detail with that. Uh, Pick up a media, the company who has brought all this together. They've given us a discount code, a coupon code to get free shipping. I know I would have loved to enable to let you to have one of these for free but it's, it, it's well over a thousand dollars, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money, but as, as Louise just said, it's the amount of time it saves us. What I did, I finished that ring, I put it through the ultrasonic, um, it's for a friend in um, North, um, North Yorkshire. I made the ring, put it all together, cleaned it, polished it, ultrasonic it, steamed it, whatever, literally then came up here, put the Eclipse filter into place, turned it on, took a video, I sent that video to him to make sure it's okay and say, look, look, Simon, this is what it's all about. And literally within five minutes of me finishing it, he had in his hands a video of that going round 
without a hassle, without messing around and trying to set things up. So that for us is, is so important. It's quick and it's easy. Um, oh, you're in West Yorkshire, Benton Forge, nice. Yeah, 1,697 for the full Monty, just been looking. Yes, I agree, it is expensive. If you have a website and you are producing work for the website and that is so important to you, I would totally get something like this. The photography, the clarity is, is unbeatable. With the app, you can do so much more than just with a normal camera two app or the traditional um, iPhone app or Android camera. You can do so much more. And it's not just this you're paying for, it's paying for the development of the app, which does get updated sort of every, every few weeks. You can add music, you can add logos, you can add text, crop it. It's far better than going to separate apps, trying to remove this, heal this, remove that bit of dust and so forth. So that's why we love it. It's a good investment. And it's so neat as well. It's so neat and tidy. Some gem light, uh, some light boxes are so big and cumbersome, aren't they? And take up so oh much Oh my gosh, space. yes, absolutely. But, um, it's just sits Abs on the... Absolutely. Sits on the side and it's great. Yeah, there we go. You're a bit too close. There we go, that's better. <laughs> so there we go. So that is what we've got. Um, do we have a slide you can just bring on the screen quickly there, Louise, with the discount code? If you want to go and buy one, it's free shipping to wherever you are in, in the world. Yes, I admit it is expensive, but for, for us, and I'm sure for you, it is going to be free worthwhile. Use the coupon code at the bench at Pickup Media. Uh, is it picketmedia.com? Picketmedia.com, yeah. P I C U P M E D I A, Picket Media. Um, and that's basically it for the Gem Light box. All right, so there we go. Very quick, I know, <clears throat> but it is something that we do believe in. And yes, it is expensive. And yes, we did buy this our, ourselves. Right, um, next, Louise. Yes, next is going to be... Pop up onto the screen, please, Mdira. Oh, okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. Put you back on. Thank you. It's you. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> um, next is the Durston Bangle Forming Die Set Demonstration. Um, but we have got... What have we got to announce? We've got something to announce. Have we? Yes, the, 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 the Bangle Forming Die Set. Yes, we have. Excuse oh, no, that's... Excuse me a second. Yeah, go on. Yeah, no, that's the fine. Bangle yeah, forming so die set. So that is what we're going to be giving away next. But just, you're going to be demonstrating that now. So I'm should going to be we hang fire on that? that? Yes, mm -hmm. I would hang fire. Just pop a little screen onto the uh, slide on to say what we're going to do next. And we can just pack up what we've got okay. here, ready for the next part of the 12 hour. So join us in a moment. We're just going to set everything back up, get the cameras just right. Join us in a second when we're going to be looking at the brand new Durston Bangle Forming die set. And we're going to be using that little bit of metal we textured this morning. Oh my gosh, where is it? I don't know what I've done with it now. Um, to, make, to make a convex bangle, not a concave bangle. So slide's going to come up. We're going to go quiet again for five minutes. Join us in a little while.
All right then. Oh, so I'm, I'm, I'm done yet. I'm done it. Okay. Well. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, ready. I'm live. Hey, yeah, we're live. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I just got a, a message back from Chris in Durston. Um, I think you placed uh, seventy orders for the spinner ring flarer. Um, the, all the orders came in in one mad rush. The website thought um, the website security thought it was all under attack because there were that many orders. <laughs> you all attacked it. <laughs> <laughs> you all ordered. And thank you very much indeed. We do really appreciate every single order that you have placed with Matthew. As we said, nothing comes to us that the 25% discount is all yours. We don't get a penny for anything that is happening here today. It's all going to charity. All the the discounts are going to you. Nothing's coming to us. None of the links we're posting are affiliate links or anything like that. So we are not getting anything at all. Somebody let fireworks on. Yeah, we we've got fireworks going yeah, off outside. Yeah, there's bonfire night on... Um, Two days ago. Thursday, yeah. So that's how some people are still having their fireworks. It is, yes. I got a bit of that... Is um, Bunny Louise. in? No, he's out. Oh, but as far as I'm aware, he's out still. Well, he was in this morning. We're talking about the cat. <laughs> the bangle forming die set from Durston. You've all seen the traditional bangle forming die set. Um, it's a kit, a kit that was developed um, many years ago. Um, and we've got these little dies that you can use to make up um, bangles. You can make up torque bangles. I haven't got my bangles to hand actually, so I can't even show you the they were down bangles. There, they they were down there. Um, yes, they are. Hang on a second, guys. We've got something down here. Oh, very filing system. <laughs> on the windowsill there we go okie dokies this is something that you can make with the bangle forming die set like taut bangles like this that have the little groove what they call um, concave or anti-plastic look so traditionally this bangle forming die set did that now we've gone one step further so instead of producing the concave style let me grab my oh camera controls now instead of the concave look that we've got on here we can now produce convex torque bangles so it is a convex it's rounded on the outside as opposed to rounded on the inside <laughs> you know what i mean um, and we can produce these gorgeous looking bangles the advantage that you've got with these type of bangles is that you can get away with slightly thinner material because you've got the convex or the concave look the anti-plastic or the syn-plastic look about them and that was what i was doing a little bit earlier on i was just producing this little bit of metal with a nice pattern on it and I'm simply going to use this. I'm not going to worry about rounding the ends off just yet on this particular demo because we are slowly running out of time. I've got about half an hour to do this. Um, in fact, I could well do, couldn't I? Uh, shall I bend? Shall I just cut around the edge? Yeah. Shall I? Shall I, Louise, or shall I just leave it? Um, I think I will leave them. I will leave them flat for now, but afterwards we will round off these ends so traditionally you came along with the carrier rod like this you mount that into your vise as we have there all right that then is like that this is called the carrier rod you then would get your chosen die a lot of people will actually start off with the small dies first wrong you do not start off with a small die. You start off with the big die first, whether that applies to the flat ones or ones that are slightly uh, anti-plastic or these here. So you always start off with the big die first, not the small ones, all right? Otherwise, if you start off with the small ones, you can't get the bangle back on these larger ends as we've got there. So in the past, that's what we've done. And this is something again that we've done. We've used a corrugated machine. You've just taken them up. Oh, there we go. You're right. 
<laughs> Sorry, it's every time I try to move. <laughs> just stay in my cage over here, shouldn't <laughs> I? <laughs> Where are you going now? <laughs> Take some oh, thank you. So you can use the the um, the bangle form in die set to produce this type. And the idea is you put the bangle um, dies on here. You put the little pin going through like that. You then would use the mallet that is supplied, and you would simply come along and just hammer that. And do that way right there. You would hammer this round. It doesn't damage the pattern. So then that would be the idea. You'd get the bangle going all the way around to make it look round. Then you would put on the smaller dies. Now you put the smaller dies on. And from there, that pin goes on, stops these falling off. Then you would put that on and then you'd just go into tap this round on either end like we have like this just to bring the bangle in to that shape, that torque bangle shape. Admittedly, this one is a little bit on the thin side. Um, it's been corrugated and it is a little bit too... Oh, sorry, I've been in the shot. <laughs> no, you haven't. I? No, you've been oh, on this okay. one here. Sorry, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the flexible one, okie dokies. So that's the sort of shape that we've been able to do in the past, this concave anti-plastic. Okay, you're not on it now. I'm on the close-up camera. <laughs> so that is what we've been doing. Now, this is where it becomes really interesting because now we can start putting these dies in place. This is the large one. We're just very quickly going to go through this. This will go on. Let's bring that to the outside edge there and put this through like that. So again, that doesn't come off. Right, you can't use this hammer anymore, all right? Because this hammer is far too hard. It will not conform. And the idea is you have to hit the metal to conform over the dome. The only way to do that is to use a rubber-faced mallet as we've got on here. And the idea is when you hit the metal, the hammer head will go and force itself over the metal to force it into this particular shape you've got here. Now, this is so new that Matthew has not got these for sale just yet. So, so <laughs> it's okay. They will be available from Durston very, very soon, but you can get the rubber faced mallets from a lot of the tool suppliers now anyway. You're okay, Louise, you're okay now. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. So we start off with the large, um, die first of all and if you want to come along and just bend this around first of all you can do and that is what I'd advise you to do when you come to use the bangle uh, set is just to form it around into that shape first so that's the first port of call the ends here are still a little bit uh, sort of straight so now we can hold the bangle around the former we can get the end and we can start to hammer and what we want to do is just to make sure that we get those curves coming right the way around and force that down. And the idea is now, as you start to hammer, you're going to start to produce a synclastic look on the outside edge because the hammer is coming down. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer with this particular camera uh, and get a little bit closer so you actually see what is actually happening there we go let's get a telephoto on that there there we go that hopefully that will be a little bit clearer you can see what's happening so as the hammer hits the edge of the die it forces the metal around into that synclastic look we need to hold on to it keep it central and start to hammer And we go all the way around and all the way back and it is a little bit more tricky than hitting it into a groove because the metal takes up the place of the groove really really easily this way it takes a little bit more time a little bit more practice to go over but it's exactly the same way we go on we hold on to the bangle and then as we come along we tap down on the edge and 
and you're basically forming the metal down over That's a the dome. A you a urethane mallet. Urethane. I think this is a rubber faced mallet, this one. It has to be soft. It has to be conforming to the shape of the, uh, the die when we actually hit it. Some people, um, yes, you could, I suppose, use the, 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 this hammer as well and do exactly the same perhaps to this one. I find that this is just that little bit harder to work. The die seems to move all over the place. Let's just move that up there. So there you go. You can use this one if you wanted to. This one comes with a kit if you buy the whole kit. I find that it's not as good as the rubber faced mallet. And this will go all the way around. You can turn this around. I like to use this mallet to force this around. I'm using the larger of the curves with this one because we um, are then going to go on to this narrow one that we've got here. And as I said, it is going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more effort, bending the metal around and around as we go. It's not going to damage the pattern. You can see we've still got the pattern upon the bangle here as well. So I wouldn't try and use um, a metal hammer, especially on a patterned texture that we've got on here, because it's going to completely obliterate the pattern. This is about, uh, about a one mil piece of, of silver. Um, and we can just carry on going along. As I said, it's going to take a little bit longer to form this than what the uh, traditional bangle forming die set takes. If you want to use this mallet, you can do. Uh, 20 millimeters wide. 20 mil. Yes. Do you not need to annul it again to help it? You can do it. At the moment we're still going along. We haven't put in a huge curve as you can see. I know you're saying Andrew that seems like a lot of effort but we're just slowly working this as we go. We did annul this a little bit earlier. It is a quite a thick piece of metal so we're just taking this nice and easy. Once we've got a nice curve appearing onto it we can then go on to the slightly narrower curved pieces, uh, dies as you've got to get a bit more of a tighter curve. But as I said, it is a little bit more time consuming than what the original uh, bangle forming die set uh, was because of we having to force it over the curve as opposed to into a dip. The metal takes more kindly to be knocked into um, a, a valley as opposed to um, the top of a hillside, so to speak. And then once you've got that shape, we've got this shape that we're looking here, then you can swap over to the dies uh, a little bit smaller, this one here, just to get that little bit of a tighter curve on the one end. And again, you can use the, the rubber mallet to come along to really hit that down to get that gorgeous torque shape. You can see if you really hammer hard, you can get a pretty good torque shape literally within seconds. Um, it does need a bit more work to get that bit more of the curve, but you can see we do have that bit of a curve coming upon the piece, as you can see. But the important thing is, is this shape as well, it's that torque bangle shape. We can come along and just tap this um, as we go, um, you can have a really shallow or have 
a little bit more of a, a, a tighter curve, as you can see. So that's what we've got. It's going to need a little bit more work. I'm just going to go back onto my workbench and we can sort of take some questions and answer some questions of what we got going on there. But this is one in, this is actually, I, I said I wasn't going to do this in true Blue Peter style. You can see we've been working on this one a little bit and we've got this nice rounded look on this snakeskin style bangle that we've got. And we've quickly polished that up, put a bit of liver of sulfur over that to really accentuate the pattern. But that is, is a, you know, obviously it's not going not gonna to suit me. Mm, I don't know, it's not bad, not bad, not bad as we've got there. Okay, let's go back onto my bench and we can have a, a further chat and so forth about the bangle forming die set. Um, any questions there, Louise, coming um, in? Have a little look. Um, just a couple of questions about the annealing. Um, I would anneal it. I, I've, gone I've gone around that bangle roughly around about twice. Um, and I think, yes, it would need a little bit of annealing now because it would be getting just that little bit hard. So, yes, I would anneal it. Yes. Julie is saying, I thought you had to use the other hammer. Uh, the rubber hammer or the Delrin hammer, the black one? I'm not sure. Not sure. I'm getting tied up in all my wires here now. Uh, there we John go. John is afraid you're going to hit your thumb. No. Lots of practice. Is yes. there a rule, wider bangle, bigger radius, narrow bangle, smaller radius? Yes, you can do. I think it would be a little bit difficult to get uh, a really, really tight radius on a really, really wide bangle. I think you may be asking too much for the, uh, the metal to move. But yes, that is a good point. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Bear with me a second. Sounds like your laps are contaminated. <coughs> Beg your pardon? My laps are contaminated? Sounds like my laps are contaminated. I have no idea what you mean. Are you doing the raffle tonight? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're going we... to be announcing the winners, the two winners of the Durston um, Rolling Mill competition. Yes, we are. Yes. Uh... Mm. Let's see, how, how often would you expect to have the dice repolished? Um, hardly ever, providing your metal is, let me just bring this around by here so we can see the a little bit nice, a little bit clearer. There we go. How's that? Is that better, guys? You can see Louise now. Oh, they don't want to see me. <laughs> um, how do you get both old and new sets in one? Okay, so that's what we're going to discuss. Um, you can buy the dies on their own. You can buy, if you have the original bangle forming die set, you can buy the new dies on their own. Or you can buy the set complete with both sets of dies. Uh, simple as that. Again, you can get 25% off using the Durston code AUTUMN25. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what else to really talk about it. I, I could go on banging and banging and banging, but I feel it's going to be far better. Yes, Louise? Yeah, uh, Rachel's asking how much is the Dustin Bangle set? It retails at £320. Is that for the whole set? Um, I think that's for the die set, yeah, but that's not including VAT, I don't think. Yes, yeah, so obviously yeah, all the prices on the Dustin side needs to add VAT onto it. Yeah. You can just buy the new dies on their own if you have the original bangle forming die set. So you don't have to buy the whole thing again. I would recommend you get like a urethane hammer, something with this a little bit softer than the Delrin hammer, just so it conforms and goes over the, um, the dies itself. It does take a lot more work than the original um, concave. That's why I'm not going too mad with this because we will carry on with that um, at a later stage. <clears throat> but it is purely to give you um, my zoomer in the router. There it is. There. Oh, we're buffering, we're buffering. Oh no. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. It says it's excellent. Yes, yes, Romy. <clears throat> Why are we back? Ah, we're back. There we go. Then I'm not quite sure on there. A little bit of an internet problem. This is the bangle we made it earlier. You can see it's quite wide. It's about an inch wide. We do have that slight synclastic look. 
upon that. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. And basically that is what we're gonna to aim to with this. And again, we're gonna be raffling this um, on, um, on the question and answers, aren't we? We're gonna have a chat about this a little bit later on in the week, Monday, two days time, we're back on air for wow. 4 p.m. Oh, we've got to open the shop Monday. Oh, <laughs> we haven't really had to open I'm the shop. I'm looking forward to it. Are you really? Yeah. I was looking forward to a few more weeks off. No, I've, I've got Sharon, and I think it was yeah. Jason. You miss, you, you're delirium. No, you're delirious. It's, it's, this, is bit, this has kept me going throughout the whole of the, the two-week lockdown that we've had here in Wales, because last Monday, was it last Monday or this Monday? This Monday, wasn't this it? This Monday <clears> coming, <throat> and I felt really down in the dumps. so I was really teary, just felt really... Mm. I think we've all felt a bit like this, haven't we, you and during the lockdown at some yeah. point, just felt really, really deflated, demotivated. Yeah. And we came in here and we did the live. You had to um, go out probably for exercise. You couldn't visit anybody. So it really is, it's been quite hard for us. But being able to do this, doing some live streams. Buffering again. Chatting to you guys. There we go. Chatting to you guys has been really helpful. Everybody, Paul Green. Woo! Thank you very much for all the, all the emojis. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, buffering again. I don't know why we're buffering. I do apologize for that. We are buffering. That's lockdown. Lockdownitis. Yes. Oh dear. Today has been amazing. Feeling inspired and a bit normal and no masks. It is. Yeah, we're back. Um, everyone in England's been um, on lockdown for the last couple of days. I think everyone in England's locked down until the 2nd of December. But here in Wales, we uh, are coming out of lockdown in two days time. <sighs> You're in lockdown, Chris Van Roy. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we love uh, that set. I even have the urethane hammer to keep up. Cool. Excellent. France is on lockdown as well. Yeah. France as well, yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, we were in France just before on our honeymoon, weren't we? Just before yeah. lockdown happened, so we were very lucky there. Uh, wow, are you using the screw down on top to bring it close to the blade? Oh, sorry, yeah, that's to someone else, completely different. Frozen screen, do apologise, not quite sure what's going on. <laughs> YouTube can't believe that someone would go on for this long in one go. I know, it's been pretty awesome, isn't it? So we still got about an hour and 15 left before we finish. We are going to be announcing the, um, the two winners of the Rolling Mills in about an hour's time and also the £100 Kerno Craft voucher. We've got a little bit longer for you to enter a competition to win a bangle forming, the new bangle forming die set. Um, I think that's going to be the whole package, all the dies. The hammer, not the, the, the rubber hammer, unfortunately, you have to go and buy that because we haven't got that ready at the moment, but you've got a chance of winning all the dies, the whole kit. All you gotta do is follow the link that Louise is gonna put up now in the chat. Follow that link. If you haven't entered already, go and enter it. You can be in with a chance of winning that. Uh, okay, people just chatting away. Good, I'm glad everyone's helping each other out. Cool. I mean, hops and that. <laughs> That's not nice. Rio Grande sells the hammer, yes. And if you're in the UK, um, Cookson sell the hammer as well. I know that. That's where I got that particular one from. Um, yeah. So that is the idea of today. So we got about an hour before we go any further uh, with the competition, the main competitions, which is the 100 pound Kuno Craft voucher, and also the uh, winners of the Rona Mill two rolling mills to give away. The rolling mill that we've been using all day, you're gonna be able to win one of two rolling mills. Sound out of sync, I think. Just refresh your page, Audrey, and, and it should be fine. Are all the new concepts? Um, they aren't necessarily quick release. Um, some of them have a screw adjustment. That one that you're give, being given away, is a screw lever. Um, there is these fittings on the side. You simply undo that, the blade comes out, the blade goes in the hole. Let's bring that back over here. The blade goes in the hole, you tighten it up with this, and then you pull the lever over, and it immediately tightens it up to the correct tension every single time. If you want to adjust the tension, well then all you gotta do is use the little knurled nut upon the top here. Put the blade in, Make sure this is down, put the blade into place, he says, 
as this is not working for him at the moment. Put that into place like that, and then turn the, um, what's this thing called? The, the, the lever, and it'll hold that into place. Right then, um, anything else we wanna have a chat about? Because I can carry on talking and talking and talking. We've got about another hour to really sort of while away, haven't we, Louise? Yeah, um, we've got the Durston Bangle Forming Die Set um, giveaway. We've got the two rolling mill um, winners to announce as well. Yes. The other winners, I think we'll have to come back and announce tomorrow. Yes. I think that's what we did last time. It so. was, yes. And that's for the um, At The Bench merch, uh, titanium solder strips, Kunnercraft vouchers, yeah. memberships. Yeah. And the Walsh. And the Walsh vouchers, vouchers as well. Yes. Yeah. There we go, I just sorted out the blade. Uh, the bottom screw was loose. So, yep, so that just fastens into the uh, end here. You tighten that up, you flick that over, and now it's... Linda Singh Hallmarks, Wendy Hallmark. <clears throat> Wendy Hallmark, preferably at the end of the process, so there's no more um, things that need to be added to the piece. Hey, we hit 3,000 £3, pounds. pounds. Maggie, oh, thank, you thank you so you. much. Thank you for being you. No, thank you for being you. Thank you for being all of you. All of you. 3,000 pounds. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. That is absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. Really do appreciate everybody who has donated today. We've still got an hour left, so I didn't please. Really raise this much. No, I was be I was <laughs> I would be happy. I was happy if we did just match last year. But we mm. virtually doubled last year's straight well, away. We've got the raffles. We've got the um yeah, the raffles. Yeah. We've got the raffles because we're going to raffle off the, all the pieces we've made. We're going to raffle off the uh, the bangle and all the other bits and pieces we've been making up. We're going to be raffling them. And also, uh, Bill, uh, William is going to be raffling off one of these little urchins as well. And the winner can choose the gemstone to go in it. Um, yeah, it, it is. It's, it's, it's quite been an emotional one, this one, hasn't it? Mm. Esther, can't wait for my dance. Oh, my God. <laughs> I am going to have to practice this. Thank you, Tom. Tom, again, another $2. Thank you. Do appreciate it. <laughs> How many entries have there been for the rolling mill? Wow. Shall we have a look, Louise? Have... How many entries have we got? Does anybody the... want to have a guess? Who wants to have a guess on to... it's how... It's price. It's just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Three thousand pound. Well done. Uh, it's you guys. Yeah. You guys have done mm. it. You Not have us. done it. You have donated the You've money. Been so so generous. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, they so have. Kind. Yeah. Very well done. Such a wonderful. Act. But yeah, we we do this because we want to 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 to, to gain um, awareness of of the charity, and it also goes to help so many people. Thank you. Okay, Louise, how okay. many? So everyone's guessing. Everyone's guessing. 1,000 entries, 1,300 entries for the rolling mill, 1,500, 1,600. Are you going to tell us? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, 1,425. 1,425 entries. I've printed. I have to filter the data. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if everybody needs a rolling mill, and I think you do need a rolling mill, and if you have a rolling mill already, you can never have too many rolling mills, if you ask me. Um, I have a few. Um, so please enter the competition. Louise, pop up onto the, um, the chat now. This is the link to win one of two Durston Agile rolling mills. We would love it if you could possibly enter uh, share it with your friends if they can enter now within the next half an hour. See if we can get to about, how many did you say, 1,400? Yep. See if we can get to 1,500 at least, if we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be cool. A lot of people are asking what time the broadcast tomorrow is going to be for the Ooh. rest of the price. Around about lunchtime, I would have thought, do you think? Well, you have to go and see your dad. We have to go and see my dad. So yes, we do. Shopping. Early. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, not too early. <laughs> oh, mind you, we had, we had a bit of a round last week, didn't we? We had a row with my father last week, yeah. <laughs> we, my, my father's 98. 98? 98. Mm -hmm. 98. Yeah, now, my father's 98. Uh, my mother sadly uh, passed away earlier this year uh, before the last broadcast. So my dad is 98. He's on his own. His eyesight's failing. He's got dry macula, whatever it is, or wet macula degeneration. Wet macula degeneration. Yes. Um, he's finding it hard to see. We normally go down there nice and early. We didn't last week and we didn't tell him. We went down there in the afternoon and he said, oh my gosh, where have you been? I was up at seven o'clock this morning. You said you were gonna be early on. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah. So we got a little bit of a telling off, unfortunately, um, which is just one of those things, isn't it? I'm just quickly looking on my phone a second because I want to see how many subscribers we've got um, on YouTube. Um, how many subscribers have we got on YouTube? Please do we know? Uh, no, you carry on doing what you're doing there and I will quickly have a look. Um, we've got uh, 87,082 subscribers. I actually wanted to get to 87,000. So please, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to um, our YouTube channel, you can go down somewhere around here and click subscribe. Um, any films that we do from now on obviously then benefits from the subscribers because we do get the adverts coming on. So, excellent. We've got an awesome, awesome, loads amount of money coming in for um, Cancer Research UK. £3,000. Um, just to note by the money button at the bottom of the chat. Yes, Rhiannon, yes, please. Thank yep. you very much. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, my dad turned 92. Awesome, awesome age. Aww. Just subscribe. Thank you, Gabriel. We really do appreciate it. Um, been on here since 9 a.m. this morning. That's Aww. funny. So have we, Annie. <laughs> We've <laughs> been you, here Annie. as well. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank for staying with it. us. David's back. Yay, welcome back. Hello, David. Eve, I subscribe. Good, good, good. Oh, yeah, a couple of people have asked for the camera system set up. Oh, please, okay, yeah. So. Thank you, yeah. The next live, I really want to try and get someone who can operate the cameras for us so I don't have to go over and move the camera and so forth. So we're trying to get uh, Matt, my uh, one of my daughter's boyfriends, to come and give us a hand. So I'd love him to be able to do that. So let me just quickly get this one particular camera and show you what we're doing. It's, it's the same system as last time, but it's been upgraded a little bit. So let me just, just grab the camera off here and we can show you what's what. We can just show you basically behind the scenes on what you can see. Let's go on to camera number two which is what I've got here. Um, I've got to be careful because I've got loads of leads going everywhere. Spin this round and round and round and round. Okay so uh, what you can see let me have a look. Me, I'm, hang on. Bear with me a second. Let me just go on to the lovely Louise a minute. You can just see lovely Louise now whilst I go and sort out my leads because they're all trapped around each other here. And that goes around there. That goes around there. That goes around there. Okay. So this has been the camera that has been the bit of the, the, the close-up shots and so forth here. We took the lead out of this camera and we put it into our DSLR. So what I've been looking at all day is this. So here's my bench. This is what I've been looking at. I have a little monitor in front of me here. And from here, I can see everybody's chat coming through and so forth. So that's what I see. In front of me as well, we've got the camera there. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. And that's what I can see as well. The monitor on top is not working at the moment. We don't necessarily need that. We have the Sennheiser uh, wireless mics as well on there. So that's what I can see. Lovely Louise is over there, as you can see, busy working away. And over this side here, we've got more lights. Uh, there's, uh, there's the Louise cam there. Um, there is the stand for that. And there's the rolling mill and that. And, um, and th this, this is me. All right. So that's what you can see. We've got wall mounted lights here, wall mounted lights there. Above us here, we've got a uh, ceiling mounted light. Also to there, not quite sure whether you can see, we've also got another camera. That is camera number three that shows what we've got there. So that's camera one, me. Camera two is this one. Camera three is the overhead shot. Camera four is the Lubies cam. That's why I call it the Lubies cam. Um, so that's what is all around us. Um, so the system we're using is called the ATEM Mini Pro ISO, as you can see. And on here we have all the buttons that enables us to uh, go through to button one, button two, button three, button four. What does that say? No idea. No idea. Take it off. We don't know. And here with them, this is the mic on, mic off, mic on, mic off. Uh, we've also got separate mic inputs here as well. Um, we can have um, audio follows visual. So if you've got cameras with mics built upon them and so forth, that is all on there. This is our picture in picture that you can see 
uh, that comes on, but we do need to get that sorted out for next time when we do some close-ups. We can uh, do the cut, a simple cut from one to the other without mixing. This is the auto, and it does that nicely, as you can see. We can have it longer, we can have it shorter, so we have a two second fade, one second, half a second, one and a half second. We can have it so it dips, so it dips to white. Then we can have all these fancy, I don't like these. Ooh, ooh. And you've got all these different effects that you can have um, up and down and so forth. And then we've got other things here. This then comes, um, this is the media and the video. So then what you can see is over here. Let's just try and zoom in on that. So that's what then we see. Can we see that? Or was that just not me? There we go. Okay, that's what we can see. And then on the screens by here now, you can see um, all the various outputs we've been on air. That's, the, that's the, the, the speed, the recording, the volumes and so forth. But we don't use that. And on here then we've also got, if I can zoom out, you may be bored with this, but I think it's really exciting. I love this side of it. We've also got uh, the recording. So we can record into a disc and also it shows that we're on, on the air. This is a one terabyte solid state drive that we're recording to as well. Should anything happen, we've always got a backup of our recording. These are all the outputs, camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. This is the output that takes it to the monitor over there so I can see what's going on. That is then my one terabyte drive. This is the uh, ethernet and that's the power. There we go. And that's about it, I think. Um, and then oh, and then what Louise does, I can't unfortunately show you on the camera because it won't reach all the way around there. But Louise has uh, the software on her computer as well. So Louise has two computers that she works on at the moment. The one computer, we can put 20 different slides so we can drag the slides into position. So that means that we can come along, turn off the microphones, and then we have some screens coming over. You can do loads more things as well with that. We just, we're just touching tip of the iceberg of what this system we've got here. But they've been able to put the, the, the screens over it. There's a person at your front door. That's very interesting. I wonder who that could be. Um, so that is all that we're doing. Can I just ask Matthew's question or Harper's question? I'm sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. Um, I want to upgrade to an oxybutane torch, have a medical oxygen machine. What's yep. the best conversion? Have Rio Grande catalog, but don't know what's best. Um, there's an Amazon parcel. It's a bit late, isn't it? An Amazon parcel. Mm, why is it Saturday night? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm, time is it now? Eight o'clock. Um, you can get oxy, oxy converters. You can get the converters uh, that will power the oxygen. Matt, sorry, Matt. Yeah. So, so he's got he's got an, a, a medical oxygen generator and wants to put it in with his propane. Was that right? Um, sorry, Louise. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Um, the medical oxygen machine. What's mm. the best conversion? There should be, I'm not quite sure, I don't have one of these myself. Um, there is an output, obviously, the output then has most probably got um, a tap that you can then put onto the hoses. Um, over here in the UK, um, what do they do? They do, oh, I can't remember the names now. I can't remember. They do glass work over here in the UK, in the UK and they sell oxy converters as well. Uh, they make glass bead equipment. Let me quickly go on to here and we will quickly find this out for you. Um, Oxycon uh, glass um, beads, I don't know. Tell us what comes up. Tufnel, Tufnel glass, that's it, very good, thank you Paul. Um, Tufnel glass, give them a call, email them, ask them because they will this, do this sort of thing. So they're the, the guys to really to sort you out. Tufnels, that's it, Tufnel glass, Tufnel glass. Yep. <clears throat> that is what you want to get in contact with. They will um, sort you out with an adapter that takes you from the Oxycon to the oxygen torches. Uh, yes, absolutely. Anything else uh, to talk about? Can't remember if I've already entered the Durstall Bangle Make it. it doesn't matter because we will take out all the duplicate entries. So that's no worries at all if you happen to have entered a few times. Don't forget, there is still time to enter for these competitions. 
the Ronin Mill, the 100 pound Kuno Craft vouchers, the 11, 20 pound Kuno Craft vouchers, the four 50 pound Walsh vouchers, the dozen uh, titanium strips as well. All of these are still up for grabs. Just need a small pressure tank as a receiver. There we go. A five litre oxygen should work with a Smith little torch, I think, if this is what you're wondering. There we go. Yvonne, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Do appreciate it. Oh, the fireworks are really going off tonight, yeah, aren't they? Hey. I thought it was someone outside, but it's actually the fireworks going off. Uh, can you electroform with silver? Yes, you can. Um, it's the opposite of, of plating. <clears throat> cathode to anode or anode to cathode, but yes, you can. You can even make polystyrene shapes as long as you cover the, um, the polystyrene with an electrical conductive material or perhaps graphite, people use graphite, you can then use that as your master to electroplate on top of that to make a real gorgeous, gorgeous three-dimensional delicate piece that's very, very light that you couldn't make any other ways. Uh, for Amazon warehouse throughout the UK, I was down through the heads of the Valleys Road on a route to Swansea a few weeks back. It's almost as beautiful as Scotland. <clears throat> it is lovely. It's a lovely part of the world. Um, I have a seal needle form and I use for everything. Should I use a bushier head for needling? You can do. I've got uh, a sievert system here. That's just to the side of me here. Um, and I brought this in, in just in case we needed it for today and luckily that we didn't. You can get the little pencil. Oh, it's that sort of mix now, is it? Ooh, um, mix that way. There we go, that's better. <clears throat> Let's zoom in on this one. So this is what you would normally use as a pencil burner for the sievert. And this is brilliant. And we use these for about 18 odd years. This is absolutely fantastic. Then you can simply unscrew that from the handle and put on this neck. And from that neck, you can get the different burners. This burner I find is gorgeous for when we start doing some melting down, but it is just that little bit for me too big. I'm sure this is supposed to come off, not this here, but we have the other burners to go on as well. Um, this burner, I will tell you now if I can find it, if it's on it, I think it is somewhere. Um, <clears throat> let me get my visor on this for just to see. This is a, uh, this is a 2941. I find this is a brilliant for melting down. I find it's a little bit too, too rich, too harsh. This is the burn that I would recommend. This is a 394, oh gosh, 3941. And this, as you can see, we've used for years and years and years. And that would be the ideal type of burner to use with the sievert. Um, let me just turn this one on. This is actually quite frightening. Uh, let me get. As you can see, it's it's a bit big. It's a bit bold. It's a bit loud. As you can see. So. I would use that for melting down. It's just too much for annealing. It's a bit overkill for annealing. But the 3941 um, is going to be the right one to use. Um, uh, so, thought, do you have a PayPal address where we can donate to? We, we don't have a PayPal address, do we? But you can go directly onto the Cancer Research UK website and donate there. Just let us know if you donate that way, because we'd love to know. Uh, do you use a guillotine cutter? I don't, but it's something, again, that Matthew has produced that I have been pestering him for a while. Um, I will be getting a guillotine just into a four inch, six inch and a 12 inch guillotine cutter. I'm trying to get the six inch off him. I'm not being greedy. I don't want a 12 inch. It's too big. It's too heavy. And I'm running out of room, as you can see in this particular room here. We've got another lovely big room in the front where we have all our casting equipment as well. Um, but I am literally running out of room slowly. So that's what I am hoping for very, very shortly. Um, 
uh, let's have a quick look. Andrew, thanks for sharing your time and knowledge. I have to leave now, but I will watch tomorrow. Cecilia, thank you very much for keeping with us. We do appreciate it. I'm making an engagement ring with three tube settings, uh, four mil, two point three. How can I align the tubes along the radius of the ring shape? Thank you for everything that you do. Um, we would use <coughs> these to hold them in place. Uh, we love these. I know there was a, something um, on some of the Facebook group, um, I think it was yesterday, saying the spring on this is too much because the person had this moved all the way up and the tension was just too much and it was squashing. But you, this is the whole reason why we got the slider is that you can slide it just to get the right amount of tension. And what you do with that is, uh, is you would have your, uh, your ring, you would then have a tube down here, you would have, you'd have that. Okay, so this is your ring here. This over here is the tweezers. Okay, this, this down the tweezers, and this is the paddle that's on the bottom. And you would use this just to hold everything together. And then when you're looking from this direction, there's your tube, there's the top of the ring. Here is the tweezers that come over this way, like that, and there's the paddle underneath. And it just holds everything together. You won't be able to solder the three in one go, but you can start to do the one. Then once that's been soldered on, you can move that over here and then get the other one and solder that one in place and solder that and so forth. So these head and shank tweezers are really, really good. I do recommend them. As I said, somebody was moaning that there was too much spring being pushed, applied this way but you adjust that by moving up this little rod on the side by there. So head and shank tweezers is definitely what I would recommend. Uh, let's have a look what else we got. Um, can you avoid, uh, so how can you avoid silver stain? Um, fire scale, I would have thought you by protecting the surface from the flame of the torch. It's the oxygen that is produced from the torch that really does affect the copper in sterling silver. Let me just put this out of the way a moment so we don't get in the way and trip over that. Make sure it's turned off. There we go, there. Um, transparencies and film to etch. Yep, there's lots of etching. Um, I know we were talking about Moira just a moment ago to do with the texture plates. Is propane and butane mix okay for Sievert Port 88? Propane and butane mix. I would have thought so. I'd never heard of a propane and a butane mix. The torches that we use have been, that's propane. We only use propane um, for those torches. We do have these little torches here. It's just a little creme brulee torches. These are butane. Uh, please, can you put the rolling mill link up again, please? Um, I'm on a mobile phone and it only allows me to go back a little way in comments. Thank you, Louise, for that. Andrew, do you hand engrave? No, I don't. Um, oh, I've got a bit of cramp in my leg. Um, no, I don't at the moment. I really do want to, but again, it's something that I would love to do, but it's finding the time to really devote to the practice of it. I've got my Graver Mac in the front room uh, with all the necessary equipment. It's just the time involved to learn it. Um, so it's something that I want to do. Can a plumber's torch um, have a use? Yes, it can, because it's just the same as the bigger torches. You won't be able to use um, or have very, very thin, small flames with a plumber's torch, unfortunately. What's in the glass of the vase behind you? Oh, here, um, this one? or that one. These are just simply little things we picked up from Ikea. It's a vase with a plastic um, leaf in it. That's all that is. And, and these are um, literally just jars that we picked up from Ikea. It looks really cool. We should start changing now because they're getting a bit old now, aren't they? Uh, that's my sparrow hawk. That's just a, um, a plastic uh, plant from Ikea and we've got a little aperture light behind it glowing green to give it a nice little bit of effect as well 
um, and I've got a light behind me as well, an aperture light behind me um, as well. That's down the bottom there, giving a bit of light coming up from underneath. <coughs> uh, £20 from Pierre, thank you very much, really do appreciate all the money that this has been coming in. Um, hi from Brazil, wow, just checking in and back after going to bed at 6am in the morning here in Austria, well done. Everything okay? You right with the pizza? Yeah, what's for tea, pizza? Actually, olives. Oh, look, he's just chuck it all on now, yeah. Damn it, yeah. Damn you it, don't, so, so, I, you've been very quiet for the last I've 10 minutes. I've been ordering minutes. a pizza. You've been... <laughs> That's what I've been doing. Let's, let's do mine. <laughs> <laughs> so Louise has been ordering a pizza for us when we get home. Thank you much for that. appreciate that. Um, and we've also got some, a glass of Prosecco to drink tonight when we get oh, home. Nice. Nice. We have a bottle of Bolly in the, uh, in the fridge, don't we? From when we... Um, Got married. Uh, what is better, a flex shaft? No, a flex <laughs> shaft or a micro motor? I get asked this a lot. For sheer versatility, I would always go with a flex shaft. A pendant motor, a flex shaft. Why? I find it more versatile. It's got, um, it's more torque. You can be a bit more brutal with it. Uh, you can change the different hand pieces. Now this is gonna be vitally important if you want to use the hammer hand piece because you simply take off this hand piece, put the hammer hand piece on, nice and easy. That's the quick release hand piece. If you wanna come along and use the, where's it to? Where's it to? Where's it very well, shouldn't it? Where's it to? Um, you can use the Jacob's chuck as well. So that's the Jacob's chuck. You can put that upon the flex shaft. Things like that you cannot do with a micromotor. If you are purely coming along with a micromotor and you want to do some very delicate parve work, well then a little flex shaft like this, I think then is a bit overkill and I would definitely then go towards a micromotor for doing very, very precise uh, work. But for a workhorse in a workshop, something like a Fordham, uh, Fordham SR, or any sort of micromotor, no, any pendant motor would be absolutely brilliant. Uh, a bolly, you deserve it after today. Uh, thank you, yes. Um, Andrew and Louise's favorite food, snacks and sweets. Um, we do like an Indian mm, uh, takeaway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do have one every now and again. Um, I do like a Chinese. Um, we do like a Chinese. What, what's your favorite bit of an Indian? <laughs> it's a very strange question, but what do you like Indian-wise? Are you asking me? Uh, yes, Louise, what would you like? It depends on the mood I'm in, really, doesn't it? Because I do, I do like an, a vegetable corn, but then I like a prawn boona. Mm. And I do like the side paneer. I won't go without my side paneer. And we've got off a poppadom for Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cat does nibble the poppadoms. I just simply go for. I've, I've been sort of. Be, uh, I'm not very adventurous. I do quite like a dry chicken. What do I like? What about dry korma? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Have, um, tikka. Tikka mas a dry tikka masala. A dry tikka masala. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I don't like too much liquid. And when I have the chicken and I have rice, we do like lemon fried rice. That's really good. <laughs> Mm. Prawn booner. Well, you're, having, you're having pizza tonight. I'm, ha I'm having pizza. You're having pizza. With all the toppings. Yes. Nice. Excellent. So are we going to do these competitions then? No, not yet. Not <laughs> it's only 20 past eight. We're still chatting. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, I've got, to, I've got to do my little bit of filtering and, and, mm. and drawing. Of that's okay. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay, okay yeah. Okay. So perhaps at around about half past, we'll cut off the competition for the £100 voucher for Kuno Craft. We're drawing them tomorrow, though, aren't we? Oh, the hundred pounds. The oh, they're doing the hundred pounds. You doing the hundred? I think we should do the hundred pounds. Okay. Yeah, that okay. is what um, Hannah did say. Ed, uh, Edward, twenty-five uh, rons, whatever rons are. Thank you very much, dude. Um, Curry is really nice with pineapple or not. Um, I do like a Chinese. I do like a Chinese chicken and mushroom or chicken and pineapple Chinese. Wrecked. Mm. Yeah. Is that wrecked? I think R A K T. Is that wrecked? I'm not right. quite sure. Kirsty, nine ninety-nine. Thank you very much indeed. Really do appreciate it. On the floor, I go, this is where I feel, that's what I'm going to be doing when I get home, is simply flopping out on, on, the, on the sofa. I shouldn't reach out, that you sounds a bit. didn't right. say, did we, what time we're starting tomorrow? You said midday. But, we're uh, about but, midday, about 12 o'clock, should we? It's only going to be for half an hour, isn't it, while we uh, announce the winners? Um, yeah, okay. Is that okay? No, what do you think? I think a bit later. Okay, in the afternoon? Yeah, because we've got to get up to... See you, Dad. Okay, I'm so back. what do you want to say? Three, three o'clock? Yeah. Yeah, three o'clock tomorrow? Yeah. Yep, sounds good. All right, so 3 p.m. tomorrow, 3 p.m. Sunday, we're going to be announcing a lot of the winners. The winners for the t-shirts, the aprons, 
the new contest titanium strips, the Walsh vouchers and the I've forgotten something. Kunocraft vouchers as well. So all those are going to be announced tomorrow. <coughs> Mm. that's great Moira thank you very much for donating 20 pounds really do appreciate it lunchtime there Greg oh Greg um, gorgeous 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 how's it going <laughs> oops a daisy <clears throat> oh, and oops who was who was drinking for oops a daisy I can't that's remember great. that was great I thought it was gorgeous 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 Oops-a-daisy, I think, wasn't it? No, I'm not quite sure. Was it heavier Ford and ham pieces? I'm not, I'm not for anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, the ham pieces, we were trying, won't be out. Let me just quickly show you a quick side-by-side -side version. Um, so this is a hammer ham piece from Fordham. This is the Badico hammer ham piece. The Badico is a little bit thinner. You can just about see pretty much the same sort of length it's more of a pencil thickness as opposed to a, a marker pen thickness on the hammer hand pieces. Which is the best? They're pretty much the same. The Badico is twice the price, admittedly, of the Fordham. I've used the Fordham for years and years and years. The Badico is nice. Um, which would I, if money was not an object, I would go for the Badico. If I was on a bit of a budget, the Fordham. They do exactly the same job. Nice. Um, Eleni, has just popped on to say hello. Who has? Eleni. Eleni. Oh, yeah. Eleni. Hello, Eleni. How are you? Hello from Nick and Eleni. Good oh. evening, Eleni. Yes, we've been here since nine o'clock this morning, um, and I'm sure Grace has popped on as well, um, and Matt as well. We do want Matt to be cameraman for next time, because we've been having a few problems trying to position the cameras, but we think if Matt can be on the camera, he can, he can sort of help us an awful lot, so that's why we have to try and work on him. So thank you very much for coming on today. Really, really do appreciate it. Um, we have got about another 10 minutes before we're gonna stop the competition for the rolling mill. So you've got 10 more minutes left to get your entry into the rolling mill. Louise, push that button. Already did. Nice. So. <clears throat> and the bangle forming die set as well, we're gonna close And the bangle forming well. die set as well. Uh, yes, yes, yes. To get your hands on the Kerner Craft, main Kerner Craft, Craft prize of 100 pounds. Um, if it ever make, we, yeah, that's the idea, Eleni, yeah. Was the level, He's going to be cameraman. <clears throat> yes, mm. we do want Matthew to be cameraman next time. <laughs> I think it'd be really good. <clears throat> we'll does he to, know? He does know. Well, he, asked us, he messaged me yesterday and um, Matt says, is there anything that we can do to help? And I went, yeah, next time you can be cameraman. <laughs> because it is... We need to get somebody else in here to perhaps do some errands and run it's and get some too, coffee. It's just us isn't it? Yeah, it's literally just myself and Louise here in this little room um, all day. Drink honey tea, Andrew. That's good for the throat. Yes, it is. When's the next 12-hour <coughs> live stream? <laughs> <laughs> Let us get over this one first, <laughs> is it? We don't know yet. We've been... <clears throat> We've been quite fortunate um, for the past two 12 hours because they've happened either right in the middle of the first lockdown or at the end of this lockdown. And you don't realise how much preparation really goes into this. I know sometimes it looks like we're winging it, um, but we're not. We have everything planned. We have everything sorted out. We've got boxes that we've put over that side of the room with all the tools and equipment and the projects needed for each segment of the show. We have negotiated deals with all the companies that we've been on with today, back and forth trying to get the best deals. That What can we do? What are we going to be producing for you guys? Um, planning what we're doing. The, the, the pendant was a little bit of a... Um, a wing and a prayer today just to see how that goes but that is the whole idea it's just purely for you to see what we can do and what we've been doing today and in the last 12 hours was basically what you guys wanted us to show you so we're always open for ideas the best thing is to show is soldering everyone has problems with soldering making rings as you can see but i hope you've learned some fantastic uh, little hints and tips um, over the last 11 hours um, so yes, there's a lot that goes on producing the slides uh, and also producing all the forms that you guys fill in. Um, it is a lot of work and I really couldn't have done it without Louise. 
Um, the last 12 hours, she thanked me for everything that I did, but I think this time, Louise has, has, has been an absolute gem. She has worked, you know, she has worked tirelessly. I've been making her work Sundays. I've been making her work evenings, not only purely on just doing this 12 hour, but everything else to do with all the social media. She's kept an eye on the social media. She's uh, replied to people. She's, she's then all the contacts then with all the tool companies as well, making sure that all the, the tweets and the programs go out and the adverts go out. She's done the Facebook adverts as well. So even though I'm the one who is here, wrong camera, even though I'm the one here purely talking to you, Louise has done so much behind the scenes. She's been sort of jigging between the two computers You've got the one computer here, this, this one here, and the other one down there. Um, I see what she sees on this one in front of me, and I think she really has been um, an absolute asset to us today. So um, I know she says, Andrew, yeah, you, you, you've done really good, well done, well done, you should be proud, but it's not just me. We're a team. Um, we got happily married, didn't we? Um, February the 22nd, we managed to get across to Paris for our honeymoon. It was just before lockdown and I really couldn't have managed to do any of this without her. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yay! Thank you. So thank you very much. I do appreciate it. And I know it's hard work. I know that you've, you've been locked up in that study, cracking on with some work, putting stuff on the website, and I know it's so intensive. But I like to think that you, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> but I like to think that, that everybody appreciates and it's not just me. It's you as well. You're on the buttons, you're getting all the links, you're getting everything up, you're answering the queries, you're, you're sorting out the websites and for people that. So I think it's, this is, is a, a testament to you as well. Thank you. That's okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, so enough about you. Let's go back on. No, I'm not joking. We also need to thank our <laughs> amazing sponsors, Durston Tools, GRS, Guess Wine, Walsh, New Concepts, Otto Fry, Kerner Craft, and, of course, Stephen Satan. Thank mm. you all. It wouldn't have been possible without all of you. Exactly. Thank you very much indeed. We really do appreciate every supplier that has helped us make today what it has been. We want to thank you for everything that you have done as well, because again, without you guys donating, we wouldn't be able to, to give this huge amount of money, £3,100 to cancer research. That is a phenomenal amount of money. So we really want to thank you for everything that you have done for us today as well. Anything else you want to say? I want to say a massive thanks to you, obviously, because <laughs> you are just amazing. You think so? Everybody, everybody thinks so. No, no, you no, no. You work so, no. so hard. But I love Every what morning, I do. Every morning, I've woken up this morning early, super early, and you've already been awake, and you've been, and you've been saying, how can we better it? We could do this, we could do that. How can and we get the camera positioned? How can we do this? In the morning, you're already awake, thinking of how to do things no, no. better. That's sad, isn't it? Because, no, it's not sad. It's because you're committed to what you do when you're committed to the quality and delivering something really, really amazing for people and that's what you've done. Hmm. I enjoy what mm. I do and it's coming up with, I, I love the technical challenges and this is the reason why we have this little box by here that we can flick around all the cameras. Uh, we had the close-up DSLR, we managed to take the lead out of that one, plug into that one midstream. So we're constantly trying to push the boundaries. Yes, there are lots of ways that we can improve it again by having the picture in picture. We're going to work on that for next time. Yes, Louise, there will be a next time. Uh, my voice is <laughs> lasting a little bit better than what I did last time because, again, every Monday we do a question and answer at four o'clock. Um, so, yeah, that's what we do. And again, Louise turns up um, at four o'clock and we, we, she mans the computer. I'm skidding my pants. <laughs> so a lot of times it <laughs> no, is. That's, not, that's not the phrase, is it? Skidding your pants? I don't care. Skidding my teeth. Skidding your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you do in your pants, skids. I don't <laughs> wish to know. Thank you very much it's indeed. By the skin of my teeth. teeth. Skin of your teeth. By the skin of my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> so we we love doing this. I love sort of getting through everything <laughs> that <laughs> the skid of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I I just love partaking in doing these sort of things. I've been doing this now for over 30, 35 years, and I've picked up some tips and tricks. I still make mistakes. Catherine, thank you very much for, for your donations. I really do appreciate it. Um, we virtually doubled last year's, or we're gonna exceed last year's. But as you can see, I've been drawing on the board some tips 
if you take nothing away with you, just do the ring sizing and ring cutting exactly as I tell you. Don't make those D sections. Make it, oh, just watch the film. Go back and watch it. So thank you all very much. In a second, we're gonna close the competition for the rolling mill um, because it's coming up to half past eight now. Louise has to go through all the entries. She has to take out all the duplicates and then get a winner. <clears throat> uh, sweat of your pants, Louise. The sweat of my pants. And don't forget those. <laughs> the seat of your pants. Flying the by the seat of your pants. Flying by the seat. <laughs> Thank you, John. Not the skin of my pants. It was the, the skin of my teeth, and I just thought, skin yeah. Skin of your teeth, seat of your pants. Yeah. Not that's going to be in people's minds now. That's an elastic thought of you from the top. The skin of your pants. <laughs> I made it with the skin of my pants. <laughs> I got the giggles now, don't <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. And. Yeah, so, okay, so sh should, we, should we draw a close now to the rolling mill competition? Yes, I am just... Um, I prefer the skid of your pants as well. I made it here by the <laughs> skid of my pants. <laughs> oh, uh, 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 yeah, the skid of your pants is where your round bottom is. That should go on your t-shirt. I, <laughs> I got here by the skid of my pants. Well, that that oh. is what I do every Monday, isn't it? It's like, we do. We always sorry, try, we try and get in a little bit early on a Monday to do the question and answer. We always think we're going to get in a little bit earlier, but we are rushing, rushing, rushing to try and get everything in place because we do film in, in this room for At The Bench. Right. So, uh, thank you all for Andrew. Amazing day. Been both uh, relentlessly amazing. Thank you so much for what you do. Uh, Cancer Research UK. You mean your flat bottom. Yeah. So lovely, thank you very much. You two are adorable together, thank you. Mondays uh, can be crazy. Uh, we used to have it on a Wednesday, but because then Louise came on board helping us with, with, with everything else here, and a member of staff mm -hmm. left, that's the reason why we had to swap it from a Wednesday to a Monday. Um, what is the, thank you, thank you, Amco, 10 euros. You're a star, thank you so much indeed. What's the best way to clean up the inside of a bezel before setting a stone? You don't necessarily have to clean up the inside. You can use things like um, steel wheels. You've got some little brass brushes like these, steel wheels that would get inside the, uh, the cups um, and the bezels to try and clean up. They're pretty good, brass ones, or we've also got some steel ones as well, like these. You can also get some cups. Um, in fact, I've got like the, the um, brush cups. Uh, I don't have any brush cups here, but they are like um, a cup of bristles on the end of a shaft, and those can go inside the bezel if you want to clean it up. I'm glad you've learned. This is the whole idea, and I want you know we pass on all this knowledge to you. I'm not saying it's. Everything is the only way to do it, apart from making those rings. That's the only way you've got to make rings in future. But we sort of impart our knowledge. We've been doing this now for, for over 30 odd years and I've picked up a few little tips and tricks along the way. So this is the whole idea. I want you to then pick up on these little tips and tricks to make your life a lot, lot easier when it comes to making jewelry. Um, 20 Dollars, thank you very much as a current fighter. Thank you all. Thank you, Janet. Really do appreciate it. Thank you so much indeed. Um, how do you fix the tension on a Cuban-inspired link chain? How do you get the curb chain to hang straight? Juan, that is a very good question. The best way to do it is, and that's like a big cable chain that you twist to get all the links. What I would do then is pass it through a rolling mill to ensure that each twist is exactly the same. That is your little trick to do. Um, otherwise, when you dangle the chain, the chain will twist and that's what you don't want. So I would lay it out. You would then put it then through a rolling mill and get it so the rolling mill makes sure that every single link has been twisted the right even amount and that should make sure that your Cuban link or a curb chain here in the UK stays nice and straight. Um, Andrew, we have you thought about auction off a day in your workshop with the one-to-one -one tuition? We used to do one-to-one -one tuitions here, um, but we just find that we just are, are literally running out of room. We um, have been getting so much equipment over the past few years. We've redone this room up purely as a recording studio now with a nice backdrop, a few bits and pieces, the lights and everything else and the cameras and so forth. So we don't necessarily can't use this room as a teaching room anymore. The other room that we've got in our front room 
is where we do all our casting. It's also got one of my daughter's drum kits as well in there. That's all been packaged away, so you don't get me playing the drums. I can't play anything instrumental like that. But in there, we have all the casting equipment. We got the centrifugal caster. We got the lost wax um, injectors, uh, vulcanizers, two big kilns, so there's no room in that room. We've also got two engraving machines. We've got two more benches with the Graver Mac. So we literally do run out of room. So I'm afraid we don't do um, any more uh, one-to-ones, I'm sorry. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yes, so everybody who has taken part in the competitions over the past 11 and a half hours. And we're gonna keep the, some of the competitions open. The competitions to win all the vouchers and the titanium strips, the competitions are gonna stay open until roughly around about nine o'clock, 12 o'clock lunchtime tomorrow, so there's more people that can come on. Everybody who has taken part in all of the competitions today, I am gonna be producing something especially, um, not for every one of you, because I can't afford that, is going to be one or two people. We're going to produce a couple of t-shirts. We're going to produce a t-shirt with, we decided on this, it'll be coming along. So we're going to do this. This is going to be um, something like this. And that's going to be on the front of the t-shirt. And we're going to have the bigger your balls, the flatter your bottom. And this is what we were referring to when we were doing our granulation. Small little bit of metal you melt down, it ends up nicely rounded. The bigger the ball, gravity takes part and it pulls and squashes the balls flat. That is why you get flat bottoms on your balls if your metal is too much and your balls are too big. So tongue in cheek, we're gonna be producing a couple of t-shirts with that across the front. No one's gonna know what that is, but you will. And it's gonna say, the bigger your balls, the flatter your bottom, okay? So that's what we're gonna be producing. And also perhaps we'll then perhaps do another t-shirt with me doing this or something like that with gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And the few sayings that I've been saying today. And everybody who has entered into the competitions today will be in with a chance of winning those couple of t-shirts. We haven't designed them yet. That's simply just come to us now whilst we've been working away over the past 11 and a half hours. Uh, can you make the shirts to purchase as well, please? What well, those, if the bigger your balls, the flatter your bottom? Yeah, I, perhaps we will as well. We'll do that at a later stage. But if you do want to buy um, any of the At The Bench t-shirts like we've got here, oh yeah, these are gonna, the competition for these are gonna stay open as well until tomorrow. At The Bench t-shirts like those, those, those. At The Bench aprons like this as well. Uh, you can enter the competition. And if you don't happen to win, you can go to uh, andrewberry.co.uk, okay? And then up on the top, you've got shop and you can buy an apron, you can buy a t-shirt. We ship anywhere throughout the whole wide world. Please don't ask it for it to be signed because they come direct from the manufacturers. Natalie, yeah, oh, you've got to get an apron. You've got to get an apron. Thank you for all you both. You must be exhausted. I'm still pretty um, buzzing at the moment. I'm still really, really going for it. Uh, what about the Sparkle Ring logo? <coughs> what about your Sparkle Ring logo um, on for the O for Gorgeous? Now, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? So that would be the logo that does that. <coughs> and I can't remember how it goes now. Or was that Andrew Berry one? Do you know what I can't remember now? Uh, gorgeous, yeah. Do you know what, oh, it's on here, isn't it? And there, there we go. All right, what else we got to say? Inspiring is a perfect word for today. Thank you very much, everybody. And if you have been with us since the start, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have only just popped on for five minutes, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we've raised over £3,100 for cancer research. Thank you so much indeed. The last live stream was for UNICEF. We raised £1,600. Brilliant amount. Thank you very much indeed. This time it is now for, uh, just bear with me a second. I've been watching a video for two months. We've already made textured rings, plus setting, detailed video, close set. Look, brilliant. So this time it was Cancer Research UK, inspired by um, a good friend, Mark, who's been diagnosed with cancer, and it really does affect so many people. Um, so I hope that the money that you have raised will certainly go towards um, helping cancer research, research uh, 
just do something to try and help this disease, to try and obliterate it. It is not nice at all. Can you use a rawhide mat instead of the rubber mat on the hard iron chip and the bangle? Um, I don't think so because the whole idea of the rubber mallet um, is here's your your dies, your bit of metal goes up on the top. The idea is if you have a rubber mallet, the face will come down and the face will slightly do this when you hammer and that then will push the metal into that shape. So it has to be quite hard. Um, no, it has to be quite soft to be able to push the metal. Um, we used a textured uh, with the, the gorgeous texture plates as well. Please, if you want some texture plates, um, we're gonna print, put all the links to these under the film and also on At The Bench. We're gonna blast At The Bench's Facebook page with all the links that you need uh, to do with the texture plates. Um, Roberta at um, Oregon Trail and also Moira at Oxford. <coughs> texture plates. Yeah. Mm. So that is the idea. If you have a hard, a hard bit of metal, it is not necessarily going to push this down very well. So um, you can certainly try, but I think um, the rubber mallet or a urethane mallet would be the best thing to do. Um, yeah, please, um, Laura, please ask a jury technical question. We can get up another five or ten minutes before we announce the winner of the rolling mills. Uh, <clears throat> Do I need a lathe to put a groove into the ring? You don't necessarily have to. You can simply make um, a wide band. You can simply make um, um, a wide band like this. This is the section through the ring and then solder on two rails on either side on top of that, like that. You can solder on two rails. I would make the rails so they go on top of the ring like that uh, there, so then you've got the groove. Um, I wouldn't necessarily solder those flush on the side. Um, I would do it, you know, like we did the spinner ring, you make the main band and then you get the bands then to go over on either side, solder them into place and that's just the way I would do it. You don't need a lathe at all. Um, um, I can't remember, I think we, I've missed it, I think. Uh, can you use pasta maker for texture plates, pasta maker? Don't think you could really, mm. can you know? The pasta maker is not going to put, put enough, um, text enough your pressure. Pasta. It textures your pasta, yeah. <laughs> um, Laura, this is my question. What's the best way to protect the silver from fire scale? You either get in and out quick, you solder really, really quickly um, so the oxygen does not get um, absorbed by the, uh, the copper on the surface. So you get there, you heat it up quick, you get it out and you quench it. That is the best way to produce it. The next best way is to protect the surface from the oxygen from the flame. And I would simply do that by, Jimmy, by using some flux, so I'm using some borax. You could use some methylated spirits mixed with boric acid and borax into a paste. Cover the surface with that. It acts as a flux, it also acts as a barrier as well onto the surface. Uh, boric acid, alcohol dip, and a the flame, then flux. Exactly right. Um, but you don't really even need to do that. You can simply use borax or ore flux or magic boric, anything that covers the surface and produces a layer over the surface will stop the torch from actually getting to the surface. It'll heat it up, but it's the oxygen you've got to stop from actually hitting the surface. Uh, the cast iron <laughs> pasta makers, yeah, I think so. <coughs> Looking for test tubes, spice wrap works great, okay. Uh, do you have a video tutorial on how to set a pear-shaped faceted stone with a pointy bottom? Um, not on YouTube, but on At The Bench, we do, yes. Um, what else we got? Thanks, Julian. I'm interested in making one myself. Just wondered if Andrew has ever done Makume Gane. I have, but I've done it the cheats way. We talked about this on the last question and answer we did, where we got layers of metal, 
copper, silver, copper, silver, copper, silver, but I cheated and soldered and sweat soldered the layers together. That is not the correct way of doing it. You should actually put them all together. Uh, I think you flux them and then you fuse them all together. Um, Prips flux, yes, invented by a chap by the name of Prips. Uh, perhaps a stone on stone. I remember that last time we had a stone on stone. We should be doing that, yes. Is it an automated pin saw? Don't think there is. Um, snacks, yeah. Okay, so I think we've got a couple more minutes before we're announcing the winner. I've done, I've got the winners. You have the winners? Yeah. Oh, you've been keeping that to yourself, oh, Louise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Building the suspense. <laughs> so, Louise has the winners. So, what are we going to be announcing now over the next five minutes, Louise? Please tell us. Well, I have got the winners of, or the winner of the Durston Bangle Forming Die Set. Okay, so this is for the Bangle Forming Die Set, which is going to be the whole set that we've just demonstrated, the original concave, the new convex as well. Should we have a drum roll? Yeah. Oh, sorry, thank you for waiting for you. Yeah, yeah drum, oh, no. drum Harper, thank you very much. Okay. John Perry. John Perry? John Perry. Oh, John. Do you know Sorry, what? Sorry, Don. You're watching. <laughs> I, need done, I need my ears budded. John Perry, you are the winner of the Bangle Forming Die Set from Durston. Congratulations to you. And the prizes go on. Commiserations to Don. <laughs> <laughs> Commiserations for... Is his name Don Perry? Is, John, is, Perry. John, John Perry. John Perry. John Perry. Don Perry. Not. See, I'm thinking of Don Perry not, isn't I? I'm thinking of the champagne. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you have won the Durston Bangle Forming Diet set. So Con congratulations. Congratulations on, on that. Well done, John we Perry. We'll an email tomorrow morning. Yes, we're going to make a note of all these. I hope you've been making they, notes. They, yeah, I've, I've, yes, of course I have. <sighs> Goodness for that, other we have to go through it all and get the winners. Watch the 12 hours again. <laughs> <laughs> we live um, on tomorrow or overnight. Okay, what so, do you want next? Uh, do we you want we need to have the £100 Kerno Craft voucher. Um, again, this competition has been going all day. We still will have 11 £20 Kerno Craft vouchers tomorrow so out of all the competition entries for the kuno craft vouchers we will pick 11 tomorrow but now we're going to pick one person from that competition to win the 100 pound kuno craft voucher louise drum roll henny wilk henny wilk henny henny i got it right that time yeah. so congratulations henny wilk you have won the £100 Kuno Craft voucher. Well done, Again, Henny. we'll all be in contact with you regarding this. Congratulations to Henny. <clears throat> oh, okay. gosh, my voice now is virtually coming to the end. So now... Henny, Henny, look, well done, well done. Mm. <laughs> oh my goodness me. So we have one more announcement, two more announcements for the roller mills. So you could be in with a chance if you have entered the competition for... Oh, Henny! Wow, you spelled my name correctly. Henny. Henny, congratulations. Henny, yeah. you won a £100 Kerner Craft voucher. Yes. Congratulations. Fab. Okay. Right. You. I so said this is this is what we're going to be auctioning. Auctioning. Not, not auctioning. What are we doing, Louise? We're going to be giving one of these away. We're going to be giving two, two of these away, aren't we? So two of these we're going to be giving away. Simple as that. Oh, can I just stay here by you, Louise? And no, just, just come on, on, come on, come on. Keep going. <laughs> right. Okay. Here we go. All right then. There's Louise over there. Hello. Okay. Let's get this back on here. Zoom in on here. I don't know why I'm zooming on this camera. We don't really need this one anymore. We have got um, two rolling mills to give away. You may have heard throughout today, we've been running at this competition to win two Agile C130 rolling mills. Two mills, not one mill, two mills. Just checking some of the um, congrats to John and to Henny. Absolutely, Henny, <laughs> Jenny. not Jenny, Henny. Henny. <laughs> Henny. 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 Um. <laughs> Don't start making up the names now to suit yourselves, please, because you're going to get us into trouble. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Trudy, £15. 
Thank you very much indeed, really do appreciate it. Uh, do you wear a mask when you polish with your flex shaft? Yes, you should do. But when I polish, my face is back over this way, but I'm polishing down here. It's going diagonally and the dust and the dirt goes elsewhere. But yes, you should wear a mask and also eye protection as well. Um, for health and safety. Someone said Prosecco and pizza. I think it's nearly time, Louise. I think it is, um, yeah. Andrew needs a pickle bath. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> save water, drink champagne. Michael, yes, I totally agree with you. Does uh, Andrew have a scroll work tattoo? Yes, I do. Um, so there is... Oh, there we go. We can put this camera to some good use now, can't we? Um, ah, 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 ah. So yeah, so this is this is the scroll work tattoo that is um, so a bit of like work in progress at the moment um, on my arm. Yes, um, scroll work done by um, a good friend of mine called Sam Alfano. Um, he, uh, he told me I could actually use his scroll work, but as you can see, I'm really quite proud of this actually. I'm really proud of the scroll work and the detail in that, and that goes right up as well. Yeah, so there we go. So that's my scroll work that I've had done. And I, I want to elaborate it. I want to come down a little bit this way. I want to go back. So, yeah. Um, lag in the net a little it's bit. A lag, yeah. It's a lag. So, Lynn Media is finding that it's being announced in the chat before it's... Oh, okay. But it's... No, that's fine. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, down to know where Andrew got this, this cool bracelet. These bra this bracelet, okay, so this, is, this, this bracelet is a nomination bracelet and I've had this, how long have I had this now? Oh my gosh. Years. Years, yeah. So um, it's just a nomination bracelet that just stays there. Um, Father Christmas may be bringing me something. Who knows? If you're good. If you I'm might. good. I'm always Consider good, Louise. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I think we're going to start. We've got 10 minutes left before we've been up. Uh, we've been alive for 11 hours, 51 minutes. So let's make it to 12 hours. And we now are going to announce the two winners of the Durston Agile C130 Roller Mills. These will be sent wherever you are in the whole wide world. It's as simple as that. If you've entered the competition for the Roller Mill, thank you very much. And for all of you who have entered the competitions today, thank you so much indeed. And thank you to everybody who has donated the 3,100 odd pounds for cancer research as well. Thank you all very much. We're going to be finishing off these little projects we've been doing today. Um, we're going to be finishing these off and we're also going to be raffling these. And again, all the money is going to be going to charity. Uh, Bill uh, William is going to be um, letting us have the information for his sea urchin pendant as well. He said it would be very kind. He can have one of those to auction off as well. Not necessarily auction off, but we're going to do a raffle, aren't we? Because then everybody just say pays a pound or whatever it is to have a nice... Um, the likes exceeds the viewers now. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? <clears throat> um, okay, uh, just checking some of that. Gorgeous tattoo. Thank you very much, um, Ada. Well over 700 likes. Thank you. And I'm sure we'll get far more likes as the days go on when people watch this as well. You okay there, Louise? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you're more than welcome. Peace to you all. Thank you, Susan. Thank you very much indeed. Um, all right, then. So I think we got... Just under 10 minutes left. We're just going to announce now the two winners for the Durston Roller Mills that we're giving away. Um, it's been going on all day. Becoming a member of At The Bench, best decision of 2020. Aww. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much indeed. Don't forget, you can still join At The Bench. We've got the discount code that is AUTUMN50. You can enter that into the subscription box um, on At The Bench and you can get 50% off the membership. It's only £90 instead of £180. Um, you're more than welcome. Boot for the six thumbs down. Yeah, you get them. But you know what? Don't care. Three thousand pounds for charity. How can anybody think about giving a thumbs down for something that you have donated to, you have stayed with us all day and what Louise and I have just been doing all day as well. So congratulations to everybody. Congratulations for all of you who have been watching. Thank you so much indeed. So we have drawn close now to the final two draws for this evening. Um, the 90 quid, 90 quid bound, goes on for a week. You've got until Saturday of 
uh, 14th of November for half price membership to At The Bench. And thank you for everybody who has come on for that. Uh, Cancer Research UK, 3,200, exactly. Okay, here we go. So Ready. we have two winners. Stop me. We have two winners. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be too much. <clears throat> we have two winners to win the Agile C130 roller mills. They're worth a thousand and fifty pounds each. If you include shipping as well, that's nearly eleven hundred pounds in each roller mill. Matthew has very kindly given us those to give away. Um, so here we go. So the first winner for the roller mill, are you all ready? Give me a thumbs up if you're all ready. I'm going to sit here until I get a few thumbs up. Your own time, you waste. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going anywhere. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we got some thumbs up. So here we go. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're gonna have a bit of a, a drum roll. So, come on, Andrew. Come on, Andrew. So, so the winner for the first Durston Agile C130 Roller Mill is. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Before we go any further. I got to put it on the lovely Louise. And the winner of the first, oh, Louise, please tell us who is the first winner of the Durston Agile C130 Rolling Mill. Who is the winner, Louise? Tell us, tell us. Just, just don't hang around, Louise. Tell us. <laughs> come on. Don't beat her on the bush. Tell us. Come on. Marie Power. Marie Power. Marie Power. Marie Power. Congratulations. Marie, Marie. Pa Marie Power. Marie Power. Power. Thank you very much. Marie, you are. are you on? If you're, if you're there, Maria, congratulations. Marie. 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 Oh, sorry. Oh. I'm getting just like my father, aren't I? <laughs> Marie Power, you are the first winner of the Durston Agile C130 Roller Mill worth a thousand and fifty. I feel like killing it off, off the map. Congratulations, Marie Power. Congratulations. Well done, well done, well done, well done. Amazing. Amazing. Congratulations. Brilliant. All the thank yous. Thank you so much for coming in. Really do appreciate it. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Okay. Great. I think, I think we, we can go home now. We go home now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one more rolling mill to give away. And then we're going to be going home then for Marie, pizza and prosecco. Marie, um, it was definitely Marie Power. Sorry, if your name is Marie something else. Maria. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marie Power, congratulations. Excellent. So there's one more rolling mill to give away for tonight. And then we've got a few more competitions to uh, announce tomorrow. Tomorrow's competitions, you can still enter for the t-shirts, <laughs> for the roll, not for the rolling class, going to be today. Um, you can enter the t-shirt competitions, the apron competitions, the wash competitions, the Kuno Craft um, vouchers as well. Um, I'm not quite sure, sure what else. The titanium strips from New Concepts as well. 